Sure. <laughs> yeah, Bowser's a little dragon. I think you could safely describe Mario as a wizard. Um, but I mean, are you a wizard if it's specifically just no. getting magic? Are you a wizard if you like just have? Are we gonna crack that open again? <laughs> the wizard discussion. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if we. Well, no, I think it. it's a matter of if you like. He's not a giant either because he eats a mushroom, you know. Yeah. And gets big. like he's just a regular fella, and then kind occasionally of, yeah. he's a big guy, and occasionally yeah, not... he shoots fire. I'm not sure what kind of superpower I described to going from being short-ish to tall-ish. You know, I'm actually, but, you know, now that I'm thinking about power ups, I'm kind of surprised by the breadth of the power ups that they used in the film, like the mini mushroom thing. Like I didn't know that they'd be using that, oh, or yeah, like uh, or the ice ice uh, flower as well. Tanuki suit was, oh, they were definitely going to use that, obviously. I just find it funny that Grace Randolph apparently complained about it because she said it wasn't what? set up properly, <laughs> or pro properly explained. <laughs> It wasn't probably set up or explained that there's a Tanuki power up in the Mario world. I don't even. It's just <laughs> funny. The other ones like, made a lot of sense. Oh, he was. <laughs> well, because me and Rags watchers like, um, what makes sense? Like, what exactly About were you grabbing Mario onto world, in this world? Uh, yeah. They go into the sewers yeah, and get sucked into a mystery mushroom world. Why does that happen? <laughs> That makes well, that follows. Now, that follows. makes sense. That, yeah, I understood that, 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 that part. That as far as playing by its own rules goes, though, I mean, they did set up that the the question mark boxes give ups. you items that give you mysterious powers that often give you suits, which you gain the attributes of the thing that you touched. You know, so uh, I don't I know. know. I thought they made it make sense within I feel like the context of itself. I don't know why she would complain about something like that. It's Mario. No, how does the cat suit make sense if the Tanuki suit doesn't, you know? It, the, this, right, that's, like, that's the first thought I had. It's just like, what is her metric? Why is she picked on that? Like, <laughs> of all things. Like, okay. Was that meant to be, like, a piece of meaningful criticism of this film? I don't know. I've already heard it repeated. I haven't actually, like, seen it I in saw, context. Uh, yeah, that's... I mean, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Also, it's funny because yeah. we already had a movie in 1993 where they tried to like explain all the things about Mario. It's like they jump high. Okay, let's give them like space boots. Where <laughs> do the dinosaurs come from? They're deep under the earth. And it was like super took itself too seriously at certain parts. Like, I'm glad that with this new one, they just like, yes, yeah, those are the video game elements, whatever they're there. Have you, uh, have you seen it yet, John? I haven't, but I got no, nothing against it. I would like to see it. I think you'll like it. I think so too. I, I, it's doing I the thing where adults will be like, huh, and it'll be an hour and a half, so it's not too bad, and children will love it. Yeah, I figure kids will really dig and it. I figure that basically most people who like Mario will be like either okay with it or happy with it. Yeah. But um, I mean, as, as for being a film itself, it's pretty, it's like, it's it's fine. It's, it it's is middling. Fine You've seen a lot of good be. movies before, but yes. like, I don't think anybody's going to walk out of the theater angry. And yeah. they will be making more of these films, guys, because it's going to make about $360 million worldwide opening I'm just, weekend. I'll be so waiting for that Zelda and Star Fox announcements. That's wow. what I'm interested in. I don't, Hell yeah. Do you think they're going to do Star Fox? Zelda. I think eh, that they, they think could be so. convinced by the Once teams that Star Steam. Fox isn't popular enough like as a gaming IP or whatever, but that there should be someone okay. there to tell them, trust me, as a film, this thing will kick off. Once yeah, they pick up well, a little bit of steam with these movies, quote unquote, pick up steam. They get a few down the road. I steam. think people people will be so ready for Star Fox I at think, that point. Uh, you get the Zelda and the other stuff, you know. Done. Well, so that's that's a real question. Are we actually going to be doing Super Smash Brothers at this point? I think oh, that's um, an inevitability. That no brainer. If they do like a Mortal Kombat style thing tournament and the winner of the fight gets I the big magic star it would, be it would be that like they'd find some excuse to have them fight but then they'd eventually work together like it would be the blending of worlds would yeah like maybe it starts and eventually they'd work together to beat the big bad the master yeah, hand that that's what oh yeah master I guess hand is because yeah. they're definitely going to make more mario movies there's no way that that's not that's that's happening oh um, i will say as well guess, watching yeah charles martin they play his in-universe father I was like, yeah. oh, okay. okay. He played, uh, he played Jumpman in the, uh, the little, Mario, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the little intro where they were doing the Mario Luigi voice, and he was there playing, uh, That's he was neat. playing uh, Donkey Kong on the uh, little arcade machine, and he was stuff doing like that. I was like, oh, I don't hate you as much voice. now. All right, <laughs> <laughs> well, for, not, for not letting him play Mario, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. That that does help. 
I, I mean, this, this that film is like loaded with references. Like, there's so many like little nods and throwbacks to different games. There was like Duck Hunt, like Kid Icarus, um, the fact the original cartridge, uh, like the original arcade game. There was, of course, all of the musical cues and everything. That's mm -hmm. that that was like jam packed with references. Um, well, uh, I hate to, to rush you along, but we should Mario. probably get started because the Evil stream, yeah. Uh, some of us are on timers, and this is going to take a while. <laughs> More than yeah. likely. Ooh, um, nice. I've decided what I'll have run in the background is a just recorded playthrough of my... It was my fun playthrough of I've completed everything, I've unlocked everything, so now I'm just going to play as Leon with his cat ears and have infinite ammo. <laughs> so you'll be able to see that while we're... Uh, Normally he has chat. eight ears. Um, so we'll, we'll do the standard, we'll go, uh, I don't know, left, right, right to left, maybe we can figure out another unique and fun order, and we'll give a little brief overview of what we thought of the game, maybe a little bit about what you know of, uh, Resident Evil too, because, um, I imagine we're all going to be very different on that front. But of course, any, in any case, welcome, by the way. <laughs> like Hello, everybody. everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Resident Hello. Evil 4 remake, um, slash what Mario up? EFAP. Yes. Um, we're going to be talking... There. We're gonna be talking Resident Evil for Woo. 78 hours. We're gonna talk about the remake, the and the uh, thumbnail is fixed. And I've Metal's link it works, and then people tell me it doesn't. I've refreshed it again. Hopefully, it works this time. I don't know why YouTube hates you specifically. I don't know. It just always <laughs> destroys my links everywhere. It's so stupid. <laughs> um, so, Bow. Oh Resident my. Evil for Resident. Dun, dun, dun. They actually took that out, didn't they? Sad. It did. It's sad. It did. Mm. A couple of things they took out. We're going to talk about that. Uh, why don't yeah. we? We'll just go classic. Why not? Left to right. We'll go. Like I said, about the thing. Say what you, whatever you want to say. As why don't you go first? You played Resident Evil Four Remake. What did you think? Um, I uh, I absolutely adored it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought as a as a remake that came what best part of twenty years after the original. Mm -hmm. Um, it was an exceptional uh, remake of the game without taking anything away from the first one. Uh, apart from Ada's voice, which has got everybody, ooh. Uh, I thought the characters were, were kind of upgraded. I thought Leon was a little bit better in this. I thought uh, Ashley was certainly a bit better in this. They gave Krauser a little bit more flesh. They gave Luis a little bit more flesh, uh, which those characters, I think, uh, deserved a little bit more. Um, yeah, we've had some more Krauser stuff over the years to explain the Resident Evil 4 stuff, but I can remember playing Resident Evil 4 originally and thinking, who's this Krauser stuff and who, who, what connection has he got and all this, you know, you're kind of filling in some gaps yourself. But um, In terms of atmosphere, gameplay, replayability, I've already completed it three times. I'm on a fourth playthrough at the minute. Um, the Mercenaries is... is is a ton of fun as well. Ada's coming, Wesker's coming, Mercenaries, uh, Separate Ways is coming. Yeah. A um, little bit sad that they, they after the house, they took away the uh, choice of direction. Because um, it, was, it was just, I think, added a little bit more replayability. Oh, I went this way this time. Let's go this way this time because I don't know what goes on down here. And of you course, if you can do the same run if you want. Yeah. I don't think you can. I you think can. if you. Can. Yeah, you can. I did. I thought it, it locked my, uh, it. I thought it locked it off. If you, uh, you can go back, one. um, which is kind of neat. <laughs> like you could uh, kill the sisters. Or are, they, are they the sisters or the twins? People know them by a name, right? Uh, sisters, I think. Right, you can kill yeah. them, then go back and kill uh, the second El Gigante. Mm, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, I thought uh, that was great. I thought it was great. So, uh, not a not a red flag anyway. I would say it was. Uh, oh, we'll was give you a few. Really Don't good. worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, cool. Red Thanks, very much. Uh, Fringy, you're up next. What did you think? Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I think this is a great game. I uh, uh, the preamble would be that I played Resident Evil Four for the first time a little while ago, like a couple of weeks ago, ahead of this, and I thought that game was awesome. And then I played this one, and I thought it was really great too. They're quite different though. This isn't the case like with the Dead Space remake where it uh it um it, it basically uh tries to es essentially replicate and elevate the same experience. This one is offering a very different experience, but I think that what it's provided is uh 
really, really cool. It's a very fun, polished, gamey game. So yeah, I like it a lot. Alrighty. John, what do you think? Uh, I love this. I had an absolute blast playing this. Uh, it made me feel young again. Can't remember <laughs> the last time a game made me feel like that. Was it Took Dead Space Remake, like... maybe? Uh, well, this... I enjoyed this one more, and it, I was more excited for it for some reason. Not, I'm not knocking Dead Space at all, but I don't know. There's something special about this one that made me feel quite young again. It took me back to 2005 playing the demo on like a GameCube in a store and being like so blown away. And uh, it, it's such a smooth playthrough. It's probably the best example of New Game Plus implemented that I can think of like really carefully designed, not just for one playthrough, but for like 10 playthroughs. <laughs> and uh, it, um, I was on Facebook one day and I saw a review of the game from PC Gamer. And this was around the time when all these news outlets were giving it 10 out of 10. And uh, PC Gamer gave it an eight. And they said uh, the teeth were filed down on it, something to that effect. And uh, this annoying thing happens when people start dropping 10s out of 10 because, like, you have the people who fold their arms and go, like, oh, really? Perfect, is it? And then they're perhaps more critical than they normally would be. And then you have people who, they're like the defense force people who come out and they're like, anybody who, if it gets enough 10s out of 10s, anybody who comes along and doesn't also give it a 10 out of 10 is just, like, being contrarian and stuff. And so, like, a bunch of people were like shitting on the PC gamer article and uh but I I think you can make a positive and negative argument for why uh for like the difficulty spikes being shaved down a bit for this remake. Uh but I think it makes for a really smooth and fun playthrough. And I don't see it as a replacement for the original Resident Evil 4. Just just like I don't consider the remake of Resident Evil 2 to be a replacement for the original on the PlayStation 1. Because even today, Resident Evil 2 on PlayStation 1 has a really unique experience to offer with its fixed camera perspective and a really memorable, like, 90s synth horror score. Uh, the music is great. Um, but yeah, this this remake, I like to think of it as just a fun reimagining and i would replay this just like i would still replay the original resident evil 4 for what it offers in terms of like mechanics because it is it's quite uh, a change like having the camera direction and the player direction now separate no longer tank controls um but it's fun as hell and uh i've played it quite a few times now and i'm still not bored so mm -hmm. Yeah, positive uh, review for me, for sure. All right, Mark, next up. I absolutely loved it as well. Uh, there were a few things that bothered me. Um, largely, I was able to avoid the main one, which was just the, the choice of reticle on, on most of the, the weapons by default, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. But it can be mitigated by an item that you can put on a few of the pistols that makes it feel a bit more like OG Resident Evil 4 when you're you're taking your aim lining up your shots but mo the thing i am most happy that they carried over from the original is that that element of aiming at specific parts of the enemy and them reacting in in a way which makes sense or at least to a degree uh, i found on the higher difficulties some some knees and heads even were a little bullet spongy, but uh, for the most part, there's triggers that you can do to aim at a part of an enemy that put them in a state that allow you to give a contextual action like a melee attack or a knife stab, and it's all very video gamey and fun, and they didn't sacrifice that in the remake. They didn't just make it, hey, this is Resident Evil 2 remake, but with Resident Evil 4 story. It really still feels like Resident Evil 4, and that made me quite happy, and uh, I think that, by and large, they did a fantastic job um, with updating the story, and um, as kind of Baz was saying about giving Luis and Krauser sort of more to do, I thought that uh, that really did make it a much more satisfying experience, at least from a narrative standpoint, so 
I think that we've been very lucky with the action horror remakes this year with both Dead Space and Resident Evil yeah, 4 being mm. uh, probably better than I expected either of them to be as far as how how well they delivered on the potential of their source material, like their, their predecessors, you know? All uh, right. Yeah, no. Very, very satisfied. Um, so as people may or may not know, I have a passing familiarity with Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, and funnily enough, much more so in their remakes than the originals. Four, though, I've been obsessed with four since I first played it, and I'm pretty sure I played it on a whim. Like, it wasn't like a friend recommendation or known for what it was. I just saw it, thought the cover looked interesting, and then played it, and was like, holy fuck, this game's amazing. And I've since played it probably like once per two years at most. It's just a mainstay, one of the greatest games of all time as far as I'm concerned. And so this was a bit of a worry getting a remake. It was like, oh god, are they going to be able to nail this? Maybe they shouldn't even touch it because is it is it worthwhile remaking something that is that good? Like, what's the point? And hopefully we'll be able to address questions like that today. But uh, I adored it. I have played it like... 20 times I think I've completed it at this point. The run-through that I said that's being on screen right now is my run-through and I've unlocked everything. You can see I've got an Infinite Launcher, uh, Chicago Sweeper, Red 9, etc. I've just got a bunch of shit that I'm messing around with. Um, it plays wonderfully, as far as I'm concerned, overall. But uh, there'll be plenty to go into in terms of details. But yes, uh, I would say I very much highly approve of and enjoy this to the point where I'd recommend it to pretty much everybody. You know, Resident Evil fans, Resident Evil 4 fans, action fans, horror fans. Like, it's, it's I don't see why you wouldn't have some interest in this if you think video games are cool in a general way. Um, that's pretty glowing. We'll get into more details as time goes on. Metal, what do you think? Hello. Uh, so, for me, Resident Evil, I think I played almost every one at least once. But I never engaged with the story, so please don't ask me about the story. I now that the writers don't worry about it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, because I'm, I'm more in there for the for the gameplay. Uh, I don't even remember which ones I played, but I played a bunch of them for the gameplay, really. Uh, so yeah, I quite enjoyed them, and yeah, Resident Evil Four was always uh, one that I enjoyed the most for the named gaminess of the of the of the game. It it just feels nice to control everything. The OG one. And yeah, with this one, I mean, pretty much the same with Mod. It's like, oh man, what are, what are you going to do with this one? Uh, what, are you, what can they fuck up here? <laughs> Basically, it's like this, this cynical mindset you get to, get to have after all these poopy remakes. And uh, no, I'm very happy. I mean, I've, I've, I've streamed all of it. So uh, you probably, if you've seen those, you can probably guess that I really like this, this game. Um, very fun to play. Uh, also have a bunch of ca uh bunch of things to talk about that we get to uh the aiming some rng stuff and, and whatnot we'll get to that i'm just gonna go into it right now uh does it replace the first one for me i don't know i can see playing myself both uh still in the future maybe just back to back just when you feel like it like every other year, it's like, oh, let's play those uh, those uh, those Resident Evil Four games. Those are fun, and yeah, I've completed a whole lot of this game as well. I got the S plus rank yesterday on professional, which was a pain in the ass, and uh, yeah, good sh good shit. Very happy with it. Beautiful. Oh, you did finish it, and you did get the S plus. Very good. I mm. did. I had like, mm. oh, come on, just that... because you did no, there is the no come way. on. You didn't. You got the S rank by the rules. You got the S rank. You didn't get the S plus. What? That's a, you got the okay, Rags. What do you think? If the game's rules are you have to complete the game in five and a half hours with fifteen saves, you do it with fifteen saves, but every time you die, you reload to make sure your time doesn't carry over. When on normal mode, if you hit continue, it does. Meaning the intention of S plus is that you can only fail as much as leaving you up to five and a half hours. Have you gotten it or not? You know what? I I respect you both as gamers, and I'm very happy that you both. <laughs> it's not about whether or not I've had it. It's like it's literally <laughs> just incorrect here. information. That's all. You haven't actually done the challenge. No offense. If you get the rank, you get the rank, but you did it through an exploit. Yeah, not a cheat. I mean, well, that how is that not a cheat? Well, I mean, because you a cheat being a specific thing as a way to subvert the actual code of the game, whereas an exploit is you're using the mechanics that are there in a way that is a, probably subversive to the intention as to why they were designed that way. 
I don't know if that made sense, but it, it does. What I'm saying makes sense in my head. <laughs> I might have to workshop how to explain it. I think there's a bit of a blurry line here. Like, uh, I mean, there's cheating, but then there's like putting the armor suit on Ashley and wearing the chicken hat. Would you still consider that? Well, yeah, that? but those like, are intentional, right? Sure. That's what I mean, like, well, it, if you if you completed the challenge with those items, then it's like you might technically unlock it if they allow it. But I'm not gonna like think I'm, you're not gonna get any cred for it. Not compared to someone who didn't. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I don't think I want to try professional without like armoring up Ashley or uh, the sweeper and stuff like that, like bonus weapons. But I mean, the, the, you know, the S plus, like you, you got S. That's what S is. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> S is super cool. Yeah, S is still really good. The game told me it S plus. <laughs> well, I mean, because that, that's the thing. It's like if you can utilize the mechanics in a way that you satisfy the conditions to the game for S plus, and you did it without, say, you know, downloading an aim bot or installing a mod. Like you're using what's in the actual code of the game, the rules of the game. You're just doing it in a way that satisfies the conditions in a bit of an unconventional way. I, I, that's what I would consider an exploit versus a cheat. I mean, I'd happily concede it's an exploit, but um, that like adding in extras that they've pre-approved, like I'm pretty sure they intend for people to use that. Why would they have it be that if you hit continue, it'll give you the uh, the time penalty, but if you hit load, it doesn't, or rather go to main menu what and if, load? Do we know which one is the error? Oh, I imagine it's the the load one because continue. Like, why why would it be you have to go to main that... menu and reload? Would be the way that they expect you to do it. I don't. I, I don't know why. Say, I'm like. Uh, I'm, I'm legitimately not sure which one they might intend for you to use, yeah. or maybe one of them might actually be bugged. Or which the thing, one is this? Things you know, apparently exploit. that that's how they done it since they introduced these kind of professional ranks. So I don't know why they just made like an auto save after you die. Well, like to prevent that. For reference, yeah, I've the, not the beaten. Um, I've not gotten the achievement on Dead Space uh, remake. Like legitimately, I got killed in like a fire. Randomly, and so I, I alt F forward because mm -hmm. I was like, "Fuck that shit." So if someone said you haven't legitimately got it, I'd be like, "Yeah, I know." Like, uh, because that that's just true. And people doing this with Resident Evil, it's just yeah, because they can't stop people from doing that. I guess. So um, to bring up another example of my earlier point. Like, I have an S on professional, and people might think that's cool, but I did it with the infinite launcher and blew the shit out of everything. So like, I didn't even see it as that hard. It was barely. Like, well, that's why a, S plus is interesting, a few right? rooms that are kind of tricky, but you're not allowed whatever. to go on New Game Plus when doing it. So obviously that's intentional, but you are allowed to take Armored Ashley because I guess they recognize yeah. that regular Ashley is going to fuck you up so much that it's uh, <laughs> just a downright frustration. Obviously, she's not in like seventy percent of the game, but still, right? Um, which means Matt uh, Rag, sorry, you're last up and ready to go. So, yeah, Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube was the first M-rated game that I purchased. Um, it was the first, like, I guess, serious, really mature sort of, like, horror game I ever played. Um, and I was able to get a copy at GameStop uh, for GameCube uh, that I had access to. Played it a bunch. Had my, you know, struggles as a young gamer. But it became one of my favorites of all time. I ended up buying it across four systems, um, and I've just enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It's one of the classics of all time. Nothing but a great amount of respect and admiration for Resident Evil 4. It's just, it's one of the most, just, it's one of the quintessential classic games. Adore it, love it. Played it a whole bunch. Beaten it many, many times. Um... Let me see. As far as the remake goes, I really, really like it. I think they did a fantastic job in most regards. I think a great deal of what they did was very respectful to the original. I don't think it serves as a replacement because it's meaningfully different in the way that the game is set up in terms of mostly the, the gameplay of it and the reimagining of many of the areas. But I have a great amount of... I, I'm, I'm really, really happy that this is what we got. I was extremely nervous before this came out hearing about a Resident Evil 4 not remaster, but a remake. And I knew that there's a lot of stuff to mess up. There's a lot of great things about that game. A lot of things people love. Um, and um, I was really concerned after, you know, 7, the RE2 remake, the RE, uh, RE Village, 
that we would get kind of a game like that, and I wouldn't really like it at all. But uh, it it really does feel like Resident Evil 4, the modern new kind of version, and I mean that in a good way. There's some issues uh, here and there, but I think in terms of generally the characters, the story, uh, just the way it looks, uh, there's a lot of improvements to laud. So, uh, yeah, big thumbs up for me already. <clears throat> uh, definitely a recommendation. Uh, which means, before we just get into talking about it in a general sense, and I figure the mechanical discussion will go on for a lot longer than the story one. That doesn't necessarily mean one should go first, but I mean it means that... We, we can do story and characters first, right? That, that's, that. I was going to say that seems to make some sense to me. I'm not sure if it does. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But, uh, well, maybe first topic should just be uh, the way it looks. Uh, this um, is one of what the best a, looking games ever made. What a gorgeous game. What a really lovely yeah. game. Uh, we're we're probably going to be retreading a lot of this. We're going to be the retreading a lot of the same good. kind of uh, things we said with the Dead Space game, where the light, modern lighting makes such a huge difference uh, to environments uh, and to the mood and the vibe. Um, and with mm. a few little exceptions with the, that the RE engine kind of has some fiddly troubles with, gorgeous looking game looks really really great and it runs pretty good for what we see um what a what an amazing looking game very very pleased by it not just just how good it looks in terms of the way things are you know modeled and the lit but so many new textures many new kinds of enemies that we can see um it it's it's just really really impressive yeah, and you you get like when you shoot enemies, you you can see the damage on them. Uh, not quite as like the Dead Space Two dealio, where you have like the flesh ripping off, but there's like you can see this. I think like the skull when you shoot them in the face and stuff like that, and it just looks very good. Yeah, so um, it, enemies it that are on fire look a bit charred. They have different stages right, of right. looking charred. Um, there is one of the one of the most awesome things I noticed uh, pretty early on was now that we're in the modern age and we can have more you know graphical stuff out there really really loving the you know when you when you blow apart a, a ganados and you see the the like the, the all the tendrils that are moving around coming out of the head and coming yeah. out of the torso i'm like oh yeah the plug is inside of there that that looks great it really adds so to that the, sort of thing I, was like, <clears throat> I think the horror aspect the story oh, aspect absolutely. That, like it's completely subsumed them at that point they're almost more parasite than they are person Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. It 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 does re it adds a huge horror element. You know, this thing inside of you that's kind of co-opted your body and your mind. Um, uh, and just, we'll uh, sort of get into that later as we. Yeah, it's like it's this thing that's really growing inside of you, and it's got these tendrils, and it's comes out of your head, and it's like, ugh, you know, yeah. it's it's like that thing that got this that thing kind of look to it. Um, very, uh, very pleased with that. Uh, and as we go through the story, there's going to be a, a number of things that I uh, praise in this version relating to, I think, some of the horror elements, some of the decisions that they made regarding how they portray some of that. Yeah, well, the, the, lighting, the lighting plays a, an exceptional part in this because as, the, as per the original, uh, we start off in daytime, then we go into evening, early evening, then we're into to nighttime for a substantial part and then we're coming out of it back into daybreak at the end which is obviously very metaphorical within itself but um but the because i mean i i'm fortunate enough to have a, a 4090 and and uh you know play this on ultra and all that and it, and just the the way that the the day just turns and starts to, to go into these these days set you know the sunset and then this early evening and then this dark it just really adds a, a this foreboding claustrophobic sense to the game. And that's just purely with lighting and all these that's... areas that, I mean, I always, I always joke. I shout at people who, uh, who say, why is it so dark? It's <laughs> like, you, you're, you're a gamma the, bitch. Oh yeah. The you're a gamma bitch, you know? Sun. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, don't be a gamma bitch. This is, this is how you should be, this is how you should be <laughs> playing bitch. it. Yeah. yeah. This ain't Daisy gamma 2016. Bitch, I yeah, oh, you gotta yeah, hate yeah. those. Uh, Don't be a gamma bitch. Those video yeah. like clips or YouTube clips where it's just like really overexposed. You're like, why? <laughs> like, oh, you're yeah. cheating. You're 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 not cheating, but you're cheating. You're cheating. <laughs> well, no, you are cheating because this is the light that it, that I have it on HDR. You know all that sort of stuff. Uh, ray tracing on. That's how it should be seen. That's how your character should be seeing it as you're progressing through this. So yeah, if it's some nasty little bastards hiding in the shadows. 
because that's what they want to be, then that that's all the, all the better for it. Um, it's like but, Dead Space remake of actually having dark yeah. spaces be dark. Like, yeah, it was dark great. Where you need to use the flashlight mm -hmm. to see. Oh well, yeah, hmm. we'll get into that. <laughs> Some of these topics but, feel like they have such uh, crossover that they should be mentioned already, but yeah. it's like, eh, we'll carry on, yeah. Um, yeah, gorgeous looking game, runs good uh, for how good it looks. You get an excellent, it adds to the sense of adventure, that you're on this quest, that you start here in the day, that it progresses, you know, the light wanes, it's nighttime, you go from location to location, the, the, the intimately lit interiors of the castle, the bright floodlights of the island, mm. the moonlight of the village, it all really is, um, it, it's got this, pro this sense of, you know, progression, like it, it really is a quest, like it's an adventure. Well, I um, think, um, the, yeah, yeah. Does, did this come up with Resident Evil 8, like we, we said that it looks... Like I, I really like the um the objects individually, all the props of the, the world and the environments. Just they they all look very well uh, detailed and lit as well. Like they all reflect light super well as well. Yeah, as just mixing now in. that there's now that we're we're in this you know modern age, spaces can be filled up with stuff. There's a lot of props you can add now. There's mm -hmm. tables that can have items on them. There's uh just a bunch of just this that on top of tables and bookshelves. Uh, there's, it, it just adds a lot of life, a lot of credence to the world think, that you're uh, in. Having played RE4 for the first time only a little while ago, I think that game looks really good considering it's nearly 20 years old. Oh yeah. Like, uh, mm. that game still looks pretty nice in yeah. a lot of ways. Um, but, but the big benefit, as has been already pointed out, is the density of the detail. It's just way higher here. Um, yeah. These environments Inside are incredibly feel very lived in, whereas I'd say the original, I guess, is uh, it's much more of a focus on clarity, or, or maybe just inadvertently, there's a lot, a lot of clarity in the environments just because of uh, not being able to have as many props or little details in there. I really, and, uh, the time of day really stood out to me. I love that chapter three mm -hmm. is all at dusk. It looks beautiful. Like the the whole thing has a, like an orange violet glow. And just having that transitory period between day and night this time really adds to the immersion. It feels like a space that you're in. Like, um, yeah. Agreed. I really like the mist in several um, uh, mm. environments. Like uh, one of the first rooms in the castle, I was like, holy fuck, what an update. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I quite, I think, I don't know if it's controversial to say, but like, I always strictly preferred the uh, the village to the castle and the castle to the island in the original. In this one, I was always quite happy to go to the castle just because I fucking love the environments. I think they uh, look fantastic. Um, I think they, uh, like more. they made some good changes to the castle. Um, I, I can remember thinking, uh, oh my god, what, what, what's going to happen when we get to the part where you're trapped in the cave with the blind mm. guy? That's going to be an absolute, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a night. That's going to be a nightmare to deal with. And and that wasn't you know that wasn't in. They tweaked, they tweaked how they did certain things. So, um, yeah, yeah, well, that was fair enough. But you know that whole bit, I was expecting the when you go into that room where where you and Ashley sit down, I was expecting a whole secret door to open up and stuff to start happening. And yeah, yeah. When I when I came out there, I was like, huh, huh, okay, okay. So a that, lot of this, that... yeah, we'll have to return to when it comes to like the enemies and some of the encounters, um, mm -hmm. because there's some again a lot of changes I like and some uh, some I don't. Well, and so it'll be interesting to kind of talk through those. We're probably going to miss things as we go in terms of the bigger topics. We can always circle back Never. whenever you want. Because, uh, I mean, well, do you want to, do we want to start talking about the general plot line? It's uh, been, it, yeah. it's essentially the same as the OG. They've just made all these different yeah. changes that are kind of like, oh, wow, they mm -hmm. did that. They moved that there. They took that out. They put this in, blah, blah, blah. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a... Uh, I, I mean, you know, you don't, you don't need to reveal it as it goes. We can just go from the beginning. Krauser is hired by a guy in a distant Spanish village to steal the president's daughter so they can infect her with something they've to uncovered. To be clear, though, a lot of Spanish... For, like, for some of us, all Spanish villages are distant, so... Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. That's true. So uh, they want to infect the daughter so that she can then, I guess, spread it through to the, to the family and then they can take over the world gradually. It's a... The, Plagas that they've uh, dug up that had been buried previously by the, uh, the like ancient Castellans and the Salazar family, right? It was like a they were like good guys at least at one point. Oh uh, yeah, they used to yeah. be. Yeah, keep um, control. 
Um, but the latest in the line of Salazar's is much more of an ego-driven, power-hungry man. Oh, I'm and Salazar. He's teamed up with the cult leader being Sadler, and they have hired Krauser to get the daughter, and Leon's been hired by the president himself to go and fetch the daughter back. And the story is basically him killing Spanish people. Extensively. Whoa. Until he Racist. gets that daughter That's back. That's my favorite part of the game. Oh, everybody's yeah. favorite, yeah. What's that? Um... And of course, yeah, he's uh, he meets some characters along along the journey, and meets some familiar faces, and eventually just absolutely kills everyone. You really just do. You just go through and just mow everyone down. And um, <laughs> you could probably start there in terms of the OG and the new one sharing the problem of nobody really ever tries to kill Leon successfully, do they? They have no, several opportunities, but they just never quite take them. <laughs> That's probably mm, four yes. or five instances and... where like, oh, no, I'm going to kill you. you. You're one of us soon. And then he starts I, killing I more and more of, the, of their people. I can like, respect um, that. Maybe next time. I um, think it gets more of a pass in this version than the OG for some of those segments. For some, not at all. But some of them, mainly also, those uh, centering around Mendez, I think they are actually better in this version. And I think the worst instance of it between both games is actually in this one, and it's new. It's the uh, yes. Adler yes. when he meets up yeah, with... Yeah, um, the Amber Storage. Yeah, that was horrendous. That was horrific. <laughs> yeah. I was so was frustrated. Bad. That sucks. You I don't guys know why really they wrote it that way, that. which we should probably explain, I guess, because, again, we, we're happy to jump around, right? We're having some fun. It's okay. It's, Absolutely. It's, 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 but at one point... You're running around with with Ashley, and uh, unlike the OG game, you you find an, a room where they've uh, dug up all the amber, where all the parasites. Uh, you could see, like I think, what do they refer to it as? Like the big piece of it. The, I, I I remember it's special uh, to them, right? It's like, the um the host or the master I think it's or something. Called I don't know something like that. Uh, does everyone refer to it as the amber, or is it just um is it just like Ada and Company, Ada and Louise? I'm not sure. I thought it had like a special name. It doesn't really matter. The Holy Body, is that it? Oh, yeah, that's what people are saying, Holy Body. Yeah, I think that yeah, was that it. Sounds I, right. think, so, I think the Holy Body is just generally referred to the, the, the Plagas. Okay, well, I thought maybe that yeah, the big piece of Amber was what they were... Yeah, uh, in any case, Sadler turns Pointing. up and he uses, you know, what what has developed at that point of his manipulation powers of controlling the Plagas. And, it you know, it's stressing out Leon and Ashley. They both... And, and they start out with doing, like, a will... They they have Ashley use a pistol and aim it at Leon. And he's like, kill him. Do it. Kill him. It's a sort of, like, test, which... Uh, that doesn't happen in the original at all, right? <laughs> that, no. That, 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 no. 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 Uh, he basically... The, Leon gets essentially frozen in place, and he says, come here, Ashley, and Ashley does. Yeah, and part of the reason I bring that up is that... We could always hand wave several interactions as Sadler being like, well, as long as Leon turns, you know, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm not going to kill him because he's mm -hmm. going to turn. I got him. But when you have a scene where he's literally like, kill him, it's like, okay, <laughs> well, now that feels like we could throw that out. Uh, but yeah, she shoots once and it kills a, a Ganado to Leon's left. She shoots again, kills a Ganado to his right. And then she goes, she pulls the trigger when it, she's aiming right at him. And uh, I, I've asked a couple of people, I, I meant to check over, but it's a gun jam from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. and, uh... So what it looks like in this, I need to rewatch the cutscene because it might actually be an error uh, in how they portray it, which means Leon should have died. But uh, the ejected case of the previous shot is in the ejection port. It's called a, it's called a stove pipe. You can probably figure out why. Um, so what that means is that uh, essentially, the next round hasn't loaded into the gun. The previous casing didn't eject properly. So, if based on what they actually animate, it might be an improper depiction of what would occur, because if the gun wasn't stovepipe, then the bullet would have been loaded in and Leon should have died. Point being, a miraculous gun jam saves Leon's life. Yeah. <laughs> and then, after that, no one else decides that we should kill Leon while he's incapacitated because nope. of the Plagueis inside of him. Uh, and they had the ability to write something else, and this is what they went with. It was like a uh, double whammy. He, he lucked out like with her not killing him, and then he lucked out again with Sadler being like, well, guess we're going to go then. <laughs> it's like, yeah, bye. No, don't, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, can, he, uh, can he say, though, that I'm going to leave uh, my subordinates to punish you? But like <laughs> when he they, before he leaves that scene, I don't know how long you can get away with something like that in terms of just like he was right there, he was stunned yeah, and everything. Done. Well, and, and I, just, I always thought Leon got the benefit. The eye or whatever. I always thought Leon got the benefit because Leon is part of the president's personal detail. So what do you mean? Uh, what does that mean? 
Oh, like he really well, it wants means that to if, convert him? If, if they, instead of just having Ashley go back, if Ashley fails, you've got a second... Well, so that's a great point. Why the oh, hell no, didn't they just chain him up? <laughs> yep, then they would have tied mm. him up and chained him up and then left him until his transformation was complete. Yeah, um, I've never I, just, like... Or uh... just let him take Ashley. <laughs> or, well, this is... Okay, okay yeah. So, guys, right, we're going to have to have a discussion here. It's going to be really short. If you don't agree, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> the story in the original game sucked balls. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, but that's how it's always been. The story was lame. It was an excuse to go to Spain and have some fun in the castle. Uh, <laughs> and it was like, oh, hey, look at this evil, crazy guy. Oh, my goodness. Look, uh, uh, the blue, midget in blue. I want to yeah, shoot him. <laughs> just make special mention, though. The characters, like, there's some great shit in here and fun. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stuff I like. Um, it's the plot. There's a lot of stuff I like. It's absolutely not It's always yeah. fun shooting Spaniards. Come on. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Why the game's yeah. so popular. Um, <laughs> the only reason. But yeah, this applies to the uh, OG and the uh, the new one, what Rags is about oh, to say, yeah. I assume. Uh, but yeah, like the in the original, for instance, uh, this is actually something that they fixed. A pro big problem in the original that they didn't have in the new one. Uh, in the original version, when you encounter Ashley in the church, this is the first time that you encounter. We're not gonna. Uh, this is the first time that you, you know, the player encounter Osman Sadler, the leader of this fine religious mm. community, and he tells you his spooky plan on the spot. Uh, and then uh, tries to kill them both. They narrowly survive being shot by crossbow bolts from cultists. The first time yes. you see the cultists. Um, this is a huge problem with the story. Osman Sadler should have never showed up at all. He shouldn't have told them the plan. He should have just literally done nothing and let them go. She would have been brought no, right. back to... What would have to... been better is if he's at the top of, like, he's someplace where he's distant. He goes, no, don't run away. No. <laughs> oh, good No, God. that's just what I don't want. Oh, I'm uh, going to get yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get you. Uh... And then Leon will be like, clearly he doesn't want us to leave, so we should probably leave. You know? That's just what he doesn't <laughs> want. It's so odd to be told throughout the game that his plan is to get the president's daughter back with, uh, uh, you know, the president to help take over the world and stuff, but then he keeps preventing Leon from leaving with Ashley, yeah. who is infected. And by the way, no way to get that parasite out of her by the time he gets her back to the to the president. Because uh, the only thing really they can use is actually on the, in this facility right now, which is what Luis yeah, lets him know about. radiation, and even then that has a time limit for how uh, long it's viable. But uh, mm -hmm. um, so what was your? Yeah. What were you saying that they've kind of corrected that? What were you going to say? So the correction by simply not having that happen, it's hmm. better. Uh, that's one correction. Uh, but I was mentioning the Mendez thing earlier. So everyone, Batoris Mendez is the village chief, and Mendez spares Leon's life, uh, pretty much. Um, uh, and I think that your buddy has accepted the gift. This will kind of segue into one of the biggest changes about the remake that I really, really like a lot. They played up the religious angle a great deal. Mm -hmm. Osman Sadler and the um, Los Illuminados, the plague, the, you know, the, the, the history of this religion, it doesn't come across as just a cult that wants to try and, uh, I guess especially Sadler specifically, doesn't come across as some maniac... Megalomaniac, whatever that word is. He comes across as a, a real believer in this re religion. This is, in essence, as real as a religion can get. Uh, it has a history. It has uh, ancient text. It has a history to it. It has uh, past leaders who are enshrined. Um, mm -hmm. It has rituals. It has you know a spooky castle full of cultists. And Sadler's references and how he talks to Leon and refers to the Plagas and what's happening are all, all very religious. His, I, his concept isn't really to rule the world so much as the religion needs to be spread to every person on the planet. Bring them, you know, um, salvation sort of thing. Yes. Um, even in the, the Mendez fight in the slaughterhouse, when, you, when you're having him as a boss fight, he's, you know, asking God to strike down the believer. He's saying that you've profaned the holy body. I mean, that's essentially what makes Sadler the most mad about anything else, is that you've, you've, you've explicitly gotten you it's like the most sacrilegious thing you can do in this religion is to remove the plagas from you and that's what throws sadler into his final fit of rage because the only thing worse than an enemy is uh, a, a traitor oh <laughs> a traitor <laughs> so um i really really like that um uh the way that mendes talks sadler talks the way that you know it's referred to Really, really dig it. The creepy, creepy religion cult angle. Super, super awesome change that I think they made. 
um also voice as yeah just because i uh, i wanted to mention it before we had jumped and i was a little bit late with this but what i was going to say in relation to the i thought maybe you'd mention as part of possibly the corrections i'm not going to make that bold of a claim it would have just been something else we'll have to talk about it as we go along but uh they they weren't quite done with ashley apparently so yeah. not letting leon run off with her seems in some way deliberate um she gets a little ritual where they pour i don't know if it's black mold or it's just black goo i don't know what it is into sort her, of. and uh, sadler says now she's like ready or something mm -hmm. so. and here's the thing i don't do you think that's fuel? Do you that, think it just like, kind of like fuels the uh, the plague ass? Oh, it could, well, I guess all I'm I, saying well, is here, that's enough for me to say why he didn't let her just fuck off straight away with Leon. Mm. I think that could be very much interpreted as a purely religious ceremony with no like actual plague ass changes. Um, in the same way that a Catholic is confirmed, or you have baptisms or things of that nature, this could be extremely similar in that regard. Where this is the thing that well, sort even of makes if you. It was superficial in terms of like a biological change. It would be something Sadler wanted for her before she leaves, right? Uh, yes, yes. Either way. So, that's, yeah. that's all I'm getting at in terms of it. Just helping out in terms of why he didn't let Leon run away. But, you know, I, I, I still think the story is, you know, <laughs> it's a bit... <laughs> it's, yeah, we need a it lot exists. of... We need some, a lot of tweaks and things of that nature. But, uh, again, I do think it's better. Uh, I, I really like, some, like I said, the playing up the cult angle a great deal. Um, I think it makes Sadler a more interesting villain, far more interesting villain. I think it makes Mendez a bit more interesting. Though he was similar in the first one, but n with all the work that they've done, it makes it a lot more compelling and believable. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, in, in that regard, really dig it. I really dig it. Um, do to not yeah? do, do go too like, hyper-robotic about it, we could start moving into characters of everyone wants, but if there's any events you yeah, want to talk just... about in between it, no problem, we can just bounce between them all. Um, yeah. In which case, I think we should talk first at the man of the hour himself, Mr. Leon S. Kennedy. What does everyone think about him as a person? What, what, what do you reckon? Uh, so, um, Leon is A-OK -okay with me. I don't know whether I like him more here or in the original. They're kind of different and yet the same, if mm. that makes sense. Um, I really miss several lines from the original. I was, about to say. I was about to yes. say that, too. Uh, we'll, we can probably... I don't know if we can talk about it now. We can get into the vibe sort of thing uh, later of the game. But there are indeed... The, his best line was cut, unfortunately. It was a real shame. Uh, but some of the ones they kept in was everyone going bingo, things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, some of the lines seem cheesy, but not in like a <laughs> ha-ha kind of way. They seem almost try-hardy and lame. I like um, him. The fact when he jumps out the window at the beginning, he's just like, uh, I'll let myself out. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> still... really good. And... <laughs> I disagree yeah. with the sentiment that he's lost his campiness. Like, he's still there. It's just died down. Um, it's, yeah, it's when, a when bit a, When the sister picks up the handle, he's just like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know he's yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like that. Light. It's like, yeah. great, no light. Well, I'd and like yeah, to reaffirm... Right. Hasta luego. Yeah, he never I... says hasta luego to Mendez. He does. Yes, he does. Oh, does he? He does, he? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I must have... I just, I just totally forgot. I totally forgot. Well, he also he says has to luego, yeah. I remember being surprised they kept that. I was like, oh, nice. And what he says um, to him once he's killed him was pretty badass as well. Um, send my regards to your god. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been a bit atheist, but fair enough. You know, given, uh, yeah, I, I, he's earned it. He could be Christian uh, saying that. See. He'd be like, fuck your god. <laughs> it's, it's a fake god. It's a bullshit god. I don't like your god. Um, Let me see. The uh, of course, as everyone knows, for I mean, everyone knows, but I'll say it anyway. The best line in Resident Evil Four was when Leon uh, was when when Leon falls down the pit in the castle, and Salazar says, "I've sent my right hand to dispose <laughs> of you," and Leon makes the classic quip, "Your right hand comes off." <laughs> a legitimately I, funny line yeah, that has brought amazing. me so much joy over the years that they foolishly did not include in this version. Yeah, yeah. They, genuinely sad, sad they left it out. So sucks because that line's just funny. We it's got sick. we got the you talk too much instead. And so you I was going to bring up that's pro possibly my favorite from this game. I was actually surprised that that even happened. I loved it. I thought it was great. Mm. Um, you talk trying to find much. it. But yeah, it was, it was such a just fun, and it definitely felt like a Leon thing too. Which, by the way, is why, I, like, stuff like that is why he is my favorite from Resident Evil. And I don't think there's much competition, <laughs> honestly. 
Oh, Leon, Leon's, I think, the best character Mercy game. Yeah, Leon in the original, I think, is definitely, uh, I like him the best. Well, is There's things I like about plenty of characters, but in the remake, he isn't my favorite, but I still do quite like him. I think he's a fine Leon. I think the it was can- in, the, in the original, Shinji Mikami sort of wanted to make Leon the, the bond of Resident Evil. There, there, are, there are a lot of sort of spy movie tropes that are in the original Resident Evil 4 that never really had a presence in the series prior to that, even though there is, there's always been an element of espionage with things like Umbrella and Ada. But uh, uh, Leon and Resident Evil 4, I thought, was the first time where it was like, we have a James Bond now. <laughs> Yeah, a suave secret agent. By the way, that um, think... that moment where he <laughs> shoots. Wait, go ahead if you want to go. say that. I just want to say quickly that I think the remake version of the character, the campiness, is obviously still there, but he has a weight to him now because he's bringing the trauma of the second game in with him, which I really liked. It feels like that's really weighing on him throughout the course of the game, and then you have that beat near the end where he's carrying <laughs> Ashley to the chair. So like this time it's gotta be different. Like this is I can finally redeem myself, it feels like because like I feel so horrible about what happened. Cause like And he in, goes second then. Uh, whereas in the first game he went first and then Ashley I thought went they second. changed that. Right. They did change that, so, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I thought that was a good I thought that was actually a good move. And yeah, well, I, 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 I certainly see Leon heavily motivated by the second game. Um uh, and so certainly uh, it does weigh on him, but at the same, you can see he's driven by that. And, and it th- he has that actually pretty good exchange with Ada in the speedboat, where she says, you just, you haven't changed. You just think you have, but he, mm-hmm. but ultimately he's, he is, he's that rookie cop that just wants to save as many people as possible. And, uh, and, and I like that. Uh, well, and I do like as well, like, you have that seriousness, but the you need the campiest side for this absolutely insane situation he is in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, uh, what a, what a roller coaster he goes through, and uh, I think he's, he's good company for it. I don't think he overbears in any way, and he doesn't interrupt anything in terms of what you might be feeling or thinking. It all uh, works out pretty well with hit. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, he doesn't, he just doesn't get in the way like a lot of uh, video game protagonists can, especially being this is a this is technically a modern game, <laughs> modern Resident <laughs> Evil game. Yeah, that? that's that's actually worth saying. Ethan Winters, I think, sucks. Uh, well, I Ethan Winters, shut sucks. up. Huh? Ethan Winters sucks, and I'm glad he's dead. It didn't happen soon <laughs> yeah, enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan Winters is a fucking moron loser. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you guys he's gone. The uh, Ethan's daughter DLC. I played enough. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Enough. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If it feels like Capcom doesn't know what they're doing with Ethan Winters at all, because I think he was intended as like a blank player insert character, but then like they're starting to give him a bit of lore and a bit of personality, but it's just not. There's nothing compelling about it. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a um, there's a core for Leon, and they played it up for this when they didn't yeah. necessarily have to. Uh, and by the way, this I was going to say, this scene where he, he shoots uh, Salazar, I was wondering if it was a bit of a con- like like a response to uh, a couple people would point out in the OG game when you go to that the first room where the ceiling's coming down, you got to shoot the little things to stop it. Um, that's introduced to you by Salazar. He's in the room with you. It's not a very big room. He's just there. After all the shit he's already put you through, he's, he's like making fun of you and stuff. And everyone was just like, why isn't Leon just shooting him? Right there, right now. He's like, he's right there. He's like the boss of the castle. He's he's trying to kill you, and he's he's just standing right there. So it felt to me when I was watching this, so I was like, oh, nice. He just shot him. <laughs> <laughs> like he's not even going to talk. She's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, um, yeah uh, and I think it's a good way to sort of set up him having to turn into a horrible monster as well, right? Like the bullets to the head yeah. falling off the platform. He'll he'll evolve as all Resident and evil bad guys do. I really, really liked when he shot Salazar. It felt so fitting. It's just like, yeah, I've got a gun. You're there. You're bad. I'm That's what I'm saying. You. Yeah, it felt you know, like it might have been a... It's like, yes, yeah, because there's so many times, so many times where you're just like, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, do it. You've got a gun. It's all set up for you. You've been given this this chance and you don't, you aren't taking it, you idiot. And he's, he fucking does it. It's almost Ooh. subversive in a way, but it's like, yeah, yeah good. Yeah, that's why I think it, it works mm-hmm. quite well. And it's a fun addition. It's also funny that uh, Salazar reacts when you shoot these little microphone thingies he uses. Like I he thought... starts trash talking you and you shoot them and then he stops and goes like, hey, hey, hey. 
because yeah, he knows I, you annoyed him. I like that he stops, but I was hoping to get just dialogue like the you, line, you piece of shit. Like you yeah. <laughs> They that was their chance to do the reference to the original game where Leon saves himself yes. in the pit and then shoots the microphone and you know Salazar goes ah yeah and then he says <laughs> you know, then tells his right hand to go and get it. he goes tells Vertigo to you know get him um, I thought that would have been a clever little reference if you you know heard him from the other end go ah yeah I thought it would, yeah um, it genuinely seems like a missed opportunity I don't I don't yeah you know, I'm not trying to be mean just yeah it, it is a missed mean. opportunity. Wrong to not include it, but that's all right. Um, so the, the, obviously on to... got tied in a bit for him with uh, with Krauser. They got their uh, it, Krauser's a pure invention for Resident Evil Four, right? Or does he show up in anything else? I don't he, think he, he shows well, up. He else. shows up in a. There's another oh. game that they have him in, so you actually get to see um, Operation Javier. Oh, okay. Is it what after? You... Did it come out? No, it came, I think, or... yeah, yeah, I think that came in what like 2012 or something. Okay. Yeah, you, Operation, what... okay, okay. Operation Javier, and, and he goes, he's with Krauser in uh, the jungle, and uh, it's like a first, per it's like a, not Sorry, like, a know. like a, like a, like a time crisis-ish first person. Oh, a wee zapper game. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, like okay. gun game, yeah. Um, like well, Resident Evil Survivor, like like that. And then you get the he controls. gets his arm. Krauser gets his arm uh, heavily injured in there, and he has to leave the army because of it afterwards. And you see when he's talking to Leon, he looks down. He's got the big scar on his arm from that uh, from that game. Um, so they do they do actually put that uh, make that reference. So they fleshed out. You know, they sort of filled in a gap. What eight years after the original Resident Evil Four? <laughs> yeah, like, and you know, they give you a a good rundown. He's not exactly very complicated. He's a guy who he's power. Power motivates him quite a bit because of the the events of that operation. And he's not very mm -hmm. doesn't mince words. Tells Leon pretty much just that. <laughs> it's like I like power. Fucking great. That was pretty cool. And that uh, about no arm. <laughs> Yeah, which, you know, <laughs> I kind of agree with Leon. It's like, I don't know, it seems like kind of a downgrade, honestly. It's a big spike. The question for a lot of Resident Evil bad guys, is it truly an upgrade? But it's still uh, having an enemy have a, a tie-in with the character that goes beyond just he's bad and you've got to stop him. But was um, that only Krauser's... I mean, we saw from Salazar, he goes... Uh, sorry, from Sadler. He goes completely mental at the end. Oh yeah, I, I have could, to assume. Could there have been further forms for for Krauser if he hadn't have got put down early? Probably, and I have to assume there's a mental aspect to it. it must feel really good or something, because you know, like <laughs> they look a little funky. Uh, a lot of the creatures that get made by the Resident Evil stuff. Um, well, uh, I don't know if everyone wants us to do this or not, but like, do we need to do like a is he better or worse overall, or should we just uh, move on? You know. Uh, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I feel a bit indifferent about him. I think I like the the VA from the old one a bit better because it's more campy. I think it was a bit more over the top. Um, that's about um, it. I have like no. I, heart, I like no. the that in this game he feels like a guy who really is trying his hardest. Whereas I would, I got the impression in the original that he is so like relaxed and chill about everything. Mm. I, I yeah. found him very funny in the original, but like I buy into him and uh, like uh, this version of Leon Moore as like a person, especially like w with what John said about uh, the weight of his of of, yeah. the, of how he f he feels like he failed in Raccoon City and that the the real motivation to succeed and win this time, like to save to save someone. I, 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 I like him more as, like, a, a character. I would say that I think the OG one is funnier, though. <laughs> I think I agree <laughs> with that. He's a funny guy. Yeah, I think freaking nailed really it. Really funny guy. Leon, like Leon's my, my favorite Resident Evil character, and after this game, he's still my favorite Resident Evil character. Also, but, but I was yeah. talking about Krauser just now. I, I meant Krauser. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I think Krauser is... Uh... Well, wait. Krauser. Wait. We're not going to do Krauser yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I thought, I thought okay. you bought Krauser. No, I, I, I like... Uh... Like him in here better, uh, Leon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rags, what do you think? Uh, I. Oh, Hello? sorry. Go ahead. Oh wait, John, if you want to go, I was because making sure everybody had to take on the the Leon thing. That's all. Uh, uh, just to add to what Fringy said, uh, I agree. Uh, but I also find him really funny in this as well. There's some dialogue in this that I think is fucking hilarious. Like the 
when you first go into the castle, Lewis, I think he asks if you've left yet. And he's like, we were going to, but Ashley just had to see the I castle for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that that's yeah. great. That, yeah, no, that's, he, it's funny in a way that he might actually crack a joke like that because the situation's so dire just to like alleviate the tension. And yeah, it was just like such a, it's the d- delivery, I guess, was dry. Uh, well, I think the, the guy who, who plays him in this one does a really good, like he does a good job at, like as an, an as an actor, I would say, compared to the original, the line delivery is great, but it's hilarious, you know? Like, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's sort of a different kind of character, almost like the original was a guy who's just given a middle finger at all the craziness and mm-hmm. he's embraced its madness and he's just fighting back against it. And this one's a bit more weighted and... Uh, I don't know how else to describe well, it. Um, the jokes feel like the kind of the jokes that someone would make in a situation just to like lighten the mood compared to in the original where it feels like he's performing for me. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like he's actually performing to me. Like I'm watching a film and he's there as an entertainer. I love that all the cultists basically refer to the Plagas as the holy body just to set up Leon for that one liner at the end where he says, I'll give I you a holy body. I don't think it's just a setup for that one line. I he think that give it's you a hearing, holy body. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. I, I think it's, uh, I think it's just part of a larger change that they made to really play up and focus more and, and, and really big up the religious element. Uh, and that comes through in the dialogue a great deal, the way that they reference it um, as they would, if it was real. Oh, um, sure. I mean, it makes sense that they would call it that. Yeah. I, I just, I love that it also works as that, that. I setup. do too. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, uh, it was, it was, it's a good line. It's a really good line. It's no right yeah. hand comes off, but it's damn good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Would you like to move to the next being Ashley? Ashley's way better. Leon. Um, well, so that if we can set the table in terms of uh, Ashley in the classic games, uh, often cited back in the day as one of the more annoying uh, people who were added into the to a game. I think a lot of people who are familiar with the OG game are more so just like, she's not that bad. She's okay. I, yeah, I'm going to defend OG Ashley, but I think people who play up how annoying she is and they hate her segment and it's like a babysitting game, I think you're being unfair. I don't think it's that big of a oh, deal in the original I, game. I, I, I don't know if we're talking about like the gameplay stuff or the narrative stuff. I guess because like gameplay. Feels well, I was like talking. Different... I was. I was kind of a little bit of both. I suppose a little bit of both. there. Yeah. Um, yeah oh, well, how, I would uh, say you know. playing it the first time, I definitely because I'd always heard the meme that people didn't like those sections. I don't really get it um, with the original, mm-hmm. but like as a character, she's way better here. Well, so <laughs> well, that's what I meant about setting the setting the thing. So like you you have a being known for being kind of like whiny and the mechanically speaking, she feels like a drag to a lot of people. I think if you play the game a lot, that's just not the case. As soon as you know how to use it, especially in the OG game, uh, you'll be fine. You'll, you'll have no trouble. As for her narratively, I mean, yeah, it can be a little bit grating to hear. Leon! Leon! It's like very The impression nasally. you get with the white... She seems annoyed uh, like yes. more than anything. And I, never, the... I never minded her in the first game. I thought she was fine. I tolerated her. Vo- fine. Her voice was a little bit pitched, but... Uh... yeah. In in this one, she's uh, she's ten times better, and she actually has a bit of a a bravery arc. You know, wouldn't necessarily yeah. a yeah. story arc, but she certainly has a bravery arc where she starts off by barely wanting to jump out the window. And I think I think a big part of that when she threw herself out the window and uh, and they only caught her, they, we just have that little pause. I think we just got a a, a little bit of uh, realization that this person is is gonna. Yeah, Leon's got her. me. Yeah, yeah he's. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she just I, gets increasingly. I mean, the great. I mean, Mo, I think Mauler and I've discussed this, but uh, <laughs> when he turns around the corner and they're all going into the church, and then you you can start that event off, and then she's just like, "What is wrong with these people?" <laughs> like, cracks yeah. me up every time. I just laughed, and then you know, at the towards the end, um, you know, we 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 have some little great moments with her and. Uh, she talks, uh, you know, I, I don't take her seriously for one moment, but she's like, hey, maybe I could, you know, become an agent. We can protect the the, the US from all threats. And, you know, I just saw that as her her just kind of getting a little bit uh, more confident, more confident, more comfortable with uh, with with certainly Leon helping as well. And I just think it kind of boosted her. And, and uh, yeah, I, I liked uh, it, I think it culminated well in the fact that she shoots the Granadas behind him. 
when when they're being because it just shows a bit of uh, strength of willpower back from from Ashley, who was at the beginning just completely uh, complete wreck. Um, I would say, um, I uh, I assume it's more opportunities to sort of uh, have agency and like help Leon. I mean, the big one that was pointed out earlier was changing the nice order. Pun, of Fringy. I didn't mean to do that. If whatever it was, <laughs> um, agency. She shows more agency. She wants to be a secret. She wants to be oh, an agent. Sure. I, I, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one then. I guess. Um, Pretty good. Yeah. Like, she she gets a lot of opportunity, like to help Leon, and they sort of increase in terms of like the value of it from like originally. I think breaking the window so he could escape the big tall guy, which is what I keep calling Windows, him in the yeah. barn. And uh, she and opened up the house up door the and compelled them to leave as well, right? Like yeah. that's her doing something. And, uh, and then it all leads to her saving Leon's life in the end after he saved hers. It's like they, they have a relationship that yeah. it's it's sort of like helping each other out. It, I, I way more buy them having a connection. Um, yeah, we had the, and, we had the good but, moment where, where Leon Leon's talking to Ashley and he says to her, we can't, we can't run. We have to face this. We can't run. Yeah. And then when Leon gets trapped in the cave, and he's like, run! And, and then she runs through the door, and then she kind of like pauses, just like, I won't run. No, and then gonna you, yeah, because she's going to try and save Leon. And then I was like, I like those. Those moments are good. I think they're good character moments. Yeah, I no, buy I into her as like a real person in this one way more than in the original of like genuine terror at the situation that she's in, which is why it's, it's so like rewarding and satisfying narratively for her to sort of overcome those fears and become a more, uh, active participant in the story i just i just buy into her way more as a person i like her a lot i mean i i, I was gonna echo the whole like i'm totally fine and tolerant of of og ashley but i think this voice actress is just a strict upgrade way better yeah way better yeah, yeah. yeah. I think way more range. Range for leon when he's getting shot or something it's just yeah, range, yeah, like, like the health. voice crack when she's been carried happens, away like, damn mm -hmm. It was quite, yeah, uh, yeah, just... quite shocking when you die for the first few times listening to her, like a woman, sound like she's just lost someone incredibly important to her and she's just cried her eyes out and screaming. You're like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah, it's like, damn. <laughs> I'm sorry I died. I'll try not yeah. to next time. I'm sorry. I'll try to <laughs> not die again. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> um, yeah, I did a great job. Yeah. And Absolutely. The, the, the arc that this character has, I think, is appropriate and expected. Like, being the president's daughter, she would have a very sheltered, protected existence not very worldly and then all of a sudden she's in like the worst situation ever and there's a li nice little moment where you're you're in like the sewage part and you're crouching around in the sewage water she's like uh i'm fine but like before this this would have killed me like yeah, yeah. she's just yeah. like she would have been so grossed out before like appalled but now she's like she's in the muck and she's stronger you know she doesn't mind Compared it's to everything like... else I've been dealing with for the last 24 hours, this is not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even poo water. Yeah. This, <laughs> is <not bad. laughs> this is not a regenerator. Um, or the worst. She uh, just overall felt like it was, uh, they, they tried to not only flesh her out as a person, but also the relationship she has with Leon. The, uh, yeah. Felt like they put way more dialogue into the game in general to boost the two of them and their chemistry, which was really cool. Just a couple of casual lines while you're doing whatever, and they, they talk, and you're just like, ah, oh, kind of neat. Uh, the one I use as reference usually is when they walk into the castle, she sees a bunch of armors, which is a fun way, like, her pointing it out as something you can wear is fun for uh, the fact that that's her special suit sort of thing you'll be wearing if you want to achieve higher ranks, but also because um, she said she'd think he'd look dashing in them. Dashing, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very much, just, just smoother and it's, slower it's way of developing it. Do you think that's a cheeky reference to how she can wear armor in, uh, in the original? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, I said, Cause, yeah. Because she's, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what he yeah. just said. <laughs> All right, well, so pr I probably yeah. think that, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Confirma confirmation that you're correct, yes. Uh, and, they, and she does, uh, she does some, right. uh, she does some overt in the original, but uh, she does some very subtle flirting with with Leon in this. Yeah, um, as it goes on, and even at the end, we don't get the "Hey, do you want to come back and fucking plow my field?" <laughs> we, but, <laughs> but we get, we you know, we get. Hey, I could put a word in with my dad. He could get put on my detail, and you know that's her. Thing. He went, he, he'll put he, on we, detail. That's yeah, right. yeah, we, we, we can know get closer together means. if you want. I, you know, so it's just, I think they did that, they handled the, the little flirting bits and 
you know, he'll catch her at times and she'll just go like, skills? Uh, and still, yeah. you know, it's just, just kind of like yeah. quaint, be mm. cute. Uh, um, it's, it's clearly, it's clearly the, um, the, the, the sort of, not obsession, but it's, it's clearly the, a, a girl who's, who's, uh, being saved is, is going to, I don't quite know what the technical term is, where you start to have, worth fighting for. well, where you start to have feelings towards the, the protector, but the sort of there in the moment uh, and they, they probably will dissipate. Stockholm as, uh, Syndrome. Well, it's not stopping. I mean, no, that's, that's, that's your enemy, kidnapper. not your. Not yeah. Your, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the reverse Stockholm syndrome, but uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a little bit of infatuation, you know, in mo momentary infatuation because you got this dashing guy, and so she does a little bit of flirting, and that's that's all good. But you know, you know that Leon Leon likes a bit of Ada. I did mention oh, this yeah. to him, and uh, something I forgot to mention was that Man, I think they kept up Leon's badassery in this game uh, pretty well, in terms of just, it's fun. You can believe this guy is actually someone who may actually be able to get through this scenario, and um, uh, one of the cutscenes I, I would always reference for is just the, the way he takes out, like, I think it's just three Godados, but he's trapped in the cage. He mm -hmm. manages to make it look exceptionally, like, talented on his part. Mm. Like, um... Putting a knife in one's skull to drag him around as a meat shield and then shoot others and then, you know, use cover, keep an eye on the ones that are crossbowing. It's just like, hey, I kind of do that when I play it. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. that. That was badass in that cutscene. I really like that, too. It was, and it makes you think, like, oh, they could probably make this work as a movie. And you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've tried three times. I just wish uh, Ashley's uh, running animation was a little less... A little less uh, Japanese girly. Girly. <laughs> yeah. they, they do overtly make her um, seen as a sorority girl, though, when you see her phone. She's got, like, the Greek letters yeah, on Yeah, yeah, she's got the gamma, yeah. kappa, whatever. Well, like, just oh, yeah, so you yeah, know, yeah. everybody, she's in college. Olay. She's legal. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's legal, guys. You can, you can have your fantasies. According to... Uh, oh, wait, what were you going to say? I'm not saying that's. I think it's just strict up, a strict upgrade uh, across the board. Ashley, uh, yes. yeah, a lot more, uh, a lot more to her. Better voice oh. actor. And it wasn't just actress. a mobile phone. It was, it was her moto. It was her razor. Yeah, razor, razor, yeah. razor, razor. It was a razor, man. Oh. appropriate phone. Yeah, everyone yeah. had those razors. No, I didn't. Oh, I wanted. I never wanted not one. Me. I never, yeah, I never. Not me. I didn't get to have a. I had that Nokia 3330 or whatever that every fucking other poor person had. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> phone. Going around killing people with it. Brick phone. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I next up. I inherited my dad's oh. Motorola Razor, but it was after they were cool. I was like, oh, oh damn it. No Guys, look, anymore. I got it now. It's like, fuck off, John. It's like, oh. <laughs> Not going in any particular order, really, but um, I think I tried to guess Not this by, by like... appearance, right? Yeah, well, in any case. Luis! Why don't we talk about him next? Oh, awesome. Awesome. Upgrade. Luis. Awesome. Uh, the real really hero cool upgrade. The, uh... Does anyone think he was downgraded? No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> No. I'm just curious if anyone does. That's all. He he be rapidly became one of my favorite characters of the uh, of the game, and I loved it. It's just it's like, I, Leon, I've made a mistake. Come save me, Prince Charming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, yeah, he's yeah, really so good. good. He's, he's just excellent, and I I really prefer his. Uh, the way he goes out in this one oh, as compared yes. to the first one. Yeah. He, he had yeah. a lot more meaning and and uh his little speech with you, to uh, to Leon at the end was great. Now that we have this version to compare, the OG one's kinda weird. It's like it's Leon, weird. I have the sound ah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, leave him alone with Ashley. Yeah, <laughs> it's kinda like, oh, and there that's he what goes. I wouldn't do with the first one. Um and I feel like we got to know him a little bit better, and good god, what an excellent choice to do Leon and him have a few adventures before he gets killed. Yes. Excellent yeah. choice. Yeah. yeah, killing the duo gigante with him and then have a little dialogue. Where you're just like, Oh yeah, I regret the helping those guys this whole time, so I maybe get a little bit of uh of well, doing good the, the well, great by story of you. Lewis so, is Lu the, Lewis is from the village. He's actually from the village. He's the grandkid. Uh, that's being referred to in the in the notes, the old man notes. He's the grandkid, and uh, he leaves. Was... The, he leaves the village and joins Umbrella. Then he goes and comes back, and 
becomes part of the Illuminatus, uh, Illuminati or whatever, and, and then, you know, again, realizes his mistake twice over. He's actually part, if you look at, if you look at the photograph in his lab, uh, he's actually part of the Nemesis program. So he, uh, he was, he was uh, part oh, of, uh, was. Okay. yeah, he's part of the, uh, the group that, um, that, uh, that created the Nemesis in Resident Evil uh, 3. That's pretty cool. I missed that. Um, so, so uh, yeah, there's, there's like, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, he's, he's a village boy. That's why he's here. It's like, what, what is this guy doing here? You know, apart from, because if he's an ex-member, why is he still hanging around and all this? But no, he, uh, he's actually from the village and, and a uh, small boy when his grandfather died from a, an infected um, wolf bite. Um, yeah, went off to, uh, to join Umbrella. And then, oh, I remember that story. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, I think is another, it's like another, um, in the original, we learned that, uh, I think Mendez was talking about, you know, how Luis is causing problems with their plan. And he said, in a note from the original, says something along the lines of, he's getting around using old hunting paths his grandfather taught him. Mm. So the fact that they have his grandfather dying after like a hunting trip is like a little like, oh, okay. Mm. There you go. Little nod. So there's 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 more to Lewis than this, which is when you when you get into those little snippets and you see those little extra bits, uh, it just adds a bit more to to why he's he's so desperate to make amends and and mm -hmm. uh, yeah and yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's gonna come as a bombshell. Uh, Resident Evil doesn't really get to me at all in terms of uh, emotional. Uh, I'm also just like, oh, there that goes. That's that. There's this. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, but, uh, it, goes, that Resident that Evil had. often gets to me emotionally. I get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sad for myself, where my life's led me. Um, but, but not only was I kind of getting into it with the fun adventure, especially on the fucking uh, minecart section. Just the two yeah. of them. It seems like such an absurd moment, and they're both just fucking it's go great. with it. It's yeah. just fun. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, but then yeah, when he pulls the uh, the break and it snaps, and he's yeah. just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks at him like, oh, <laughs> what we, nothing we can really got, do now. I um, got the break, as you said. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should reminded me a lot of the Rock. You know, the Nick Cage and uh, Sean yeah, Connery, yeah. literally in the minecart. Um, and overall, like just like the sort of act campy action tone, like the fight with Krauser, that reminded me of The Rock as well. But uh, yeah, I, um, I was lucky enough to not know what was going to happen. I was playing this and I didn't know what changes they were going to make. I actually had no idea he was going to be dying necessarily. I wasn't sure exactly what they were going to do because he'd been in so much more of the game up to this point. That I was like, I don't know. I could do anything. I, I was sure he was going to die, but because they had essentially back uh, put Sadler on the back pedal for this version. Uh, I didn't see him dying to Sadler, or he would have died at the end to Sadler. But when we came out the the lift, and as soon as he turned around and started speaking, I was like, "Oh, this is his. This is where he's going to die." It looks like a death shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the, and, yeah, this, yeah. And he goes, and, 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 and it's like, oh, yeah. there he goes. Oh, there he goes. There goes Lewis. Oh. And uh, yeah, I think it was an excellent change to have Krauser kill him instead of Sadler. Actually, yeah. Um, it, oh yeah, it and the great the Krauser great line from Sadler there. Uh, sorry, the great line from Krauser there, where he's just like, uh, you know, just you know, kill it, click, you know, cleaning up some business and taking care of a few rats. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they're referring to obviously Lewis as a rat, as somebody who's given them away is is been a traitor them. to them. So yeah, yeah, it's like that's that's a good line. That's actually a good line from Krauser. Yeah. Yeah, and then to top it off, being that um, you know, you and Krauser are getting into it, and uh, he shoots Krauser's blade, just as a last sort of gasp thing. It's just like, oh, look at him to the end, still helping. Mm, yeah, it, uh, I think that it gives it. It means that his story feeds much more directly into the main narrative, and particularly motivations for Leon and Ashley. Um, yes, you know, like culminating in the end, and then of course it gives Krauser a little bit more of a direct connection to the. It just gives him a little bit more of a personal connection in the story too. Yeah, you yeah, really like, want to. You really want to kill better. Krauser. Well, there's, yeah, a, there's he, that lovely bit Luis. where um, charming Louise, where uh, when when Leon goes and uh, rescues Ashley in the prison cell, and she says, uh, "Where's Louise?" And he says, yeah. "He he was really worried to you up to the end." And he does that pause, and then as she's mm -hmm. actually getting up, because because uh, Leon said, "Can you stand?" Before that, she's standing. He's like, "Can you stand?" And she's standing. Go, where's Louise? And then she's like halfway up, and then he says that, and she just sinks back down again onto the bed. And I was like, "That's really well done." 
Yeah, that's actually really well done. I really she, appreciate she kind it. Of feels feels the weight mm. in in Leon's voice there, and it's like, and then she's like, for Louise, and he's like, Louise. Yeah, him. Uh, his good. his death scene's my favorite oh, scene in the game, right. probably. Let's find out how. Let's find out how you guys, if you guys really cared about him. All right. Let's, let's do the, the true test of whether you cared about him. Uh -oh. Did you sell his key? Oh, of course I did. Of course I'm a bitch. <laughs> Whoa, he would he would want you to never, after you used it. Never. He would want you to. I'd never I need sell it. It's a, tre Rex. it's a treasure. I'll I will take it to my grave. <laughs> now, do you know what they should have let you keep? His lighter. Now, would I have sold his lighter? That's a different kettle of fish. They should probably give me more stongs. Fuck yeah, what a I think it was, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> how much is the worth? <laughs> yeah. Me and I was chat about this, I want to say a couple days ago or so, but uh just the idea that this would have been the perfect time to introduce Molotovs, giving him yes. giving us the lighter and saying, like, you can now make Molotovs or whatever, and just you know, make Ooh, it about yeah, whatever resource idea. you can collect. Like Replace yeah. the incendiary grenades. Molotovs are really good in this game when you shoot them at Edwy's hands. They are quite good. Mm. Uh yeah, not just the Molotovs, but the burning oil lamps. Good crowd yeah. control as well. It would have been a nice Those little are... crowd control weapon. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of work went into like modeling and damage and stuff for fire on enemies. So yeah. it's a damn shame we didn't get, you know, like incendiaries. Um, I think that would have been nice to have had those as an option. A, a decent damage over time, potential stun. Um, mm, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, we'll fight too. just to get a little bit into the, you know, gameplay elements, but enemies mm. have to stay inside of the fire. For a long enough time to actually catch fire, yeah. Um, and uh, and same thing to you. You don't just start. You just you don't just just light up like you're made out of gasoline. <laughs> whenever you get within you know walking distance of fire, you have to actually like be in it. Um, otherwise, you just sort of it slows you down a little bit. Um, you have to. But, <clears throat> yeah, would have been really cool to introduce. Uh, yeah. So overall, uh, I think they've improved him. I think they've made mm. his impact in the story bigger. I think that they actually took advantage and made the sequences funner with him actually having been there. But then there's also mm -hmm. just, uh, he mattered more to the characters, as far as I could tell. And reasonably so. Like, he's with them for longer. They're more clear on exactly what uh, his integration with all this was. And he, like, he's clearly, it's just, it's just I, I, I think they made it more streamlined to the point where, uh, looking back on the OG one, I think Luis's participation was always a little bit off and that everyone has said like hopefully they give him more time hopefully they give him more time and they did and it yeah. was really cool oh, he was yeah. killed off too early in the first one for sure yes for sure yeah because uh, on the original only... he was killed um about the uh, about three-fourths two-thirds way through the castle or so and he's killed yeah. by saddler Saddler, uh, yeah, yeah. And Saddler's just casually walking around in the castle and he's right there and he's just like gotcha yeah. bitch and you're like oh shit okay yeah <laughs> Yeah, once once uh, Luis sees you and he's like, I've got the I've got the you know thing, got the mm -hmm. sample. But they kind of what what was a nice little nod to that though is Luis did get killed by a an object through the through the back. It is a it nice was, little nod to the original. Yeah. You're right. I agree. Yeah, I mean they so kept, they, that. They kept <laughs> that bit. They kept that bit, Sarah. Um, but yeah, this the whole final confrontation, uh, the, the final conversation they have, him finally getting a smoke. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Just the voice actor was really, really good. I mean, mm -hmm. he looks, you know, yeah. obviously he's animated really well. You know, his involvement in the story and how, you know, he, he's very, very standoff, or Leon is very standoffish towards him at, uh, you know, at the front and then the, by the end, you know, it's a very solemn, sad thing. It's a great way really for Really like it. Really like it. When he goes out, he's not, you know, he's come across in a couple of parts as selfish. We know that's bravado. We know that's bravado. Uh, so at the end, where he's just like, hey, Leon, do you believe people can change? I thought it was such a great, such a great thing, because his final thought on this planet was, have I, have I redeemed myself? Yeah, it's yeah. really good stuff, considering how yeah. limited oh. his time is. Really solid. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, huge upgrade for Luis. Very happy. Pour one out for Luis Sara Navarro. He was a real one. Adios, amigos. And so someone I can't remember if... I can't remember if in the original they were explicit about uh, whether Louise had like good or bad intentions, but I really liked at the end of this game they made it very clear with the notes in the little chair lab. Like there's that cool staff photo, and like uh, and then like you, it's very clear like oh god he did this terrible thing he was a part of it and he feels awful and he wants to fix it and you're like he was a good guy after all. 
Like, yeah, that was the, that... the Europe Six picture. That was the okay. Nemesis, the Nemesis project. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Huh. I missed the so Nemesis he, part. Yeah, he was part of the Nemesis project. That's awesome. Um. Well, so he does have a a part in what happened in Raccoon City. Right. He does indeed. What mm. better time to now compare oh, someone for else? Fuck's sake. Uh, boo! Boo! Why don't we talk about Ada? Ada Wong. Mm. Let's talk uh, about Ada. Ada. Let's, start it. Let's talk about uh, all about Ada. Much Ada about. No. I don't know. <laughs> That character model is insanely one. incredible, and yes. holy yeah. shit, <laughs> sure that's where it begins and ends on incredible. I was I was really curious to know if they'd keep the skimpy red dress because it always seemed strange and out of place, you know. Hey, um, especially with the neck her. thing, I was <laughs> I guess I was just like that's that's kind of weird that you dressing like that, you fucking whore. But in the new version, <laughs> there is this, it, yeah, like they kept the red. It's pretty tight. You know, she got the leggings. It looks like, you know, proper sweater. So I was mm. really like, oh, she looks great. I mean, the model looks great. The, you know, mm. the outfit really, uh, really, really dug it. And then she started speaking. Oh, <laughs> and that's so when everyone went, first... wait a minute. You sound so the... different. So I think the first time we see Ada in a conversation is with Luis. Um, yes. when he's talking with her at the boulder. Yumbo. And yes. so when I first heard uh, Luis uh, and Ada talking, first time I heard Ada talking, I didn't really, I wasn't, you know, I was like, oh, okay, this is, I guess she's talking specifically to Luis. Um, maybe she just has this flat standoffish kind of tone with him in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, okay, you know, it, it doesn't hit you at first. And then that's how she always talked. And that was, uh, what a shame. What a shame, because boy, what a what a terrible voice actress. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, lady, whoever you are. But well, she was sucked. the she <laughs> was the woman who played Ada Wong in Welcome to Raccoon City, mm -hmm. and they gave oh. her the voice acting role for this Welcome to Raccoon City, a film with a budget of fifty million that lost money, uh, it, forgotten about afterthought now in the resident evil world with leon singh kennedy race change jill valentine trying to mix together the first and second games and just making it into some sort of you bold disaster uh but she was the one who played ada wong in that and i'm just like why why would you do that what was wrong with the ada wong actress for the resident evil 2 remake nothing nothing <laughs> yeah, nothing no, at all well, maybe there's some you know, behind the scenes reason that we won't find out about or something? Because I don't know. Find about it now. No, I mean, all I know, this may or may not have anything to do with it, but all I know is she's a legitimate Asian actress, and all the other women who have voiced Ada have been just regular white women, not been Asian actresses. That could be why. So, so it could be why. It might not be why, but that's the only the only thing I can even remotely think of is. Is that? But it was a terrible it was choice. A union related. I've seen a lot of people like... mention union stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. um yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some. Uh, boy, same... what a terrible actress. Well, so yeah, yeah I mean, it's, um, like, like, it's unfortunate to say, or... but listening to her in the scenes, it would it would yank me out. So I'm 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 less so yeah. listening to what people are saying. I'm also like, wow, that delivery. Wow. Let's yeah, let's hear it's another robotic. one. It's so robotic. It's like, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm reading my line. It's like, oh man, it's one... like. Ugh. I think the worst one is in the uh, in the prison cell when Ashley's just been released from the prison cell from with Leon, and then Leon calls her up on the radio, and he's like, uh, "I guess I owe you one or something," and you just get that like five second pause. It's like okay, and then she goes, "Yeah, you do." <laughs> I guess. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> also, to to address it, because I know people would be saying, there's, there's some people in the world who are saying, and uh, you know, it's it's not without merit at all that she is deliberately delivering this. Uh, in I, I hesitate to use the word deadpan because it makes it sound like yeah, deliberately it was, it was like deadpan. I, saying, I thought yeah. that that was the intention at first. You know that because she is talking to Luis, he hasn't fulfilled his end of this bargain. She's maybe a little frustrated with him. Maybe she doesn't like him. Um, so you know. That is okay, but that ever that was every line. That was with every character. Yeah, as I, always. I think there's some lines I would defend uh, happily with that logic, but yeah, I, I give up when there's there's some lines. I'm trying to find examples from uh, cause when she when he talks to her again in the boat. I remember when I was recording this, I was listening to it. I was like, what the fuck. 
<laughs> yeah. Why does she say these things this way? Um, it sounds like you got something to say to me. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Many things, actually. Yeah. I would like to tell you to shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who are you? Who, what are you done with Ada? Yeah, because Ada, uh, I'd always remembered her as being a lot more, um, I don't know, flirty almost. And, and not even yeah, necessarily yeah, in like, the no, words. Flirty and, and confident. And, yeah. yeah. And that is not. That is not what was like. Okay, let's just say, for argument's sake, with Louise, she wants to be standoffish. It's business. She wants the the uh, the sample of the plagas. Uh, so she's a bit standoffish with him. But when it comes to Leon, she should have been a completely different person when it came to Leon. We would we should have seen a a, a, a much different side to to Ada. We should have seen that much more flirtatious side because. She probably still believes that she can manipulate Leon. Now, we can have Leon respond to her however we want after that. But she should have, we should have seen the differences of the way that she manipulates or deals with people because of the nature of Ada Wong. And we didn't get that at all. We just got this monotone, deadpan monstrosity. <laughs> well, do you want to, um, I think, John, do you feel uh, otherwise? No, I don't oh, agree. It, it didn't. It didn't really bother me. But I, I see where you guys are coming from. I mean, it is kind of a flat, I guess, unenthused, maybe not uh, in a an inappropriate lack of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. But I kind of prefer a more like grounded delivery over, like, say, the originals Ada, where it's very like Jessica Rabbit, like, "Hey there, handsome." Like, really? I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, I like, way prefer her being like that, like that with Leon. Boy. Like, look, look at look at the Resident Evil 2 remake. When Ada first meets Leon in that, she's actually quite forthright because she's trying to portray this FBI agent. I so think she's she, like, she kisses him in that game too, doesn't she? Yeah, There's when when scene. when yeah, but that's just it. She starts off very forthright, but then when she realizes that Leon could be a good asset, a valuable asset for her, she starts to mm -hmm. warm to him and become more flirtatious to the point where when he's going down uh, the car into the lab. She actually kisses him, right? And and so so uh, you know there's the, there's a big sort of uh, evolution in the way that Ada has seen and responded to Leon in Resident Evil Two Remake to to this where it's no jeez man no yeah like I said I I buy it if, it if she spoke that way with just Luis or even Krauser I think she speaks to right at one point um mm. but not Leon. <laughs> like no I want a bit more life uh in the delivery which of course you're saying uh you see it as very deliberate right on behalf of the character and the the voice actress um i just but she's legitimately wanting leon to go with her at the end she's legitimately wanting that she doesn't think he's gonna That's, do it that was the one i forgot it she's before she leaves she says uh she's supposed to say don't think Can too I mean? hard handsome and she oh. says like don't think too hard handsome it's like, oh. Oh. it's such I mean, I an obvious some... line to be played, like, flirtatiously, and she delivers it like a rock. Like, My some research of these has issues... shown this is how humans communicate. <laughs> I think <laughs> some of these issues being brought up, some of them are writing, some of them are voice acting. I'm not really sure, like, what exactly, like, if we're just focusing on one I had is, it was very hard for me to latch on to like who Ada was in this because the delivery was often so monotone. Like I don't, I don't really have a good read on who she is as a person mm -hmm. compared to someone like Ashley, for instance, who it's like it's pretty obvious like who she is and how she feels in any given moment. I think uh, the performance kind of obfuscated Ada's character for me. I just didn't get a good read on on her, which is different from a uh, RE2 remake, which is the I didn't play the original Resident Evil 2. Whereas I got much more of a clear read on who Ada was. Which was more of that, um, she starts off kind of, uh, not really wanting to talk to Leon at all, and then as the relationship progresses and as you sort of get layers of manipulation going on with her, like, yeah, I definitely get more of the impression that she's, um, she's more emotive than she was here. I mean, right. she was more emotive, and I, I feel like she should be more emotive than she was. Like, I, n I never get the impression that Ada was, like, flat as a character. I got. I oh. get the impression that she's very confident and well defined. Yeah, you know, so Ada's is a great like what character. What she wants and will work towards achieving those goals, and it just doesn't correspond here with the performance. Mm. She's a good, think, Ada is an awesome character. Yeah, Absolutely cool awesome character. She uh, and her and Leon operate so well together. Uh, and like I said, the character model in this is 
sublime for Ada. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Incredible. Yeah. And it's just, just it's, it's the that delivery. Mix of practical and it's still a nod to the original red. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like it. She's very confident in her body to wear something like that, you know? And she's, she's uh, hot. I really, like, I really dig it. Yeah. Uh, really Ada's hot. Oh, really? Ada's fucking super uh, hot. Had, I, I had as hot as Nobody noticed. It's okay. I had to point it out. Uh, well, one thing, my reaction to her voice was kind of interesting, too, because I remember thinking, how, she doesn't really sound like Ada Wong to me, but she sounds exactly like she sounds a, like a wrong <laughs> no she sounds like real uh, chinese canadian i guess girls that i know and wow. then i How found out chinese she, canadian girls do you know quite a lot uh, but here, the kind of funny really? thing is i found but out his that wife she, for one of them anyways there's a lot of the thing i found out though is that this actress lily gao is from toronto so she's from my city so she sounds like a Chinese girl with a Toronto accent, and that's kind of why. What I, is a Toronto <laughs> accent? I, I suppose somewhere hey, buddy. between where how I sound and how she <laughs> sounds with a bit of Cantonese hey, slid in there. As well. Hey, friend. You've got I'm new buddies, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess like uh, we we do always say things like that, buddy. Hey, guy. To be honest with you, Mark, yeah. I feel the hey, emotion friend. whenever X Ray talks. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that's true. Although, I mean, she doesn't to me sound like the type of person I'm referring to. She sounds more like a Person. valley girl, I guess. Oh. Who refers more to their wife, uh, Mark or Ben Shapiro? <laughs> oh, uh, I, I'm in the running for sure. My wife's an X Ray. Yeah. My Good wife's stuff. an X Ray machine. Um, she just she radiates is? joy. Don't think too hard, buddy. <laughs> so much that. Yeah, that would have been a funny little line. I'm not your guy, buddy. So, is there anything else that anyone guy, wants to say friend. about uh, about Ada? I'm worried um, nah. we're going to get the DLC with her now, and it's just like we can have that voice actress <laughs> uh, doing the DLC. Getting, uh, is there going to be Ada DLC? Ways. As far as I'm aware, separate ways is definitely on the way. So, uh, I oh, hope okay. Capcom and the actress go separate ways. <laughs> Was well, that confirmed? Because I never saw that. I've, I've seen several people say that it's, it's it was found in whatever evidence to imply it in the game files, but I can't I say could that. Believe I could believe with how well been the data mined. Yeah, it's been data mined. It. I mean, why wouldn't you with how much money this game has made? It's in separate ways of assignment ADA. Maybe yes, you know, I, am. I think it's a good idea for them to release DLC eventually for this. Yep. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's a very yeah. good idea. But it's great. I mean, and also we had the massive Easter egg from Leon at the end, which went, You coming? And he went, I think we both know this is where we go our separate ways. Oh, <laughs> oh God, he said the thing. He said oh, the thing. Really um, so, yeah, I think that's a massive sort of nod to separate ways is coming. Thank you, Dank, uh, for, the, for recognizing my, radi my radiology joke. I really appreciate that. It's I giggled. Like that, but keep I giggled. Going. I giggled yeah. at it, yeah. Yeah. I gave it a thumbs she up. Radi she radiates joy. Great, right. yeah. I love Some good um, shit. Yeah. I like Ada's outfit in this as well, but I can't stop thinking about how her sweater looks really water absorbent. And if you're yeah. going to like a rainy, shitty village, it's like <laughs> maybe maybe you should be wearing a windbreaker so, or like a rain jacket. She or has a big old raincoat that folds right up into her pocket, but she doesn't put it on when Leon's around because it's embarrassing. Well, or, <laughs> or, or, or a, a red <laughs> silk dress where it can just roll off, you know? Uh, two remakes, she had like a big trench coat, but then she was wearing the dress <laughs> underneath it. Yeah, yeah she took, the, yeah, she took that off. Yeah. In this crazy apocalypse, it's like, well, gotta, gotta save the world in style, I guess. Well, she don't want to save the world, right? She's kind of, she's a little bit... Uh, Villainous. Well, maybe not. Well, I guess. What about the, the that post credit? Is that worth talking about? Since oh, um, yeah, Leon's you know what? We can knock magic. out. We'll knock out that and Wesker <laughs> at the same time. Why not? Uh, oh well, yeah, that's what Wesker. Oh, Wesker doesn't sound as yeah. funny. Zero out of ten. <laughs> so uh, I've seen yeah, this from funny. James several times. So I don't know if anyone else knows more about this. But was it that the original actor released too much about RE4 remake and got booed off the project? Oh, really? That's what I've seen him say. I don't know if it's true. I'm assuming it is, otherwise it'd be a weird claim to have. But um, that's why we don't have the actor we want. He's, uh... Oh. Aww. Yeah. That was Are we going to get a actually. Resident... Never mind the Resident 5 remake. I oh, know, I'm really jumping the gun here. Are we oh, going to get DC a Douglas. Resident Evil remake in the same mode as, as uh, 2, 3, and 4? That's, that's the real remake, question. Probably, right? 
It, well, I mean, because uh, a lot of people consider the GameCube and HD ports thereafter remake of Resident Evil as the entry of Resident Evil 1 in the remake timeline, but it uses the same Jill model that's in Resident Evil 5 that's kind of not the remake timeline now. So I don't know, Resident Evil canon's sort of in a weird spot in that regard, so... I think they'll probably just do whatever they think will make them the most money next, which my guess would be five because, you know, it's the next in the time. I think they'll well, remake I guess five. Next up is nine, right? Next up will probably be, yeah, next we'll get nine, be nine. nine. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, uh, it'll be interesting if they decide to go back to just the third person over the. I hope they do. So, personally. I hope they do yeah, too. Just to... Thank, please, God, keep this part of the uh, way I guess on the, the yes. story bit yes. with, uh, with to Ada. To clarify, DC Douglas played Albert Wesker in Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil, I think, The Umbrella Chronicles. It doesn't matter. Point is that apparently he's the one. You release screenshots of this game really, really early on, and so he was going to be the voice of Wesker, but then he got booed from it for that. That's That's <laughs> the rumor. I don't know if it's true. Okay. Mm. Which, uh, you know... Well, if true, <sighs> pretty stupid, to it, be Yeah, well, if true sucks, because <laughs> I love Wesker's voice. It's absurd and silly. Yeah, uh, it's great. <laughs> and, and I, yeah, this, this Wesker just sounds normal, and that's like, that's fine. But hey, <laughs> maybe, maybe he's holding Wesker back now, and we'll sound get fine. to hear... We'll get to hear... <laughs> <laughs> the next one. Wesker I shouldn't sure sound so. fine. <laughs> Complete global saturation and all that. Yes. <laughs> um... So, because uh, I'm not as familiar with Resident Evil as a whole storyline, what are we to draw from these last cutscenes exactly? What do we think yes. is happening? Please enlighten me. I have no idea. Um, as so far as I know, people, Wesker shooting himself in the foot by well, almost saying everything he could possibly say to have Ada betray him. Yeah. We're going to kill looking, everyone. I am very evil. I am very evil and billions, billions will die. Now give <laughs> you me mean you'll thing. kill millions? No. Billions. billions. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Just I making was... sure it was billions. Trillions, if I could. No. <laughs> I thought she was just going to open a window and drop it in the sea. Then. Well, because yeah, um, in the face. So she's going to take it away from him, so he can't develop Uroboros. Is that what we're supposed to take from this? Prob yes. As far as I know, that's. Uh, I was thinking, that will this sort of end up changing the Resident Evil Five story if they do a remake of that? Will it, I don't know, what will become of the mold, which I don't like. I, I, I don't um, like the mold they, either, and I have I a feeling like the mold. they're trying to remake them so that the story leads into the mold eventually. No, don't do that. Um, I, and no. that is that's, the current... I guess is the way forward. That's the way forward. Absolutely. The current that's bugger is way is... creepier, yeah. A parasite inside of you that does creepy fucking shit. And yeah. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to make it a boring black mold monster that goes... <laughs> Yeah, you can all can make all kinds of mutations with that shit. I mean, we have lots of them in here. Well, they so. essentially s started Just cheating make... and doing that in uh, in the later Resident Evils anyway. They were like, oh, oh, look at this crazy creature. What it's is it? Magic. It's like, it's mold. You're like, oh. It's, oh. it's, it, it devolved, like, Plagas, I can believe. They do a lot of work of making you, and we'll sort of get into that ma later maybe, but they do a lot of work in this remake, stressing the changes in the body over time, uh, how you behave. And just the really creepy body horror elements of this thing inside of you that's growing and getting worse and worse. Um, so I, I think this game in that aspect is definitely scarier than the original. And they should stick with this Plagueis kind of idea, because the black molds suck. It's just, ooh, it's, it's just... Have you guys... All right, this is a deep reference. Have you guys ever seen Little Nemo? No. Well, no. Uh, no. Uh, all, all, you, all you guys Wait. in the chat know exactly mm. what I'm talking about. Well, no, um, no, I don't. I take it back. The one in Little Nemo was fucking creepy, but like this black goo sort of thing that's just like, eh, yeah, that's that's. I guess yeah. that's scary, and it just does anything and whatever. It's just not scary. The black mold sucks. Plagas are creepy. Parasites are scary, terrifying body horror, <clears throat> and they did a great job working on that and developing it. And they should keep it. James said canonically, mm. Wesker takes a sample from Krause's body, so that's obviously still that's probably what they're gonna do, um, to make Resident Evil Five happen. So I, I spoke to Az about this as well. It's just like the amount of questions they'll have to answer in terms of what they want to make Resident Evil Five, and I, I'm saying across the board. Like, does it mm -hmm. is it a co-op game? Are you going to do that? Is that too risky in this day and age to actually put that kind of man hours into a co-op game when co-op is seemingly not that popular anymore? That was a would you cowards? Well, because the funny part is that like <laughs> Resident Evil Five is known for that at this point. The thing people yeah. recommend about it is play it with a friend. Um, right. You know, do they yeah. crank the horror aspect or do they maintain the fact that it was? Kind of not scary. Uh, you know, I'm sure they'll probably try and make it scarier, I guess. That seems like a smarter decision to go with. But uh, mm -hmm. then, of course, where it's set 
who you're going to be shooting. I imagine Uh-oh. that's going to change. <laughs> like, or at least was, uh, be heavily considered. Back in the day already. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna Aunt Jemima this shit, and they're gonna get Uncle Ben. <laughs> and there won't be, it won't be. A, there won't be. They won't be allowed. Yeah. They're, they're not. Yeah. But honestly, oh, if if it's the team that made this and they get the time they need to complete it, uh, I'll play the fuck out of it. They won. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like whatever they do with Dead Space next. You bet your ass I'm playing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so closes out Ada. And uh, like I said, I've not got a particular and Wesker, I guess. Um, is everyone up for talking about a little man called Salazar? Whoa, you can't Ramon that, Salazar. Ramon Salazar. Ramon Salazar. Um, I prefer the original Ramon Salazar. This one is fine. He's fine, but I prefer the original. I like the idea that he's uh, in the original. He comes across as more of like this petulant, spoiled child who's kind of always gotten his way, who thinks that if it's his castle, it's his rules. Um, he gets audibly frustrated when Leon doesn't die. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like that a lot more. I like his introduction more. Um, I like the model more, kind of. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I just think he's more like playful and uh, like cocksure, and he gets frustrated at Leon. And he plays well with th- Leon in terms of like their personality dynamic. He struck me more really... in the OG than in this one. This one, he was easier to forget, uh, which is a yeah. problem, yes. I think. He doesn't have like any lines that make me go like, you know, like just the introduction. Miyamo, Ramon Salazar, the eighth Castellar of this magnificent architecture. Mm. Like, it's just like this, you know, you're just like, oh, you're, oh, okay. No, you, you're you're proud of the castle and who you are, and I really kind of dig that. And the new one is just like, I mean, okay, but well, I think we definitely lost something. I, I wish we could have a redo on uh, on on Salazar in the remake. <laughs> we got that one? line from from Leon where he's just talking. About, he talks about his brethren. And then Leon just goes, no thanks, no bro. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, no thanks, bro. No thanks, so, bro. So, it could be a good... Uh, this will be coming up, because we're going to talk about the villains almost now. So, like, um, Leon doesn't have his Skype calls with the villains anymore. Um, I had a feeling they weren't going to include that. And I think if I were in full charge of this game, I love everything they've done so far, but I'd be like, I think we're going to keep it. I think we're going to fucking brute force it, lads, and we're going to keep it. Yeah, <laughs> like, have and you're the like, villains we can't and Leon keep that. Back to back. It's absurd. It's insane. It's like, yeah, it is. It's a blue midget in a <laughs> spooky <laughs> castle. We're already there. It's, it is absurd. <laughs> and that's it's, fine. It's totally fine. It's so that's what fun. People love about it. Doesn't it. No take a long looked... jump to throw in some line about, oh, you think you're the only one who can hack a communication signal? Yeah, or it's just, something like, yeah, it's fine. Everyone okay, knows yeah, the whole talking. reason that happens is literally for the utility of having Leon and the villains have a chat. <laughs> that is obviously the fucking point we know why it's there just do it it's not going to hurt the game that much like in terms of the story's not exactly perfect (laughs) so we'll be fine um nobody looks back at the original and says uh yeah but it was it it wasn't it, it was it was just too silly for me no one says that that's what people love about it that was, it was always the question about remaking Resident Evil 4 is how much camp will they keep? And uh, they cut that because they, I guess, thought it was too campy. I'd assume. I, I doubt I, they cut it because they were like, we can't make this work logistically. Like, does it really make sense that they can have... It's like, shut up. That's not the reason. It's, well, uh, if anything, I think the, the thing that I found most off-putting about this version of Salazar was that he seemed almost like he wasn't far enough of an adjustment into Sirius Town. So he just seemed like a slight more subdued version it's like a compromised version Sal- yeah like like someone trying to do hey do salazar from resident evil 4 but make it more subdued and he's like mr kennedy no no more subdued mr kennedy <laughs> yeah that's yeah. perfect okay yeah just so do that. yeah it's like it's like soda right soda's yummy and water is refreshing and <laughs> if you mix them half and half you get this like yeah. nasty watery yeah, soda <laughs> and you, you can't do that you need to commit to having cool refreshing water or a or a fizzy uh a fizzy sugary soda both of them are wonderful in their own way don't half-ass it if i can provide just an uh not necessarily a contradictive view but where i think ada was a mistake this I understand, and it's fine <laughs> as is. And if no other Salazar existed, I'm sure we'd be like, "This is this is a cool little villain idea they got going on here." But 
Unfortunately, the OG one exists, and it really does feel like a downgrade. That's kind of where I'm at with it. It's all. But yeah, he I is a downgrade. I, don't take, I like his like, personality in the original too much, and his mannerisms, the way he talks, and his his inflections. And this is just like how oh, you're just a you're just a you're just a blue midget in a castle. I think there's more <laughs> there's more fun to him than like none at all. It's just the um, I don't know. The, I even miss yeah. his hat. I, I miss the, yeah. the younger look to him as well. I miss the more petulant child aspect, as you mentioned. I fucking one of my favorite moments of the whole game is when Leon throws a knife in his hand and he reacts to it like in pain. how yeah. it's it's out. a combination of shock, pain, and how the fuck dare you throw a <laughs> knife at me? What the hell? And Leon's just like, huh. <laughs> which is great. It's like, yeah, it's, I love You're that interaction. We don't get to have it, but they of course have him shooting him. That's doesn't one, and he does like say you fucking like piece of shit as he falls over and stuff. It's, it's fun. Um, but yeah, the, I, uh, I I think we missed out a little bit on uh, on Salazar. The subdued voice delivery note that Mark brought up is interesting because I don't think this is a character that really should be subdued. Like you're no. saying, Mahler, like he, he literally, he's a petulant child. There's a scene in the original game where he like stomps his feet. Mm -hmm. I can't remember when, but he's like frustrated. He's like, oh, kill him, kill him. Right, like, uh, yeah. It, he needs to be a little over the top. And I think that r would really contrast nicely with like the fact that he's a, like a little old man. You know, and he's yeah. acting so infantile. And uh, I like, I prefer his design a little more in this new one. He looks more like a little old person. I like that. I think I, his uh, original look matched excellently with his more petulant attitude. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah, I agree with that. I think it was I agree with fancy that, yeah. and everything, but it had yeah. this almost uh, juvenile kind of schoolboy outfit in yeah. a way. It was still right. appropriately, you know, fanciful. Bring back He's only hat, meant though. to be like 21, isn't he? Yes. Inches? <laughs> hey! <laughs> He's pretty yeah. short. Um, so, yeah, well, uh, what do you think, Az, on Salazar? Upgrade, downgrade? Uh, Neutral? I, I think a downgrade. I think the first one is uh, OTT and needed to be OTT. It's yeah. good when you have a contrast between your heroes and your villains. And because uh, Sadler is also pretty subdued in this one, um, this Salazar needed to kind of shine because Krause is also pretty subdued uh, as a character. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I think he needed to be um, more exaggerated, um, hyper eccentric. Why not go for it? And yeah. keep the Skype calls for fuck's sake. Yes, give us more dialogue <laughs> between the characters. Yeah, e. love it. Especially um, because Leon and Salazar in particular play off each other really well. Absolutely, yeah, they really do. This is yeah. one of the more memorable bits. I mean, they sort of added the Skype call into the boss fight. They've because they they, they, talk, they talk about the script and yeah, there are remnants of your yeah. crappy script. So there's little bits that have added into the actual uh, fight, uh, boss fight. Dialogue. Well, even but, having um, him talk at Leon through the speaker system, it's like that's that's something. But like you know, we were hoping for the the whole package. Yeah. Um, anything else anyone wants to say on Salazar? No, not really. Right, I then. really like his uh, henchmen. I always have like the two aliens. The vertigos. Yeah, they're like uh, they have. There's like these reserved monstrosities, and there's something yeah, really they're... eerie about that. You know, like you they're so the dangerous, eyes. but they're they, just they have, standing there. Yeah, they have the glowing red eyes, and you don't really see much of their body other than the tail at times and their folded hands. So yeah. yeah, this almost like the these these creepy beasts being kept on a leash, and you wonder what's underneath the robe. Right. Much like I will squeeze in here. I love the redesign of the priests, the red priests. Mm. Uh, in the original, they yeah. wore the skull over their heads, and in this one, they kind of kept that, but their their whole body is covered, and yeah. they have like the skull on the top, but there's like this big mass that we can only assume is some terrible, mm. super advanced plagas growth. And mm. because it's all covered up and you see that like hunch in there, it's kind of theater of the mind on how terrible and awful it must be. And I really, really dig that. And I think that's super cool and creepy. As a small side, just what a great addition to the dialogue, the Gloria Las Plagas, the Enchanted. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Plagas. Yeah, it's part of that really making it feel like this super creepy religious cult that's like, mm. that's earnest. Yeah. Um, I, I dig it. Just mm. the way that. I mean, the introduction to the stage two Plagas is one of the cultists, like, like, 
like kill, like breaking his own neck or tearing his own head off essentially in the in little ritual room at the beginning of the castle. Yeah. Um there's a few other instances. I mean the first time we see the 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 Plagas in the village uh at night after the uh a Del Lago fight, you have the um you know, the altar at night and its implication that there's a ritual where the Plagas comes out and like it's terrible and horrifying, but you know that's you know that's what they're about. And I really dig it. I really dig it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, all righty. Uh, you could really, it's between a couple people, but I'll go with why not Krauser next. Mr. Uh, Mr. Army Man. What are we, what are we thinking about Krauser? Improvement, deep improvement, or neutral? Go. Um, I think overall I'm neutral. <laughs> I think the voice actor is worse. He comes across more of like, um, like a bully in school, like a jock on the football team. Mm. <laughs> um, I don't yeah. get this military man messed up sense of, you know, that uh, just not really. It doesn't work for me. So, it just doesn't work. As much as I can entertain that criticism, I don't know why he would get a pass and Shadow the Hedgehog Krauser does, uh, does get a pass. Like Shadow the Hedgehog Krauser? That's what he's like in the OG, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's edgy as fuck. Yeah, so why does he get a pass? I, I think it's that the I think it's the voice and the delivery. It just doesn't quite I just don't like the voice and uh I'm not sure I too... think I buy new uh Krauser more as a person than I do the old Krauser. Um even though That's I think fair. they're both kind of absurd. Um I think I... there's more to this Krauser than the last one, and I think mm. the um we definitely find out more as to his motivations yeah, as to why like, he went over to Las Vegas and information wise, this one is better. Um, mm. but I think the, the model and the, um, I just like the original in terms of the voice acting more, uh, the delivery. I never really saw Krells as too much more than a, than a military kind of grunt, for want of a better phrase. M like a military just hammer. There's somebody yeah. there to hammer, hammer stuff. And, uh, one little bit I did like about Krells, like, I thought he's, you know, fine. Uh, he, he didn't, he didn't upset me, he didn't set me on fire. Uh, but uh, I liked I liked where he's he calls Leon rookie throughout the whole procedure until Leon kills him, and then he says I tra I I, uh, I trained you well, Leon, and he calls him Leon because he's given him the, the the respect that he actually deserves. Then, mm -hmm. so he, and and that <clears throat> that I think is good because it works into the bit where Leon says to him, "You're always an asshole." Well, at least you had some code, some honor. And so we, we kind of saw a little bit of that, that honor uh, and code coming back to Krauser as he, as he died. So, you know, little things like that, I think, I think work well. I, I, like, I see him nothing more as a hammer on an anvil. I like them both in the, in the OG and the new one in terms of the role they play. It's a pretty straightforward role, you know. And mm. uh, the fight, he, he's a crazy, he, he just feels like an army sergeant who's gone nuts. Um, and as you find out, pretty blatantly, he's gone nuts for power. He's a major. Thank you. Not a I don't sergeant. fucking know. Drill sergeant. That's that kind of, I'm thinking about he's the archetype Dolph rather than the actual rank. from Universal Soldier. Almost, almost <laughs> exactly. I don't know. And was he Universal I like... Soldier? Oh, I can't John remember. Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren? No? Yeah. Just me? <laughs> no, I know the no, movie. I, I, know. Know. I, I just character. don't remember it that well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Krauser is basically Dolph Lundgren's character to a T. But uh, I thought he's much more effective in the in the remake personally. In the original he always kind of struck me as hey, we need a we need a boss that isn't the final boss for the island. Let's I mean, uh, yeah, he's a little, an army guy. I think, like I said, I think he's more absurd in the OG one than in this. Uh in uh, it's like burned into my memory that lie where he says prepare for your death, Leon. Just like <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's busy. He's I the, think I think Krause is meant to act as the reflection in in the uh, the wind the the water or the mirror for for Leon. It's what Leon could become if Leon was so uh, so in uh, driven in that direction. But it's not Le Leon's it's kind of like in antithesis of each other. Yeah. The well, because Leon cares about people, he wants to help people. Mm -hmm. he, basically, it's the reflection of Leon wants to essentially use his power to help people, whereas Krauser only gives a shit about himself. I and think Leon that, is better uh, ideal, it... and he wins in the end. 
in carrying over the the sort of traumatized Leon that um, that we were referring to at the beginning of the, the stream again into this series, I think this Krauser acts as an interesting foil for that. To think that after Raccoon City, he was so consumed with wanting to become powerful enough to be able to handle a situation like that, that he, he joins this special, special forces troop. He's trained by people like Krauser, who might have some kind of honor, but maybe are uh, you only get to that level if you're the nefarious kind of Krauser Ada type. And um, that that's how Leon got to basically the state that he was able to do any of the things that he does in this mission and then finds himself facing the shadow version of it at the end. And I, I think storytelling wise, it works quite a bit better. Yeah. Because yeah. even Leon says when he, when he says, I trained you well, Leon, and he died, even Leon says, that you did, Major. Yeah, and he's um, got he's still he's got a he's got a nice little quick setup in the opening cutscene as well. He does. Um, it's just like quickly one shot, but like it's really cool, and it, it looks like a heated knife fight. Like they're really going mm. at it. Yeah, yeah. He's training him with knives, and obviously we because we get the you know uh, knives are faster at close quarters that Leon uses on Ada, and he and he gets Ada that way, but then. When he's met with Crowder, we know that he's a little bit flustered because of that, because he goes for the gun and not the knife. Does, yeah. And Crowder puts, put, puts the knife yeah, to say his... Crowder, though, but... <laughs> he did say Crowder, there, but... Crowder! He puts the knife Crowder. to his throat, Even he says, Crowder. I always taught you. And that, that, to me, said that Crowder does get to Leon. You know, he's, he, Leon, uh, Leon does get a little bit... Uh, well, yeah, you know, um, he just puts, it, puts him out of the whack because of what they've been through and how he's turned. So I, I kind of like that. In contrast that with not, um, Salazar, uh, I think drawing back Krauser a bit is actually more suitable because he is he has like a serious role to play in in Leon's character development, so to speak, his journey. Meanwhile, Salazar is this fucking clown kid that gets in the way of Leon, and it's fun to play with him. So uh, you know, yeah. having the more serious elements further threaded in, and pulling back the voice a little bit, even if. Um, because I'm willing to agree, the voice is still a little absurd to me. Um, I've heard people say that it's it could it could be convincing as a guy who's just been fucking shouting almost nonstop in his life in terms of orders or taking them or giving them whatever. Um, but uh, he still he strikes he strikes me as a, a bit of um like the the actor's really like going a little nuts trying to trying to give him an oomph that I, I'm not sure if it works hundred percent, but I think I prefer it. Fair enough. Krauser. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. If no one else got anything else for Krauser, there's Krauser. Louder with Krauser. Louser with Krauser. <laughs> Which <laughs> would take us to Sadler. Awesome and Sadler. Lord Sadler. So, uh, up, I down, like... or neutral? What do we think? Up. I like him better in this version. Yeah. Little Anyone lambs, else? Little lambs, little lambs, little yeah. lambs. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, kind of neutral on this one. I, th I... I they pulled they pulled him back a fair bit, and uh, by the time he'd gone through all the the fights and you get to Sadler, I didn't really see him built built up enough as this huge threat. But that's just me. I, mean, I, I was going to say I actually prefer his writing. I don't think I prefer the voice actor. The voice is pretty meh for me. He's fine um, as a character, though. I like him uh, a bit more. Uh, quite, I'd say quite a bit more. Um, a lot of it plays into, as I said before, really sort of making him out as like, like a legit cult leader who is not using the um, religion as any means to a particular end necessarily, but the religion itself is the goal. He's totally in it. Uh, he's a, a long line of these, you know, religious rulers. Um, he's this fanatic who's uh, totally into it. Uh, and I, I really like that. I like that the thing that drives him you know enraged at leon at the end is the you know leon's rejection and destruction of the plagas inside of him which is an excellent sort of like yeah that's what you know a crazy religious zealot would do like i said the only thing worse than an enemy is a traitor uh you know getting rid of this what he uh, essentially considers this divine thing and leon got rid of it he destroyed it when it was supposed to be a gift the greatest thing that can happen to you um I really like uh, in a lot of his terminology for the religious stuff, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm big into it. I really dig him. I kind of wish they didn't name him Adam because I just kept thinking about Adam Sandler. It's not his <laughs> husband. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yes. 
Oh, is that not? Oh, okay. No. Maybe I got confused because that's on one of the <laughs> graves. The yeah, you got him confused with someone named Adam. <laughs> it was dead, and that's why he had a gravestone. <laughs> he there's a cutscene where he says, "I am Osmond Sadler." <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Adam, Adam Sadler. Is doing <laughs> on, he wish his Adam name was Sadler. Adam Did you Sadler. see my movies? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm cut he looks pretty good. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of Ray Fiennes uh, doing Voldemort, looking at him. The, this new design, I don't know. You can play him. Um, <laughs> can, I don't know if I'll be able to unsee. Maybe that Adam Sadler can play him. <laughs> <laughs> Adam yeah. Sadler. What do you in mean? Resident Build Evil. The pockets inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been um, to um, Krispy Kreme? I'm pretty lukewarm on now the. Now that'll give you the, a holy body. I think <laughs> I think he's fine in this. I didn't have a problem. Actually, I really liked his constant monologuing throughout the final boss fight. I thought that was really funny. I couldn't stop laughing <laughs> through the whole fight. So he mad. just won't stop. Yeah. I quite like the cult vision-y things you're having with the parasite getting further and further, connecting you to like this hive mind stuff. His uh, his commentary was always nice and culty and spooky. And get wicks. Mm -hmm. Um. Though, to be honest with you, I don't really have much to say about him. I was just fine with him. I don't there really either. I think I've said pretty much everything I want to. Um, yeah. I, you know, I kind of dig the look. I like the, uh, you know, I like how he's the creepy, you know, leader of the cult, and he has, like, the dominant Plagueis inside of him and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm a... All right, I then. like it. I'm uh, a, wait, does that mean we get to talk about the merchant, then? No. Uh, next what up... What about Mike? Mike? <laughs> Yeah, well, we're on our way to Mike. We're pretty much going down the list, uh, and uh, obviously after Sadler, you have to talk about Hunnigan. Uh, what has everyone got to say about Hunnigan? No uh, nothing. Nothing. Non non yeah. <laughs> Absolute non-entity in this. So. Yeah. yeah. She's hardly a character in this one. She's, it, yeah, it's almost unnecessary that she's even in it, but <laughs> there she is, I guess. It's like, all right. Um, and they had to do the James Bond ending. They did. Uh, Leon, was... come in. Leon. Seven. Are you there? Does this thing even work? I'm in. <laughs> yeah. well, the OG one, he flirts with her. Oh my right? god, he's attempting re entry. <laughs> um, yeah, he asked for a number. Yeah. In the, uh, yeah. Old, in the OG. Yeah. Yeah. But because uh, we're starting to get to the characters that are like, you know, I'm not sure how much there is to say on them, but the only one left before Merchant was going to be uh, Mendez. Um, if, if uh, there's anything to say. I thought it was better. Mendes was pretty much, much better in this. Actually. Yeah, for pretty much all the reasons that I really liked uh, Sadler more in this, I liked Mendes more too. I like his reverence that he shows for the Plagas as the holy body of this cult and the church and how he you know, defers so strongly to what you know, Sadler wants. His sort of more religious ramblings as you fight him in the slaughterhouse. Uh, I, I just, I really kind of like him. They kept his coat and his hat and his fake eye. And I liked his great. dialogue. I liked his voice <laughs> yeah. actor. Uh, yeah, I'm a. I like this Mendez more. Well, and, and and in terms of design, this goes for the OG one as well. I've always just loved the to cap off each of the significant environments. The the villain I think really matches them. Being Mendez just comes across as as his his role. He's like the village elder, the leader. Uh, we get that image of um, the previous one, and that it was passed over to Mendez. Like not even that long ago, or at least um yeah, the old one's like um he's like a like an Eastern Orthodox kind of looking priest, you know. He's yeah. kind of kinda got that that vibe to him. And Rest so you. like this was a job Mendez took very seriously and thought it was very important and uh you know, welcomed in Sadler and uh obviously you get the imagery of Sadler and Salazar coming down to the village as well. But yeah, um mashed well. I think he fit the vibe, did a good job. He's probably one of the best representations of just you remade it and you did all of the things and there he is. Good job. Yep. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> um, which yeah, if there's nothing else anyone wants to say on that, the last last one deliberately was uh, the merchant. Yeah. Uh, very the famous <laughs> for being I a love part him. of the show. So I still prefer the original one. Probably a bit of a bias there because you know it's a bit iconic the voice he had. <laughs> But this one, um, I really, really like this one too. I'm, I'm a big fan. I, I like his, I like his mannerisms. The way he goes, like, oh, guess breaks over. Just kind of fucking around. Breaks over, it's, it's, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. It's like uh, gun rhymes with fun for a reason. Yeah, I was about to ask. Did you guys know that gun rhymes with fun? <laughs> just, I, uh, he says it a couple times. 
I, I think what makes me uh, like this version more is just simply that he has more to say. Um, I think that's what by, that puts me in favor of New Merchant. I do really like One Old the... Merchant, but New Guy, he's just got a lot of funny things to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think this um, one grew, grew on me more. This one grew uh, on when me, I, yeah. When I, when I, I first so heard him, I was kind of like, oh. I just want, I'll buy it at a high price. What's he buying? What's he buying? His accent is much thicker uh, in this game than the OG. Buy it? Yeah, it just, <laughs> yeah. The, Ooh, more, the more I interacted with him, the more I sort of liked about him. And uh, yeah, you need, the, you need the merchant to be some sort of almost supernatural esque. Uh, well, just, oh, really? No, I, I like him more as just a, a regular little guy making his way through this crazy world. I don't care which he is. <laughs> Why? He's got in his coat, a, man. He needs to be the fucking mission in every single Resident Evil game. Why the fuck haven't yes. they done that? Why isn't he in every single game? I don't know. Game? Just making him recurring what? character would be so great. Yeah. Never I explain it. When he shows up Hello, Leon. Leon. He just goes sightseeing around the world. He's just everywhere. Yeah. Just a little industrious businessman who travels the world. <laughs> yeah, he would be fucking world. great. He's the, ultimate, he's the ultimate buyer. villain. He's the final no, boss. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's, he's yeah. always your friend, and he's always he's, there for he's you. Always he's always there for you, ass, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Bro he's for life. Buddy. The next thing that Frangie will be saying, oh, you should fight the, you should fight the wolf you free from the bear trap next. Oh, he's the final villain. <laughs> <laughs> why, would I, why would I say Why would Frangie say because it? Because it's a terrible idea like his last one. I'd Wait, what? But I didn't. Are you? Yeah, didn't say didn't that. Say that. Uh, no, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. As the thing is like, oh, no, next thing you know, that's what he no, was saying. No, you what fucked up. You no, I didn't. What is going on? I said. a joke at your expense, <laughs> and it worked perfectly. No, no. Yeah, I said, <laughs> next thing you know, Fringy will be saying this absurd thing to match the absurd thing you already said. I didn't say it. I know. That's the point. I don't understand the joke. How about him being the final boss? What are you selling? What are you, no, what are you I didn't selling? say that he would be the final boss. I said right, that, good. and then I jumped I in. I said and that. Said, yeah, okay, so run away right, from your good. mistake is what that no, is. No, 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 it's fine. I'm glad that you can um, remain a member of this podcast, I, I, because that was... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that almost, that, that's the kind of... I like, I like how... Saying I like that the how, should be the well, final boss. So, oh, chat, what we're watching here in real time is Rags fucked up, but he's trying his hardest to... <laughs> to make it seem like that's not the case. No, no, no. We're Just really, in case we're the really puppy growl threw opinion. everything off, that was my puppy, not Rags. No, the only person who has to be really glad is you because you're the only person who made the error here. Uh, no, I think we're all, I think the biggest puppy. error here is Az and his opinion about the. Uh... Well, I'm glad that you now realize that it was Az who said that, not me. But... <laughs> yeah, he made the big mistake here. That we're it only took like three minutes there. Yeah. Now, so anyway, <laughs> the, got back to our friendly match. Oh, the one sorry. the metal mentioned that I'm trying to remember what the line was now, but where he he begins it with like a oh, <laughs> like <laughs> what are you buying? That line of oh, first struck Mola. me as so strange. I've been watching the footage. You got you put a herb out of place. Oh, um, I'm sorry. When you racked it up on the right hand side, you. listen. You, this is pre-recorded. Now you don't tell people. Of place. Don't tell people. They'll notice, and then they'll yeah. judge me. You have yeah. to earn your inventory. I'll I want somebody to EFAP that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, no. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I, I may have gotten a false impression, and maybe it's just my hearing. I thought OG Merchant was subtly an Aussie, and that yeah. this guy is clearly English. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I thought he was an Aussie. A bite at a high price. Yeah. Um, yeah. what I, I think that's why I was yelling. That's why he had to sort of earn his place, this mission, because I was like, hey, why does he sound different? Why have you made him different? Like a home and away. Kiwi in this one? Hey, what are you selling there? <laughs> but, but I will say, I do like, I do like this. I just, he has a lot of things to say, and I, I appreciate that. He, because I do, I do like listening to OG Man say, what are you buying over and over and over again? It's kind of crazy how, how much I can listen to that same line over and over <laughs> He's like the favorite weapons, you know, salesman person in all of Resident Evil franchises. Which is why I've never understood why you only popped up yeah. in the one game. <laughs> like, why haven't you put... all of yeah. They've always tried to like... Had... Well, who was in Resident Evil 5? I don't think they had a merchant. I think no. it was just a screen. No, there wasn't. Oh, you're right. You just it's just shop. Uh, it shop turns up every once in a while. Yeah, in not only is your the... inventory shit now, they got rid of the merchant. That was such Dude. a mistake. The and only then... other one with a merchant is eight. Yeah, and the, yeah. and they they clearly we dude gotta... eight is just a weak copy of Resident Evil Four. It eight. wants oh, to be Resident Evil Four. Oh, that's the big guy in the card, right? In the... Yeah, yeah. The big fat yeah. guy. Um, the big fat guy. Yeah. 
gunned. So oh, now that yeah, we nice. sort of yeah. brought up the big fat man, the Duke, right? His the name. Duke, yeah. Um, so when this was in between the time of Resident Evil Village coming out and this coming out, it's like, okay, they're clearly trying to get a certain vibe from the Duke. But I think that they made a big mistake by making him like an active participant in the story who influences the plot and events because mm -hmm. that creates yes. like issues. It creates mm -hmm. issues with who he is, what he's allowed to do. Why is he allowed to continue doing these things? He seems like a real part of the world, which generally you'd think is a good thing. But here, the merchant is just this. Someone had mentioned it before. It's like a supernatural sort of just a thing that's around. He's just a guy <laughs> that's around. Ambiguously mm. died. Dude, I love the idea. So he sees Leon come in and he rushes to get all this stuff out on a table and he's like, all right, here we go. Leon comes in, <laughs> buys, sells, whatever. And then he starts, you know, taking everything back. And maybe even Mad does is like, who are you? And he's like, just a humble bitch. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm you'd be interested in buying know. something. <laughs> this really fucking fun shit like that. And he just, you know, they don't they don't they don't have any problem with it because and maybe people have speculated that he's actually infected the, in this. He game. looks like he's infected. He might be, yeah. Well, and they he... just haven't introduced time travel yet. The merchant is clearly Leon from the future. <laughs> oh good God. I find it I've... funny that All you right, could GJ. almost interpret him as a, a figment of Leon's imagination, like a coping yeah, mechanism. No, that's, that's, that's what I meant by he's <laughs> ambiguously diegetic. Like, he might not even exist in the world of Resident Evil 4. It's right. He's just, he's just there for us, for the player to but interact yeah, I, with and have He's so player. much of a game thing, yeah. like a game yeah. character, that you never think that he's, like, really like a part of the world he's not actually like here in spain in this castle and everything like that he's just too gay your mind doesn't even really bother to try and make sense of it uh, well, his yeah. his function player game it doesn't ruin well, your but, and he also represents yeah. such a great moment of oh yes i can get new stuff yes. and i, can I was just save. gonna say that yeah, yeah a moment of respite or i don't know how you pronounce that but like a relief yeah, yeah it's like oh my god thank you I like the flame you see I the flame see in the distance yes uh, yeah. Which I, I honestly think that would have added hugely to people liking him so much because he mechanically is a relief as well as just being a fun dude. Yeah. Um, the yeah, Duke. Just... The Duke always felt a little too tryhard to me. And I... yeah. Mm. yeah, the merchant is very. Uh, he's very unassumingly awesome, is what he is. The Duke is mm. like, hey, I'm I'm pretty cool, aren't I? Look at me. I'm a big I'm a big fat fella, and I sell you stuff. Well, the, the merchant's that's kind I of what I mean you. by try hard is that it's like, isn't it absurd that I'm really, really fat and you can get me things to the, that relate to food to sell to me? And it's just like, is that your gimmick? Like, yeah. That yeah. you're really I, fat? <laughs> like, okay. Gimmick. He's just great. Well, that's what I think. I think that the makers may have misunderstood, like, that the merchant does have a gimmick. See, look at him. Look at it. That's his gimmick. And you're like, well, he's just existing, man. He's, he's like, a lot of stuff a, about it makes sense. Yeah. Like what he's wearing he keeps him, you know, under wraps, both literally, literally and figuratively. But it, it, like he doesn't get spotted and doesn't annoy anybody too much. And if he's really that, because I've always loved the angle that um, they, I don't think they ever did that. You you could kill him in the OG game, right? But he would appear in the next place that you you find him. And I was always thinking of a, a mechanic they could do is that if you kill him at any point in the game, you get his whole store for free, but then you never get anything after that. Like you right, know whatever he had at that time. So it's like a risk reward sort of thing. But um, I, I imagine that plays into it in the actual universe, that nobody actually wants to kill him, because then you can't trade with him anymore, and that's it. You can take what he has, he sure, dead. but you'll never have access to anything else in the future, anything new. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, Merchant's great. Um, Looks do good, I... nice to see him, good voice. Um, I really like the, the role that they decided to give him for the game. Uh, good decisions all around. I about... think I had the same initial reaction, to, like to I think all of you maybe, or like I wasn't quite sure what to make of it at first because it's like it is different. Yeah, um, it's a, but it's yeah, a bit it, of a shock. It's like very way different, and it's like oh, okay, well, maybe I need some time. And after some time, it's like yeah, I like this. This is good. Right? Yeah, exactly. It grew on me, and uh, it it feels like a real friendly relationship with Leon there, even though it is transactional. It's like. He digs you because you bring him rad treasure, and that's what he wants. He wants treasure. That's what he's <laughs> and there fish. For. Don't forget all the and, fish I brought. We bring him <laughs> yeah. right, and, all and Leon, <laughs> Leon is going to into every corridor of this 
godforsaken village and he finds the treasure and well you can leon can trust him to keep him alive and give him good shit and you really get a sense that he knows what he's talking about with firearms like what he's doing he I think comes it's than that as an expert what he's like okay. here's a map with x's that lead to all of the treasures that we know exist there <laughs> oh, go get them for us <laughs> it's like wait a minute did you just <laughs> set this up for me to do as a fun thing <laughs> he's yeah. just like no that's a, that's a, a to be good uh, gun rhymes are fun stranger <laughs> Yeah. And the way they do it uh, when when you first get the medallions, like, oh, those medallions look stinky. Go destroy them all. I don't like them. It's like, all right, you got it. <laughs> Try to shoot oh, dude. Two yeah. of them. I bet you'll shoot all five. <laughs> I actually kind of wanted more stuff like that, like where he's like, fuck me, do I find, you know, this annoying. Go, go sort this yeah. out for me personally. As opposed to like uh, the more... Some of them felt a lot more just um, almost business-like, for lack of a better term. But just, it would be funny to maybe have some more of, uh, like, the, the bosses. And, like, he has a personal vendetta with one, maybe. Like, a villager oh, that yeah. stole his socks or something. And he's just <laughs> like, can you get them yeah, back have, and kill him? We have the one with, with, with Salazar. It's like, can you just fuck, fuck up his picture? Like, I fucking hate that guy. Just throw, <laughs> throw something at, at the picture. Just fuck it up. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it's that a to gunfire and knife man. slashes. Yeah, There's a bunch your of your cock and take a piss on it, stranger. <laughs> and then, yeah, I like the idea if he set all that up for you, that he's just around every corner watching you do all of it. And he's like, yeah, you got him. Yeah. And then whenever you die, he's like, oh, shit. No, it would be. <laughs> oh, well, stranger. There's something funny that he wants you to kill, like three rats in the waste disposal. It's like, yeah, that's sort of, it's going to sort it out. Much comfier now. Wouldn't it be so fucking great if there was just an actual clown running around the village and he wants you to kill it? Huh. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, stranger, but please, it's, it's really an otherworldly demon that's haunted this place. Then you just There's get to one the... guy, the Lost Plagas, just thought it was too crazy to yeah. take over. It's just like, okay, I don't want to go anywhere near the clown guy. You just He's go back like to the going to join the holy of, body. And instead of I... the mutt, you just hear. <laughs> like, oh, God, he's here. <laughs> he's here. Run. <laughs> His shoes are honking really loud. <laughs> <laughs> the honker. <laughs> well, do you remember in, um, what is it, in, in The Mummy, right? Um, I like to think that the maybe the merchant, whenever the Ganados show up and they're, they're chanting and everything, he just like puts his arms up and goes, Gloria Las Plagas! Yes. Like, yeah, <laughs> Gloria Las Plagas! Yeah, and he goes, and then they pass through and then he goes back to just being normal. Oh. Great, a great yeah, lad in both games. That. And uh, yeah, if yeah. someone said like, which do you think is better? I actually don't know. I really like both I of them. I don't know either. Yeah, they're, they're both strong both in their own ways. Fun. And I would say this new one in the remake has a little more variety of emotion injected into it. And there's like, there's little things about the lines that I really appreciate. Like he's like, the breaks over, I suppose, line. The way yeah. it's delivered, oh, it really sounds like you over, caught him off. It really Morgan sounds like you. Over, I suppose. Yeah. It sounds like you caught him off guard, right? Like we really didn't expect you. Like, oh wow, Ooh, you're here. My back. He, seems <laughs> um, he just seems to have this joy for violence. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, like he, like, he's more. glad. He's glad to know that Leon has the stench of battle about him. He's what just, is you know. It? It's a it's a missed opportunity to not have him in the other games because imagine as Chris working with him and you maybe pick up the infinite launcher and he's like sold this to a lad before made a mess of a small village. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, if you if you scroll through the catalog for long enough he'll say like uh, not seeing anything you like yeah. and it's like he's he's actually disappointed that he doesn't have something in his catalog for you. Well, like I, I sometimes like sometimes little... he says maybe buy something next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, oh. Right. Yeah. But yeah, he seems to be leg legitimately joyed that there's someone out there who enjoys weapons and violence as much as him. Yeah. Uh, and I and I really dig that. Yeah. But very... yeah, if he was a cool like meta Tom Bombadil kind of character throughout the Resident Evil series, that would be like that'd be fun and kind of mysterious, and I think it'd be kind of neat. And then when they ruin yeah. it, they make him like super important, and he turns out to be Chris Redfield from back in time. Yeah, the secret. And... The whole, you know... <laughs> Stop. Um, but yeah, yeah that... uh, great, great voice acting, and yeah, but definitely they've made a firm decision to make him uh, English now. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of a Western thing. Like people confuse the English. Australian. It is a bit of a Western thing. They yeah. often make you. No, uh, I mean British people. They mix the ones up that Australia provide, and. Yeah. 
and a British dialect. Well, so. I mean, we saw it here in real time when Rags mixed up with me and Az. <laughs> what does that have to? No, that oh Australian no, well, that was when Az. When, that was when Az thinks that the final villain should have been uh, the yeah, merchant nice guy. That's what reflection there. That's what yeah. was happening with that conversation. Right. And speaking God of Az, he has he's to like go. <laughs> so we're gonna allow yeah. him to leave now. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. For the the story portion, as, as yeah. the, you know, it, sorry I to get to talk a huge amount longer. of mechanics, but we're gonna be here for another fucking <laughs> six hours probably. So yeah. you know, if you go to I'm sleep bad. and come back, or, or you know, feel better, feel free to jump in and talk about the shooty bag bag. But other than that, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us, and um, I'll see you on Tuesday, my good lad. Do I'll wanna... see you on Tuesday. Well, I think Gary's gonna be late on Tuesday, so we could probably talk an hour of Resident Evil Four hey. on Tuesday. You know, there you go. I'm always ready to talk about this uh, game. Thanks everyone. You take care. Thanks, chat. <laughs> You want to take care. Do you want to plug your journal a little bit? Uh, well, Tuesday, Real BBC on uh, Hill vs. Babeface channel. Uh, we've got Mandy Summers as a guest this week. Ooh. Uh, and then um, and then probably I'll be streaming all kinds of video games this week. Well, Think we got stuff to talk giving... about too with Star Wars' announcement. Oh, holy. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, holy. So, yeah. My um, God. Star see you Wars there and catch us there if you want to, folks. But yeah. Yes. Little Pip Ass Cheerio. Cheerio Pip Yeah, goodbye. Uh, as see you later. Bye, Toodaloo. So, you mean goodbye? with wrapping up characters and kind of the plot line, uh, does that kind of do story or is there anything else you guys want to talk about? General general points about the story. Um, um, I think it's amusing that Leon really does just annihilate the population of this area of the world. <laughs> you killed so many people. <laughs> And I haven't thought about this carefully enough, but I see this as more of a situation rather than a story. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just like okay. they go in, they, <laughs> they do uh, the thing, they get out. Whoa, like... that happened. A little bit. Because <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure if it bleeds over into like maybe environmental design or, or level design to start talking about how the events slot into place, especially versus the OG one. Um, right. I think a lot of us, possibly all of us, would have been like playing it and been like, oh, so they didn't do, oh, that's there. Oh, okay, so that's there and that's there. Oh, but when is going to be yeah. the thing? Oh, they didn't do the thing. Oh, okay. You know, you're having that right. thought throughout. Instead of, and this this applies to everything that's ever a remake or remaster or whatever, uh, I'm always like, I wonder what it would have been like to play this without the knowledge of the thing it's, you know, remaking. Because um, you're just constantly comparing and stuff. But No laser hallway, zero out of ten. Overall, I don't think hugely of the story in either, but I do think the remake has improved upon the story of Resident Evil 4. I that's agree. gotta be that yeah. I, that can't be a hot take, right? That's like that's just reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just there, oh, there's oh, been a fair oh, amount oh. of people who uh, well not not me, but I've I've noticed a lot of Twitter arguments between people who think that this version of Resident Evil 4 has Sacrifice too much of the campiness and ruin the story, and ruined. Um, the oh boy. ruined. Well, yeah, I I think that's taken it pretty far. Well, yeah, the tone uh, and the story are different. Um, yeah, sure. but I I prefer I like the actual writing though. Yeah, there's some good there's some, there's some good stuff here. There's some good stuff here. Because yeah. like the, the story is still pretty flawed, like in this in this game, and and it's like and the character development isn't like particularly complex or anything, but there are a lot of improvements that have been made. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think the funny thing is there's only so much you can fix without pissing without people off that the story's too different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, I think that's right. Um, someone just mentioned it, and I thought, yeah, that should be mentioned too. Um, performance, that's probably the first thing we should have talked about, actually. The How does the game run? And how well does it run? And run, 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 all the running. I thought we did beautifully when we were talking about the... Uh, a little the... Bit graphics i don't think it was mentioned in anywhere near as much as it should have been oh, this, I, yeah I, this game runs really well i think it's yeah. excellent i'm impressed by how there's been barely any discussion about it running badly on any platform yeah. i've seen like well, none of I, it anyway i don't know because it's uh it's our engine is it seems at this point it's because i think capcom used to use mt framework Yep. Um, that was like one of their big in-house engines. Now it seems to be RE Engine. They used it. I think it was the first one was seven, and then they used it for like Devil May Cry Five, which ran really well. I found. Like mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but like that, they those games look really good and and perform pretty well. It's uh, it's kind of remarkable, honestly. Yeah. RE so. Engine yeah. is it's sort of similar to me to the engine Kojima was, was working on that he Fox made engine. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, the Fox engine. He's made Metal Gear Solid 5 with it, and then it kind of imploded because of all the business things around it. But 
RE Engine seems like it's sort of delivering on the promise of that, where it's this Japanese engine that looks really really great and has a lot of good lighting effects and reflection technologies but it also seems to run way better what? than it should on hardware that is not really powerful enough to 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 deliver the results that you'd be thinking and a resident evil engine is quite flexible too because it's what monster hunter rise runs on on switch well oh. are they it, yeah. someone in oh, chat well. said they're using it for street fighter 6 are they using yeah. re engine for street fighter 6 I think Capcom is pretty much using it for That's everything, engine, and if anything, I okay. think they should be licensing it. It's, that, it's crazy so it could be how versatile tens. it is. I think you mentioned wow. it just now, but what was the first game to be using it, this particular uh, Resident Evil 7. I thought, okay, because I was going to say, one of the things, when I first ever played the demo for that, that struck me straight away was the look. I was just like, yeah. damn, this game looks good. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's got this I look to one it. Of the, uh, the big things that is, like, baked into RE Engine is uh, photogrammetry. So, like, scanning real-world objects, people... And integrating them into the game, like it's it's really baked into its features, and so it's partially like, I think it was because they did that for Battlefront. I think Star Wars Battlefront used photogrammetry where they like go out to the sets where they'd actually shot, like uh, episode yeah. four, five, and six to scan those environments and get them in there. And mm -hmm. it's just like there's a lot of details that can be captured in photogrammetry that are hard to replicate, you know, going in by hand. Um, so a lot of racing games like, use it. Yeah, yeah, for, for vehicles and stuff. Um, I don't, I don't know what this engine like. Th these games look great. Like looks Resident great, Evil runs remake, great, look really good. The fact that it runs well is a huge plus. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It like it runs really well. Yes, smooth launch, no bullshit. Yeah. And someone <laughs> said, compared to the Last of Us uh, one point. Right. I was just oh, say, oh my god, oh boy. Hey. They, they fucked that one up. That seems to be pretty stanky. And that is a I, universally I up and... disproved of uh, performance. Yeah. It caused me physical pain because of the frame drops. I actually developed an act, a real world headache. Oof. Oh, damn. It, That's rough. It was, yeah, it's, it's a bad port. Very bad yeah. port. I have personally no problems with this. I, I have like one really weird issue when, where rarely when I boot up the game, the game is a bit darker and all the the skin textures are gone and the models are completely blacked blacked out oh, that's strange they're basically yeah, they're all doing it. they're all doing blackface basically i don't recall <laughs> oh um hmm yeah i don't uh, i saw that one on the last of us port that actually happens yeah too. you're right really yeah. i think that was um it running on the steam deck which it, it went from neil Druckmann promising it would be verified to now being unsupported on the steam deck damn yeah but then i just restarted the game and mostly was was it Fine, right after. Which, um, maybe might be a weird loading issue with the particular driver my AMD graphics card uses or whatever. I don't know. It could be anything. It's not a mm -hmm. showstopper or anything. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, have to if, restart the game and you're good to go. If I was going to... I mean, I mean, if I was going to... I'd have to essentially nitpick uh, in yeah. terms of like the graphics and how yeah, it works. Yeah, it's not seamless um, and perfect Ari, and flawless. Ari Engines, I think its biggest issue is how it handles some reflections on shiny metal objects. Um, I haven't, I haven't watched anyone else's playthrough, but in Luis's lab, uh, there's a lot of shiny desks and metal boxes and stuff. And the way that the reflections work on it is really strange. Um, on the side of Leon's uh, starter pistol, uh, you could see it as well. There's just, it, it's tough to see, but sometimes it really just has, it seems to have this odd reflection quality to it. Every once in a while, an odd really pop in, what? but we're talking like, I'd have to really stretch. I mean, it. Is there's so much to praise when it comes to how this game looks and how well it runs for how good it looks. I almost want to. I think, I think it's one uh, of the best looking games. I want to keep in mind, like, because it's already kind of been forgotten now with how much stuff there's just in this game to talk about, both praise and criticism. But first time I saw one of the Salvadors chopping apart a zombie as it came toward me, a, a Donato, I, I was just like, holy fuck, that looks good. Mm -hmm. just, it just looks great. <laughs> like, the way the pieces are covered off, the blood spray, the. Uh, the way that like everything's lit and and uh, so clear and effective and almost yeah. it just feels like it's all happening very um, in real time as opposed to like effort was put in to make it look like it's in real time. Um, yeah, a lot of the gore in this game is fantastic. I know we did mention looks that, but really it's worth good. repeating. Oh yeah, the gore looks great. Uh, the way that pieces, mm -hmm. the, the way that uh, you know parts fly off Ganados, the way the heads come off, just the 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 explosion of flesh and blood whenever the plagas come out of the neck. Seeing the parasites inside of bisected enemies that have been blown apart, 
Um, it, it just it looks really really good. There's a lot of there's a lot of really good stuff. Someone in my chat right. when I was streaming mentioned that much like God of War Ragnarok, people have complained they sterilized this game too in terms of gore. I was like, oh, oh. No, no, that's, <laughs> like, no, that's, we've been playing uh, different games. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, so I'd say the opposite is the case. Absolutely, um, the it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like cranked up. Space. The blood is way like, more like realistic and yeah. fountain like a lot of the time. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Beyond in just the, the amount of blood, like some of the animations, like there's one yeah. where the the gigante bites his head off, and it's really oh, like, yeah. holy shit! That like, was, that's another thing. Not fucking around. Um, a lot you, of the you, times, you, you even hear the you, scream you, like inside the mouth, where it's like, yeah, yeah. And then you, use a shotgun die. on an enemy up close, and they yeah. go shatter. Dude, there's magnum shots chunk. you can take. Yeah, I, where it'll take the torso off when you shoot them with a the magnum is fucking awesome. Yeah, look, that's right. the yeah, thing. It's yeah. not just a, a jib that where it all kind of turns into just unintelligible goo. It's, hey, you can still see an arm connected to shoulder connected to a big chunk of neck on that piece. It's, ugh. It's, it, I, I, they really went all out with making it look incredible. Yeah. It looks, it's one of the best looking games ever made. Um, it's just like Dead Space. Like these games look incredible. I find it unbelievable yep. somebody could actually like make these sorts of claims about the level of detail and polish. Like visually, it's it's like mind blowing that somebody could say that. Fucking cool. Very, yep. very, very, very. Cool. Like, look at look at look at this cave. It look looks at great. The details in these formations. It's incredible. I yeah. really like the uh, the sort of cavern area near the end. Where like you see just how ancient this threat is, mm -hmm. and you know, there's all those like giant tombs, like or statues. It yeah, looks very yeah. ominous, and I love the lighting in there. It's very spooky. It's, it's like I don't remember look. being. Yeah, I wasn't this quite engine... spooked by this part in the original, but this is awesome. The engine and the it, it, it just produces these really nice textures, and everything seems like it fits in. Nothing stands out as if it doesn't belong. The light yeah. plays well off of objects. Uh, it's just, it, it's really great. Like, this engine is, this, this is a great I, engine. I, uh, I, I would say so. Like, it has been consistently churning out, like, the best looking games. And it's crazy. Because, like, Devil May Cry 5, that's a great looking game. And it performs yep. incredible. Like, that's an action game that runs at 60 frames per second, I believe, on consoles. Um, it's, it's like, kind of crazy, the level of performance that you're getting with the level of detail that you're getting with characters and environments and effects. Um, it's really, really, really impressive. Devil May Cry 5 was 60 FPS when it came out on base level PS4 yeah. and Xbox One. So that's crazy. And it looks, how good it looks nuts on PC if you play it mm -hmm. uncapped. It, like it can hit yeah. 120 no problem on a mid range rig. That's the, so uh, yeah, please keep yeah. using it, Capcom. <laughs> yeah, it was the the Frostbite engine was what was used for Dead Space remake and uh, some Battlefield games, and that's another lovely engine that runs quite well. well. So as I understand great. it, Frostbite has often caused some developers, like Bioware in particular, has struggled a lot with Frostbite to where they're not getting it is... anymore. They're using Unreal Engine now, I think, for uh for the next Dead uh not Dead Space, Dragon Age and Mass Effect because it is optimized primarily for Battlefield. Smaller... Okay, I gotcha. It's first person I, I'm shooting. kind of, I'm starting to worry about Unreal Five being the thing that everyone is jumping on for upcoming AAA games, because at least for PC ports, not been looks, uh, damn, looks damn not good. been a lot of great results. Oh, okay. It looks like well it's for Unreal Five features. in particular, there hasn't been a lot of them yet. It's just been uh, I think what, what I, Fortnite I believe runs quite well, although I've I've not. Oh, we it, love so Fortnite. Well. I mean, I, I, I'm saying that that's an example that people will often throw out is the thing that it's like, oh, that's UA, UE5 in a game that performs very, very well and it has well, multiplayer well, and all sorts of things happening. But um, Callisto Protocol, I think, is probably the, the easiest example. That was uh, four, the, right? Wasn't it? I believe it's UE5. I think it's an early it? UE5 game and it's okay. uh, it doesn't perform particularly well. Uh, There's well, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not UE5, but The Last of Unreal Us Engine is... Unreal Engine yeah. The Last of Us, though, is is a game that's coded around uh, running on a PlayStation 5 and doing the kind of SSD texture streaming stuff that apparently mm. a lot of developers are starting to utilize UE5 for on PS5. I'm not a developer, so I, I don't know how accurate this is to a T. It's just some of the stuff I've been reading about where developers are thinking that, hey, even though UE5 is flexible, it might still be the kind of thing that you have to decide if you're making 
a mobile game or a PC game or a console game because it's going to be difficult to use it to do multiple things. But uh, I hope that's not the case, but it, it frightens me that it might be. Well, all right. PC ports. <laughs> I think uh, when they were developing Resident Evil 7 and making this engine for it, they were really at the time focused on making it a, a real looking immersive experience. It's like, we're going to make this scary. It's going to be in VR. Yeah. And it's, um, it's got to look good. And then once they did that, it's just like, hey, well, let's remake the old games with this new engine. They'll look great. And, and uh, yeah. I think like VR, it. the VR aspect of 7, John, that you just brought up there was a something that I think put them on good goals for performance because you you right. need a certain frame rate in VR to have it not be instantly headache inducing. And I think yeah. that them knowing that, hey, we yeah. want an engine that will impress people in a 30 FPS trailer that they see on TV, but also we need to be able to run that impressive thing in VR. And yeah, I think it, I think it worked out pretty well, at least from a I, performance standpoint. I totally, that's a great point. Yeah you've really got to up the frame rate for VR. Because if you're moving around like your head, you're going to notice the choppiness. It's going to be 90 really FPS abundant, no, but it's, it's abundantly smooth, clear. A smooth 30 frames per second. What are you talking about? Yeah, the human eye can see like 24 anyway. I do love when I see a review. Runs at a so smooth well 30 FPS. That. And, and that was a yes, Super Bowl commercial looking as good as it can look. And then the game plays like crap. Oh, yeah, boy. and that was a shame, especially with the first iteration of the PSVR. That that in order to get the frame rate high, you have to lower the frame the uh, resolution drastically. So it didn't it didn't for as pretty as Resident Evil Seven is, if it's at a low resolution and it's you can see all the pixelation, you know, it doesn't really. I I actually I liked playing Seven in VR. It just sucks that it's exclusive to PlayStation VR. And it is, yeah. It, yeah. You, you, I think it's you, fun. You can have yeah. place uh, Resident Evil Seven on Steam and a Steam VR headset, but not be able to play Resident Evil Seven in VR on Steam. It's so strange. I heard PSVR Two is a huge improvement, and apparently Resident Evil Eight is kind of cool on it. Um, I, yeah, and I hear Four is getting an exclusive VR mode for PSVR Two, which again, I don't know why people are doing exclusives for uh, VR. That's the I last. Fucking hate it so much. <laughs> It honestly it pisses me off. I've been having you VR have for VR, like a don't couple you of metal? years. Sorry? You have VR, don't you, Metal? Yes, that's why it pisses me to fuck off. <laughs> I was about to ask. Like, <laughs> VR is already a niche market. It's not yeah. mainstream at all yet. And you already right. go out of your way to fucking do exclusives for VR? What are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck uh, are you doing? OG, OG Resident Evil 4 VR exists, and it's exclusive to the Meta Quest. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. yeah. You can't and now, get you, it now you have this really amazing PSVR 2 headset that is incredible and has only a couple of games you can play anyway because you have to do the PSVR games. Wow. Well, no, right. actually, the PSVR games are not backwards compatible for, or forwards compatible right. with PSVR 2. Are you serious? <laughs> Though certain games are getting free patches. So it's they're just not out of the box. You, you, they have to because the PSVR, the PSVR one has a different type of tracking technology than two. So there is a bit of porting that needs to be done in order to control those games. And I don't think Sony made it particularly easy for them to just say, OK, plug PSVR two into or PSVR one emulator into PSVR two and just that's it done apparently it's not that easy so there there needs to be individual work done on each game in order to make it happen yeah that's stupid this yeah. um uh, well enough, yeah. in terms of i don't know whatever that is right like almost the meta of how they release things and what they're releasing it with i'm desperately trying to sew that into saying the topic we could go to next that i think we should is uh, the different things that are released with this game, how they've released this game, what is what you can buy, and what it'll get you. Um, uh, especially because yes, we're about we... to start up the <laughs> gameplay talk, and so, you know, it, it, it's just a tired old subject, but it'll always come back, which is that of, um, I guess, pre-ordering and then special editions and what that meant for the gaming industry. We're, uh, we're well into it now. We're all from an era, I assume everyone here is, where um, we saw it begin, and we saw all the commentators talk about what this will mean and how it can get worse, and 
why it's a bad practice, yeah. and we're now I in an era where it's when just. Todd I was, revealed the horse. I was there, Gandalf. I was yeah. there three thousand years ago. When Dead Space Three came out. I was there. <laughs> yeah, Dead yeah. Space Three. You love your Oblivion out, horse, don't, don't you? Don't you want to oh, play yeah. horse horse some armor? armor? Good old horse armor. Yeah. So, uh, for those who don't know, you have the game has released. You also have the deluxe edition, which gives you some mm -hmm. skins, which I'm fine with. That's fine with, yeah. Then it gives fine. you uh -huh. some weapons, and it's like, Whoa, well, what? hold your horses. Maybe they're just weapon skins, right? They could be, mm -hmm. but it's it's called like the Fleamer, and it's just the same gun, but it looks cool, and it's like that yeah, could it's just be a it. different model, yeah, yeah. Instead of a yeah, instead of a. The, instead of a Remington 870, it looks like a Spaz 12 or something like that. Yeah, it's not really cool. One of the really first cool. things I think when I completed it and Rags did that we talked about, I had to let him know about it because I, I don't think you didn't play with the deluxe version, right? No, like uh, like with pretty much everything, I buy the regular version and then then I might buy extra versions later or collector's editions that are, um, you know, separate. I, I don't. I'm out of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I typically just go for the normal experience. I guess the normal version. If um, because uh, I was almost certain that I was gonna love the game because I'd seen enough of it. So I was like, if I get some extra skins, soundtrack, concept art, whatever, it's just like that. I'm happy for the game to have a bit more money. It's cool with me. Fair, fair, fair. And then totally. of course mm -hmm. you boot it up and you're like, oh, I have a I have a shotgun that's apparently Swiss. Okay. Oh, the shotgun's power is roughly similar. And its spread is roughly similar, and it's pretty fast and reloads. It, it you know it basically can replace the standard one. Then you you have a look in your inventory and you're like, oh, it's oh. it's like a oh. <laughs> it's significantly smaller. Um, I always have forget this. Space left. Is it <laughs> fourteen slots for the standard shotgun or twelve? Six uh, by two, sure. right? Or is it? I always forget because I'm retarded. But yeah, me too. Um. Riot gun is huge. Riot gun is huge. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, and it, well, in, in any case, the 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 shotgun they provide you, the skull shaker, it's uh, it's five slots. Yes. Which is less One than row. half. <laughs> um, it's insane because uh, some people may not appreciate. Uh, I wonder what order we should do this conversation. In to be honest with you, because it's so difficult to sort of navigate whether it should be inventory discussed first, gunplay discussed first, or this, but. Um, I didn't need to play the game to know that that was kind of insane. I was like, how how am I having a shotgun option here that takes five spaces? Like that, is the shotgun like drastically worse? And it's like, well, no, I used it and it's really good. Um, in terms of, it, it, you know, it, its effect is that of the shotgun as far as I'm concerned. It got me out of several uh, close calls. And it's just, uh, it sits so, so small. And then of course you get the Sentinel-9, which is a pistol that by all accounts, exactly the same as the standard pistol, just better. Yeah, mm. it's like, like one tier, it's like one step above. Like yeah, where the damage one, is 1.0, it's 1. 1.1. 1. It shoots faster, has a bigger mag. Uh, yeah, looks so, yeah. really cool, too. Looks really cool. Basically, so, yeah. the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider pistol. Like a, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> US, USB. What, what, what's that type? Of, I think USB is the type of pistol it is. 44. Yeah, I know there's a USP forty five. Oh, you know what? It's the Half Life two pistol too, basically. That's hmm. a, that's probably. Oh, a better one. okay. Um, I that's the, this what I'm trying to say is this is bad, not something you should this do. This is bad, especially and in a survival you, game. Well, and and the thing is, they updated it recently, so instead of me having to explain why that's bad, I can just make it clear. They've now made it so you can purchase upgrade exclusive tickets. So when yeah. you you know, when you're struggling early game because you suck and you've spent all your ammo and you've got nothing and you're like, oh, what do I do? And it's like, well, if you pay, you can get some exclusive upgrades that'll make your gun unstoppable. And it's like, woohoo! Lame. Yeah, <laughs> like, very lame. lame. So, yeah. these are... Pay to win in single-player games is cringe. Is very yeah, cringe. These yeah. are significant upgrades for people who don't know. The exclusive upgrades for these weapons are very, very powerful. They can do everything from increasing power by one and a half or two times to uh, increasing the rate of fire greatly. But it, yeah, they make these weapons really good. And typically you have to upgrade a weapon fully in order to even unlock the ability to get the exclusive upgrade. Then you have to get to the point in the story where you're allowed to buy the upgrade. And the upgrade costs 90, 100,000 pesetas. Yep. So it's a really, it's, it's a lot of money. You have to do a lot of so careful buying... balancing of your wallet, basically, to really think about it. It's like, do you really want to spend all the money on that? Do you think that'll be worth it? And it's like, well, you better and, make it uh, worth it. 
And in addition to that, there are exclusive uh, tickets, exclusive upgrade tickets in the game. You can get two of them. Um, yeah. However, uh, if you want to get them as soon as you can, you have to uh, essentially spend just a couple pesetas in order to get to the first one as soon as possible. Uh, and that's a big upgrade. I mean, that's like, that's what you want to do in a run. You want to, you know, buy the treasure map, or essentially, and, and then when you get to the, the castle, you spend your 30 spinels on that upgrade, and you spend it on, you know, probably, for me it was the 1903 is when I spent it on. Um, yeah. And it makes your guns extremely, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal, it's a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah, it's like double um, damage, sometimes even five times the damage, I think with the Killer 7, it's five times the damage or something. You get better crits with the Sentinel oh, yeah, and yeah. the base pistol. So it's, it's Killer a, 7, just, I think it's also five, five times, times crit, crit chance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's one of them. Well, critical yeah. hits are amazing. Like the the base seven, damage yeah. on it's like 27 or something yeah. like that. It, to, to add to that, for a couple of the bonus weapons, the exclusive is literally infinite ammo. Yes. So, uh, that, so that is huge. It will change everything uh, to get a, to buy one of those things and unlock that that early. And funnily enough, Rags almost stepped on it there, but you, you also get, I didn't even realize this, they give you, when you buy Deluxe, an exclusive treasure map that adds treasure into the game and points out where it is. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's, Seriously? That's, Jesus that's something Christ. I was told about only in my second place. I didn't know about it. I, I didn't realize I thought, that's what was happening. I knew yeah, there was an extra map, just... but I thought it was pointing at things that already existed. Exactly. Yeah. And when someone was I... like, no, no, you get extra. I was like, oh. Oh, my God. Because every time it said it had the, the one with the yellow plus, right? Then it says exclusive map treasure. Is that what that means? I think uh, so, yeah. And, and someone in chat said uh, you can't turn that off as well. I would always mm. immediately buy the treasure map, so every time I saw that icon, I just thought that that meant, okay, so that wouldn't be on the map unless I bought the That's what I map. thought, yeah, but treasure plus yeah. means treasure that isn't actually oh. in the base game. You have to... Okay. This is what I mean, like... Th <laughs> this is actually going to play into some other elements of this game. They do not fucking tell you what's going on a lot of the time. No. It's really it's annoying. <laughs> So yeah, just buying it, it doesn't just allow you to, it, it's kind of like a, you get to double dip with the power it gives you. It doesn't just allow you to get a free, ex you know, besides what you pay for it, in-game a free exclusive upgrade for a weapon, which, take the Red 9 for example, with the exclusive upgrade, it's 4.05 power. That's over four times the damage of the standard pistol. That, that's a big deal for, you know, pistol shot for pistol shot. Yeah. <laughs> with the M1903, it, uh, a critical hit, like headshots and critical hits, they do like 32 damage per rifle round. It's, it's, it's huge. Um, Massive, yeah. But it allows you to double dip because you don't just have to do all that and spend the money. It means that all that stuff can go to something else in its place, which means you essentially get two upgrades worth. All those spinels that you need to save to, get the, you know, to pay for the 30 and 40 uh, spinel cost upgrade tickets, uh, respectively, those can go towards stocks, Yellow herbs, treasure maps, um, is treasures, all that stuff. Now you don't have to worry about it. You can spend those 70 spindles on all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, and it throws um, out like any sense of, uh, you know, if anyone ever says to you, like, oh, I, I thought the balancing wasn't too great because I picked up a bunch of the DLCs and it kind of just threw everything off. You're just like, oh, yeah. Someone in, <laughs> I guess uh, it someone would in be. Chat, Someone in chat, Vector, is saying that the paid DLC map gives you a total of 70,400 pesetas on the village and 170,800 uh, 170, pesetas on the castle. Jeez, that's yeah, a that, lot. That is, that's basically fully upgrading another weapon. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That's, uh, that's that a, lot of, significant, a lot of cash. Yeah, that's a significant amount of money in this game. Uh, so... Boo. Yes, we disapprove. Yeah. Boo, uh, boo, of... boo. Disapprove. That's bad. Don't do it. Yeah. And it's I lame. Don't let mobile fucking shit infect main games. Don't uh, do it. This um, this campaign is I... so strong, it doesn't need that shit. You'll be fine. And then, of course, yeah. they'd be like, exactly, we'll be fine. We can do this and that. It'll be fine. It's like, mm. well, then, <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I feel like if the answer is, okay... The game industry is moving in a direction where we can't just do the sticker price. We got to think of battle passes or some other bullshit. Let's even grant you that premise and say, okay, a game isn't viable unless you have some kind of additional monetization. I think you could do this and have people be okay with it. If you just say, okay, we have a gold edition of the thing. You get a bunch of different skins and fancy stuff that's non-gameplay related and cosmetic, and we need people to buy this in order to fund the game for the mass market. So I'm, if you're I'm, a big fan of the game, 
just pay the pay the extra 10 bucks and it'll ensure that we can probably make another one of these one day and the vast majority of games especially if you can pay that extra bit later be like yeah throw in the tip then well, yeah, i'm, I'm having them separate out ends. you know like um i don't think you could have done it with mercenaries i think people would have been too pissed off with that but you know like oh, yeah. the bonus missions like with eight or whatever it's like that's fine if you make that paid dlc it's okay the game's mm -hmm. pretty huge as it stands um, but if, you know, those formats of trying to make more money, yeah, I'm much more in, uh, on board with them, especially skins. I think they started doing it earlier, like in Resident Evil 2, the remake, you can buy like an unlock key that basically just makes all the I've heard that, yeah. bonus weapon, uh, you know, un availability statuses to true, just switches it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it should just all stay cosmetic, you know? If you're yeah, gonna have yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say, is there? It's like we don't yeah. like this. And I mean, like but, yeah. I get it. It's a first, it's it's a single player game, sure. It, but it's it's not. It's that creep of this is what's in the game now. It used to be when you bought Resident Evil Four and you beat that with whatever, you were on the same level as everyone else. You couldn't just pay. You couldn't just pay to circumvent the game because all these things do is it circumvents the challenge of the game. It literally just makes the game easier, significantly easier. Right. Um, and, and I don't, I don't like that. I think that, I think it definitely encroaches on the spirit of what the game is yeah. and should be. Um, and I, I, well, because I do not like it. It's kind of worth saying it now because like everything we're going to say about balance and management is null and void for people who buy this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so keep that in mind, I guess. If, uh, if you were thinking of playing the game and you think it's too hard, don't you worry. You can buy some exclusive tickets. And this nice. is not a super difficult game uh on uh, depending on the mode of course but i mean if oh that, it's not that's not the way whatever happened to practice just play on fucking better and standard playing on mode normal. if you want to not have or assisted to, i guess yeah, yeah or assisted if you want to blow ahead. if you want to blow through the game without a problem just for funsies i'm not going to blame you at all if that's what you want to do and have fun just play on the normal or the assisted mode true um so you guys ready to talk mechanics um, or... I'm not sure how to... This doesn't quite work in the same way as we can with story. This is going to absolutely be a thing where we move around all over the place, more than likely. Yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly where everyone would like to start. It sounds like I a good idea to go... management, I... baby. Let's jump right no, into the let's, meat. Let's, let's start <laughs> with the movement, because that's the first movement? thing you get yeah? to do okay. in the game, is you get uh, to move. Uh, the first thing you get to do in this game is uh, move. Uh, that's true. Resident Evil 4 had what is known as tank controls. Essentially, you cannot strafe left and right. Your character can move forward, back, and you can pivot left and right. But you cannot strafe left and right. You move essentially like a tank on treads. That's the yep. name. Furthermore, this... when you aim, you can't move. You're stationary. Yes. Mm -hmm. at all. And you when can't you move while choose. reloading either. Yep. You yeah. have to choose between moving and shooting or uh, moving and reloading uh, because uh, those are all uh, mutually exclusive, which... Um, I think works actually quite well. It's not something you really see, so it might take some people a bit of time to get used to, but it works really well within the game. The decision of do I want to shoot things in front of me or do I want to move away, um, I think it, it, it adds a lot to the game and how it plays out and in the encounters. And there's a lot of skill to be picked up in how you use those tank controls to maneuver in the environment. How do you round corners? When should I about face? When should I change? Um, so that that's how it used to be in the old game. Wow. And it's, you know, I like it. I, I, I like that. What and do I you understand say, people... Rags, to the claim of it being clunky? I would say that it's actually the opposite of clunky. I think it is incredibly rigid and um, tight. Uh, I think that there's... If someone says clunky, what does clunky controls mean? I, I might say maybe the original Dead Space a bit. Maybe Isaac moving around is a bit clunky. Um, but I think that there is no, there's no clumsiness in how Leon moves in the original. It is very deliberate. Your momentum, the way you move, the way you turn, it's very specific. A again, it, you, it, it's very precise. And I, I don't agree that it is clunky. I... I think that I know why people say that because all of a sudden, when you can't strafe, that that's I mean, when in virtually every other game you can. That seems like a really big limitation, and it is. 
but it's a mechanic that adds a challenge and a way of moving about the world that plays well with the you know the combat system and, and sort of the enemy design and the choices curiosity. you have to make as a result. Do you feel the same way about Metroid Prime? I have not played Metroid Prime. Same controls as Echoes. Oh, um, gonna be honest, it's been so long since I've played Metroid Prime Two. I couldn't give you an honest answer. Just been just, too long. I can't obviously, remember. it's FPS, but tank controls still, and it's like, I, don't, you I know. mean, yeah. It, I, I I just I can't I just can't remember that enough of that game. And I have I a much play. bigger problem with Metroid Prime's con original controls than I do with Resident Evil 4's. But Resident Evil 4, I think I, I I might even have been on EFAP at one point saying that the Resident Evil 4 controls haven't aged well. And since going back and replaying it, I completely renege that statement. Because... Because, yeah, I was going to say, everything Rag said, I completely agree with, basically. I think it, it is built with the controls in yep. mind. Everything is there. Uh, everything works. And it's as dis as told. And I think the confusion comes in of like, yeah, but I can't do I can't do more things with that I can do in other third-person shooters. And it's like, yeah, can, yeah that's though. a mistake correct. to think that yes. yeah. more is better or more you, is yeah. less clunky. You're correct that you can't do uh, the things you can do in other games. That's all games. Uh, yep. There is an element of working within the limitations as part of the challenge. Uh, it doesn't just give the game a decent amount of character to it, because from the moment you pick up the controller and start moving around in Resident Evil 4, the original, you understand that there's this limitation that you have to work with. Um, it's just like the, you know, just like a, all, an array of other different mechanics. Well, mm -hmm. you think of the original Resident Evil game shooting controls, you had far less control than you did in Resident Evil 4. So I think the problem is when you look back on it from the context of, I just played The Division 2 with a, a, you know, an Xbox controller or a, a mouse and keyboard. I'm used to being able to basically control a third-person shooter the way a first-person shooter is controlled on PC. But that's not really what Resident Evil 4 is doing it's it's kind of taking the resident evil controls and being like what if we gave the player more control of where they could aim and i think that it's it's in looking at it as a completely different concept of control that grew in a different direction and i guess sort of got absorbed into the the less tank like controls but i think that once you get over that learning curve and just look at the resident evil 4 controls as being very deliberately designed and not just ah oh, this this plays like a shitty third person shooter now it, it's modern third person shooter but bad it's not that it's it, it is its own feel that you have to kind of get used to and i think the quick turn is sort of the key to it once you realize how to quickly Use the 180 degree turn in order to more uh, to more quickly get a if you're using, say, a clock face it's using the, the 12 o'clock to six o'clock to quickly get to seven o'clock and eight o'clock. Like using that action to also yeah, get yeah. to those clock faces. Um, Once you get good at that, it, it all kind of clicks and Resident Evil 4 becomes just a joy to play. And I'm talking the, about the, the OG one. When I'm immersed into the control set, I never feel restricted because I understand yeah. how all of it works. I'm like, it, it's it's no less restriction than any other video game, as as kind of Rax was implying there. Like, uh, you you can play games that go all the way down to like literally Pong. If someone said, you know, why can't I do and then names a whole bunch of mechanics, like because that's not the way this game has been designed. It's, they don't want you to be able to. If you could move like Leon can in the new game, in the old game, the old game becomes piss easy. Like it's not even close. Yeah, because you can. <clears throat> You know, but the funny thing is, the reason why I use the word clunky as well is because it was, I was setting up. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know, I don't think this will be a hot take. Might be, but I actually think the new game is clunkier than the OG game. Mechanic. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, probably. You, I guess you're referring to when you try to move around quickly, and then it's like, oh, there's an enemy. Let me quickly turn around or something. There's or a couple things. Change and my directions. I since we're it, on it, movement, it's, it's weird because he. I he's, agree with he you goes, if you're talking about contextual it, actions. He, I he think goes, those are clunky. Leon likes to go from moving incredibly nimble to I'm a tank now and take almost a second to turn around. 
that's what I felt like in so, some places. Yeah, that might be the place to start. Um, there yeah. are times where Leon's fumbliness absolutely fucking kills me. Like, it's driving me insane. I'm, I'm like, trying to figure out w exactly what my options are, and I'm not even sure, because it depends on where Leon is facing at the time, and in what way he's been pushed, and in what way he's slipping on the ground, and in what way he's deciding he can run. And I think all these things have been added in as a way to better immerse you in the realistic movements of a person in this environment, I guess. But um, when you're playing a fucking video game and mechanically you need him to move to a different place and you're like holding thing and spamming like sprint, you're like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, there I go. Mm -hmm. It just it uh, feels like things aren't yeah. working right as opposed to it's designed on purpose to give you the sense that, you know, things are difficult right now. You're getting pushed around, you're getting punched, you're, you're a bit dazed or something. Um, meanwhile, obviously in the OG game, everything works the way that it does all the time because that's, that's how it works. And that might be a boon to, like I said, realism, immersion, maybe. Um, but mechanically speaking, it can create uh, a different experience that may not be preferable. Especially when you can't, you can't determine when it happens. Like, you're talking about that stumble that you get when you're in red tier health, right? There's a couple, and this one, it relates not just to trying to get out of places, but I was playing Mercenaries and it was absolutely driving me fucking nuts. When your health is getting lower and lower, but you need to be careful to only use your full heal, you know, at the lowest health, but not dead, mm -hmm. so that you can take the most advantage of it. Like, when you get... I, I was a Krauser, and I got knocked... I think I had, like, a third of my health left, and I was like, that's fine. Then I got hit by someone as I was getting up, which is always fun. And I was like, okay, that's probably low <laughs> enough now that I'll take it. But it was like some spamming tab. Tab, 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 tab. And he's going like... Oh, 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 oh. Uh, stands up straight, and I'm like, why isn't my tab opening? And then someone else pushes yeah. me, and I'm like, oh, I guess it's reset now. <laughs> like, fine. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. let me know when I can fucking open my inventory. I got so scared I was gonna tab into the menu and then out of it because I was spamming the yeah, tab button. Yeah, I've done that. Um, I, I had to, I had to uh, step out and pee for a moment. Uh, have you, what, did you, what did you guys talk about for the moment uh, while I was gone there? So I said that I think the new game is actually clunkier than the old for movement. I would agree. It is clunkier, and it is far more easy to manipulate in ways I don't believe the devs intended. Um, I did a lot of playing and fiddling around with um, how you can, how, how Leon moves around and how that works in tandem with some you know, other elements of uh, his, his you know, capacities. For instance, um, this will apply mostly to PC because of the, the nature of mouse and keyboard aiming. You can change Leon's momentum at any time, essentially canceling it out by aiming in a direction and then hitting W for moving forward. So it is quicker if you, and now in this game, as opposed to other Resident Evils, you're, when you're not aiming in, your mouse controls the, you know, the camera. It's where the, the camera's looking, not necessarily where Leon's looking. And so you can have the camera looking at Leon's front towards his, um, you know, towards behind him. Just tap right click to start aiming and then tap W to move forward. And you'll just instantly snap backwards in the opposite direction, which is legitimately useful for baiting out an enemy attack or changing directions very quickly. But most importantly, uh, what this allows you to do is very quickly face a direction so that you can um, initiate a uh, like a block on an enemy attack that you otherwise couldn't, mm. or to uh, use some contextual action like a, a melee attack, something of that nature, uh, which is faster than having Leon actually turn around with his weight. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's 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 just an example of I, I even told Mahler when I was fiddling around with this. I said, yeah. If, if you ever about to, if you're running past an enemy and you're expecting them to attack you, just it right before they attack, just um just right click towards them and then hit that space bar and you'll be a okay. You don't have to worry about Leon uh you know getting hit in the back. I'm stumbling um, and it, stumbling and stumbling and stumbling and stumbling. Which by the way, even if yeah. it's for like two seconds, that'll feel like a lifetime when everything is down to the wire. Oh yeah, oh. um mm -hmm. there is uh, yeah, there there's really. just this. Like, it looks good, the way Leon moves around. It looks really good. It looks really uh, mostly realistic, really nice. But um, sometimes it could be a little like, uh, yeah, it's like, I get it. And it's like, why is it taking you so f you know, long to move forward? You know, things of that nature. Yeah, um, we talked um, about this, but there's this moment where even if you're like, let's say, half health, where you're hit and you go, ah, oof, ah. Mm, and then you back up and it's like is that even realistic though would you really go like oh man i just need a second one one sec guys let me just get well, my head together 
Like, no, you would, you'd be trying to move away. You'd, you'd be starting up a run. You'd be like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, my fucking head. Ah, oh, Jesus, where am I going? Ah, not like, ah, uh, one sec. Oof. The inventory it, screen is already a break. I mean, it, the inventory screen already breaks, like, the immersion and reality of the game in the t terms of you have this case, and at any point you could instantly open it up, look through everything, sort it, time pauses, and you use an item without any sort of animation or anything. Um, we're already there. Yeah, this idea worry. that we have to be uh, this idea that we have to lock players into staggered animations or have them juggled between multiple hits and remove from them the ability to open up their um, inventory and use healing items in between taking these attacks so that they could survive. Um, it it's really it really sucks. Don't do that. You don't have to yeah. do that. Uh, if you're gonna, it's like it's just a word of caution to all developers. If you are ever gonna CC the player. Be very careful with how you decide to do that, because it is generally never, ever fun to remove the player's control from their character from them. No. So be very careful be... in how you choose to do that. Hang on, sorry, I moved around, but there's this thing that I'm seeing in my own gameplay here where I'm like, <clears throat> trying to, oh shit, I've already gone way too far. God damn it, this is what happens when you deal with like a fucking nine hour recording. Um, <laughs> where there's this thing that happens, and this is kind of tied to movement, also kind of not. It's just, you know, branch, I suppose. Uh, funnily enough, by the way, this... Uh, one of the things that happens in this this recording as well is that I go for a backstab, but uh, it, it, he just slashes when I get up to it, but I think it's the, the one where it's like, you just ran out of time. Sorry, bud. Um, but there's way worse ones than that. We'll get to in a sec. But if you look at this here, um, this isn't necessarily the game not working. It's just really fucking annoying. This guy pushes me, and before I can get over, he punches me, and it drags me backwards. Oh yeah, I've seen that I happen. fucking hate well. it when that happens. It doesn't make any sense, and then it sets me up for even more hits of a place I'm trying to get yeah. away from. That push and is already bullshit, right? And then, like, the fact that it would even stop Leon, who's desperately trying to move in that other direction. It's like, oh, he pushed me, that means I stop and waddle around. And then he punches me and it pulls me backwards, and then if, you know, he was feeling particularly fucking frisky, he could have gone for a grab there. And it probably mm -hmm. would have gotten me. Yeah, it's one of those, oh, you got hit, that means your character staggers backwards, right? It's like, well, yeah. no, maybe, no, maybe if I got maybe. hit from the front, but if I get hit from the back, it will propel me in that direction. You know, it, you don't have to lock me into getting, you know, slowed yeah, it, whenever it, I get hit. It's unintuitive yes. and it's actually detrimental as fuck because it can drag you into a bunch of attacks you would have ad avoided if not yeah. for the... And it would have been avoided if the punch pushed me forward as well sometimes. And it's like, oh. And... And dear chatters, you might think if you haven't played the game, but he just grabbed you. What's the big deal? Just, just free yourself. Well, you get damaged while you get grabbed. Oh yeah, yeah, quite significantly, and it's fucking. I'm pretty sure it does more damage than one of them hitting you with a fucking axe. Unprofessional. It takes away. If you do a new game professional, you get grabbed. That takes away more than half your health. Just yeah, to grab. Easily. And, uh, and the, yeah, and then you ask, yeah, like, so what's doing the damage to Leon's body? What's happening? Yeah. Is he just grossed out by it and it's causing <laughs> yeah. emotional trauma? <laughs> what's Smell happening here? What, yeah. What's doing the damage to me? I'm just being held being aggressively. Spaniards. Aggressively, sure. I'm being held aggressively. I won't deny oh, that. Oh, no, so that's a good complaint it's... someone in chat just said. What, what, do you, what do you mean? This what? was a very specific complaint. In fact, I bet <laughs> another person is currently typing out, this is so specific and it rarely ever happens. I don't even know why you mention it. <laughs> so, well, I also, the, there is QTEs in the game when you get grabbed. And yeah. you have to tap E really, really quickly. And you're losing, you're losing yeah. more health depending on yeah. how slowly you tap the button. So it is, it, it's a pretty would, big deal when you get I grabbed. would rather that you have to tap it fast enough so you don't hit a time threshold to take damage, yeah. then you just take damage guaranteed, regardless of how fast, and how fast just determines how much damage. I, I do kind of prefer that. Like, oh shit, I have to actually type, you know, tap, 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 as fast as I can mm -hmm. to yeah. avoid taking the damage, yeah. because nothing's actually happening to Leon, you know? A lot of the I mean, time, they yeah, they, kind they're, of... they're setting him up for another attack, which to me is totally yeah, fine mechanically, yeah. but it should, it isn't the whole fucking point that I've got to break out and my benefit is that I don't get damaged. Not that I've already taken more damage than any other singular attack in the whole fucking game from the villagers. Why would you make yeah. it that way? Other than Pogus ones, though, I guess. Professional new pro game, it's basically a death sentence. You could, like, if, if you're really unlucky, actually not unlucky, that can happen quite a bit, especially when you do the beginning village part. They love grabbing you in the village, yeah. They gra So here's the thing, sometimes they do punch, punch, 
grab and then another one is already Wound charging up, up his yeah. attack and then you're dead it's like oh okay there's nothing i could have done here <laughs> it's just gg yeah i think there's a little bit of there's there's a little bit of i think there should have been some tightening up of how the plagas in or sorry, how the ganados interact with each other the timing of their attacks and um like maybe leon's capacity to take damage um i'd have to give it more thought and play it a bit more and really look at it but sometimes I, think, um, I feel like there's there's too many instances I've noticed where if you're clearing out enemies with a shotgun blast or a, a roundhouse kick or something like that, and there's enough enemies that are just outside of the range of that stagger that they're making their attack so that once you're finished with that animation, they're just on you and they're there. Yeah. Um, and it, just little things like that could be tightened up uh, to give it a bit more a fair feeling. To the players, it, it, it's funny you say because, like, uh, I think myself and Mel probably went through this. Much, much, many people did. But when you're playing the chainsaw uh, difficulty, or, or like trying at it, or playing professional, mm -hmm. and you're like, you, you, you're planning everything, making sure to avoid everything. You don't register the grabs as something to avoid in the same way as something like an axe it's attack or anything, because you're like, well, that the, you know, what I need to know about a grab is that I need to get out of it quickly with F. But then you're like, wait a minute, wait, 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 where's my health gone? Like, what what did that? Yeah. And then people are like, well, he grabbed you. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, but what did he do? <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> understand. And it's like, like, I yeah. can grab you. And did it's he have a knife in his pocket? Or uh, what is happening? Well, people have said you lose dignity from it. And so that's what the health loss oh. is. <laughs> Emotional damage, I see. I think that this game, one of the flaws I, f I think I would say with this game is, I don't know, flaw might be a strong word, um, but... One of the weird things about this game is that I, I would prefer that enemies had weapons. If enemies have weapons, it means that I could set them up for a, a well-timed parry and then a kick. It means that they have um, a lot more easy to dodge you know, attacks and attack chains. Uh, it means that contrary to what you would expect, oh good, he has an axe. At least he's not unarmed where he can make a lunge for me. Which, <laughs> yep. well, and yeah, which I've done... A, to boost you a little bit there, like um, you can have them. It's 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 really hard to say whether or not this is a this is a preference thing or a like a complete thing. But they stand in there, and you're like, okay, aim gun. Then they go and they j j hit you with a punch, and then grab you, and then throw you right. And you're like, oh wow, I, I really you you seem docile, but okay. And then next time when you're like on edge, maybe they just move to the left a bit, and you miss the shot, and you're like, ah oh, fuck. And then they duck, and you're like, what? And then they punch, and then someone else from behind you grabs, and you're just like, ah, like you you have to keep all of it in mind. That any combination of all these different events can take place at any moment, but um, I think the biggest drawback for me has to be the fact that when they grab me, I'm like, I've lost. That's it already. They took fucking yeah. everything. They've taken it all. Just, all the health has gone. Like... Yeah. Um. I. So I. I didn't learn until my second playthrough that you could crouch and avoid being grabbed. I had no clue. No idea that you could do that. I factored into all of my gameplay if there was an enemy who didn't have a weapon that I needed to make sure preemptively I had enough distance to essentially scoot back if they were to do their lunge. And then apparently then they said, no, you could crouch and avoid it. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't think that's intuitive, well, so but okay. It's going to be worth um, mentioning because someone in chat just said as well, why can I not parry the grabbers in the face when, I get, when they get close? That'd be fantastic. You can. There is a parry animation for when they grab you and you hit space at the right time. I've done it. It's really fucking cool. I did it, I think, a grand total really? like five times in my playthrough. I could never I get no it clue. consistently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you... well, I think one of the reasons is because one of the things I found out in my decently extensive testing was, and I fucking hate this, was you, Leon, you could hit E when an enemy is lunging towards you. Leon can begin and basically finish his animation of lowering himself but it's too late. You yeah. didn't hit it soon enough, and you're grabbed now. Yeah. And boy, let me tell you, shit like that, that frustrates the fuck out of me. Yeah, All right? that, see, that is what I'd call a little bit of clunk. That's some clunk in there. <laughs> That's a bit of um, clunk, yes. Because, um, yeah, it doesn't feel right at all. It feels the opposite of mechanical. It feels abstract. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it just feels like something's not quite lighted up there. The uh, By the way, my feel of it, because I knew about the parrying melee attacks since the demo, uh, uh, so there's actually the first time I think I actually pull it off is in chapter two of my stream and I'm very happy about it and I talk about what it means what it is as someone who tried to repeat it all the time my assessment isn't that like I was fucking up the timing it was more that my genuine feeling right I have no way to prove this 
is that you have like an ability to parry melee attacks, but once you spend it, it has to come off cooldown before you can use it again. That's how it felt. <laughs> yeah. Like once it had been enough time that I hadn't done it before, and then I think to do it, it would just work. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I try it again, it doesn't. Again, it doesn't. Again, it doesn't. I sort of forget about it. And then one time I'm like, oh yeah, I could try that. And then, oh, it does work. And it's like, I wonder if there's an invisible timer on that because they realized how fucking OP it would be if you could do it all the time. Not sure. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe that because there, there seemed to be times where nothing I was doing for changing up my timing on one specific attack was working. And then I would respawn, get back to that same fight and just parry every single hit perfectly. I'm just like, I didn't even get up. What, <laughs> what changed? And I, I'm inclined to believe that the problem's me, but what, every time I hear other people say that they experienced a similar thing, I'm like, well, okay, there might be some fire because I'm seeing some smoke here, you know? And someone said they've managed I, to do it multiple times in a row, so it might just be that I'm very bad. But like I said, I did try a lot and I wasn't getting consistent results. So yeah, no, there's, I'm there's something the off about numbers and code is in terms of like how the timing and animation sort of line up with the windows you have to do these things. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm just not certain. It it works mostly pretty well, but in a game like this where fights can be decided by you know a parry at the right time to set up a, a roundhouse kick clear or something of that nature, it it's really frustrating when it doesn't seem to work correctly. Um, yeah, and on the note of we're kind of talking about movement and Ganado attacks and stuff, uh, I know this has happened to myself in Metal, but I'll describe, I was about to say a generic situation, but this is one that actually happened. Uh, you're running, and things are going okay, and then you, you know, right in the background you see, oh, so right in front of you, sorry, someone's coming at you, it's a Ganado, he's about to grab, and you're like, it's alright, I'm gonna, you know, go right, and I'll be running, so I'm gonna out, uh, outrun him, it'll be fine. And as you do it, bang, in the back, you've been hit by an axe, and you're like, oh, and then uh -huh. it drags you back because the animations are fucked sometimes. And you're like, why am I going back? No, no, no. And then the guy grabs you and he turns <laughs> you around to someone who's already wound up a punch. But you've gone down. You've lost almost all your health. And then as you're yes. getting up to escape, someone else yeah. grabs you. And it's just like, I want to I want to die. That, that, that's, that was like <laughs> one of the worst experiences ever. Um, and you might be like, well, how do they fix that then? You're like, um, <laughs> it's, it's complicated. But first of all, have me fall in the direction that opposites to the force that comes in. If you yeah. know what I mean, like that would be a really good start. And then maybe um, this applies to all the Dark Souls games. Can you try and implement something that makes it so the Ganados don't combo? The combos are fucking brutal to experience. They they feel yeah, so wrong. It's really not fair when you get juggled by enemies. You're hit by one, and then you're hit by another. And it's not designed to be a combo. It's not like it's it's not designed to be like you're getting hit by a chain of attacks specifically meant to have multiple parts. It's just that multiple granadas are hitting you, and they mm -hmm. hit at such a time that you essentially get double punished because you missed one, and you don't have that ability to heal in between the punishment already being that you took damage and now you have to heal yourself. And you know what else? Um, yeah, but, uh, those situations often crop up at random too like there's not necessarily a thing that you could have done to ensure that that specific chain of attacks did not occur it's just well uh, yeah you're right i guess i could have perfectly parried the first one but it sucked that missing that one meant i got hot, hit by 30 attacks after that you know? yeah and uh, mm -hmm. another criticism i would absolutely levy because this is it was almost at times unacceptable but there are ways that i could maybe have escaped that scenario i recognize there um that involve when you crouch there are a lot of things that pull you out of crouch and one of them mm. for some fucking reason is aiming you aiming. cannot aim while crouching yeah. you have to be standing yes aiming aiming odd. weapons something you famously can't do from a crouched position yeah like um, if you well, want to give well, me a big guys cross have any idea how hard it is to hit something with a firearm while you're standing up Literally don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's like, really it's, difficult. Because that pistol it, it, doesn't matter, but with rifles, well, it's like, okay. yeah, it's nice to have that, it's nice to have that, you know, the extra little bit of, you know, stability. It's, it's like, it's not a big deal yeah. or anything, but, but it's like, like it, there's nothing stopping me it, from doing this. It's funny to me yeah. that, like, you could be in a position where you, there's, there's one very specific part of the game, and it's kind of, kind of bad uh, in terms of how this worked out. The first introduction of the first Plagueis, um, I backed up from it, because it, Turned into a thing, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I went, it, there's a cave right behind me. So I, I backed up into that. And people were like, shoot it, shoot it through the cave. And I was like, I, I can't. I can't aim while I'm crouching. And that's the only way I could see it. And so now I'm stuck because I have to go through that cave and it's right at the end, uh, the exit of it. And I can't shoot through the cave because it won't let me crouch and shoot. 
So that's great. Like, like the, the fact that there are scenarios in this game where crowd shooting would be useful, and obviously Leon is fucking capable of it, but they just yeah. don't yeah. have it implemented, and I don't know if that was a time thing, because I can't see any reason to to do that that would, like, it's like, oh, that would make it too easy. It's like, I don't think so. Like, I don't, I don't well, see how that also, would work. Also goes hand in hand with another mechanic, is the whole aiming mechanic, because now you have these crosshairs, right, that expand. And yeah. as soon as you realize, I was like, oh, so let me crouch so I probably have more stable aim. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, I'm just standing up. It's oh. like, oh, Metal, that, that's a whole other, that's a whole oh. other topic. That's foreshadowing, know, okay? It's foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Ominous I'm not going into it, but yeah. it's just counterintuitive. My metal. Because in every other game, it's like, oh, I need to be more stable, so I'm going to crouch or lie down, depending on what game you play. Like Arma, you probably want to lie down if you can, for example. Oh. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Arma has yeah. like nine different ways to stand. Yeah, you uh, could just hold the, <laughs> the Y button, I think, and then you just go like arrow you, key yeah, up. Yeah, you the, tick, 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 tick. You can. I forget that it's like control and then W and S. So instead you, of moving you, forward yeah, and back, control, right. you move your character taller or shorter in like nine different increments. Yes. Uh, which is really cool. I wish more games. I wish they'd implement that to Daisy, but it's it's a really cool thing that they do. And, uh, yeah, uh, you can shoot from all of these positions. You can. And it's worth saying yeah. that the topic of movement in this game is being textualized through all of our complaints as opposed to our praises, because everything else that we don't talk about almost is like, oh, it works real great. That's yeah, probably why yeah, we're we not talking about. For the yeah. most part, this is a very good video game. Yes. Um, and the movement system is pretty damn great. There's just all these little ways that it can cu accumulate and actually frustrating the fuck out of you. Like... It, 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 stuff like this can drive me nuts if it all happens in a row. It's just like, and it ruins like a particular thing you're trying to do. You, you feel like the game has just fucked you over for no good reason at all. Um, but you know, ninety percent of my time playing this game, I wouldn't notice the thing. It's all working the yeah, way it's supposed to. Yeah, um, it's just one of those uh, one of those little elements of. There's a lot of moving parts in terms of the combat, and sometimes they don't quite mesh together well. And depending on the mode you're playing. And because this is a survival game, you know, with health and limited resources, sometimes you feel like, oh, my God, I shouldn't have taken damage there. Oh, I shouldn't have had to expend that health. Uh, I shouldn't have had to da da I was like, oh, I feel like that. And so if these happen at key moments in one's adventure, that can frustrate you a great deal. Yes. Yeah, oh, I think the there's, um, there's pros and cons, I think, to both the movement styles of the original and this one like for instance i mean there's parts like in the original the helicopter showdown where i mean it's good but like i kind of wish that leon was a little more nimble at parts like that like f flicking move and turn just to get in the exact right position it can feel a bit tricky sometimes um but it's one of the reasons to like to still play the original resident evil 4 like in terms of movement like they feel like unique experiences and, you know, I like things about this one. I like things about the old one. And it's interesting why uh, Resident Evil 4, the original, has the controls that it does. I think one of the reasons is, like, the uh, it was or originally designed to be a GameCube exclusive. And the C-Stick yeah. isn't really a great stick for yeah, operating a stick. camera. <laughs> it's better for, like, mapping items, too, or something like that where it's just a quick flick in one direction, and that's all you need in terms of its function. Um, but uh, not only that, but t tank controls have always been associated with Resident Evil since uh, the first game. And it just made sense to use them because of the changing fixed camera perspective, right? When you're doing that, uh, when the camera is always changing angles, you want it so, like moving the player forward is always up on the d-pad and not relative to where the camera is um but then like when resident evil 4 came about it's like hmm interesting it's still tank controls and there is something that feels special about uh feeling a bit more restricted in that uh original game and in a way that makes it more fun and it's like there's so many things that are like designed with that fact in mind i think a good example is like when enemies will like run at you in the original but then once they enter a very limited radius around you they'll start walking it's like a very slow shuffle mm. and that gives you 
some time to kind of orient yourself and take aim at a limb. Whereas in this one, it's like they don't slow down. They just run at you yeah. and they'll grab you. And that mm. works on like a, on a number of levels, including like horror, you know, where it's just like, yeah, they would just come at me and grab me. Right. But maybe that doesn't, you know, maybe in terms of gameplay, it's not as fun. I don't know. Like people have different takes on it, I'm sure. But, uh, I don't really know what my point was there. <laughs> I can't forget, but, uh, I, I was following you and I think that resident evil four in particular is an interesting case study in that regard of what, at what point is the control and movement systems restriction its own, I guess, tool by which to create horror. Like the, there is that tension of only being able to see what's directly in front of you and not being able to just spin the camera around in all directions that is lost in this remake a little bit because now you, you at least playing with a mouse, I, I don't know what it's like playing with a controller, at least for this game. Although obviously the original Resident Evil 4, I played with the controller, but that limited field of view where you can only see what Leon is actually looking at or aiming at, I think was probably the scariest thing about the original. And that, it yeah. wasn't anything that you could really even put your finger on about that, but it, well, it, it, impacts it was certain fights like the El Gigante fight. You know, you have to oh, be yeah. moving away from him and you can't see him behind you. Yeah. Um, there is this kind of like, oh, it's behind me. It's coming after me and I can't see it. In an interesting way, though, it also really solves the problem of third person camera because third person cameras can be really bad. But if the yep. rule is no matter what, it's always going to be directly behind you looking at what you're looking at it it, it, it takes that it takes that element um out of uh, it takes it out of random territory you know it, it becomes a lot more measurable and predictable right that's a good point about the horror i didn't think of that i think I'll, i ultimately prefer being able to i like having the camera direction being independent of the player direction now and you can sort of uh, assess threats in all directions whenever you want with the camera, which I kind I think works better when you're dealing with like crowds of enemies and it's you're just, like, oh, you're weaving through enemies for exploration. When you can look all around, you can yeah. look everywhere, you can check out things, yeah. you could scan through rooms and do a little 360. I mean, it's one of those things like, yeah, maybe a little something is lost, but. It's, uh, yeah, I certainly won't knock it. The, the biggest problem with the 360, you know, the ability to look the camera everywhere is being able to completely cancel your momentum by aiming and then pressing W in any direction. Yeah. Yeah. So like Mark was saying, like, I'm just thinking about that now. And I was like, yeah, that did make it scarier. Like enemies, when they're about to throw something at you, they would make a certain sound like mm, or something. And uh, that would be the only indication you have that somebody's about to throw something at you. You'd be like, oh shit, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know which way I need to go. Oh, uh, but in this, like you can see, okay, they're over there. They're about to throw that. I kind of get the impression that I should tilt this way if I want to dodge it based on like what hand he's throwing it yeah, with or some sound cues to clue you into. Yeah. That right. Something's about to happen. Yeah. So there, there's pros and cons and like uh, Mahler brought up Pong earlier and I was kind of thinking the same sort of thing with like, the idea of restrictions in certain games making them more fun and make giving them an identity and i was thinking what's a good like retro game example of that and i was i thought of uh this old game called missile command i don't know if any of you guys have played that uh, the atari but, game uh, uh i think it was on atari it was also like on arcade cabinets um yeah we know the game yeah it's one yeah. of the famous uh, older games yeah um you take control of a little gun turret that's fixed to the ground and then you can turn it like any degree that you want and you shoot these missiles coming down from the sky that are represented by these single pixel wide lines. And the idea is to shoot at the missiles at like the tips of the lines and lead your target enough based on their uh, velocity and distance. And uh, it's really satisfying the way that game works because of the fact that you can't move around your gun. And if you could, then it would just be more like something like asteroids or space got, invaders. Um, like missile command is what it is because of that yeah. restriction put in place. This would be and a, it's a, fun. A, 
a broader halo, not being able to sprint. That's intentional, even though yep. someone would be like, well, Master Chief can run. It's like, I He's guess he can, running. but you've got to think about, yeah, you've just got to, you've just got to imagine that, you know, in universe when he's like moving at regular speed, he's running. But like the reason why there is no sprint is because sprint is a mechanic that changes the way that you interact with the game and it changes yeah. it in a way that's appreciable because it's, it's been said many times, but the thing with Halo is that everybody is always able to fire all the time unless they're reloading or using melee or a grenade. Whereas when you add, and everybody is always able to move at the same top speed, like there's a clear understanding of what anybody, what you can do to anybody and what anybody can do to you at any given time. And throwing in sprint when your gun is down, but you move faster is like another variable that gets added on top. And you can yeah. do that, but it makes it different. And so in the case of like Resident Evil 4's controls, the tank controls versus um, Leon being able to move and aim freely. Uh, I don't think that there's any, I don't think that you can consistently or reliably make the case that any one version is better than the other. It's just that they are fundamentally different in terms of the experience that they're going to afford you. It's baked into the original game that you're always looking where you're aiming. It's baked into the original game that you have to choose between moving or shooting. Um, whereas obviously in this game, it's baked into it that you were able to move freely, but the enemies, you know, consequently move a lot faster to counteract that. I agree. Yeah, the 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 games operate fundamentally differently in terms of like movement and firing, yep. but I, I like so. them both, and I'm I quite like happy to replay too. both. Yeah, I like them I, both as well. One does I not like, replace the other. No, I like the fluidity of this new one. Like uh, Rags, you brought up earlier the fact that you can sort of like you're running in one direction and then you go the other direction and you kill your momentum dead and. Uh, Leon has this like animation where he'll sort of like, you know, like push his foot against the dirt and crouch down a bit and then start bolting it in the other direction. I kind of, I like that. I like using that when I'm dealing with the crowds and it feels like appropriate action for Leon to be doing. You know what I mean? Like just constantly yeah, yeah, like, agree. oh shit, there's something over it. there. Oh fuck, there's something over here, you know? Yeah, it belongs in the world visually. It looks very good. It looks like he's got a lot of weight to him. The way that he moves around is pretty good for, you know, implying that he's a, a character with mass in this world and he's not just, uh, you know, pixels well, moving around instantly. Something I would yeah. say is that because obviously a lot's been made about the nature of the controls and how Resident Evil 4 original, based on my experience, which is way more limited than you than all of you, basically, um, it seems that, like, something to be said about the mechanics in the original game is that they are incredibly reliable in that, like, everything operates in a, an exact way, like, all the time. The variables yeah. uh, of, yes. like, unpredictability are much lower, and that's baked into the movement. Whereas in this game, because it is, you know, the free moving and, uh, it, like, it's, it's a little bit more unpredictable. The, there are obviously benefits that can come from that, but the downside is that it's less reliable to know exactly what's going to happen in any given moment based on what you do. But something that should be said about this game is that compared to a lot of other third-person shooters that, like, make a big effort to make the characters look and move realistically, I'd say that this game, like, works a lot harder to make sure that, like, that compromises your control uh, as little as possible. Right. Like the, I'd say the controls in this game are, are quite responsive for a game that yeah. animates this well. Because oh, yeah. the more you bump up the animations, the harder it gets to to keep it um super responsive because of the amount of time that you need for those animations to play out. And uh, yeah. adding to the way that Leon moves and moves uh, and weaves between threats and crowds of enemies, I've been really impressed with the hitboxes in this game yeah like yeah. It, it it there's a lot of times where it feels like you've really narrowly dodged an axe swing and they're like whoa shit like in any yeah. Other, yeah. any other game you would think like that would have attacked me because usually a hitbox around a player is just a big ugly Weird. rectangle, <laughs> rectangle yeah. with a lot of negative space in it there's a lot of room there to get a hit on you when it doesn't look like it but here it's like it feels like they use like a high poly um hitbox and I don't know why they don't do that more often. It's just it's just games. a good it's a good hitbox. I mean, yeah. it's, it, there's it, it's good hit a lot Feels of good hitbox. It's very hit satisfying problems. to avoid it narrowly by doing a little. The only yeah. issues that I've seen are uh, when it comes to hitboxes and collision are um, sometimes enemy arrows, depending on how they're standing and what they're shooting around or over, can maybe clip just a wee bit through the environment. But it's a very rare case that that happens to the point where it's just it, it's it's barely even worth mentioning 
Yeah, I found right. the arrows could be a little bullshit, but yeah, it's for the most like... part, the hitboxes I found quite good. Yeah, there's and there's a. I think that it's not to be understated that element of satisfaction with the the animation almost reacting in a way that is it reacting with that hitbox to to sell it in a way that it wouldn't if either was not as effective, you know. Like uh, the the clarity of the the duck going under the axe, say in this example, because it's a bit weird. Because I'm I'm talking about a, a concept that's applied in in many situations and trying to construct one off the bat. But in the example of ducking underneath a an axe swing, that hitbox really combines with the animation in a way that is more impressive than it would be if it was just hey. It looked okay because Leon went down and the the axe went over him and it got close. But it it seems like it's done in a way that Leon is ducking the way a person might duck one of these attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and... Speaking of hitboxes, yeah. uh, there is a for those who don't know, we can speak on the subject of hitting boxes. Uh, but once you learn it, you never go back. Uh, slashing boxes with your knife is faster than pressing the contextual F to yeah. smack them or kick mm -hmm. them if especially if you're sprinting towards them and you make that special you know that slash the sprint slash um yeah it's you, the recovery from that animation is way faster uh you're more guaranteed to actually hit all the boxes it, you just flat out will save time a decent yeah, amount over the run and it's faster to it cost you integrity slash with your knife no it doesn't <laughs> it does slashing it any <laughs> slashing yeah. anything costs yeah, you integrity are you sure yeah, yeah yes. this is someone i laid in the demo and i was disappointed as fuck I didn't notice it doing that. Are you, I tested it out by you... stabbing um, uh, boxes in the demo over and over and over and over again, just staring at my in integrity, the... and it started going down. Wait, in the demo or in the, the proper game? I didn't. Well, I assumed it worked the same. I mean, you're playing it, right? You can test game, it right now, right? Yeah, like it, I'm not playing it right now. But oh. um, is anyone playing I, it right now? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm. I'm playing. I'm chilling in RimWorld. But when it comes to that, yeah, I like. I think specifically, Fringy asked me if that was the case, and I tested it on see. the spot when he asked me, and I said no, it doesn't ruin your did. integrity. Yeah, I I, I, I did it I against it walls did. and floors. Oh, okay, because I think it does. I, when you, it doesn't. When you hit it doesn't. Enemies, does it my understanding is that it only degrades the durability if you block. If like if you hit valid like enemy targets with it, or if you block enemy attacks with it, if you hit uh, if you hit durability in boxes, it doesn't go off. If you hit walls, it you know it doesn't uh, do anything. It's just essentially valid uh, enemy targets are blocking. Well, somebody said they like, changed it from the demo. I didn't test it in the game, so I just assumed it worked the same. Yeah, but uh, because I, I stabbed things randomly, I, and I'm pretty sure nothing happened. Well, in that yeah, case, yeah, I've been doing it. it. The, yeah, I've been I've been doing it the whole game. It doesn't reduce the durability in fringing. I would have thought you'd like, notice if it did. So. Oh else, yeah, if it did, I would I definitely did. notice. Because um, one of the things you do in this game is that you you typically will use up your the axes or the not the axes the knives you find. Before you dig into the durability of your uh, your main axe, uh, it depends on which one you equip, right? If you like leave certain, if you leave your uh, main knife equipped while picking up a bunch of different ones, then you end up burning through that first. Like it doesn't mm. automatically if you equip yeah, you have your, to manually uh, say knife, equip yeah. the the, yeah. the shitty knives. Well, you find. so is now the is now the time to talk about the knife. I suppose so. One thing I wanted to mention because <laughs> we just well, yeah. covered part of it. Um, the other thing I checked and learned, and I remember complaining about it to you directly, Rags, right, in the demo was that um, uh, there's a couple of things about... and Yeah, we're on the knife now. That's happening. <laughs> so, the, uh, <laughs> you know, standard... When you, when, you, when you introduce this mechanic to me, and I'm not even talking about integrity as a whole right now, just specifically how their integrities cost uh, per different attack. So, like, you can poke, poke, poke. It's like, that's faster, but I assume... I haven't even fully tested this. Less damage than a wide slash. And it, you know, can take less targets with it. Like, with a wide slash, maybe you can hit three at max... With a poke, you can only hit the one. Maybe it does less damage. Whatever. I was like, okay, that, that all seems reasonable. I need to check the damages on it to know for sure. But I, I, like I said, I assume the poke has less. So, you know, in the demo, I'm fucking around with some enemies. And I'm like, how does this work? And I think it was like 10 pokes to kill um, a Ganado. And then one of them fell over and he started, you know, going blah, 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 and turn it into a thing. And, I was, and it was like, you know, stab him with the execution to stop it. And I do. And then it takes a huge fucking chunk out of my knife. And I'm like, oof. Well, out of Ooh, curiosity yeah. then... What happens if I poke him? And I go, poke, 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 like maybe seven, eight times, whatever. Whatever difficulty you're on, it'll depend. And he dies, and I've lost like a third of the execution cost. And it's like, what What the fuck? Like, why, yeah. why would you make the animation tied directly to this 
a, be a detriment compared to me just stabbing him. And then, if, right. it, if that's not bad enough, you keep stabbing him after he's dead, and it's costing you integrity, which people in chat are telling me that that's, is, that's, that's still, apparently yeah. that's still in the game, not just the demo. I that's stupid. It, it shouldn't cost you it integrity is, um... to fucking stab a dead body. And when you're desperately trying to kill it mm -hmm. before it turns into a Plagueis tier 2, whatever, you, you're gonna be pressing it over and over yeah, and over again. A few extra and times before you realize he's especially actually when dead they and wriggle dumb. on their death, when they're like, bleh, yeah. bleh, 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 bleh. you're like stab, 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 stab. Okay, he's dead, and it's like, oh, oh you stab four times too many there, rip, and you're like, oh, well, thanks. Uh, these things yeah. annoy me, <laughs> like I, greatly. I, I... I imagine the knife integrity is tied to the knife itself rather than like enemies specifically. Like if you use the knife on anything like it walls is, and stuff. It seems to be tied to two things mainly. What you're actually using the knife to do because different actions with yeah. the knife have different costs and right. what the durability value of the knife is. Essentially, it probably works as just this is knife hit points and it expends hit points in order to perform actions. Um, right. So like stabbing an enemy on the ground in order to finish it off, costs, I think, the biggest chunk that you can use, apart from, I like, Chainsaw. It's, um, it's, so the, it's, it's Chainsaw, then I think it's using the knife when someone grabs you. That takes a good oh, amount yeah, of... Oh, uh, yeah, you... Yeah, that takes a good yeah, amount. Yeah, if you're getting well, out of a grab and you use a knife... I think the idea is that it's, yeah. it's kind of a... Uh, it's kind of the, what choice do you want to make here? Do a you want to off. just try and break trade off your health or trade off the integrity of the blade? But yeah, yeah I believe it's I... Chainsaw getting grabbed... I, I figured the uh, the ones when you get them on the ground are like pretty low on the list, right? Or am those I... are, I mean, they're they're way less than the the first big two. But I think apart from those big two reasons, expending big. it to really get out of a grab and expending it to save yourself from an insta kill from a chainsaw, oh. it is the biggest expenditure of knife. The only way I can explain it is that they thought most of the time you'll be executing while they're on the floor is in the middle of fights. And so it's like, you want you want that done quickly, as opposed to stabbing him ten times, for example, then uh, it's going to cost you. And it's just like, yeah, but what about the times where I'm just alone with him? That means I just got to go stab, 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 stab. Otherwise, I'm wasting my knife. It just, like, surely you can have contextual integrity breaks where the game recognizes, like, you're not in combat beyond this one person. You've executed them. If anything... I don't even know if it should cost you integrity. It's just a matter of like uh, efficiency, like just trying I to get. Think this I think I would. I think I would just flat out have more fun with this game if the knife didn't have durability. That could, could be just... the big question well, to ask the, now. Here's the, the conversation. Thing. This is the conversation then. I like the idea that the knife is your trusty, is your is your your very good friend, your, your trusty backup, always there for you if things get tough. If you run out of bullets, if you get into close quarters, if there's, if it's always there for you. But it's a, it's a high risk, high reward weapon. If you want to go in, for instance, Resident Evil Four. I will tell you personally, if you get good at that game, you can kill Novistadors knife only. If you learn the animations and you know, you know when to hit it and when to back off, mm, you could kill you Novistadors can kill with just the knife. And yeah, well that that's that's way easier. <laughs> but uh. But the um, but I, I like the idea that the knife is this trusty backup weapon that's always there for you that you can use in specific times as a high risk, high reward, cheeky kind of weapon. Maybe if you slash a Ganado across the face, you can initiate a stagger from him, like in the original. However, the knife animation's a certain amount of time. Uh, you don't have the ability to just like press the spacebar and parry whenever you want. So yeah, you're saving ammunition by doing that, but that's it's a risk reward thing. Use at your own you know peril potentially. Well, so I, I think uh, it might be worthwhile to lay out the case for durability before explaining why I get the impression that I think most of us would prefer it as a universal like element that you don't have to repair. The do we or? So I mean, like, your ability is the knife in the new game allows you to do many more things. It is a That's much right. more versatile weapon in terms of its contextual uses. It allows you to block enemy attacks, whether they are melee attacks, whether they're thrown objects. It allows you to block boss hits. It allows you to, um, of course, just stab, 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 or slice enemies with uh, a bit more better, less clunky animations than the original did. Um, it allows you to. Uh, execute enemies from behind instantly. By the way, you can do this with brutes. You can kill them in one knife stab from behind with minimal HP loss. Pigmen. Um, yes, the pigmen, the guys with the, the cow faces. Um, 
the it allows you to insta kill enemies on the ground if they are about to essentially transform into the the, the spooky versions. It allows you to get insta kills on like uh, kneeling enemies from behind, or uh, it allows you to insta kill enemies that are carrying away Ashley or enemies that are attacking uh, Luis. Well, true, yeah. The knife, the, the knife has a lot of combat uses. And so I think as a way to balance that ability out, they added knife durability, and then they added weaker knives that you find throughout the game. So you could find like kitchen knives and boot knives and whatnot that have far less durability than your, uh, your, your mainstay knife. But, you know, it's essentially to give you some hits, give you some kills, allow you to use the knife without, you know, you get a bit more I would knife, say the goal knife of, uh, of durability was to have a risk-reward element beyond just like, do you want to parry or, you know, like, attack this person now? Like, do you want to risk screwing it up? I think that the risk-reward element is making the knife uh similar to ammunition for weapons and that there are some decisions that you need to make about how you want to use it and then rewards for playing well versus playing poorly playing well being that you don't get grabbed and so you don't lose a shit ton of your durability in those sorts of encounters mm -hmm. um you know like basically min maxing with the knife and the concern that if there wasn't durability that the knife would be too powerful um i get it which I think is I would weird because it as a reliable universal element, though. Well, remember too, in in, uh, in Resident Evil Five, one of the improvements they made was you had essentially contextual insta kills on enemies that had been uh, knocked prone, uh, and that didn't cost their ability. It was just a knife attack. You well, Sheva would use her knife. Chris would kick them in the chest very cleverly. Um, but yeah. I, it's just one of those things where I, it's fine. It didn't really. It didn't ruin anything i didn't notice it all the time i'd say that i think uh, that mechanically it's it's i'd say it's mechanically good. it's yeah mechanically i, I don't I have any issues good. with it um it's just one of those like i think i would just enjoy the game if i just had my knife and we didn't have all these knife pickups that i could find and equip those first if i i had my knife is it was always a combat option that i had to use in certain contexts in the game especially about... with how they portray leon's knife fighting ability what about when your knife runs out of integrity, you get locked off from a couple of moves? Like, we lose some of the more exquisite right, and top-notch moves, the... but we keep the basic ones like a parry. And knockout, because I'm not a fan. I think it does work, actually, and I would defend the mechanic, but I'm not a fan of the whole boot knife, kitchen knife, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it Instead, seems a little... You, need, you know, you have your main knife, and once you've okay. knocked out the integrity on it, which should take longer, I'm not a fan of how, how limited it is, especially in the fucking hardest... Well, it can be done if, if you're, like, dealing with, you know, like, you use it on the chainsaw guy, it's, like, nearly done straight away. <laughs> yeah, you will, it'll break, right, depending on which knife you're using. Um, and if you if you stab them in the, in the neck when they grab you, depending on who you're dealing with, that can take out, and depending on how much you've upgraded, that, that can take out a huge chunk of its uh, health, health integrity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not inherently against integrity systems. It's just that they're so they're, they're often so just fucking annoying. They're often they're just yeah, annoying. It's like, uh, it's a big I complaint with like Breath of the, the Wild, right? The yeah, Breath of the yeah. Wild is one of the famous ones. Um, yeah. I I mentioned this to Rags, but and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the case. Dark Souls One is a game that has an integrity system, but nobody ever talks about it because it's barely it's ever like, noticed. Yeah. It's um. <laughs> Your sword will eventually break, but everyone upgrades in that game at such intervals that you you'll barely ever notice the fact it'll never reach like a lower right. level. It'll always get upgraded before it'll break. Usually, you know, when when your sword breaks in Dark Souls One, everyone's like, "Wait, what the fuck?" Like, I don't even know this is it's... fucking possible. Dark Souls Two, though, that's where it, uh, it started pissing everybody off. I think um, worth uh, bringing up because it's been mentioned in chat. Because Resident Evil Two Remake has uh, the way that it. it if I'm remembering correctly, basically the way that you take damage is zombie grabs you, bites you. But if you have a knife, you can use it to stop them. Uh, but you can only do that, uh, you know, X number of times before you, you lose that knife. And it's kind of something that probably got carried over here. I guess the difference okay. that I would cite and why it's probably worthwhile to have the knife be a universal component is just Resident Evil 4, like, Leon is way more empowered than he is in Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Um... Like, it's it's more uh, in keeping with the uh, design goals of, yeah, uh, of, of of this game, of having Leon be, like, very capable and has a lot of moves at his disposal, 
that to essentially lock one off based on the durability of a knife instead of having it be a universal element is like I get the rationale behind it. I think it's well designed. I just think it would be yeah. Preferable I think it's to pretty well designed. All um, the time. Um, well, I think so it, it's. Um, I just wanted to quickly say, a missed opportunity. I think is uh, you should be able to provide your boot or kitchen knives to Ashley, and that should make it so that if anyone grabs it, she gets an insta kill on them and loses the knife for it. So did you, good idea. Yeah, I like that. Do you are you guys all equipping the boot and kitchen knives right away? Because for me, I pretty much looked at those as crafting. The only I I hated the bolt throw. We'll get to it. So I didn't oh, care okay. for them for crafting. <laughs> yeah, I always equip them if ever I pick them up straight. I always, away. Yeah, I always I use them. The knife because... is too useful. It's just too. Yeah. Useful. I love my combat knife, and whenever it dies, I get upset. <laughs> yeah, there's. They only sell the knives that you find. They only sell for four hundred or five hundred. Like it's not. It's like it's not worth it. You know. Oh sure, but oh, you can craft. craft you save bolts, though if you if you use the bolt thrower. If you don't, well, then obviously it, it's you save. I think you save essentially more in Dura. We'll have to talk about the charms later. But you sign. Oh, yes. you, you save a lot of money by using the expendable knives, then selling them because you're saving repair costs on your trusty yeah, main Yeah, because the repair cost is, uh, it's not, it's not cheap, you know? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. And I repair it every time. The balance, I never went through without, what, do you think it's too expensive? I, not only I, do I think it's too expensive, I think the knife fucking dies too quickly. I, I yeah, think right. the charm, the charm that I got for the, the armor, the, the bulletproof vest, I significantly re reduce the, repair cost of it i don't know if there's a similar one for the knife there but absolutely there is. is and i yeah, oh, oh yeah oh there is yeah there's a lean i think i used it i didn't get I think I used you, that one yeah it gives you 30 percent off knife repair costs yeah you better which, which is like, like, <laughs> which is like <laughs> that, damn that one the five percent off weapon upgrades the i think there's a 30 percent off uh combat armor uh repairs yes, as well there is. yeah that's, yeah, that's I, the one I that i one. i use that one too yeah there's ada i think but we'll, we'll we'll do the whole charm segment as its own thing, and also boring. talk yeah, about the right. wonderful uh, the wonderful uh, shooting range. Yes, oh. we will talk about that. <laughs> we'll 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 talk about that in tandem with what will surely be our next uh, our next thing that we discuss, combat related. Well, we got well, on one knives. Thing, what else do you want to well, say? Regard um, reg knives. Reg I wish you, that they had. What do you have there, John? It. What were you saying? Go, John. Reg regarding the knife durability, um, I was going to say, I think there's some like a nod to the past sort of thing factoring into that. Like Fringy was saying in Resident Evil 2, you had the knives. Um, the but remake, it goes, yeah. It, yeah, it goes back farther than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, in the Resident cool. Evil 1 remake on GameCube, knives you could pick up and they were like special one-use items that had their own dedicated inventory slot. And they would basically save you from a grab. You could get out of a grab without taking damage. And I imagine that was like that that's what it was factored into remake. like, hey, that yeah. was cool. Yeah, it's like, hey, that was cool. Like having limited durability knives. How can we kind of do that in in this as like a fun callback, as well as like I, the obvious. You got to offset the fact that it's so op. I guess that's the thing is the I, I wonder like the, if because uh, in professional difficulty you have to get the parry like perfect, yep. uh, otherwise you get hit. Maybe right. maybe that is the way to balance it is to just be less forgiving in all modes. Um, I would be fine carry. with. Yep. I yeah. There. That. There's different ways to balance it. it <laughs> Sorry, I just it saw. Could, I, I, I just, just saw it too. Dream. What happened there? I'm not even sure. What did <laughs> I hit? Himself up by shooting the vase or something. Yeah. Look at this. I'll go frame by frame. <laughs> oh man, we've just spoiled. That's not good, game. <laughs> <laughs> That's clearly not what's supposed to have happened there. But okay. Oh, oh no. no! What was that? <laughs> oh, oh no! no. Oof. There's a hitbox um, that's not great. But yeah, there is a... I, yeah, I talking about... I see. When it comes to knives, it's everything from the amount of damage it actually does to how many contexts it can be used with a special prompt, how... Th there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to make, you know, to offset, instead of it having durability, it has other weaknesses or limitations in its place. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's the thing. I, I figure it would have been... I I will say it again. I think that the mechanic is like well designed. I just have a preference. I think for a uh, yeah. you know, knife. It didn't get in I my really way. Like Every once in a while, I was like, hmm. <laughs> like, but that's about <laughs> that's about as bad as it got. Sure. Um. Yeah. How come stabbing this guy in the neck from behind in a stealth kill takes off really very little HP? But if I stab him on the ground when they're already very weak, 
and prone, it takes yeah, off a I whole bigger that. chunk. I'm like, like I said, uh... I think it's to do with they would have thought you're in combat and you're desperately trying to get an execution to avoid him getting back up. And so they're like, ah, you want that to happen that quickly? Well, it's, it's going to cost, cost you. Money. Yeah. Well, it's pretty much only just to the, the 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 prompt only happens to stop them from getting up with their broken neck thingy. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that I need to do it quickly. It's that I'm like, oh yeah, that's like a special. It's like he gets another health bar if he does that. That's like an entirely new enemy. Yeah, I that's why I want to get. What I mean when I say quickly is that they theorize that. you got like two other dudes right next to him who are about to grab you or whatever. So if you go in for that quick execution compared to stab, 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 you know, like you can't do stab, 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 stab without getting hit by those others. You can do the execution. Like, it's like a safe kill. Mm -hmm. I still don't think, I still think it takes all, it's, it, it doesn't, it's not balanced properly, I don't think. It's, uh, it, it, I remember when I did it, I was just like, oh, but you, whoa, okay. I, I, I guess I'm not doing that in future. Jesus. Like, well, dependent. You know, sometimes if it is in the middle of a fight and I know that if he wow. gets back up, it's going to cause problems, I might go for it, yeah. I just did it all the time, to be honest. Well, um, I just always use it. one of the best times to do it is when you have a fucking kitchen knife or whatever, uh, like one integrity. Yeah. It's like, oh, holy hell yes, yeah. so I'll get a free execution off this well, uh, yeah, tiny that's bit of integrity. Right, because that integrity loss ain't transferred. To yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, that's hey, another that's thing. That's part it of is... the game, right? That's another it's... element of mm -hmm. it is switching out knives to deal with that integrity. Min max. Yeah, you can min max the knives if you want. Absolutely. Yep. It is an option that you have, which as, I appreciate. Wait, as we said, like I think it works. It all works. It works, um, yeah. It, and I will it, say, it, it's we really like the me, game, fine, all right? We, we really do. Oh, like yeah, this. yeah, absolutely. I say I love I'm the game. Be, uh, <laughs> yeah, I will be playing this game a lot uh, as time yeah. goes on. I will definitely replay this game uh, plenty. Uh, uh, one thing I'll say as well, with the increased amount of things you can do with the with the knife, parrying when it works, and uh, I mean when you do it properly and stuff, it is fucking satisfying. Oh yeah, this game. There's a lot of moving parts and mechanics, and when they when when this game works and you're in the zone and you got the flow and you're blocking and you're kicking and you're doing all that stuff, you feel like oh, it's it's very satisfying to do well with this. I'll game. tell you what, when people watch you play and they see you like headshot, headshot, someone comes in for a grab and you duck it, and then an axe comes in and you parry, and then someone attacks you with an axe and you parry and kick, it looks great. <laughs> it's just like man, yeah. you're taking names. Look at you go, right. And yeah, you get that it, feeling when you're playing it as well. And I, I love how fun this is to replay. I think it's a feat, like what it's pulled off. Very here replayable, yeah. Regard, yeah. Like no, every part of this feels fun. And I'm looking forward to parts now that I didn't look forward to in the original. Not to say that the original is badly designed or anything, but there's certain parts where, like the Del Lago fight, or it's just like, oh, fights and one that comes mm. to mind, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, we're on our way the, the, to boss fights. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get there. there. Yeah, we can go right. through the boss fights. That's a it's its own. It's a normal thing to do. Um, yeah. Not to jump ahead. I was just well, talking so about the replayability. Yeah. I'm sort That's of good. happy to let this flow. Like uh, from knives, where do you want to go? Where does everyone go? Let's go to the other big element of combat, which is the guns. Right. We can talk about biggest... the guns, sure. Which is uh, which may be tied into my biggest complaint that I have. It's kind of two at the same time, sort of two. Uh, that well, are very I think I know linked. what. What it's first off, it's got to be the change in having in the uh, the reticule. Well, should we so, go broader yeah. first? Like they look and sound pretty good. They look. And sound <laughs> oh great yeah, and they're fun to yeah. Shoot. Do it looking good, sound. Yeah, and boom. <laughs> the gunplay is uh, it's a okay uh, from an aesthetic point of view. From a from 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 this, the sound of it, uh, it sounds like uh, yeah, I like it. I, I like a lot. Like a lot of it. All right, there you go. So uh, next topic. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> So uh, in, biggest... in some in some cutscenes, Leon does a cool thing with his gun. I don't know if it's an yeah, actual like tactical it. thing, but like like pulling the I don't know what you call it. He, he's like checking something in the gun. Yeah, yeah, he's checking if there's like, one in the chamber. Right? Yeah, he's oh, checking okay. the state, which is another mechanic I like. Magazine. The if you if you have, if you have yeah. a magazine yeah. fed weapon, yeah. it, you have you can fill up the magazine and there's room for one in the chamber. So the starter yeah, pistol, for right. instance, isn't a 10 capacity. It's 10 plus one because every gun comes with a free bullet spot right in their chamber. So nice. I do like that. I, I really yeah, do like right, that. Right. Yeah. 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 It is neat. And as far as I know, it does affect your reload times. Um, when you have a fully empty gun, it's longer to reload than one that's uh, not empty yet. Because if there's a round in the chamber, you don't have to manually work the action to put a round in the chamber. There's already one there. Right. You just have to change the magazine. So that's neat. I wish more... All games should do that. It should be mandatory for all uh, shooter games. Do it. 
Uh, so yeah, but he does that thing where he, it's the cool thing where he uses one hand to yep. slide the slide back and look and make sure there's a round in the chamber. Uh, yeah, it's a neat little thing. And sometimes when he takes a gun out and he's, you, know, you swap to the gun or he pulls it out, he does that, you know, checking the chamber to make sure. Or just, yeah. it's, it's good. I like that. It's good. It's good for convincing you this is a man who's experienced with guns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like that he does that um, center axis relock thing that John Wick does, you know, where he like close quarters, he'll hold the gun up. He'll have this sort of bladed position. Yeah. I think and I know. Then, oh, yeah, he yeah. holds it up sort of close to his face at an angle, like Sam Fisher. Mm, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. I think that's yeah. an actual thing. Like, uh, I think CQB. it was developed by a British special forces guy. Well, you can't. Yeah, you can't hold the gun like further out if there's something really close. Yeah, it's yeah, sure. it's a little thing that I like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's a that's a thing I like. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat. But but the the oh. elephant in the room. <laughs> there he yeah. is. He's coming. The he's he's swamping through. The elephant in the room is that elephant. one of the <laughs> things that laser Resident Evil Capcom. Four. One of the things that Resident <laughs> Evil Four is famous for that gives it so much flavor and visual identity is that Leon uh, aims virtually all of his weapons using a laser sight. Uh, whenever yeah, you're yeah. aiming at a uh, whenever you're aiming at an acceptable or a valid target, essentially. Whether it be an enemy, um, a, 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 a box, something flying through the air, anything, a, a, a lantern or a, a thing on the wall that can be affected by bullets, there will be a red dot that appears at the end of the little red line. Um, it's, how you, it's how the game was played. Uh, it's, it's a mainstay of Resident Evil 4. That, that's, that's how you aimed at enemies. You used a red dot sight. And unfortunately in this game, uh, they opted for uh, a much more standard pretty much universal um, reticule, uh, reticule and uh, not just a visual change, is it? It's also uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake has um, it has random bullet deviation oh, that yeah. is uh, that is determined by a statistic on the weapon, not by the shooter. This has um, been discussed in EFAP's history prior. Uh, I believe I... Halo was the last time we discussed it. Yes, we did. We did yes. talk about it with Bloom. Halo and... is Halo well, is so so in how it uses the thing. I think it works pretty. I'm not gonna say so so. It works pretty well in Halo we because of different weapons and roles. But that's its own whole other thing. One, one of the things I loved about Resident Evil Four was that laser sight because not only is it pretty unique to games, but it added a level of kind of difficulty with the game. Especially if you're shooting at long distance targets. Um, Leon had kind of a little sway to the gun as it moved around and you had a laser and it would only pop up when you're on valid targets. So it, it was a thing. It was great. Okay, I'd love it. But in this game, it's just a reticle. And the reticle is, it, it, it's like basically a cone where bullets can shoot, which means you can have that thing square on an enemy's head and pull the trigger and, oh, sorry, you got a bad roll. Uh, oh. You missed. Uh, yeah, and there's what you've just said is it. There's no more. Nobody needs to it. say, "Well, rags, if you were better." No, 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 no. 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 So <laughs> if, if, uh, I, if I have an fucking... enemy that's standing in front of me, and the game decides, no, this this bullet goes all the way to the right, well, when no enemy is left, even though you're in the center of the enemy. Yeah, I have no other way to explain it. Can do about if it. you have a reticle that takes up, let's just say it is 100, the enemy is standing there and you put it over them and the enemy's engulfed with it to the point where there's edges, like 10% on each corner that is not hitting it, and then the bullet flies to one of those 10s, well, mm -hmm. fuck you. <laughs> that's it, man. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, in the original, there was that dot, and wherever that dot was, that's where the bullet went. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it was all on you. The, here, here's the thing. There is an argument to be made for Bloom. Um, the problem is that, like, being able to aim precisely, that shit's just useful, man. <laughs> like, knowing well, exactly I think where that, the bullets are going to go. I think like, arguments that's... for Bloom are generally... I don't I don't think there's any really good ones. Um, I, I... It, it, I'd say that it... So, I think what's helpful in this case is we can point... The TMP just sucks now. Yes. Yeah. Um, the game. I didn't even buy worse. it. They killed I didn't it. Even well, I, I bought it, it the first time around, but then, yeah, like, I'm not buying it. I'm, I'm professional. Uh, um, it's just but... way worse. You cannot reliably, uh, you just can't reliably aim. It has way too much spread. And the argument could be made, well, I mean, the functionality is, you know, you sort of spray it around. It's like, damn, man, like, in the original, you could just, like, 
you could spray it, but you still knew where the bullets were going because of the, that laser sight. Yeah. Uh, why is it so bad to have an accuracy stat in the game? So here's the thing. It isn't. Whoa. But uh, if, if the accuracy is inherently tied to a number generator that is independent from the player, that it's essentially unreliable. adds a sense of, yeah, it, it's literally unreliable. It is a random number generator as to where the bullet goes, regardless mm -hmm. of where you're actually aiming. Um, Part it, of the problem it's... is that this game doesn't give you a lot of ability to control that, that spread. Something I noticed while I was on the shooting range is like with the pistol, your reticule goes at smallest when you're standing still for a while, but it's like a few yes. seconds. And even then, once you fire it, it goes back to being bigger. Yeah, again, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, don't know, you're essentially... I don't know if anybody's ever doing it in a game this fast-paced, you know? And it just forbid if you move your mouse a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Oh god, the fucking uh, Magnum, dude. Whoa. The Magnum, like, not the Killer 7, the Butterfly yeah. and Hand Cannon. Yeah, they have crazy Man. Well, you take the time oh. to even get the get that thing small, you shoot once, and then it goes all the way back out. And of course, the enemies move. So you got to yep. move too. You need to move your, your gun you in the move. direction of the enemy. Too fast -paced. It's just too fast paced. I and think. as soon as you move it, it goes. It's yeah, it's essentially you're charging up the accuracy of your gun. Yeah. And not only is <laughs> yeah, it the like accuracy of the gun, it affects the stagger chance. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd be curious to see what these numbers are on the back end. Yeah, I don't but, think um, to know. Uh, which will lead us into our other thing. But the uh, yeah, I really don't like it. I don't like in a game about resource management losing bullets and shit to just a random number, especially if it's a yes. weapon like um, the Magnum or something really big where each bullet is actually quite valuable. There yeah. is. It, it, let's pretend for a second the target range never existed, and so okay. I might have been sitting here Done. saying, okay. The thing about it is, though, like, the sniper, you get 100% accuracy. The pistol is, like, eh, you know, not 100%. But you can pay to get the laser sight on some of them, you know? So, TMP, listen, listen, guys. It's a crowd-controlling weapon. It's never meant for, like, hyper-accuracy. It's meant for situations where you have several enemies. No you don't know what to do. You take them out that way, okay? It's all balanced with that in mind. It's, it's, there's never a point in the game where you're required to hyper, you know accurately take out any particular enemy with the TMP. The TMP is always going to be something, like, it's got the random generation because that kind of works with how it's, you know, d designed as a weapon in, in the game. It's always going to be working that level of efficiency. But even then, I would argue against myself and say, man, is that really suitable when it can be, like, you're out of ammo for everything except the TMP and there's going to be situations where you need to shoot something that's far away accurately and you're just fucked at that point? Like, doesn't that suck? And I think I'd be like, yeah, but... At least, at least that's not too likely. At least that's not always going to happen. There is. But now, reintroduce uh, target practice, and they have sections specifically with the TMP. <laughs> it's it's possibly uh, one of the most frustrating things ever to give me. I don't me know how you did it, an Mahler. Inaccurate. I, did, I gave up. Hey, Mel, I gave too. up. Um, <laughs> they give you a weapon yeah. that is by design inaccurate and <laughs> yeah. random for a target practice. And I know that there's going to be some people heckling in the crowd, being like, well, if you were more accurate, you'd be fine. There are several instances, <laughs> Metal and I, and everyone can attest to this, where mm -hmm. you simply have to rely on luck. And I'm going to keep an eye on the footage in the in the meantime, but I'm pretty sure there, there are times... The shotgun is a fucking fabulous example of this. The spread is Especially fucking random. <laughs> so you have no idea whether or not it'll hit the target, even though your reticle like, is over it. It's just like, God, well, just the, the only guarantee yeah. is yeah. the dot in the center. They'll give you a tag on that no matter what. But the problem, of course, is like, it's like, oh, there's three targets. Shoot a shotgun at them. You can do that, and you can hit the center of the three, but it'll only tag two or one. And you're just like, what? Yeah, like, what, what are you used to do? What yeah, am I yeah. And it's what like, you got unlucky. That, that is it. You got unlucky. And it's, it's just like, so... I have to wait until I'm lucky before I can win the target practice, and then they just make a troll face at you, I guess. I yep. think that guns <laughs> and video games are at their best when they shoot where you point them pretty much all the time, but what you have to control for is not the accuracy of the gun so much as the recoil of the gun. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the Ow. big thing. There is there's no reason why it is bizarre that a submachine gun is more difficult and is less accurate and difficult to control than a pistol that's just that's bizarre it makes no sense Check it's that not out. intuitive it's this is what i was illustrated about the shotgun i think oh, this is fucking unacceptable <laughs> <Get> the... 
Like, yeah, so I'll around. commentate I'll this a little bit, to... right? So I go think I'm it. I'm not particularly great at aiming. I think I'm okay. But like this sequence with the sniper, I'm like, okay, got you, got you, got you. I even get the one coming in fast. And I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this. It's going pretty well. This is halfway through, I think, the hardest or the latest uh, thing. Knock it down. Aim with the reticle to get the skull. Everything's going pretty great. That all got knocked down at a relatively fair pace. I'm thinking about bringing out the TMP, but it's like, no, I'll hit the dogs with shotgun. And then it's like, miss, 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 miss. It's like, how is that fucking missing? You nearly cost me the whole thing. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I think it might have. But yeah, point is, like, no way the shotgun should miss that many times when that's how the rules work. And yeah. all they've got it's to say is, because... well, you're unlucky. That's all. Yeah, because now you don't have to get luckier, cause... noob. Because now you don't you don't have one bullet to go, go randomly anywhere. You have I don't even know how many bullets that come out of there that are going randomly wherever the fuck they want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the pellet count on the shotgun. Yeah, so I have no idea. Yeah. Just don't. The defense tell. that like it's a crowd control weapon. You use it when the enemies are right in front of you. You'll never miss. It's like, well, then why the fuck did you make a target practice section for this gun that requires yeah. absolute accuracy when it's random? What's wrong with you? Why would you ever do that? That's so mean. It's just that that it, it's not Dark just mean. the flavor and the aesthetic <laughs> of the laser sight that is so like really iconic to Resident Evil 4. It's just that mechanically it's so tight and solid and skill based and reliant and I love it. Um, it also it makes flying enemies way more difficult to hit because you don't have a because the dot only shows up when you're on a valid target. Enemies that are far away, it's harder to hit them with a red dot sight than a reticle because the reticle's always floating there. You could always put it over heads. Um, I'm really, I, I think it's a huge missed opportunity to have the, uh, the, the, to lose the laser sight and to instead have this, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. have this reticle instead. Every game has well, a reticle. The laser, to... the laser pointer in, uh, in this game is cool once you, once you can use it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like laser, tailor my experience yeah. now. The pistol, get the laser sight, they'll get the killer seven instead of the broken yeah. butterfly and yeah. obviously sniper. It's like, there you go. All my accuracies are back. Can we, yeah, to, to, to really harp on it, because I want to, um, they fucking sure. almost annihilated the Broken Butterfly. I don't know what they were thinking. The crosshair yeah, no. on that thing is absolutely mutated. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Doesn't if anyone sense. here has used it's it, way bigger. it takes 10 it's years for that weird. thing to crush down into a reasonable crosshair, but the second <laughs> inch any direction, it goes, bleh, bleh. Yeah, like yeah, it like starts poking up and down. You're like, what are you doing? Stay still. Yeah. Uh, That's okay. At least it's a, it's a, Gun that has tons of ammo that you yep. can spray and it's <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't make sense. Guns with a bigger so the distance between the rear sight and your front sight is called your sight radius. And pretty much uh, the longer the distance is, and there's of course there's a, a maximum limit to this, but the bigger the distance is between these two sights, the easier it is to make accurate shots. That's why pistols are way more difficult to shoot than like a rifle is. So a gun like the broken butterfly, this big ass fuck off magnum, this revolver should, if anything, be way more easier and accurate to shoot than you know, like the starter pistol that Leon has or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Especially with the fact that a miss is a pretty... It, it's a significant loss in terms of resources and damage. In this um, game, yeah. I mean, if you miss with a magnum shot because of RNG, that's like what? Let's, a, let's just say that's 30 damage. Yeah. That's the equivalent of 30 default pistol shot misses that you just threw away. And yeah. it's not because you missed. It's because the game was like, well... Yeah, tough luck the random number generator didn't work in your favor I think so yeah the I mean, spoilage. Break down, it's right it off as spoilage you can, you can break down the resource math pretty clearly too because isn't it like 17 gunpowder to craft three magnum rounds something like yeah, that it's yeah. pretty it's very expensive uh, so it's effectively an entire mag of standard handgun versus one one magnum round yep because I think it's five, uh, five gunpowder for a, a handgun mag. It's that's why I can might be here. It's just I, yeah, I'm yeah, playing. Yeah. I think the throughout it's one of the good changes with Battlefield Five made. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's in all kinds of shooters. Like Apex Legends is an example. I've got like over two thousand hours in that. I love it. I think the gunplay is great. Weapons in that game, they will typically shoot exactly where you're pointing but each weapon has a different recoil pattern. And part of the skill comes with you managing the recoil of the gun against what is almost always a moving target. And that is like the gunplay element to still do its most simple, um, its most simple facet. Um, and I prefer that so much more than like a Resident Evil slash uh, old Battlefield style of 
weapons just get less accurate the more you shoot them. Even though yep. in reality, that's the opposite of how it works. The more you shoot an automatic weapon, the more you can control for the recoil because you're getting used to the kick of the weapon. Um, it's the first shots that will be your least accurate. Um, but mm -hmm. this like, oh, you're getting suppressed. That means that your gun randomly shoots bullets in this cone. It's like, no, it should just be like a visual effect or it should increase the recoil, not the, the take away the accuracy. Things no, that so we might, because this might bring us back to the convo that we had about Halo. There is a mechanic that is involved in these, in these things that there is an argument to be made for. In Halo's example, Halo does it differently than the examples that I, uh, that I gave. Um, uh, so you were talking about the suppression system in Battlefield, right? Yeah, when you, are you, when you are being suppressed or when suppression happens around you, your gun's accuracy values literally change. Yeah, uh, that's, that's true. But then the argument someone would make is, yeah, that's the mechanic of suppressing fire. Like, that's an element of this game in that's my... baked into it that you have to account for. Oh, yeah, I, I really don't like that. Uh, and I think there was a lot of really good arguments made against it. And the way that that game played out, as someone who played... I, I, I did scrim... I, I'm really good at Battlefield 3 and 4. I played them many, many times. I have thousands of hours in probably these games combined. But the problem with those games and a lot of their gunfights was that if you're if, if you both if you see an enemy soldier and they see you, what they do is both of you will be suppressing each other because you're both shooting at each other, and it will literally turn into luck wins in these fights. And right. That and it sucks. Um, instead of what suppression should be in these games. We're gener deviating a little bit from Resident Evil, but let's see that. What I think the mechanic is far better is that different weapons and builds, depending on the game, will suppress you to different degrees. And that suppression is a visual um, effect, and it, is, it increases maybe the recoil of the gun a little bit, but it doesn't change the accuracy of the gun. These things would mimic the effect that gunfire might have on, pers uh, on a person, but it's still able to be mitigated completely if you're good enough and you control your weapon enough. It doesn't actually change the accuracy of the gun, which is its own mechanism. Um, and so, like in Battlefield 5, which I think is very good gunplay, um, maybe not very good, I might, result, I might say very good for like, super high-tier stuff, but the way that works in that is that weapons have... They have recoil patterns, but the guns will shoot. As long as you are shooting at someone, you're keeping that dot or scope or you know, front post on the enemy, the bullets will hit there. And the challenge is keeping that post, sky, uh, post or sight on where the enemies are. Um, and I think that plays so much better and it's so much more rewarding to fight people because you know it's on me to be accurate um, and to track moving targets. Uh, even with all the, the noise and clutter that might be happening as a result of incoming suppression, noise, and things of that nature. Right. Um, regarding the red dot sight, um, I'm not even a, f a fan of it in this game, personally. I find it really hard to see the dot. I'm like What's squinting a lot. It's like, am, am I over it, the thing right now, the enemy or the box or whatever? Um, and often I just like, unequip it and just i prefer having the cursor that's kind of fixed on the screen um I, and the, I I the, still prefer the sorry go, go for it yeah, yeah the i love the red dot site in the original it's awesome and one thing if i'm remembering correctly how it works in the original the big dot doesn't cast over like meshes of things but they're hit boxes right so like yeah. if if you aim at a crow for example a crow is a very odd shape but if you aim your gun at it and you look, you look at the dot where it's casting over, it's like a, you're aiming at a big box. And so I like, uh, there's a simplicity to the, the hit detection there that I like. And it's like you can be assured what's going to register as a hit and what isn't just by looking at the size of the dot. And it's very big too. It's very easy to see. Mm -hmm. The the one in the original is bigger. I can still I still was able to use it pretty well. Like the red dot yes. sight. Yes, you, you legitimately like learning. You get a feel for where it is on the I screen. I love the red dot sight when I got it in this game. I missed it. I was like, it's thank good, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, because your first thought because your th first thought is oh, there's laser sights here, so I guess you have to unlock them for the guns. Like, no, this is the only one. This is the only one you get. And it's not even, you can't even get it for all pistols. It's so mean. <laughs> no, no, I don't get that. in the chat for the red nine. 
Like yeah. I'm, I'm fine with the idea that a a gun, all the guns have laser sights, and a gun's accuracy is something like how much does that red, how much does that gun move after you shoot it? You essentially you remove accuracy as a statistic from weapons, and it's always perfect. But you had a recoil statistic in its place. Guns that are larger, guns that are based on how powerful it is and how big the gun is, and your attachments like stocks, those will impact the recoil, but they'll still shoot. Where I mean, like if you if you went to the range and you took a if you took a if you took an AK seventy four and you took the stock off, it's going to be a lot harder to shoot, but it's going to be just as accurate as it was with the stock on it. And that's why rifles. That's why stocks are so so important as attachments for weapons when it comes to hitting things and and, and being accurate because it's not impacting the gun's accuracy. It's impacting your ability to use the gun's accuracy because you as a human are a very integral part of that weapon being used in an effective manner. Mm-hmm. And Leon is a very, very effective soldier, essentially. So, you know, uh, the player being Leon, it makes sense that, you know, shit goes where he points them. So, yeah. um, incredibly detrimental to the point of negating, like, I wouldn't recommend hold, people hold play up, before you get... the target practice so... because of the accuracy with the shotgun and the TMP. Why do, why, why have, yeah, chat, yeah. AK-74, what, did you think that I, do you think I misspoke and didn't say AK-47? They don't know AK-74. about it. How can you guys it's have been, been for... fucking playing <laughs> COD games and still don't know about the 74? It's been around for 50 it's... years, guys. It's, what are we talking about? Did you guys not know that AK-74 is <laughs> You guys did not. Well, can I just say, oh. as, as someone who has gotten major familiarity, major most of my familiarity of guns from COD games, even I would oh, be like, the AK-74... Uh, U, right? It ends with a U, one of them. Even I yep. know that. Like, I don't know anything it's about guns, but I know this shit from... Like, come on, guys, 47 is Russians... not the only one. <laughs> I think the Russians have been using AK-47s since 1947? Like, like, what do you... Like, yeah. The AK-74 shoots the 5.45 by 39 millimeter round, not the 5.56, as someone in chat said. But like, yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, like, they, God they're not using it's... NATO rounds, and uh, yeah, that's not okay. happening. It's not five oh, five six, guys. It is definitely not. You can get them in um, five five six, but the uh, that's a different gun. So yeah, it's uh, very strange that people would be like, "What? What do you mean?" <laughs> like, come on, what? Come on, guys. Everybody was trying to make another Rags Biden moment, but and it was actually a chat a chat moment. Biden moment. <laughs> <laughs> it up, chat. I don't, I don't... <laughs> Loser. Um, so yeah, not to, we won't be going off guns, this is sort of like, I, I see target practice as an extension of the gun conversation. It's a mode in the game, yeah, sure. you can play it, we can even move yeah. into the gadget system and then go back to guns if you guys want. Um, oh, dude, I love the I music. Have, the music is fantastic. Something. Dude, I seriously had nothing but praise for this right up until I started to learn this very dif- distant specifics. I even had people defending it being like, who cares, it's like to get the maximum scores and the maximum amount of coins, so it's fine. It's like no, no, no you <laughs> fool! Not cool. You can't like uh... you know. I'm the kind of person that's like, I will fucking beat you. Like even if you give me these balked <laughs> yeah. mechanics, I'm gonna beat you. And oh, I, you know, by the way, can you tell me now on the third one, one C, where was the seventh one? Where was the last uh, skull? Yeah, one. I think that's the on one C. Where was the seventh skull? I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I bet, I bet, were... I bet, I bet that's the one. You don't even barrel. know, do you? I bet it could, it, it could be the one. It could be behind the barrel. Some bastards are hidden. Yes, They're hidden they are. The yeah. Barrels. The There's bastards. another thing I find uncool. I think it's like a, the, the, oh, the no. third or second guy has a barrel in front of him. You shoot down the barrel of two shots, and then there is a skull behind. And he's him. not the only so one. Like, are you telling me that because I played well, I got punished because yes. I actually hit? All You're the supposed targets. to. You shot the pirate, you fool! You shot hey, the pirate's head. This is what I mean. Uh, in terms of like how you learn this thing, it's that you have to shoot the head, or you can reliably shoot the barrel to shoot him down easily. So, like, then they later trick you by being I, like, there's actually something you need behind the barrel, lol. And it's like, you... No. you, 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 you <laughs> like, yeah. no. I was so happy that I saw you do that, mutually, so I didn't have to find it. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I gave up. I didn't. I didn't want to look it up, but I didn't want anybody to tell me, so I gave up. I just decided it wasn't. I wasn't gonna have fun. You and your <laughs> pride. <laughs> no, do you see the? Do you see this shit too? 
Oh god, I can't roll it yeah, back very well, but like the back. shotgun fucking me over all the time. It drives me nuts. <laughs> I see like, you bringing that shotgun back to the left because you're like, sure, right? Yeah, <laughs> you can tell from the way I'm moving the mouse. It's like, so he thinks he's done, that he, <laughs> he's not done. <laughs> back he goes. And while we're on the subject of it, and it's on my mind, I am not convinced that this game... I, I'm really good at... I'm, I say that, that's to my own horn. I'm really good at first person shooters. And these fucking oh. parrots with the skulls on them, I swear to God <laughs> that Darn the bullet. Issue. I just, I legitimately do not believe it's valid a lot of the time. No, um, that's a skill like, issue. I just, that the, where that little, where that reticle is, and if there's some kind of a, a, an inbuilt lag kind of system to it, but I can be tracking that thing fucking perfectly, especially because I'm expecting it. I know when it's coming. I know the speed it's going, and I put that reticle over it, and I pull the trigger, I get nothing. And I'm like, yeah. fuck you, game. You are shenanigans game. with me. It's, uh, there were plenty of times, like, I'm sure Mel would feel the same way, happily concede when I know it's my fault, but there are plenty of times where I'll, first of all, hit and it'll give me nothing and i'm like mm, okay but there are also times where i'm like oh i missed and it's like you got it and i'm like okay huh <laughs> like, <laughs> no i didn't <laughs> like, sure i did he, the fine. strategy that Moore is employ employing here is that in he's he's throwing in instances where the game worked in his favor to make it seem like he's not actually pissed off that it's a skill issue <laughs> okay he's throwing in that as like ah see sometimes the game helps me out and i acknowledge that when i'm not so good but there's other times when i didn't hit it it's because the game screwed me over I'm it's confused. very sneaky what's happening no like <laughs> memes aside i legitimately think that there is some sort of a some issue on fast moving targets and how yeah we, no probably there probably is actually. yeah and that's, that's the thing <laughs> the um the it, it what because you notice it it's not because the parrot's like a magic small target or anything. I think it's because it moves pretty much faster than anything you shoot uh, at in the actual game. Sometimes it does, uh, I think. So right? like when it moves it really quick really and you're fast. tracking it left to right, that's like the hardest shot to make. And that will, uh, the tiniest bit of lag or misalignment with hitboxes will manifest in the biggest, you know, frustrations. And that's the only time I noticed it in the game. But when it's the last fucking skull... On the last oh my God. fucking level, and I all gotta right. get all the way through the entire round and hit that one thing at the very end to the point I could know I can ignore every other target on that shooting range and focus on the fucking parrot, and it doesn't give it to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I don't like you. And yeah, the, uh, I have to make this point on streams every once in a while. If I benefit from a wonky mechanic, I'm still annoyed. It's just how it works. If if it plays out, then it's like you got. Even sometimes, if I get like the full score thanks to a wonky shoot, it I'm just like, oh, you know, yeah. it's like it doesn't really count. But final take it, I guess. <laughs> if it doesn't really count, you should be doing it over again. That's what I tend to do. <laughs> yeah, you want things to make sense, the mechanics to make sense, even if. It well, does what I will say is, in your favor sometimes. If right? it stole it from me previously, and then I get it through wonky means, I'll just be like, yeah, that's my revenge on you, game. <laughs> your revenge on the game. You've you know, played the game yourself. Is, Congratulations. The you the game doesn't have feeling it does though, right? it does that's the that's what i checked online does. Go to sleep at the night. amount of time uh -huh. I, I shit talk Got games and, and then i just get killed by bullshit it's like yeah okay you knew that's so, fair um, my arc with this by the way was oh my gosh they've taken the target practice and made it better and by the time i finished i was like it's worse <laughs> Easily worse. Music. Visually, musically, Music. thematically, it's wonderful. And of course, oh, God your damn, that red man, dot. I've never wanted you man more. Merchant there selling you. Hype man or, or or Ashley, You're an or artist, me. mate. Yeah, Ashley being a bit of a hype. <laughs> hype man well, let me tell you something. After five hours of him hyping me, I need him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, because they didn't record enough lines. <laughs> Those words are like poison. <laughs> He's only got like five lines. Maybe they thought everyone would give the fuck up once they realized how it worked. <laughs> <They're> like <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Know. We'll get the lines out quick. Because uh, yeah, the the, shit, the original you just want to get this the original, perfectly. You just hear him all the time. Nowhere near as dynamic the original, but the original fucking works. Everything is uh, yeah. it works the way it's supposed to. The challenge is very straightforward. Um, even in that though, the way that you can win maximum points, so to speak, is kind of strange in uh, Resident Evil Four to unlock like the six caps. You just need to like. 
I don't. I'll be honest with you. I'm not even 100 percent sure how it works. I end up getting all six, and I'm like, all right, I guess I did it. I sometimes get all six after the first round. It's like, oh, I guess I don't need to do the rifle one anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no uh, it's no like point. a cumulative <laughs> score that you get the unlocks with. I'm not entirely sure. This one, I understood fully how it works. I just fucking hate whenever it's like, this one will involve the shotgun. This one will involve the TMP. It's like, no, no, <laughs> no. I don't want that. <laughs> or the bolt thrower. Not a fan of that one either. And the, by the way, the target practice is what made me decide to not use the bolt thrower. Same. And I hear a lot uh, of people being like, the explosive's really useful. It's like, I'm sure it is, but that is not what I'm using that gun for most of the time. Fuck being having to have to use it for its like actual usage. You know, I the, mean, it, it really, the mines on the bolt thrower really saved me in the dual uh, blind Wolverine dude fight on, <laughs> on pro mode. The thing is, um, I, you know, I wouldn't deny that they're useful. It's just that I have my setup usually involves that whenever I fight like a mini boss, I'm like, all right, time to throw out the magnum or grenades mm -hmm. or, you know, I've got something prepped usually. Um, because the bolt throw is just more room to take up in my inventory, and I can just sell the the mines actually sell pretty well too. I think that's what I realized. I I bought it because I figured I might use it, but then eventually I just got rid of it. I realized that I wasn't using it enough. I wasn't finding it useful in enough instances. Part of the temptation, of course, is that if you fight an individual Ganado, you can put three bolts into its head, it dies, and then pick them all out. And it's like, wow, look at that value. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, exactly value. Yeah, that was doesn't translate as well in a broad sense of fighting lots of people, and you end up losing bolts, and you don't have. An, and it's just like, ah, oh, fuck it, give me my pistol back. Yeah. <laughs> I just want things to go where I shoot them, god damn it. Yeah, that would be nice. I was well, yeah, to interrupt oh, yeah, the see, flow, this guys. Is the, but... This is the motherfucker, that, that, that one back there. <laughs> that, back there. <laughs> that motherfucking parrot. <laughs> Piece of I, shit. I gotta get going, guys. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, okay. um, no problem, yeah, Sam. I was really looking forward to this, and uh, thanks a lot for inviting me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you guys. Always a pleasure. This is great. And, uh, we'll yeah, catch great you the next time enjoy. we catch you, whenever that may be. Want to let people know where to find you and what you're up to before you go? Yeah, sure. John Graham on YouTube. I'm the Master Chief Sucks at Halo guy. I make dumb videos like that. Uh, you can check me out on there. And uh, yeah, thank you guys and thank you, chat. Well, uh, yeah. All right. Excellent. Hey, dude, that's all right, we will see bye, you guys. later. Hey, I'm a good man. Bye bye. See you for RE5. See ya. <laughs> see you for RE5 Rebake. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. probably happening. Well, the last of us season uh, two. That's from, oof. Oh, be fun. so here's another thing with the laser sights, and that's something that's been theorized while I was streaming. I don't know if that happened with an audio stream as well, mutually, but apparently, if the if the if the crosshair goes smaller, apparently the crit rate goes up as well. So obviously that needs I, to be tested, but I I don't know if that's I think, true. Yeah, I don't know. That's like so. But the thing that I was thinking of. So if you have the laser sight, you just have full crit chance. All the time, or well, improved crit chance, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't improved know. crit chance all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're if right. that's how it works, that's how it works. But I did find that once I got the uh, five times crit chance and the laser sight on my pistol, it was it was doing work. It was, uh, yeah, that's what that's to why the I'm point where that might be true because you get like sometimes like headshot explodes, headshot explodes. Yeah. Like that's a lot of crits. Like that's a really high crit chance. I remember saying on my right stream, now, I was like, which is great. I but, feel like yeah. the Sentinel-9 plus laser plus exclusive has replaced like the TMP in the OG now. That's probably going to be what I rely on if I'm not allowed, you know, mm -hmm. bonus weapons and stuff. Yeah. yeah that, oh, that just that goes back to... And butter. That just goes back to what you said earlier. It's like, the game just doesn't tell you. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, well... <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's not weird the standard can, version of the game. The game doesn't like, even give you that gun. You can pick like that three different topics good. right now, but that one is definitely something I want to get to. The uh, the information they do not give you about a lot of things and how they work. Fucking annoying. Um, but I guess, well, so first of all, target practice. Is there anything else anyone wants to say about it? Because um, we can move into the gotcha um, points. I hate it, and I feel that unfortunately, because of the upcoming systems we're about to discuss, it feels far more meaningful to actually do them instead of it being a fun little side thing that you can do if you like if it. If someone, funsies... someone wants to argue this is inconsequential to the game, they are wrong. They are yes. wrong. Yeah, they are that wrong. Is not true. We got yeah. uh, the, the things that you can unlock from target practice. Yes, let's talk about those, wow. shall we? Uh, so anyone uh, who doesn't know, the better you play, the more silver and gold tokens you get. And once you get them, uh -huh. you can spend them on little loot little box. machine, little loot box <laughs> machine in-game. <laughs> Little gotcha boy. 
And it's kind of fun. And when you do it initially, you're thinking to yourself, like, I wonder what this system will be, because all of them have to be designed in such a way that's kind of fair to everybody, right? No, right, wrong. Yeah, right. Oh, mm -hmm. damn it. Um, this system, <laughs> it's absolutely, like, from what I can tell, it literally, absolute randomness. It's, it's, yep. uh, actually true randomness which you don't actually yeah. want to see <laughs> you think you'd want to it's but you the, don't it's, it's the way it apparently works is as soon as you enter the arena you get a set table that you can get from the coins you have in there so you can't even like properly like you can't even save scum it as soon as you go in there you have a set thing that happens so yeah uh it's now, really weird I... like, it, it creates a table that it draws from depending on what you put in the machine okay yeah. Uh, so for anybody who doesn't know, you can get like common, rare, and very rare, and then like one. There's one golden to, one, right? I think we need to back up just a just a bit. Uh, maybe I had a Biden moment and I forgot. But yes. uh, there's a charm system in the game where your attaché case has spots for three different charms, and each of the charms gives you essentially a passive bonus. These can range from a percentage to proc extra crafting uh, bullets. Mm -hmm. It can be doubling the effectiveness of herbs, fish, or eggs. It can be discounts on upgrades and discounts on repairs. Um, it can be you know, things of that nature. So, pretty, uh, pretty important stuff. These are not small things by any stretch of the imagination. For instance, let's say that you get lucky and you get the sleeper hit, the chicken... Oh, the chicken. Oh, the chicken. Let me tell oh. you about the chicken. The chicken charm doubles the effectiveness of eggs yes. in terms of being healing items. And let me tell you something about eggs. Eggs take up one spot, and they're infinitely generated by chickens. So if you need it, oh boy, you essentially have more than you can handle of <laughs> all of these eggs. And when they're at double uh, effectiveness, then you get a very strong healing item that takes up one spot per. And yeah. uh, if you, I mean, if you're, if you're just doing a normal playthrough and you don't really, you know, want to sit around and wait or check the chickens, you could leave the village and the farm at the beginning with like two, three, four eggs. Um, and that's, you know, it, it's, it's a big deal. It saves you a lot of, a lot of herb usage. Uh, it, you know, it's very efficient in terms of its, uh, in terms of its, you know, efficiency for storage. Um, or let's say that maybe you get a charm that's, like I mentioned before, 30% off knife repairs. Oh, 30% off knife repairs. Now that saves you a lot of cash. It's like a, two, lot two, of a, cash. Lot. a lot well, of cash. A lot of cash. As well, so, someone just mentioned the, the beetle, right? So in my first playthrough, oh, you know when you kill Verdugo and you're like, oh, wow, a, a, a monocle and it's worth 30k. It's like, that's a pretty grand prize for a difficult boss. Woohoo. If you get the beetle... And you sell a green, yellow, red herb, and now I know the obvious response to that in terms of like why you wouldn't. But if you do, if you choose to, that's twenty thousand pesetas. Yeah, with the beetles, catch. like that's two of those is more than what you get for like most bosses in yeah. the game. Damn. Now keep in mind, and... you do the, you do the first shooting range, you get that beetle, and then you go to the lake, and then you just go fishing. You just get all those fish, and you get double oh. cash for that. And it's like, oh, that's some stonks right there. That is some that's a real big mega stonks. Stonks. value. And hey, there's maybe... fish in a little in a little pond in the castle right in the beginning, yeah. which respawns, by the way, once at least. Does it? Yeah, it Damn. respawns once. Yeah, if you grab no them all clue. there, they respawn later in the game. You can go back and grab more. I had I just respawn. There were like two or three of the big fishes in there, so. Yeah, you can get even more stonks from that if you don't, because you just don't need that much healing items. But hey, Never why there. stop there? There, there are charms that give you thirty percent off body armor repair. Ooh, yeah, you. Ooh that oh, fucking damn. comes in Later handy. In the game. You, that one looks you. like Ada Wong too. It's a bonus. Yeah. And oh, what about five percent off all upgrades? Exactly. All upgrade yeah, you gotta pop that off whenever like you go back Asian. to the yeah, shop. <laughs> absolutely, one hundred fucking percent. So some of these are are really really good yeah right like well, wait, it's have you just named, really really good have you named the rarest one yet um i don't i haven't that actually looked be, at a list of all of them that'd be, that so would be the ditko the, reference the the, the glitch. oh gun. neat the dipman glitch so it's uh it's a uh, the striker shotgun obviously from the original the model from yeah. that but it's uh, gives you eight percent plus movement speed which Whoa! yeah let me tell you you feel it wow. <laughs> like you fucking feel it 
And Jeez, you, you guys should be able to recognize how fucking good that is when you've got people trying to grab you and throw things at you. That's like, that's, okay. So I, I'm curious. Let me actually look up a list uh, of, let's see, let's Matt, get to... It's crazy, list actually. List of charms, mm -hmm. sorry, for while you While you looked it up, uh, this just goes back to the deluxe edition, by the way, because you get two free charms. Uh, you do, yeah. When you get the deluxe edition. One gives you a higher chance of getting extra ammo for handgun, which is very, very useful. And the other one is 20% uh, oh, more healing, I from think. Herbs, yeah. From That's herbs. invaluable. Uh, yeah. Herbs. I'll, I'll so give you a list the, here. Wait, the Ashley um, one... The, the Ashley you just get from the deluxe edition? No, no, no. You get it's literally a herb and it gives you plus twenty percent. Ashley gives you plus fifty, and then there's a village lady oh. I think that gives you plus thirty. But all, you can put them all together if you yeah. want to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so here's man. Because even with just Ashley, that turns the green herb into an incredibly valuable healing item. Yep. Like just so here are the deluxe herb. edition charms. Uh, the handgun we, ammo, we, which is plus thirty percent handgun. We just fucking explained and, all of the rats. And the green one you got wrong, which I was I was getting to because there's only two. The green herb is plus 15% health. Oh, recovery. whatever. We said like 20 or 30 or whatever. It's the same point. 20 is different. So, uh, there is some in here. Yeah, you've got... There's only two legendary charms. The striker, as you'd mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I actually got the other legendary. The cute bear, which is minus one gunpowder used when crafting. I didn't even know that one oh, existed. That, that, <laughs> I didn't even know that one even existed. That, one's, <laughs> that one sucks. I, I was hoping for a gunpowder reduction one, but yeah, minus one. Legendary for cool. minus one? That's not even, yeah, that's not that, that good. Like, you could probably <laughs> never like, feel that. Minus 50% oh. would be amazing. Uh, but yeah, there's the other epic one we hadn't mentioned was the Illuminatos emblem, plus 20% melee critical hit rate, which, uh, ooh, plus 20, that's a, remember, 20% is 1 in 5, and that's in addition to its base, so... I, I yeah, used that in my are... first playthrough. I got a lot of uh, kick kills after staggering them. It was very mm. helpful. Yeah, there's some rare charms here. Some yeah, the way these are balanced is bizarre because yes. the rare charms are everything. Like there's a, a Leon with rocket launcher that gives you twenty percent off the rocket launcher. It's like, well, if I don't want the rocket launcher, that that rare charm is worthless. That's a great um, point, Rags. Some of these are fucking worthless depending on how you play, and some of them are the most invaluable things you could possibly come across. Yeah. Let's see, there's... Um, JJ is 40% off resources. I assume bought, like... Those buying... resource packs, yeah, the small and large ones you get. Okay, I gotcha. Which uh, is like, like chicken okay they did. if you're buying them, I guess. Yeah, uh, I, I thought... Luis, that's like, meant five in all my playthroughs. <laughs> Luis is 20% weapon resale value increased. That's great. Which is great if you, uh, yeah, I mean, it's free money, I guess. Uh, uh, I, I should also lean. point out that you can equip these and unequip them. Oh, we'll you're get there. Out. We'll get there. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, there's a Leon with. Oh, I got this one on the first playthrough. Plus 40% ammo resale value. Um, yeah, and then the, the two kings, 30% off uh, knife repairs and body armor repairs, the black bass one. What was that? You and save 400,000 pesetas on the infinite launcher. It's not worthless. Did anyone say it was worthless? I don't think... I mean, it's, not worth, it's, only, it's worthless if you don't want the rocket launcher. Yeah, which plenty of people don't. Because they want to like, you know, kill things regularly. You know? I wanna, <laughs> yeah, plus if I'm, if I'm playing the game, it, well, consider the, you know, the opportunity cost associated with that. Whereas Ada Wong or Leon with a handgun... Or Leon with a shotgun, or the chicken. Those are way better than Leon with a rocket launcher. So you just got kind of duped out of something that was way better. Um, but pretty much all the common charms seem to be frequency bonuses for crafting, or... Yeah, they're pretty much all crafting frequency bonuses. There's a couple little ones, like plus 10% health recovery for green herbs. You'll probably never feel that. Um, Plus thirty percent health recovery and plus forty percent for vipers. The vipers um, one, I like. You can get it, so you can get a hundred percent. Or it's just like fucking okay, I guess. And like, uh, yeah, it, and I don't like the frequency bonuses. Just give me an extra bullet or two, not like a percentage chance to craft. Yeah. Well, so three can we now, more or whatever. Let's talk equip. about how they work. <laughs> like how oh, how this all yeah. plays out. So at the typewriter, you have you can save. You can put things into storage. I complain about that later. And you can um, you can change. You can customize yep. both your attaché case um, and the three charms that are on it. And all of the typewriters in the game, minus a couple. Well, let's suppose all of the merchants are next to a typewriter, as far as I know. 
-hmm. which means if you were to get a um a ammo resale value bonus or a a knife repair or armor repair uh discount then those don't have to get in the way of a charm that you would use while you're actually playing those mm -hmm. can always be equipped then you go to the menu for the shopkeeper then you use them and then when you go back to the typewriter that's like right next to them you equip the ones that you'd rather have for your actual gameplay which will generally be frequency bonuses or maybe you know recovery boons um so uh it's it's one of those like just have it be a soft bonus for me all the time instead of making me swap because all it does is it annoys me i literally yeah. use oh, no efficiency yeah, there's, it doesn't, like, stop me from always using it. it. It functions the same thing. It's just more quality of life. So I guess they weren't I, thinking about it, and it has to be specifically equipped on your attache case. Attache the, case. The, the only thing I can think is that maybe they were trying to stop people from exploiting the charms when trying to do a timed run. Like, but it's because like... if you have to take the time to actually switch the charm to the most ideal one, you will probably like, elect to not. I mean... It, that's so you could do it quick enough it's just annoying to do oh yeah because no, you just got to do it you got to go to the menu swap them out then go to the thing use it and then go back swap it out and ugh, it's just meh you know it, it's just like you just just have it be a just have it be a bonus for the playthrough and it's on a list it, it's just a charm list by your attache attache case when you press tab because there's plenty of dead space there on the screen that shows you your bonuses um and, you know, probably the big thing to, to state, like, it fucking sucks that these are RNG. Also, uh, I've said it a couple of times, uh, fuck you, just make it a shop. I don't care. I know this yep. is what you want, but I don't care. Make the, you know, the 8% movement speed of thunder is like, that costs 10 gold tokens, you know? If you want to save up and spend it all on that, good for you. The, the, the lower level ones, they're all cheaper and silver, and you can pick up with the specific ones you need. And I know someone's going to be like, but that's not the fucking point of the... And it's like, I know, the point they're currently running with sucks. Absolutely sucks. It's all RNG. Plenty of players will get fucking 10 Ada Wongs, and then they won't get anything else, and it's just like, what yep. am I supposed to do with this? And the game's like, oh, it's random, don't you know? Village. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's the other thing. There's plenty of, like, uh, lower-level fixes. Instead of just ripping out the system, you could have it be that, oh, you got yourself a very rare charm that you already have it? Reroll, and you'll get one of equal rarity, but hopefully one you don't have. It's like, that's pretty simple. Why isn't that in the game? Oh, well, nope. Um, they don't sell for very much. They're definitely not worth the fucking yeah, trouble really you don't. go through to get these fucking coins. So, uh, I feel bad for anybody who rolled with bad charms or no it's charms. It's a meaningful like, difference. Yeah. Um, I've had both the knife repair and the body armor repair in the same run, and oh, it just yeah. saves you so much cash. Yep. Because you're, you're always going to be using the knife, and you're always going to be taking damage, pretty much. So, it just, it just saves you so much money. And yeah, the 5% you know, upgrade off... That remember for every ten thousand that you spend on an upgrade, you're saving five hundred pesetas, which is like because of how much you will spend on upgrades. That's that's not a small difference. That shit adds up. Feels wrong and to me. And it's free. You have you lose nothing by just having it. It's just a flat out discount on something you're going to spend money on anyway. Also, what's the fuck? What's the idea? You can put three gold coins in and pull out a silver. What's that about? It probably weighs yeah. it where if you put in three golds, you have you still have like a ten percent chance of getting a Ooh, common, I hate it. which sucks. It makes me think that I'm wasting my gold coins, especially when you get a gold through three silvers. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Or I hell, have, imagine remember, you pull a legendary and it's the one that doesn't, or the one of the two that does suck. I like, think oh, I never drew the bear, and I'm bear. kind of fucking lucky that I didn't. I got the two yeah, uh, the bear ones. sucks. It's, um, well, it's, this is what I mean, it's unreal that I could spend all that time getting every coin and then I don't get anything useful and someone else is like, I got a couple yep. coins, threw them in, and I got myself, like, the best charm. So that's neat. It's just like, oh, cool. When if it were, like, a shop or something that could be better, like, what if it was like, oh, you've got yourself five common, you can trade them in for a rare. It's like, ooh, that's something. The interesting thing that I thought this game would kind of explore, and it doesn't really is this idea that you could essentially sort of make a soft build for your character based off how you want to play or what you like doing. Um, when really, it's randomly applied bonuses to what you're going to do anyway, uh, which isn't interesting. If anything, it's frustrating if you don't get the ones that are just flat out really good. Um, I'm not going to go out of my way to change anything about my behavior in this game, 
because of what I pull, except maybe, maybe if I get like a bass charm, I'm like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll keep the fish instead of selling it. Even though it takes up, a, chances are much needed space anyway, because bass are kind of big and they're not space efficient. Yeah. But that's like as far as it would go. Well, how weird it's is it that really there's gonna... so many viper charms when it's like I can only think of one time in the game where vipers turn up a lot, and that's it. I never, he never used yeah. them. I stole my vipers. I just Find didn't like need one the or healing, two you know? randomly. It just feels a... so weird. It's like if you're gonna give viper charms to this degree, you should probably have implemented them a bit more commonly. Like you do come across a viper hero there in the game. Like I feel like there's like maybe two or three in the castle. It's like there you go. There's maybe like I feel like there's like six or seven in the game. Well, that's the thing. There's, there's like five the of them in, in the uh, the swampy village part, right? There's like a bunch of them oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, the fish farm area, that's like yeah. the viper place. <laughs> and then <that's laughs> it. Three, three, three of those. Three of those. Every time there was one in a box, it actually startled me. Like I was like, oh no, jeez, <laughs> oh, I forgot it's about kind of funny. Those. Even though they didn't show up much at all, it was when I played RE4 originally. I always they always surprised me. Yeah. But here I'm yep, I am. Yeah, they're startling in the original. <laughs> Because they, <laughs> they, they, twice. they jump out at you, yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> what I think ultimately we could have had was a really interesting system where based on the attaché case that you're using and its passive bonus, or the charms that you attach to it, you could make interesting little builds that might encourage you to explore different weapons or play styles or do certain things that you might not have otherwise done. And there's all kinds of charms that could have they could have had that they don't have. That would have given you bonuses to this, or lesser lessen the penalties for this, that, and the other thing that just aren't in here. Um, and by the way, I only stuck with the base attaché case that gives you bonus uh, handgun, uh, ammo. handgun ammo. I just mm -hmm. stuck yeah. with that one. I was wasn't really interested in the other ones. Um, I just stuck know, with it. I didn't because I'm retarded. I didn't read the benefits, and so I just went with the one I liked the most in terms of its look, and I went with the golden red, like the because I liked the way it contrasted with my items. And, gives you more cash. Yeah, and it drops more per se, so I was just like, that's fine. <laughs> like, I guess that's a deluxe edition one, because I didn't ever yeah, see that Yeah, that's a deluxe one. edition one. Yeah. Which, I it, didn't, oh, this yeah, is what I mean, I didn't uh, realize the cases really... gave me benefits from the deluxe edition. I thought they were just colors. Yeah. I think there's only three in the base game. Uh, there's the leather one that gives you a higher drop chance for red herbs, and then there's the mm -hmm. black the one, L1, I think, right. that gives you the yeah chance at getting resources, uh, which is, if, if I was going to swap, I would go for that one. Um, yeah, I guess the red herb one is the one I use primarily. Yeah, uh, and I and I'm and I'm curious too because sometimes like the the base attaché case gives you a bonus of finding more handgun ammo, and a little icon will appear if it you know if it is handgun that ammo that's generated by the attaché case uh, proccing. And I'm curious because sometimes I'll open up a barrel, and it'll only have one item in it. And it's the attaché case bonus of finding five, um, finding five pistol ammo, which means that there was otherwise going to be something else in there that was replaced by finding the pistol ammo, which statistically is not always going to be worth it to find. Generally, it is. It, it gives you a lot of ammo over the course of the game for your pistol, but I can't help but wonder how many velvet blues and resources and things mm. got essentially overwritten right. or even potentially how many handgun ammo tens or more were replaced by handgun ammo fives. But you know, I think it's still worth it, but I am just curious if that level of detail was, you know, paid to what it can replace potentially. Cause I don't know. So yeah, um, I would prefer to do a completely different system that doesn't rely entirely on luck, but I'd also suggest yes. a bunch of ways to fix this, to make it more, Reasonable, and if you really want to keep the luck element, I was thinking like, imagine there was ten charms to get, and there's they cost three coins per thing, and there's just thirty coins to get in the whole game. So eventually, you can get everything if you get all of the. You know, it's just normal game mechanics instead of oh, this yeah, weird just, one. Yeah. You could play this Maybe. game twenty fucking times, like I did, and not even know mm -hmm. there's a bear one. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> like it's insane. And uh, yeah, if, if, if whether it was buying it with extra pesetas, whether it was earning them through doing challenges in game, whether it was using spinels to buy some of them specifically, um, uh, I mean, better systems exist other than pure randomness, especially with how effective they are. I mean, I can, I can imagine if you save, and if you <sighs> save, a, if you were to save a thousand on every knife repair. 
and that's being very, very conservative in that estimate, then you're going to save easily 10, 15, 20,000, I feel, on that. Oh, you just save so much money on the knife and body armor repair. Those are like the best two to get. Like, yeah. damn. Yeah, no, and if you roll them, you're in, you're in big luck, which is not preferable, I don't think. Yeah, and like what you just got on stream, the Zealot with a Scythe, plus 20% frequency bonus to crafting SMG ammo. Well, why the fuck would I use an SMG? This is worthless to me. <laughs> like, I'm not going to go out of my way to now start using an SMG. Hey, right. Because I'll have you know yeah. the Chicago Sweeper is amazing once you get infinite ammo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's when it's pretty good, okay? Uh, they just hold the button until they die. <laughs> yep. Um, well, does that wrap pretty us good. up on the gachi weird thing? Uh, system? Yeah, half-baked system, very poorly yeah. implemented. Could have been cool, but isn't. It's just such a letdown. You just perfected yeah, those three like. galleries. It's like, oh, let me go put all my six to nine golden coins in there. Yep. Gray because ball, as we said, ball, you have to work ball. for this shit. Uh, I, didn't, I, I never even like made any effort to understand that system. I was like, I, th I figured that there was some way that I could like play it to get the things I wanted, but nope, didn't nope. seem like it. Disapproved, but um, it's an extension, the I guess. The inventory system is awesome. Well, so I was going to say it's an extension of the target practice, and we're done with that now, so we can go back to gunplay. Was there anything else one wanted to say about any of the weapons and how they, they work? And um, I don't know. Um, as far as the way that the balancing. weapons behave themselves, one of the things that I, I didn't... So shotguns work different in this than they did to the original Resident Evil 4. In RE4, shotguns were essentially... They worked like the force gun in Dead Space. Yes. It, it, it projects this forward sort of cone of it blows everything back and does a decently high amount of damage. And in Resident Evil, the, uh, the remake here, its penetrative capability has been extremely um, softened, which is, you know, I guess more realistic, but you know, fuck that. Um, the, uh, instead, it just seems to be pretty much useful as like a super handgun shot. Where it, you'll, you'll pretty much hit one enemy with it. Maybe you'll clip some of the ones around it, but it's not really going to do much to them. But it's pretty much like a, a guaranteed stagger, high damage hit on one, maybe two enemies in front of you, really. Which still means it's useful and worth having around, because it's good to have that to generate shotgun ammo as well. But I didn't find the shotgun nearly as useful in this as I did in the original Resident Evil. Or it was like a panic button of, oh, they're closing in, or there's multiple enemies in a group in front of me. It's shotgun well, time. What's funny about that is that the Skull Shaker's spread is the biggest of all the shotguns, I think, right? Except the Striker, maybe? I think they have the same one. Not sure. Uh, but of I course, think Striker's a bit bigger? Well, either, in a, either case, Skull Shaker you can get from the get-go, right, as a deluxe mm -hmm. weapon. And it's that spread I found was more consistent than even the Riot Gun spread of, let's say it's a circle with a hundred dots in it, it'll fill 75 of them at random, which drives me fucking nuts. Uh, we we kind of brought this up before, but yeah, the shotguns in this game annoy me, while in the classic game they seem much more consistent. Like, they yeah, always they were a lot more they did useful. exactly what they were supposed to do. There is nothing in this game that the shotgun... I mean, the shotgun behaves slightly differently from, like I said, a, a, a charged, like, a, a powerful pistol shot, kind of. It's not used for creating distance... Like, it's... The shotgun in the original was used for groups and crowd control. And in this, it's just like, well, I'll, I'll stagger an enemy and do a decent amount of damage to him, or a high amount of damage to him. But it probably won't really affect anyone else around him, really. More um, um, specific so, yeah. issue that I don't know who would have encountered because we did some strange things, me and Mel, but I noticed it in his playthrough <laughs> as well. Uh, the stagger factor on the shotgun is not fucking good enough. Like it's it, not, yeah, right, yeah. It, it, I it, need I, to it, use those shotgun shells to stagger the shotgun guys. That's what that's one of the reasons I'm saving my shotgun shells yeah. because I know that it's going to do something for me and it's going to pay off when I need it. And in this one, it's just There's I just something... wasn't using it nearly as much. Yeah, no, I don't, I didn't rely on it as much as either, but there's something that just fucking. It in, it inherently fucks me off is that you have like a chainsaw man coming at you because we we played that particular section many times me and mel and you'll have like yeah, pistol twice. pistol 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 and then stagger it's a guarantee i think on professional at like six shots something like that yeah and at least you can rely on that sometimes it'll crit which we'll talk about actually next that's probably a good idea and mm -hmm. uh you know you go down faster but then it's like oh he's coming close i have one shot in my in my pistol left before reloading it's like not worth it pull out shotgun 
and then you go boom in his face, boom in his face, boom in his anim chain sword, and you're like, what? Oh, okay. He didn't stagger from any of those, and you're like, nope. They were all yeah, directly in his be... face with a shotgun. It's like I probably know. because that randomizer was like most of the bullets went past him. There was only <laughs> two little pellets. You dealt like five and a half damage or whatever. Yeah, that so sixty pixels care. he covered in. You hit thirty of them. It's like yeah. it did. And you're like, yeah, sorry. And it's like, oh. <laughs> So yeah, uh, uh, the shotguns pissed me off in this as well as the. Yeah, GMP. they just yeah I the the OG shotguns they the the shotguns in the original game offered something that the other weapons simply didn't do. It felt like they fired um, a tidal they, wave. Just... They they fired a not it it wasn't like super high damage, but it was a high damage shot that blasted everything away from you and gave you some space. And they were a lot more reliable in the way that they staggered uh, generally larger enemies you know what, like the chainsaw people. You know, I like Drags, and, and I say this because it was very consistent, but say you have three Ganados filling the screen, right? Left, center, and right. You mm -hmm. aim that shotgun with the red dot at the center boy, you shoot, and the left and right ones go, whoa, back. And you're like, yeah, fuck off. Yeah, it's a big... <laughs> Get the fuck it's out like, of my screen. It's wonderful when it works. It's powerful. And man, if you line it up and there's a bunch of guys at head level and you get that shot bla shotgun blast off in the original, you could take off like three, four heads maybe. Yeah. Oh, that feels good. It feels really good to be able to do that. Just shooting that shotgun into a, a mass of bodies in front of you. Yeah, and the important element is it, it had a definitive position to take the shotgun. It was, it was always ready when... I think I spent most of my time, my first playthrough, relying on the pistol exclusively. It was my uh, handy boy. A lot. Yeah, really yes. good. I, I found that I was not... The rifle is, as in the uh, original game, I, I think the rifle is more useful in this one. Um, though that's a preference thing. When I play the original, I'm pretty half and half on whether or not I get the, uh, on, on whether or not I get the rifle. I never regret it either way. Mm -hmm. It's probably a sign of good balancing. But um, in this, man... M1903 uh every time it's just so it's so good to be able to turn rifle rounds into that high damage um but yeah. if there was a weapon between the three that I typically use which is uh, the red 9 the riot gun and the 1903 probably dropping the riot gun I just don't use it nearly as much uh it just doesn't have that useful utility like shotguns had in the original game yeah I agree um, um... Give me a uh, give me just a moment though. I need to get a drink. My throat's parched. No Lord. problem. What we'll move into next, I think, still on gunplay, will be crit chance because mm, it's a big boy a... that needs discussing. Ugh. Um, I guess we'll lay the groundwork, being that in the original game, it seems that, and I could be wrong on this, but this is my take from playing it a lot, and just I think this is how it works. Set damage for everything. Uh, obviously more damage at weak spots, being like heads and uh, other assorted areas, but then there's a chance you'll... I guess you could call this a crit chance, where um, in the equivalent of like Ganados, you could uh, say that it takes two hits to guarantee a stagger. Sometimes their head will just pop off, and you're like, oh, shit, and it's like, yeah, you crit and you killed them. Like, it's, a, it's a fun little reward, but the irony is that sometimes it can get in your way in that, say, there's several of them, you want to trigger a um, a stagger to kick them all, so you shoot him in the head with maybe your last bullet, and then his head pops off. You're like, fuck, because mm -hmm. now I can't use the thing, and oh, shit. So, like, you know, there are ways that even could backfire, but the reason I'm saying all this is because they have changed it in uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake to the point where um, I think on assisted mode, it's one shot, and you, can, uh, you get the stagger. I think standard, it's two to three. I'm not actually 100% sure. Hardcore, it feels like it's four to five, and then Bro, it can be as much as six or something absurd. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I say absurd as well because the thing about it is, when you're cranking up the difficulties, I don't think you can complain necessarily that things take more damage. It has to be a better argument than that. And uh, I think then it comes down to a complaint on consistency. And you'd be like, yeah. well, it is consistent. You're consistently getting a chance at crit damage. And it's like, okay, but... There are certain points in the game where whether or not I hit that crit determines like my whole fucking run, depending on what I'm doing, which doesn't seem quite right. And um, when you try and kill both Salvadors on professional without bonus weapons, mm -hmm. uh, you have to get the crits or you're out, basically, which feels really strange, um, especially with how unreliable they are, because you need those staggers. Uh, and of course, oh, yeah. then that just playing into the regular gameplay. Um, 
the pistol can be very unreliable in terms of just what you're expecting it to do. To the point where you're like, there's five Ganados, just shoot them each in the head, boom, 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 until they fall down. Meanwhile, in the original, it's like, boom, kick, boom, kick, boom, kick, boom, kick, they're gone. Like, yeah. And you know exactly how it's going to work. I consider this change to have made the combat less reliable, but at the same time, I don't know that if I'm going to be going beyond it much more critically than that. Um, the guns themselves overall seem weaker, but it's likely tied to the fact that this game is just harder than the original. And again, yeah, that, that could be a matter of like, yeah, but you're more familiar with the original. And I'm like, I, I yes, but like, I'm pretty hyper familiar with this game now. And if I was to start it up again on pro without bonus weapons, it would be a fucking struggle compared to the OG game. Which, to be honest with you, on pro, if you watch my stream at the end of it, I was like, I really think there should be another difficulty level. This is a little too easy. And that's the level you unlock past hard, so. Mm. Um, and you know, that plays into everything. And like I said, you get that red dot and crit chance exclusive upgrade on the pistol, and it starts to become quite a fucking monster of a gun. Uh... Because when you start hitting crits all the time, enemies are staggering or dying consistently to the point yep. where it starts to feel a bit more like the OG game. Um, but that was a lot. What else does anyone... What, what do you guys think of crit chance slash? Have you noticed it even? So, uh, so while, I, while I was doing my uh, very short attempt of two Salvadors and Professional with only base guns, didn't take me 11 hours or anything. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, well... I learned a lot about the randomness of crit chances and RNG. So oh, I heard my favorite R word. If it, <laughs> uh, so this is one Ganado right before you activate the first Salvador that you have to go to activate. You have to go to those double gates and you're like, oh, here I am. This, I probably had about 10 different scenarios that i had to account for every time i went that way because you stealth kill all the other ones on the way like the one lady there and then you go up to him get your gun out and it's like okay so now it can happen that he can die in as little as two shots or six shots yes and it can be anything in between it could be three it could be four it could be five but then oh, it could also um... be the thing is it can be done like Crit, hit, hit. Or it can be hit, crit, hit. And then it's just different outlets every way. And then sometimes the, when you shoot him, sometimes he just goes back, staggers a little bit. Because there's also different kinds of staggers that can happen. Yeah. He can go to his knees, he can go back, he can go stun, so he can kick him. So it's all different ways you have to well, shoot again. Don't forget as well, again. if he staggers near a wall, sometimes it'll set up a new animation where he slams against the wall and he's set up for a yes. knife, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you'll nope, slip even... down the wall or into the wall and it won't prop yeah. that, which that can be a win or lose scenario as well. Yeah, especially with that first Salvador, because sometimes you can get lucky and kick him into that wall and then you're like, ah, oh, shit, I got the only the stagger one, not the, the knife. It's like, oh, now I can yeah. kick him and stagger him and then knife him, which is actually I... better, but happens... And you know what's funny, Val? Well, sometimes I'll, it'll be like, press, you know, left click to stab, and then you'll slash, and I'll be like, no, stab him! And then you yeah. click it again, and he stabs, you're like, oh, well, I just got a free slash, I guess. Okay, fine. Because that's another RNG thing, which is probably not really RNG, but your placement, maybe, but the problem is, if you give me the prompt to press the button to do the thing... Make me do the thing. You better do the fucking and not thing. Do another, don't do a slash. Do the knife stab that you're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, you are, it, it, it's, it's this, I have a lot of buttons to use. Yeah. I don't have just one button on my fucking controller. What you can do is you can not have the button. If, if I'm, I think Metal had, probably has the best example in the game of, so if, you, if you're running in this game, you're sprinting forward and you click you will do a, a slash attack. Yeah. And it yes. even has its own little special animation for you, like, slashing or kind of doing a little sprint. That's all well and good, but a lot of the times, you what you'll need to actually do is run up to an enemy quickly so that you could stab them and, 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 and use a contextual left-click now prompt that initiates an animation where you stab and essentially insta-kill them. Mm -hmm. So if it's off by a little bit, instead you're just going to run forward and slash your knife through the air like a retard instead of actually doing the thing that you need to be doing to kill the enemy because both of these things are controlled by a single button, which seems intuitive in a way, 
because oh a knife slide you're using the knife with the same button either way like yeah sure that part is true but if your timing is off by just a little bit then you're essentially going to do something that you definitely don't want to do and instead opens you up to being quite vulnerable in a fight when you very deliberately want to do a specific thing um but i'm assuming that while i was getting my drink and having my pee pee you guys started talking about the RNG staggers in this game. I've explained exactly Indeed. how all of it works and then left the field open for complaints slash praises. So go right ahead, Rex. All yeah. right. This is probably my, this is, no, this is my least favorite part of the game. Uh, I think this is why I love both. I, I really like this game. I love the original. Fringy had mentioned it before that the original has this extremely tight sort of set of mechanics to it it's very predictable there mm -hmm. is a repetition to it it's almost scientific and mathematical um how you can make these engagements go and i think it owes itself better to the gameplay that there is this kind of repetition to things because it kind of turns every engagement into like a tactical puzzle where you are using your resources to the maximum ability and trying to get enemies into particular positions that sets them up for certain things to happen. Um, it, it will, uh, in this game, there is a, and I don't know exactly what the math is behind it, I just know it's frustrating, but just because you shoot an enemy in the head um, doesn't mean that you're going to stagger them. It might, they might not even react to it at all. Yep. Um, yeah. The, you might shoot them in the head with a bullet, and they're just a guy, and literally no animation change whatsoever. Um, sometimes they they move a little bit or flinch a little bit, but that doesn't really mean anything other than a, a very very slight uh, the, a flinch essentially. But in the original game, if you hit an enemy in the head, as long as they weren't armored or anything, or if you hit an enemy in the leg, it would stagger them. If someone is sprinting towards you in the original game, if you pop them in the leg with a handgun shot or a TMP, they'll fall face forward. Every time you do it, they will. that's what will happen. If you do A, B will occur. And that's why when an enemy is sprinting at you, a lot of the times you're like, oh, I don't want to shoot him in the head. He's sprinting at me. I want to hit him in the leg so that he falls prone, right? And he's out of the fight, or I can knife him a bunch, or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, if you shoot an enemy in the head, it doesn't matter if they're in the middle of a lunge, it doesn't matter if they're in the middle of a grab, or they're just standing there, if they're walking, if you shoot an enemy in the head, there will be a stagger. There's two different types, but they're both staggers, and they will both allow you to do the same thing. The only thing that's different is the window that you have to um, essentially uh, ex uh, exploit that, uh, that stagger. It's what gave the TMP its incredible potential value, was that you could instead of using a pistol shot to stagger an enemy and then use that roundhouse kick or the suplex or anything like that, you could use a TMP, which is essentially a cheap stagger generator. Not, it wasn't, yeah, I think it was intended to be like a DPS machine, but instead it's just a stagger machine, which is great, and that's why I love it. It's my, like one of my favorite but guns. But rags, that's what? what made the original game such a cakewalk. Um, and yet, and yet... Cakewalk as it may as it allegedly is, that game requires a great deal of practice uh, and, and knowledge and uh, I almost want to appeal to like ending of its mechanics. It's known as one of the greatest really games of all time. Do you think it got in the it way is. of the fact that it was kind of easy when you get to know it? It's like that's not a problem. That's fine. If I have, I'm really really good at Resident Evil Four, the original, to the point where I would call it easy. But that's not because the game is easy. That's because I've played it a shit ton, and I know the strategies, and I know the, yeah. the weapons, and the best places to go. It's because I, I know the enemy attack animations, and how to, how to bait out enemy axe swings, and how to avoid axes, and, and how to... Like, by the way, there is actually a mechanic that is no longer... A combat mechanic that's no longer in Resident Evil the remake, and that's Doris' weapons. Yep. In that's the original, right. Yeah, you're right. In the original, hmm. if there was a closed door, enemies would pound. Boof. Boof, boof, open. And that's how it was. Bam, 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 open. That pattern every time. And if there was an enemy on the other side of that door, you could, um, you, you could kick open the door because there are two ways to open the doors in the oh. original. There's this nice and slow, quiet way, and then there's kicking it open. Yeah, it's different and what that will do, pressing one button, then double tapping it, right? Yep, yeah, that's right. You and it will stagger, yeah. Yeah, it'll stagger enemies on the other side. 
which is generally going to be a knee stagger. It'll bring them down to their knees, which for the villagers means that you'll spin and do a kick, uh, kick them forward. For the cultists and the islanders, it'll be a suplex. But um, that that's another little thing that we didn't have. But it was very it was nice to have that. You could use the do- you could use doors as weapons. Um, the I don't like it. I I really really don't like it in this game. And the game's good enough in all of its other aspects that I'd still highly highly recommend this game. And I really like this game, and I'll continue to play this game. But I think that this alone changes it to where I don't think I can like this more than the original. Weapon I love. Doors? Huh? Specifically, yeah. or just, uh, no, not the weaponized doors. doors. No, oh. no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Not the weaponized doors. <laughs> also, the weaponized if you doors. don't mind, Rags, the... I was going to hold off on that very subject as the last thing we talk about. Um... Yeah, that's fair. You bet. Um, but yeah, I don't. In this game, you can have you, you lose a lot of gameplay potential by randomizing the staggers. Um, every yeah. encounter in Resident Evil is like a it's like a puzzle, like I was saying before where which enemies are in front of other enemies um, and uh, in sort of when you shoot them and trying to line people up for that follow-up roundhouse kick um, and using the iframes that's associated with those moves. It's a really fun and surprisingly deep system that turns, like I said, every encounter into like a puzzle that's to be solved. I want this guy to be in front so that if the shield guy's behind him, I can hit him in the head real quick and then get that kick so I don't have to spend a shotgun shell maybe getting rid of the shield. The Mm -hmm. roundhouse kick knocks him out. Um, And by shooting enemies in the head two, three, four times with a pistol and not getting a stagger, it, it just isn't that interesting. It loses what I think is a really wonderful part of what made the Resident Evil 4 Originals combat so awesome and fun. Do you think that there was an argument to be made in favor of that unpredictability? Um, And what do you think it is if there is one? If there is an argument, if I was going to make the best argument against it, it would be... Uh, in favor of it, I mean, right? Oh, in favor. Oh, yeah, you're I'm in favor. You right? to, um, yeah, I'm asking you to create an argument in favor of it. Um, I mean, it would certainly be unpredictable. I'm not necessarily I, sure that unpredictability is better. I think. Uh, in fact, well, I think a lot of the times unpredictability is worse. If I was going to change the system, if I wasn't allowed to have the original system where headshots would always stagger, leg shots would always stagger, like it basically guaranteed staggers based on shot. Well, placement. leg shots guaranteed staggers. Uh, in the you original, have to shoot more than once. It, I'm sure it might be more than once on the leg. Once. If 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 they and were sprinting, it was, was always one shot to make them fall right, to the ground. Because yeah. what if happened they're... for me was, I I think when I played uh four originally, I eventually just started defaulting to the leg because I found that easier than going yeah. for the head for whatever reason. And going for the leg wasn't always one shot. Yeah, I think it's as long if they're standing, if oh, I think if they're moving slowly. If they're standing still, I think it's one, but I can't remember exactly. It has been a while since I've toyed around with the Resident Evil 4 combat system. I've played that game a bit, but if I, if I couldn't have the original system, then maybe I'd say um, like two shots would always stagger. Like it was predictable and it wasn't just RNG based, but it wasn't like every bullet. So, or maybe if you hit them in vulnerable mo- that there's an idea. If you hit them in vulnerable moments, then their stagger, then it would stagger. So if you get them while they were well, sprinting, so something I would say is, uh, so now I could be wrong, but this is the case, right? If they're charging to you and you hit them in the head, they will stop, right? No, not in this uh... game. I, I think they do stop. You don't necessarily get a stagger, but they will stop, right? By if you, charging you the in the head, so. like, like they're running towards you, going. Ugh. I wish I like could say yes, them. but I'm actually not 100 percent sure I, if they do. Uh, I don't think yeah, so. I, I don't think that is the case. No, I don't actually. think so. I, I, I could have sworn I've had moments where they're charging toward me to grab me. I shoot them in the head and I still get grabbed. Yeah, yeah. I, and then I, I, I've had, think, I think oh, that did happen, and someone in my chat That's was like, "You're supposed why I'm to duck." Is because I'm is because I uh, I'm not sure because sometimes that does work, and I think sometimes it didn't, but I wasn't sure if that was because I hit them in the shoulder or something. Um. I will say, I think that I I don't like that I could shoot an enemy in the head while they're charging me, and that has no effect on them. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, yeah, I don't. 
I don't I, I like think it. I think I, it just should have an effect. Um, it because... creates this disconnect of I've shot a bullet into someone's head in front of me in a survival game, and they like nothing happens. You feel they just a headshot. You got to get something for that, haven't you? You, yeah, you it's think like that a headshot um, has to stagger. Yeah, you would think, right? Um, it's a game that really rewards good aiming and good your ability to play with the mechanics. And if those mechanics, you just you just get objectively less of them to work with in this game, which sure makes it more challenging in a way, but it also means that it loses a lot of what makes it great. Well, so it's something to be said then about. If, if you as a player know that your your bullet's not necessarily going to have the same impact, could it be said that you failed by putting yourself in a situation that would be the argument, yeah. where you can actually, like, you should have kept your distance is the point? The um, not necessarily. Um, I, I think that there there's a, there is something to that, but there is also the element of a lot of the times fights can go completely differently purely based on the RNG of if you were given well, a stagger. I don't think that addresses the, the point that's raised, though. Have you failed by virtue of putting yourself in a situation where you can be at the mercy of that system? Um, Should you back up? Yeah, like, just, you be as a quick example, Ganado's coming up the stairs, uh, you've got three bullets in your pistol, you shoot all three into its head, it doesn't stagger and kills you, and then you go, I mean, fuck yeah, you, if... game. It's like, well, no, that was your fault for not backing up and figuring out something else. In some, yeah, in, in plenty of cases that, yeah, that could be possible, absolutely. Uh, where if, if you're in a bad spot and you're not, like, if you're thinking the mechanics are different than they are, then, yeah, you might not play with those I think, in mind. No, I mean, assuming, I'm, a, I'm assuming that at this point... Like, if I person, gamble, yeah, that's sometimes not, I won't win, possible. yeah. Well, yeah, but the, uh, that, so, so if, if that scenario played out, you knew it was possible, but you're relying on the more, the heavier likelihood, like, say it was 70% uh, likely you'd get that stagger. Oh, well, I, Calm down, I'm, I'm talking to rags, look at you. <laughs> ah, okay. So, 70% likelihood that you'll get the stagger, you don't, and you're like, for fuck's sake. It's like, well, you've only got yourself to be angry at, because that 30%, you know, it won out. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, if I, yeah, essentially, yeah, I can gamble and lose. Um, there is an element of... I know you don't of... like XCOM, Molo. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, XCOM sucks. <laughs> <laughs> fucking making me oh miss God. a shotgun shot when I'm an inch away from somebody, fuck you. But there is, there, there's so much of these fights that completely change based on just did, did the number generator work in your favor. Um, sometimes you'll kill enemies, all headshots, and they'll just die and you won't have a chance to uh, do a roundhouse kick, which would have been more yep. preferable to them dying. Um, there was, uh, this happened when I was uh, playing, I think it was yesterday with Mahler on the, um, is when you first enter the castle and you meet Salazar for the first time and you're in that audience chamber and he sicks all the uh, cultists on you. Um, I was able to get a stagger on one of the cultists and the three shielded guys behind him with the wooden shields, not only did this stagger happen at the right time, uh, I was able to get the roundhouse kick and not just knock all the shields out of their hands, but kill all of them in one kick. And it mm. baffled me. It like legitimately baffled me. I had no clue how one roundhouse kick could do that much damage. And it like the fight was done at that point because I was trying to get the unarmored guys first and trying to set up a stagger because I knew it wouldn't be, you know, consistent. So yeah, it, it, but I was like, wow, like that, like that could have been a really tough fight, but I got lucky. And so the fight was really, really easy to the point where I was just astounded by what happened. And I had no clue. It, I just knew it wasn't me. It was a, you know, it just worked in my favor. And I know plenty of times it doesn't where, you know, enemies just won't let me kick them or something like that. But I, I definitely prefer the old system uh, to the, the randomized stagger chance, because to my knowledge in the original, the random element was the critical hits, which would be like an instant kill on enemies. It's like a little bonus. So that was what I was so... about to ask. What is the difference between those two, would you say? So, in the there is, it's the amount of randomness. And the randomness can never, virtually never work against you. Um, the only thing that was random, again, to my knowledge, was if you'd get that essentially critical headshot and their head would Blow just their head come up off. straight away. Yeah, yeah. It'd come right off. Oh, I did actually um, mention that earlier and I did yeah. come up with a scenario where it can work against you. Can you think of what it is, Ranks? In the for for the critical hits in the Aha, OG game, can, yeah, in the OG, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You could have a you could have a critical hit where a zombie that you want to set up for a roundhouse kick for well, the enemies yeah. around them. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'd yeah. mentioned that it before. Immediately comes uh, <laughs> but 
even then it's not as bad because the next enemy can be set up for it instead. So it's it's just one of those. I mean, well, we all we need to do is craft a scenario where it does cost you. It can, it can be a thing. Yeah, it that can, fucks you but over. it's it's very rare in the original that you're like, oh no, he's. No, dead I agree. It of, is very rare. But yeah. would you then concede that to be a flaw or problem in order to make sure you're sure up on the position that this game's uh, unreliability is a problem? Um, I don't think it's strong enough to where I say that it's a problem. Well, you can know it's. I think it's so rarely going to be an well, issue I that guess. works against you that it's almost like, wow, that actually, you know, it didn't help me, but it, it's just so. Well, the fix would obviously be if it, if it causes a crit, it should stagger everybody around it, right? And then they, then you don't have the problem ever. Um, I think it does actually. When you set off ahead, uh, a lot of the times the enemies around it will uh be staggered a bit it, it won't stack it won't be like combo you can't like melee kick them but it will make them flinch i'm not even saying i would implement um, it i'm saying that uh, sorry when i i guess what i mean is that to, the problem would be cancelled out if when you shoot their head and it pops up that everyone like falls over or something then it would yes, simulate like the I, same thing as a roundhouse kick i it would solve the problem but i think it would make it overpowered Yes. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that uh, it seems like we've highlighted that it, it could cause an issue, but it is incredibly rare. The system it is, itself yeah, it has managed to... You can, invent a, you can invent a scenario that is going to be very rare in the game where it's like it maybe could be an issue in some circumstances. However, even if it was, you would know that the next enemy could then be used for the the, for the uh, for the, the purpose of that first enemy, what you were going to use them for. Um, but it also seems and... like something that... It, it, it's like an ironic problem, because the game is like, congratulations, you've lucked out and you've got yourself a crit, and it's like, thanks, it killed me. Yeah, and they're like, they're, what? And that's so much more preferable than, oh, that enemy's dead and out of the picture now, and they're going to drop some goodies for you, as opposed to, oh, yeah, you just shot them three, four times in the head. No and crit. No, no crit, they're just... Like, maybe they just die from the sheer damage you put into them, which happens a lot. Or it's just like, oh, you know, I just... I, I, I would like a system that's a bit more workable than you know, just putting reticles on heads and clicking. Um, the, if we can get away from the village and RE7 kind of stuff, that would be great. Because I just feel like so much work went into making the remake like the original, but different, that this just feels like, ah, oh, it's... What a, you know, what a shame. Wouldn't it be great if you had that red... Like, that's like the ideal system. Like, if you want to make a game way more difficult, then don't make it less predictable. Make it more reliant on your skill to play around with that predictability. Um, enemies do more damage. They're more aggressive. More of them have weapons as opposed to not. They throw things more often. Um, you, there, there's less pickups. Uh, you know, like, less ammo, so your misses are more punished. Things of that nature. Um maybe it really gets you to like yeah maybe you want to really look into learning that knife as a utility as a get in there and take advantages of the delays between enemy attacks to stab them in the face and trigger uh you know to trigger staggers with your knife um that sort of thing instead it's of just um, pumping I find up it the health on headshots because at a, at a fundamental level right if i said uh, i've just made a game here's here's the level go nuts everybody you get given 10 shots at the beginning there's 10 enemies in the map um, one headshot kills them so you know you miss you won't be able to kill them all and they all drop blah blah blah, whatever and then i go uh people found it too stressful and they often like you know ran out of ammo, whatever so i've made it now so that it takes two shots in the head to kill everything but you get 25 ammo at the beginning it's like okay is that better or worse it's like what well, I guess I, it's, it's almost like I need to play it to know. Like, kind it's of, kind of hard yeah, to say. I mean, statistically, it's easier. Um, but, you know, like hitting, you know, instead of having a 100% accuracy, you only need 80% uh, accuracy. So, I mean, that, that, that does make it easier. And it's probably just probably going to be more fun, maybe. maybe. Because, yeah, enemies are weaker with the 10 rounds, but. You're not thinking about that. You're thinking about, I cannot miss or else I cannot complete the game. And that will overshadow everything. Whereas, like I said, if you make... I, I think like the ideal version is, you know, kind of having... Don't make the enemies just more... If you want to give them more health, that's fine because that's how it worked in the other game too. But the stagger system was still the same. So 
you could, you know, you'd be using that and using that kind of at its best potential. You'd get better at working within the system and really exploring it to its fullest and using it all the time. Yeah, because I felt um, like crossing your fingers and really hoping. I sure hope this shot staggers him. I hope this one too, especially on the really tough enemies where like sh point blank shotgun blast to a. A, sh a, a chainsaw person just wouldn't do anything. <laughs> a chainsaw person, yes. Um, I was going to say as well, like, they might be sitting there thinking, well, what are we supposed to do to make it harder? It's like faster enemies, more aggressive All enemies, changing animations, right. new attacks, there's loads of stuff. And they did do several things that are, that are just mentioned, which is why there's lots to praise. It's just that um, you feel really fucking uncomfortable when you've got a Ganado coming for you and you go boom, 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 yeah. boom, what the fuck? Like, like they're still I, not I have staggered. Accuracy on their head. Give me something. I think isn't it on professional the first guy that you fight in the game? You have to hit him with like eight shots to kill him. It's, you don't kill that guy. <laughs> you fucking you walk <laughs> past that fucking guy <laughs> because he, Jesus Christ, he doesn't drop anything as well, right? There's no fucking point in killing that guy. It's like yeah, I'm like oh. It's I think that's be, such oh, a, oh. a piece. Of, he well, should have dropped game. something special, not nothing. It should be like if you kill that first guy. Let's if you're gonna make it so it costs basically all the ammo you spawn with. Surely he should drop either a, a ten shot, you know, handgun ammo, or like money. Why the fuck did they make him drop nothing? What's that about? I don't know. It's it's one of those. Um. Oh, oh, oh. Example time. Do you oh, remember in Resident Evil Village? Um. Near the beginning, when you find all the survivors of the village, and nothing fucking happens as a result. Uh, of that. But you're getting chased by the guy in the hallway after the fire starts. Yeah. You remember that part? Yeah. Yep. Well, the correct move is to do nothing because no matter how much you shoot him, the same result occurs. Now, when you're playing the game, especially the first, maybe second time, depending on what happens, you might be thinking, oh, this is, an, this is a bad guy and I have a gun. And I, know, and I know what to do. This is like a really easy puzzle. I want to shoot the bad guy so he doesn't hurt me. Because, yep. you know, that's the game that we're playing. But the game is actually saying, you fool. You damned fool. You're wasting ammunition. It literally has no effect. It's just a lie to create tension. The, what, what you need to do is nothing because it's the same outcome no matter what. Because Resident Evil 8 is a shit game. I'm going to be honest with you, Ryan. I've kind of wiped it from my memory as well. Like... I know. It's so fucking forgettable. That's because the mechanics. Go check out our discussion on it to see why we hate it. By the way, <laughs> if you wanted to know. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like that. Where oh, you spent eight pistol shots fighting this first guy. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, like, why, why would you shoot enemies trying to kill you? You you run away from them to save your eight shots. And remember, you only start with ten. So eighty percent percent accuracy, which is good, by the way. Uh, yeah, don't uh, don't miss, or else you'll be out of out of ammo, and he's still he's still coming after you. It's crazy on chainsaw difficulty in the demo. They spawn three uh, in that opening, and like I said, you can kill them all, and you get nothing. So it's just like so avoid them all. Then it's like yeah, and you got to practice until you figure out the animations to know where to run at what times. Which... I think it was my first because uh, I started professional. I just didn't finish it. I just want to have fun. Um, I, the first three villagers, I got all headshots without missing and no staggers opportunities on any of them. And I was like, oh, it okay. feels weird. That's... I'm just like, this just isn't this doesn't feel like Resident Evil 4 anymore. Someone, oh. I saw that was amusing me. It was like when I was watching Fringy play the new game, uh, he started on hardcore and he was he's doing a lot of leg shots. And I was seeing I was like, he ain't going to be doing that for much longer because <laughs> like, it doesn't do shit on the new game. Yeah, you gotta hit him in the head, and even then, you don't get a guarantee yeah. of staggers. Um, because I, yeah. I relied on leg shots in the OG game. TMP leg shots was just... Twerks. I would... Uh, yeah, if they were... I'd do headshots pretty much all the time, unless they were sprinting. Like I said, you, they were sprinting and you hit them, they'd fall on their faces and they'd go straight down. And that was useful. Yeah. Headshot, kick, run, knife, knife, knife. That was, yeah, the, that was the my, value plays that in that game. game are fun as fuck. Yeah, um, it really is. Uh, yeah, it's the, the look at the inventories of the the really good experienced players and you know the new you know casual sorts of players and there will be a huge difference. Does uh, does that about do it for gunplay, guns in general? Uh, I, I was I, I was just going to make a point when Fringy was asking to kind of steel man the uh, multiple shots to stagger or stagger chance. Uh, maybe I was 
not processing this correctly, but I, I found that as I upgraded my weapon or switched to better handguns, I would get much more reliable staggers on headshots. So I think it's possible they might have designed it as just an incentive to grind out better guns and upgrades. No, it's, it's, and things like to, um, it, it, it's randomized within parameters based on what you're using. So mm. um, yeah, like shotguns will will always like blast them back or stagger them if they don't you know aren't killed outright. Um, more powerful weapons, I think uh, it's probably. I, I'm not certain how exactly it works, whether it's tied specifically to the amount of health remaining in the enemy or the sheer power of the shot that hits him in the head, which is, I think, what it is. Because uh, I think a rifle, like if, if you use the 1903 against a brute and hit them in the head, you're going to get much higher, you know, staggers per shot opportunities than if you were using a pistol. Um, but I'm not certain what the numbers are. But. Yeah, I, I guess the way it seemed to be making sense in my head, and again, I'm not like looking at the code or really picking this apart to analyze it specifically, but how it was making sense to me was that each area that you're staggering on, be it a foot or a head, has almost like a fallout style, like percentage of health per the body part. And then once you've satisfied that health threshold, then it staggers. I don't know that that's necessarily what it could be, but that's just how it made sense to me when it, as I got a more powerful pistol, I found I was much more reliably getting staggers per shooting the areas of the body that I thought should be staggering it based on what I know of the original game, you know? I, have, I don't know. I'd have to see the numbers because I can't, I just, I just don't know how the system works because yeah. enemies get more durable as the game goes on, but you are upgrading your weapons uh in order to compensate for that yeah i don't know how the math works out if different enemies if different like if if different weapons had different stagger chances or if they had like coefficients that works it it probably is behind you know, under the hood and a lot of this i'd be really interested to see because man i love me info i'm a gamer man tell me if i click on if i scroll in here to this excellent assault rifle in rim world and i click that eye i see the damage stopping power armor penetration the rate of fire burst shot count range accuracy close medium short long uh, range cooldown aiming time and I, yeah just give me those numbers give me those delicious numbers i love them mm -hmm. i love them completely agree on that one uh uh funny enough thunder mentioned it and i was like oh yeah we should probably talk about it um throwables meaning like grenades uh something i wanted to mention that i think is kind of funny is huh. me and rags when i played the og game recently and we were talking about it it's like incendiaries are as weird grenade in the og game that doesn't quite fulfill either role very well and so for anybody who doesn't know this flashes are fucking great and grenades are great mm -hmm. incendiaries are okay <laughs> like, are fine. They're they, the they first work. To, it's just you know they're, they're the first to go when you start needing inventory space mm -hmm. they essentially work as a somewhat damaging stun uh yes they will they're, they're i honestly think they're like a halfway point between both and that ends up much, making them yeah. less preferable than both they stun enemies by lighting them on fire and making them go through the animation and fall down mm -hmm. and they do damage because the fire does damage to them uh it doesn't do as much damage as a grenade it doesn't have the same kind of stun and plagus kill insta killing as the uh the, the flash grenade has they're fine so and this one of game the Oh, I was just going to move on, but if you want to carry on on that. Well, it's talking about incendiary specifically. I think it's kind of a shame with how good the fire mechanics are in this game that you don't have a fire throwable. Yeah, uh, well, so I, I was going to say it's funny. They removed the incendiary in this game, and yet they've improved all the fire mechanics. And so it's like, what are you yes. doing? I well, would have loved to have had incendiary grenades or a Molotov in this game. It would have worked. There's so doing? many places where you can just... funnel enemies and just throw one in there and then you can just set them on fire because they get slower first i think and then they start to go like ah, ah i'm on fire yeah it's really well, good what they did was they removed an incendiary grenade and added a different kind of frag grenade that does the same thing just with better numbers yeah um, i which yeah. i thought was really strange it is strange uh, the fire in this it, it's kind of wonderful not only does it look great but enemies don't just instantly like, it's not like an explosion of fire. It's kind of like the fire happens and it spreads, and if an enemy stays in it long enough, they are set alight. 
And so they go into an animation, oh, no, I'm on fire, and it stuns them, and they do da- and it does damage over time. And that's really kind of neat. It encourages you to use them in particular ways or plan ahead and get your timing right with dropping oil lamps or mm-hmm. uh, you, you, encouraging enemies to fight you and stay in fire. So if you are at the edge of fire and an enemy comes up to you and you just block their attack, it's almost guaranteed that they've been in the fire long enough to where they start catching fire. So it's it's really neat the way that fire kind of works. But the, they um... don't Molotovs or incendiary grenades, which is uh, it's a throwable, which is I think as much as lame. it was a strange choice, uh, the small and large grenades. I did find that the small grenades early in the game served their purpose, and then they started getting weaker and weaker as went on. And then we unlocked the large ones, and it went back to being yeah. effective again. And I was like, okay, I guess yeah, that it all works. Yeah, the um the little grenades, the little hand grenades, they essentially turn into like just an area damage. Yeah, um, yeah, they're sure. they're pretty I'm shit sure. in the late game. But yeah, which is kind of a shame. I don't feel like that. I feel like that's one of those things where it's gonna, it should be useful throughout the entirety of the game, not just kind of early game and sort of in the castle. It's always one of those valuable things like, oh, I've got a grenade. This is just, really useful. Again, settle for, um, you just have the standard large grenade. You don't even call it large grenade, it's just called grenade. And it does a halfway point damage between the current small and large. And then incendiary slash Molotovs. That, that, that just seems like the obvious no brainer. Maybe they did try it and something got in the way mm. and code fell apart. I don't know, but... Or if there was only one kind of grenade that you'd find and maybe a use for crafting materials would be to turn a small grenade into a big grenade. That's another thing. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah that would have been cool. Because uh, I was... I was, I'm, I'm, I craft things because I'm running out of space and I need to, I need to make things go away so that I have more space for things. Mm-hmm. And it would have been really, uh, really kind of cool if we got more options for crafting things that were like upgrades to the stuff that we had. Yeah, to have a crafting system and then to have it be, uh, you're going to be like, how is that limited? If I say, you know, it does herbs, uh, uh, grenades, and ammo, but it still feels like it is kind of limited. <laughs> like the, there's not that it many things you can do with very it. Limited. Yeah. Um, it's like, that's the thing. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, the charm system where it's like, y- you have the start of what could be a really interesting system, but yeah. You, Not we, quite we there, a little more. bit half-baked, yeah. yeah. We could do more with this. It could be but, you so know, much... Like the crafting and the ammo stuff, because we're kind of into inventory as well as uh, the items in there now. Didn't get in my way. Uh, the only time it quote-unquote got in my way was when I was trying to pick something up, and it's like, inventory's full, and I have loads of gunpowder and stuff, and I'm like, oh, right, uh, I guess I'll make stuff then. Mm-hmm. Which isn't quite the effect you want. You want it to be like, oh, I've picked this up. I can make this now. Not, oh, I've got all this stuff. I should make something. But, um, you know, it's, it's hard to say that I fully blame the game for that. It might have been me not taking full advantage of it. But a lot of the time, I was like, I'm currently good for my pistol, rifle, and whatever ammo. I could make more of any of them, but I don't want to make any of them yet because that means I've committed, you know? And I'd rather yeah. keep it for when I have a chance at losing some. Why don't you just put it in storage, Mahler? Oh, well. I, I did hear you wanted to talk <laughs> about that. So why don't we talk about well. that? How storage so, interacts with inventory. Uh, so you have <laughs> not storage a lot. In this game. Uh, the things that you can put in your storage are weapons, first aid sprays, uh, and knives. Yep. And ammunition, and, of course, ammunition, right? Um, and, and nothing resources. else. And because nothing else. Enough. Yeah, that's nothing it. Else. No, wait, you forgot ammunition. What about... No. You can't put ammunition what, in there. What, yeah. No, you but, can't put but, ammunition in But you can't... Why um, would you not be able to? Well, <laughs> why would you... I, you can't put gunpowder in there. You can't put extra ammunition. You can't put... <laughs> I oh you can attachments yeah if that matters to you if, if that matters to you at all but um but you cannot put gunpowder you can't put extra ammunition you can't put herbs grenades. you cannot put grenades you can't put fish vipers eggs um anything else other than what we named all those things you cannot yeah. store which means that a lot of the times you're just like I don't know like encouraged Dude. to or sell or in my stream it's kind of a shame that they had that system but then you can't do anything you know uh. you know having having people backseat can be annoying but when you have people backseating with bad advice it's like the worst thing ever and uh, <laughs> several times in my stream i'd be walking around with a bunch of shit in my inventory and i'm looking at it and i'm like oh god like i'm gonna need to sell something i'll do something and some genius in chat will be like just put the fucking gunpowder and stuff in storage 
I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> yeah, man, I'll get right on that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I got it. Yeah, I think played this game. Played the game trying to give me advice on the game. But uh, I promise I would if I could. Mm -hmm. um, it would just kind of add to the better you get, the more you get to keep for later, for when you want to like splurge or whatever at another time, or just save it because it's fun to be able to save that stuff and build up a stockpile over the you know over a, an account period. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can't. Uh, they just sort of did this weird thing of you can store guns and first aid sprays <laughs> and it, like the the three two weapon attachments you might get. Uh, and knives like you can you can put kitchen knives in storage for when you really need a kitchen knife yeah. later um but a grenade nah it's, use so it content, it. it's so counterintuitive though because you feel like oh this is like the safe place so if i grab all these resources and i don't need them right now i'm gonna put them in the storage and when i'm back at this little safe house i can just refill because i you know I was frugal with my with my stuff before, so I can just use it now because I went for like a hard section. Now I get grab all my gunpowder and my resources and go like ding 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 ding. I got all my got all my ammo back. But I was like, no, you keep it or you die. Well, yeah, and like claims are made of like you know it's supposed to be encouraging you to do something with them. And it's like, why are you punishing me? I'm saving it up. That should be something yeah. to reward me for. I well, I mean, I guess you could sell it, but it's like I don't. Maybe like, I don't maybe know. I don't want to sell it. <laughs> you don't want to, yeah, it's like at that point I'm not selling it to make money. I'm selling it because it needs to go. Well, I was gonna say like, like yeah, uh, I wasn't gonna. The whole reason it's there is I'm not selling it because I think it'll be useful at some point. But I'm trying to be you know disciplined, not just spending it for the fucking sake of it. Right. Just yeah, it's uh, it's annoying that this storage system exists, and you're like, oh, sweet. That's something where, I guess, I put my stuff for my inventory in there, and that means I cannot use it until I get to a typewriter next time. Don't question that, by the way. Like, <laughs> in universe, <laughs> like, what the fuck, I put it into a typewriter, and I can grab it from... It doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, to be like, Very oh, well, no, you can't put anything. Just guns, knives, and medicine. You're like, why? Don't really know. Um, yeah, it's really odd. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. But um, what else can we say? We just talk about how uh, I was I was a little bit concerned with moving over the Resident Evil Four's. One of the most famous things about it is it has what people usually say is the best inventory management system in all of gaming, uh -huh. and it's not even complicated at all. No, it's, it's super no. simple, and it's super so simple. satisfying. Yep. Um, people often say it's one of the best parts of the gameplay, <laughs> like because you ordering things by color or by size, and everyone has their own preferences, and oh, you can make it all look so great. And then, yeah. in, you know, as you're in the middle of fights, the clarity at which you ordered it can be so helpful for you understanding exactly where you stand resource wise. And it's all you, it's all you deciding how things will look. And um, I don't know. I, I I'm happy to say I think that they translated it pretty damn well in terms of the actual yeah. management of those things. The the only part I don't know if that was just for me, but if you buy something, I don't know, let's say you buy like the big rocket launcher, and then the game is like you have the space, but you need to move some stuff around. It's like mm -hmm. okay. I found that in this particular case, when you need to move stuff around there, it's very unresponsive when you're True. In, at the merchant. It's a very strange know. quirk, but that is absolutely well, right. Yeah, I was just wondering if that was just me or if I imagined it. Oh, I noticed so, yeah. it, yeah. Um, to the point where... And I don't know why. <laughs> so, you know, uh, when you're trying to be quick, right, you'll uh, hold down for an item, it'll select, and then you hit Q to spin it, and you can put it somewhere else. Or I would, anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't know where everyone's shortcuts are. Um, when you're in that screen where you've bought something off the merchant, you'll have to hold it for longer before you can hit Q. And what you'll notice oh, even okay. on my playthrough... Is that whenever I've bought something off the mission and putting something in, I'll often like switch tabs by accident because I'm in queue before the item has been selected because the mm. timing's changed now. It's not as quick as it is normally. Really strange bit of coding. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, no idea what's happening. So yeah, that was. Uh, but other than that, it works pretty great. Um, there's even, all, uh, uh, the auto sort. Button. Yeah, so there's Let the controversial yeah. rags. The I controversial the auto, -sort. auto sort. I actually think it's perfect. You want to know why? It makes Why things it fucking ugly. And so oh, if you it's... want if you want to skip doing it yourself, you can have your ugly ass inventory. Go yeah. ahead. 
oh, I hit it by accident once. No, it threw up. <laughs> it was yeah, horrifying. that's why I hated it. <laughs> it just squishes it all in the top left no, corner. Th I was going to say, Mark, through. you want it to be ugly because people shouldn't have it auto-sorted to look beautiful. That takes out like a whole <laughs> element of the mechanics, all right? They get punished. Exactly. I think it's wonderful. It's like, all right, we'll sort it. Yeah, we'll sort it for you, but it'll look like shit. Yeah, we'll shit. sort it for you. It's it'll like look like shit. So there you go. <laughs> that's your deal with the devil. I keep hitting uh, the yeah, accident because it's on alt. Can you, uh, you not change the uh, the button for it? I assume you can. Maybe. Mine, I think mine was left alt, but... Um, mine was left alt uh, as well. But, uh, yeah, yeah it, I actually... I really do appreciate the um, the auto-sort button. Uh, sometimes I just want to make the room, and I don't want to go through and manually move every single thing all the time. There's that never a get... time for me where I will <laughs> always figure out the room myself. This oh, is always, so the, always this feeling, game. like you ju you just play the game, it's like, oh, I'm gonna look at my inventory, it's like, oh god, that's unacceptable, I need to move I'm it so right sorry, now. everyone, I didn't know, no, I didn't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know, I, I think they did a good job with uh, translating it, but it was pretty simple to translate, it would be a lot, it would be surprising if they so fucked it up. Hard to fuck up. <laughs> Let's put it this way, I hope if you make Resident Evil 5 Remake, you fucking... Take it over this time. Holy shit. Bring I, it I, with I, you. I, I started Resident Evil 5 like not too long ago because I was just fucking around. And I was like, what's this inventory? What, what is this? Why is this like... What is like Nine three, spots, three, bitch! Yeah, yeah, three by three. And then, oh, it's and everything so takes dis one. disgusting. It's disgusting. Everything I hate it. one, yep. Why would you ever oh. do that? Why would you Why would you scrap the inventory Dude, part from of what RE4? Gave RE5 its reputation was that I, I think a lot of people what. wanted the sequel to RE4 and they got that instead, which is like, oh, you're doing something else. Co-op. I think co-op was the main reason why they had to change it so that you could. It was always really easy to use on the fly because you only had nine slots and so it was very easy to memorize and you could use it quickly and you wouldn't have to pause the game for the other player. That's what I think the reasoning was behind it, uh, and. This is a slight, this will be a little bit of a controversial opinion. Uh-oh. But there were, I think there were some positive aspects of changing the, uh, uh, the, the inventory system in 5, but they're almost like consolation interesting things, not like actually things I, I think are like kind of worth it. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, by, by changing you to only have 9 slots, it significantly increased the value of ammunition capacity in a weapon. Uh, for instance, the, the, the starter pistol can be upgraded to hold 100 handgun rounds in the magazine, which means that you essentially are freed up one of your precious nine slots. You don't even have to carry spare handgun ammo because you can carry 100 Keep reloading in the every time gun you pick itself. It up. Um, and you would weigh much more heavily weapons that would allow you to have larger magazines because it, it it frees up you know a much more relatively precious inventory space, but that uh, that does by no means do not take that as a defense of the change <laughs> in the system. Just that there were interesting things that kind of came about by changing it to only having nine slots. I understand. Uh, else, anybody else got anything for the inventory? I uh, I just love taking breaks to get super OCD about organizing it. <laughs> it was just the most delightful thing to do in the middle of a stream, especially if you if you get to the end of a very difficult battle and you have a bunch of new items and it's like, ah, let's rest. It's, it's also let's when rest. you also when you when you uh like your inventory is completely full, it's like, oh I need a merchant, I need to sell like all this shit. And then it's <laughs> all free. It's like, ooh, oh. so much more space to do more things. <laughs> Put more oh, the canvas this. is prepared. Let me paint. With everything we've talked about, I can't believe I haven't mentioned this already, but yes, I agree with several people in chat already. Capacity upgrades do not refresh your ammo. Sad face. Yeah, that is true, that. Yeah. yeah. That's uh that no longer yeah, that's that's uh that is indeed a change. I think I said when I was playing the OG if they update it so that doesn't happen, it's not a flaw, it's just a thing. <laughs> it's, it adds <laughs> makes a me bit, sad. It adds a little bit of extra strategy. Of well, if I if I use all these rounds in the shotgun and I get that capacity upgrade, then I get you know seven, eight, nine extra shells. Or Easy. and with nine the OG, free shells, <laughs> the OG TMP, which could be upgraded to have two hundred and fifty rounds. Mm. You, if you use like you could play through the whole game and never reload the TMP, <laughs> use it the entire game. If you it's... if you just make sure to. 
don't reload. Don't reload. Don't do it. Just wait until you can it's get fun. the next capacity like, upgrade. It's a fun little thing. Like it's it's like yeah. a little mini game. It's a game in a game. And I wonder if it was a deliberate, definitive thing. They were like, no, we're not carrying that over because you'll make things easier than we're looking to make them or something. And I was like, oh. Oh, well, that's so. bad. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah okay. it just, it been, oh, but we'll add like knife durability and stuff like that. I was like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it, just, it was a neat little thing in the, in the old games where yeah. you know, I could go out, shoot my shots, and not reload, uh, and, and then try to use the other weapons instead. It's a little game within a game that I, that I really liked. There's a risk-reward element, too, of carrying around a dry weapon. Yeah, because that it's, like it's like well, this is burning a hole in my inventory. That's the but fun thing. It's like self-imposed challenges that have really great <laughs> payoffs if you get it right. Um. Well, uh, because I know where we can move next, but I'm just making sure we've uh, crossed the T's and dotted the I's on. We've essentially done guns and inventory and movement all on Mr. Leon. There, have, have we missed anything with those lot? Uh, I don't think. Did we? I was. I was a little bit earlier did we touch upon how leon doesn't stagger anyone but gets staggered by just getting breathed on well i guess we kind of covered that with movement i felt like I, he's too he's too easy to push over a lot yeah you okay, need to, okay. no, run that bitch down you're you're sprinting at an enemy yeah i wish there was like uh like you either bump into each other and maybe cancel each other out and both stagger a bit or you brush past her or like push them down or something like that. It, it, like, mm -hmm. like, come on, you, you're a, you're a strong man. You're a strapping young lad. Push down that lady. Well, do so, it. Uh, did anyone, does anyone do know how to actually cause him to prevent them from grabbing him? Where he pushes pot, like they go to grab, and he puts his arms in such a way that he sort of moves past them. Do you know how to reliably cause that to happen? That's a I good not, question. I don't know. No I, I never found out. I've played this game for a while, and whenever it happens, I'm always like, oh, that's nice. Oh, Why did that I happen, though? <laughs> Yeah. What, it might what be if that? the grab is like on the edges of like the hit area or the grab area, but I just don't know. I don't know. Because someone I think that's the ends of grabs. Like, dude, I have been fucking entered into a grab animation when I'm just like, no way they get me. And it's like, they got you. It's like, fuck it, L. <laughs> like at the end of animations or when it doesn't look like they've even connected. God, they, that's like, so fucking I just annoying. Particularly. Yeah. Which is particularly fun when it's a Salvador, because that's just an insta-kill, at least on the higher difficulties. <laughs> Salvador? The, the, the do doctors? Wait, what? Oh! The chainsaw men? They don't, well, they just kill you, they don't grab. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, sometimes you're at the edge of the thing, and you think, oh, there's no way he's gonna grab me. Oh, right, like, yeah, yeah, way sorry. Far away. I was thinking, I was like, I was thinking maybe there's an animation where he actually, like, takes his free hand and grabs you by the throat or something, I was just like, I didn't oh, see no, that no. one. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, uh, they can get you in some really bullshit places. It's, it's, it's the kind of thing that can get you in like Dark Souls, where it's like, as long as the edge of their hitbox hits the beginning of your hitbox, you're done. And it's like, right. Yep. Um, that's probably worth going into, actually. Treasures, it was mentioned in chat. Uh, oh, yeah, another thing that I think is pretty neat about I this I really game. like the treasure mm -hmm. system in this one. So, yes. Uh, yeah, in, in this... In, in, in the Resident Evil 4 remake, you find treasure pieces of two different kinds, pretty much. Uh, ones that are just used for selling as is, and they're labeled as such, thankfully. And then you find treasures that have sockets in them. Sockets yeah. come in two varieties, circular or square. And during your adventure... And <laughs> during your adventures, you find, uh, you find these uh, different shaped... Uh, Gems like emeralds, barrels, uh, the purple ones like aphrodite, whatever. You find different, you like five Alexandrite. different. Alexandrite. Alexandrite, that's the one. You find yellow diamonds, you find different colors of these gems. And you essentially take these little gems you find and you can put them into the sockets of all the treasures that you find with those sockets. And depending on using a variety of colors or uh, same colors or, or all the same color, um, and whether it is that circle or rectangular uh, gem that's put in there, you can essentially um, increase the value of to differing degrees of all the treasure that you find. So you could have a you could find a a crown that has three rectangular sockets and two circular sockets, and based off of the colors that you use for the circles and the squares, 
you can increase the value by like different multi uh, multiplicatives. Yes. Uh, so it adds like a little mini game mm -hmm. to selling and acquiring treasures that kind of encourages you to hold on to them until you need to sell them and then work out what's the most value I can get out of these treasures by using the gems that I actually get. Yeah, and this is even an instance where they tell you the multi multiplier. Yeah, they give you all the answers on a sheet. If so you, you what can you want, use your brain, you basically. Need. And they, yeah, there were several moments on my stream where I was t checking out different combinations and seeing what the results were, and then judging the rarity of the items to be like, I wonder if you know the correct route is this or this or this. And I was just thinking to myself, like, what fun they've made for me when it could have just been sell this for money. It's like, yeah, okay. Really um, neat. And that's no knock at the original. I like how treasures work in the original game too. I just, um, I don't know. I thought this was really it's cool. It's better. Yeah, I, and the I original... think I would. Is it? Can you say it's better or is it different? I think I, that the, I think it's better here. I think this adds an extra little layer of strategy that pays off yep. the more you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And in the other game, <laughs> it requires you to get more. What the fuck was that? Um, it requires you to get more specific things. So like um, an elegant mask only gets certain kinds of gemstones specifically at these locations. Yeah. The butterfly lamp only gets the, uh, the the drops from like the Novista doors or the beer stein only gets the like, cat's eyes or whatever. But in this, it's definitely more of a you've accrued all of these things and you can mix and match now based on all the stuff that you found. And I really kind of like it. Uh, I like I said, it's like another little game within a game that you can sort of min max, uh, and I like it. It's not overly complex to where it feels like a chore or anything. It's something I really appreciate. Yeah, no, I I think uh, I think I entirely agree. Um, yeah, to the point even that in the OG game, when you're like, man, I feel like I searched everywhere, and then someone in chat says, yeah, you can't get that anymore. It's like, okay. <laughs> now that's not to say that doesn't happen in this game still. But when you've got the crown, you've got the four different colors, and you're like, damn, I need one more of these things. And it's like, well, you know, keep looking around. You're probably going to come across it eventually. It's like, okay, cool. Um, but of course, like, if you miss a crown... By the way, one of the fucking additions from the deluxe uh, map or whatever is yep. a crown. You get a third crown. Man, I just... I didn't know about any of this. You in a fucking <laughs> crown. That thing can be That's... worth 100,000 pesetas with the that right me inlays. Like, and I'm pretty sure on my first playthrough, I just... Got them all for 100k straight up. It's such a, it, it's so much money. It That's is, and I like it. But insane. then I'm like, why the fuck did you? Why you stop? <laughs> like, please. And they're like, what do you mean? You like this? And I'm like, no, not even a little mm. bit. Now and that I know, you can't I even just, turn I... it off. What the fuck? <laughs> like, now that I know that I got that extra and just played pay to win. No, you make me feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it could have warned me. <clears throat> which I guess yeah. I, I don't remember. The, I remember the warning that. You get the map, but I don't remember them saying like you're getting exclusive treasures that only exist because you bought the thing. Like, the, like I said, I was doing it mainly for the skins, which yeah, um, I don't know if we'll talk about. We could, <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, I guess that's that's it for the treasures. Um, we could uh, talk maybe about... there, there's there's one there's three treasures I think you can miss in your playthrough. Uh, well, can you miss all of them? No, I mean, you can't go back and get them later. You can't backtrack to them because it's the Ashley section. If you don't grab the treasures right away, you're not allowed to go back. To oh, yes. Grab because those of treasures. I missed my first playthrough on her, on her section. Also, it's yeah, you can't. Yeah, worth mentioning, she has... of course, in a broad sense, all of them can be locked off depending on what part of the games you're in. Sure, um, you can just miss the whole village section at yeah, some yeah. point. And then you can I know go what you back. Mean. And... When you're that in the one castle isn't as intuitive, after... I think. Like, you wouldn't have thought that if you miss them as Ashley, you can't get them as Leon. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, because strange. you can basically, you can backtrack for basically all of the treasures, and if you if you're careful. But here's just like, no, you can't. She doesn't even drop the keys. You need to open the, the which chest. I think is so strange. Why yeah, not just let I her drop the that, keys? That whole yeah. segment, yeah, like Metal said, that whole segment with Ashley, you go through. You can go through back again as Leon and get like an assault rifle and some other really good stuff like it's something you want to do you got to go down there to kill a bounty but you don't get the key so if you didn't get it with ashley well yeah tough there's a thing kind of pushing into a, uh, a discussion on what i wouldn't mind talking about is kind of the world in this and level design um i quite love what they've done with the village and the castle and the island but they uh, yeah. they have them not only locked off from each other, but there are several moments in each of these places that lock themselves off from themselves. And uh, 
I don't know, man. Maybe I'm asking for too much, but why couldn't I have had it all be interconnected? Yeah, cool. yeah. we go all the way back. It would be so cool. Yeah, there's no reason why, because you like when you go back, uh, when you go back later to the uh, to to the manor to to Mendez's house, you go back later and there's just there's just randomly oh a tree fell, and there's like, <laughs> right, a yeah. wall there, so now you can't go to that area. Yeah, again. yeah. And I'm like, why? Like, why? like seriously. What is the re you 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 went out of your way to code this and make it and like why? What are you preventing me from getting that I the that, that would like ruin the game uh, or something? Yeah. yeah. What what do you not want me to have there? What's going on? Um, the big example that I can't remember if this was on stream or not that we were talking about it, but uh, in the original game, you beat the house horde mode mission and then you get to soak up everything on the floor because you oh. defeat the Ganadas. In this game, surprising everyone, you play a cutscene and you'll never get back in that fucking house. No. It's like, nope. why? And then you <laughs> get the mini map. You get the ultimate. You. You the get mini the map ultimate. haunts you by saying, oh, look at all that stuff in that house. You could have picked all that up, but you didn't uh, know. Yeah, so too late. yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, on pro mode uh, on stream, by the way, I killed the uh, brute and then I was like attacked by some Ganados. I was, I was aiming, I was heading over to the fucking Emerald and then the cutscene played and I was like, nope, we're going back. <laughs> like, you're not taking the fucking Emerald from me. <laughs> yeah. No way. It's uh, it's really lame uh, and annoying, and I don't know why uh, they've done this when I think that they had the technology, clearly, to not only connect all three maps to each other with, like, you know, for the castle, it's the drawbridge, that's a cutscene, and then you end up in the other one, right? Loading time, I mean. And then, of course, the speedboat. You go to the speedboat, yeah. you end up back at the castle, speedboat, back to the island. And then it's like, okay, so that solves the problem of the three places connecting. How do we make it so that they're all interconnected? It's like, any problem you're encountering in terms of, like, we can't have Leon be able to go all the way back to that starting basement place, can we? And it's like, why not? Yeah, what's, why what's not? What's so wrong about going all the way back there? You know what's funny is um, when you can use the key to access that basement, and then it's like, do you want to sell it? I was like... Well, I don't. I guess so. I, I get, is it of use in any way? <laughs> like, I just well, find it amusing. Really, you kill the guy it. who owns the house. You take his fucking basement key, and then you go to the merchant and sell it. That just sounds funny to me, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's the merchant want this for? <laughs> I actually like, hold. Wait. I actually uh, held on to the keys in the beginning. It's like maybe they make me use it again. But yeah, no. If they tell you, you can sell it, you can just get rid of it. Don't. Not so, um, no, no bonus thing. Is, uh, I love the world, but man, does it disappoint me because it could have been, it could have been perfect. It was no it reason why. Perfect. It's, all, it's all completely. They just like I, I just I can't say it's it's essentially arbitrary. It's like why, why? What's the reason other than you just decided I can't? They yeah. seem the perfectly capable of doing it, and I can't see any reasonable reason why uh, it couldn't be that way. It took them more effort to stop me than to just kind of allow me in other segments. So just... Maybe they thought it would be a really good meme. <laughs> Maybe. You're, you're also you know you're given the boat, um, the the boat for the um the, the what's the fish's name again? The lago. big fish monster. Big fish. The lago, yeah. The lago. You're, you're given uh, big fish. Basically, <laughs> sort of uh, what I always kind of thought was almost like a God of War style canoe. It's like, hey, this is an area where I can. I can navigate this oh, this that, river oh, slash lake cool. area. Like it's it's a lot more open than I thought it was going to be, and that would have been the solution right there to be like, well, if you're at the island and you want to get back to the village, there's a boat now that we designed yeah. gameplay for. Yeah, and uh, I got very I was I was strange when when I'd done the mission there, and then I was grabbing something from the merchant, and he said, you know, take care of anything you need to, mate. You wouldn't want to be, you know, thinking what if. And I was like, I think I said to chat, I was like, wait, am I not allowed back here? And they were like, no. I was like, what? I, but why? <laughs> it, but, but like, there's no reason not, not to be. And it's like, no. You're yeah. like, okay. Hey, we gotta have that invisible line or whatever. I was just, I don't know. Oh, look, I'm fucking with the treasures right now. This is what happens when you're doing playthroughs where you're not concerned about selling stuff. <laughs> you get a lot yeah. of gems. I think that the game it essentially don't sell any of your treasures until you need the money. And then when you need it, use your gems as effectively as possible. And mm -hmm. there you go. It's, it's just like cool. how the original system, in, in the original system, in the original, you could, yeah, you could sell that beer stein once you get it, you fool. <laughs> And yeah, as I think you did partially mention it does say like for sell 
for selling only on items that have no uh well, yeah nothing else to do with them yeah if there's an yeah if there's an item like uh whatever it is an antique pipe or whatever it'll say just for selling only so you don't have to constantly muck about being worried that you're selling something that you know has sockets attached to it so I was thinking we could uh, move into enemy discussions, right? We can talk about uh, the lower levels, mid bosses, and then big bosses, uh, mm -hmm. AI, and just how they play out. So, you want to start, I guess, with the Ganados. Uh, I don't know any commentary. Uh, Ganados, uh, just I guess broadly speaking, I really, really, really like uh, all the kinds of different enemies, their weapons, um, how they look, the variety of models that we have. Um, I, I really dig it. it. It was really, it's one of those things you notice very quickly if you play the old version, how there's like five villagers copy and pasted. It mm. feels like there's a lot more variety here. The way that they look and sound and everything is very, very impressive. Uh, I, I just, I love the look of the cultists and the, the Ganados and all the, all the dudes. I really like it. It really helps the vibe of honestly feeling like I'm crashing into some in European village and killing everybody who's happily living here. <laughs> The, obviously they're a bit nuts, but just the aspect, the way they're dressed and the variety in all of them and how they all look they look authentic um, yeah, but also yeah. monstrous uh, I love the vibe of the OG and this game in terms of just feeling like a fucking crazy fish out of water and that you're desperate and you have to really fight against a whole bunch of villagers and then yeah, by the time you get to the castle completely different vibe and yet fits right in um and yeah, they all have, the way they operate, um, there's a lot of very clear counters. There's still a lot of frustrations in terms of how they work. Uh, you know, things going wrong, comboing up, or um, you can get moments of wonky AI. I think uh, me and Mel certainly discovered them on, on stream, but there'll be sometimes where they just don't know what they're supposed to do. I've had guys spin around on the spot because they're not sure where to go. Their pathing can be a little bit fucked, but... This is one of the games that gets away with it compared to a lot of games because of the fact that they are people infected with Plagas and it makes them go insane. So a lot of stuff could be hand-waved. It's like, don't worry, that's just them losing their mind. <laughs> that's, like, yeah. that's all it is. Um, very far yeah, pretty reliable and uh, they make for just engaging gameplay that despite the fact that you're kind of mowing them down when you really understand it, it still feels rewarding because you know that they can go wrong in so many different ways and it's up to you to prevent that from happening. Um, having some problems there. Hmm? I was just watching your stream. Oh, yeah. I mean, as much as I can blast <laughs> through all of this. Fuck those pitchfork grannies. Pitchfork fuck grannies up. can go fuck themselves, yeah. I hate them so much. <laughs> all of a sudden, ruining grandmas. You can, it, uh, you can parry uh, those, right? Oh, yeah. You can parry grab attacks. Or do not. It's always really satisfying when you do it, but goddamn. I've been... <laughs> I've been ex ex someone explained to me kind of how it might work. And I was like, yeah, that, yeah, that's fine, but I still don't get it. <laughs> I just can't pull it off. I just can't pull it off. Yeah, well, it, it feels like... Because uh, there's even... They plowed into you and then do an animation of, like, striking. And then, of course, there's the distance yeah. and it doesn't... There's, like, a depth perception issue in terms of entirely where you're supposed to... Compared to the arching and striking, like, axe, which comes across as one of the easiest things to parry because it's so clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, um, so there's those. There's, uh, I, I don't know how what order to do this. We could just start with, like, the villages uh, set, which is all of them, and then, like, the first... I guess the first you encounter is the Chainsaw Salvadors, right? In terms of the next mini-boss, because uh, the yeah. brute comes a bit later. But, you know, a classic terrifying enemy, if you're not perfectly used to the game, knowing that if he gets you, you're dead. Um, and he takes a hell of a lot of ammo, especially if you're not familiar. I th I remember watching um I think it was Fringy's stream. He put two grenades and like four shotgun shots into it, but I think you said after the first or second grenade, like uh oh man, I don't know if this is overkill. And I was I was watching it, I was like, it's not even close to a kill. <laughs> like uh, dude, that second Salvador or I get I I I call him the second Salvador because I always spawn him second, second when you go into the chainsaw uh, into oh. the chainsaw house, yeah. I like to call it. Uh he is so fucking tanky. It's unreal. Wait, do they not have the same Especially... health? No, no. I always no thought way. they did. Are you sure? Um, the amount of bullets and grenades I threw at the second one compared to the first one, it's n I, I don't think it's even close. Well, so, but the thing if, is, if you always me... knife the first one, right? Yeah, but the knife I'm also does huge like... damage. 
Yeah, but at some sometimes I threw three grenades at him. All my shotgun shells I had at that, that point. That's with base with base weapons. And then a lot of shots in the in the face with the pistol, and he was still alive. Again, well, so I remember I kept advising you to get a knife on the second one because the knife does huge fucking damage. The grenades don't do much at all, I don't think, to Salvador's. And the shotgun, like I said, they've nerfed the shotgun. Uh, so like, a, like a, th that's how I knew I was having a good run if I got a knife on the second Salvador because the first one takes, I think, a grand total of exactly three knives to kill. Um, or all of the ammo you have, which, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, try, I, I try to get a second knife, but you know, how crowded it can be. So, <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's the do. thing. It's tough. Uh, but you can get lucky. That's, mm -hmm. Shoot them in the head and sometimes they'll stagger it away. That doesn't get you the yeah. knife. Sometimes they'll stagger it away. That does get you the knife. And it's like, man, I hope I get that second one. <laughs> like, Dude, it's so, it's like. You shoot him in the face six times, he almost hit you, and he staggers like, yes, and then it's just a stinky stagger. It's like, no, I want to yeah. stab you. Because at that point, he's already too far away from the from the wall, so you can't even kick him into anything. So it's just like, yeah, I'm just going to run away now. And then you turn around, there's a pitchfork running that stabs you in the gut. Yep. That's a bad time. <laughs> it's funny, uh, out of all the Ganados that are heading toward me, even grabby ones, if I see the granny with the fucking pitchfork, I'm like, I might get hurt here. No matter what, <laughs> I might get hurt here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could be holding a fucking a RPG and I'm like, I might yeah. get hit. Yeah, luckily they have a little wind-up animation, so you know to, you know, head for the hills. You know uh, to so literally to... run to a different map, yeah. Yeah, you have to run <laughs> to a different map, which is something that enemies will not do. Uh, which we are gonna get yeah. to here well, in no, that's, conversation. That's, yeah, that's a fair time yeah, let's to do, do it. it now. Yeah, let's um, do it. Yeah, so, um, Aggro range. Evil... Not good. Resident Evil Village had this problem to a extreme degree. Uh, there's some moments where it happens here, and it's really, really bizarre. Um, I think you're less likely to encounter it here on accident, like you are in Village. Um, because the invisible tripwires in Village were just completely nonsensical. And there's some of those here as well. Uh, for instance, let's say, uh, what would a good example be? There is only, to my knowledge, one enemy... How do I start this? Alright, when you get, uh, when you get Ashley... Uh, the first time, out of the church, and all the Ganados show up, and they start going into the church, right? And you sneak out the back, and you, and you need to you sneak past the, sneak through the graveyard and get back to the village, right? Let's say you don't sneak. Let's say you run. Oh my goodness, they found us, and they're all chasing us. Well, once they get to the stone archway, where the graveyard begins, even though it's just a stone's throw to the village and the merchant there and the typewriter, there's literally no barrier. There's no gate. There's no waist-high wall. There's nothing. It's just empty space. They will not pursue you. Mm -hmm. um, they will... Uh, they'll just... They'll stop. They'll be like, oh, he's gone. And then they'll go back to their spots. Because in this game, if you load a game or uh, enemies go back to their area, they'll go to their designated spots and begin their designated routes. Um, which is not... That, that's kind of a problem, because they need to get Ashley back. They were commanded through psychokinesis, or whatever it's called, uh, <laughs> that they need to pursue them. But, yep, that's the archway right there on the stream. If you walk through there, Ganados will not follow you. And the merchant's right there, and the village is right there. And they won't follow. Uh, oh, yeah. This happens a few times, uh, like some bridges and things. But for the most part, I think for the castle and whatnot, enemies and fights are sort of structured to where it doesn't quite happen. But definitely, uh, when I know when I was doing my, my second playthrough, uh, I snuck Ashley out of the uh, church past the graveyard. And, well, that, that was that. And was, we're done. We yep. just run past him. Uh, I, oh, no, I, I got spotted like halfway through. And so he just ran. We just tailed it. And they, they wouldn't follow you into the village. So you're like, okay, don't worry about it. It's fine. That's not, they're not allowed to go there. And I think it'd be really cool if you couldn't do that. If the villagers would fucking chase you to the village. Yeah. You know? And if you ran past all those guys at the graveyard and they were ordered to, and they want to get you and they want to capture you and Ashley, then the. If you if you end up wrangling dozens of guys following you, then that's what you did. You got to pay the yeah. piper for that. 
Um, it would be so cool. Imagine you can just all funnel them into the village and then just have like one well-placed grenade and just kill them all in one go. Like, how cool would that be? That would be really cool. That would that would legitimately be great. The whole village is following you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of an issue in some parts. Some of it is um, at the farm. I was toying around the farm a, a whole bunch. I um I did a lot of little tests and you know trying to figure out how enemies work, how the spawning works, and things of that nature. Um, the second time you go to the farm, it's raining and you've got Ashley in tow, and there's a brute that spawns by the windmill. If you get past, uh, by the way, they will not open the door and or or, or and go into the, the second time of the farm. As I say, the uh, there, there's a merchant inside of the little tower, and there's a typewriter there, and that's a room that enemies will not go into. They will not go into that door and get you. It's that it's that problem that we have in you know village. There's that safe spot in the castle in Dimitres and all those other guys, they will not go in that door and grab you. There's a magical barrier that prevents it from happening. And the same thing, unfortunately, happens here. Once you go yeah. in there, they'll go back to their, you know, designated spots. Uh, and for the brute, that will be behind the windmill, which means you could just run past them across the bridge um, to the cabin. And then the cabin event starts, and you think, no, I'm not ready to do the cabin event. I'll load the last autosave. Oh, well, the last autosave, that puts you on the bridge in between the farm and the cabin, which means if you load that autosave and turn around, there's a brute standing dutifully at his spawn location <laughs> oh, facing no. the farm, which means that all you have to do is run right up to him, get an insta-kill stab on the knife, collect his gem, and then you can proceed at your leisure to the cabin to do that event. And it's little things like this that could use a lot of, like, tightening up, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because sometimes when you load a game, where the enemies spawn is going to be different than where you left them or where they kind of were based off the direction that you go into the map and things of that nature, um, which can make the game you know easier or harder. Uh, for instance, if you go back to the... There's a contextual reason why enemies spawn where they do the first time um, you, you meet Ashley at the church. They're coming in from the village and they're going into the church to investigate following Sadler's orders. If you go back there a second time, for instance, to unlock with the key the little, um, the, the little drawer inside of the, the, the side room of the church, you have to essentially navigate through there again with Ashley. And when you do that and come back, uh, the second time, the exact same thing happens. The same animations and same enemies where they'll be coming from the village and you'll have those three or four shuffle into the church and it'll play out again like you've been caught in a time loop. And it makes no sense. So little things like that could definitely... Um, they, they could, someone said, it's a save room, dude. That's literally a serious staple. Oh, staples can be bad and dumb. Yeah, it's uh, I, I love comments yeah, like that. It's like this thing yeah, is broken. So, yeah, but it's always broken. It's like yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> okay, it's, it's odd to wheel out the slavery argument, but I mean, up to you, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, just because something's a staple and it's Ooh, happened God. before doesn't mean it's good now. There is no reason whatsoever that Ganado it's a video game rags rushing. Oh, okay. I, I, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for tuning into the stream. <laughs> I just realized this is a video game. Uh -huh. Fuck it. Who cares? Sorry uh, for wasting I'll see you your guys time, guys. Next week. Yeah, Why does anyone decide anything? Time. What's the point? Like, you yeah, just fucking it? whatever. It doesn't matter. You Imagine playing video games. Don't design enemies, enemy motivations, and all this stuff, and put it next to just places where they're not allowed to go for no reason. Yes, I get it's a video game, but... If you want me to take the story in the world seriously, it's going to be really tough for me to do that if I just run past them and they, they won't follow me when there's literally nothing in the way. When I have oh, that's just a bridge too far to, to go to the village and get them. Even, uh, can't do that. Well, Rags, uh, it's <sighs> funny. Did you ever fight the spooky doggo in yes. any way that revealed anything that is a bit broken about him? Um, I trying to think i don't think so uh but i am gonna ask can the doggo uh fault over fences and go indoors he can fly what <laughs> i'm trying to remember someone in chat helped me out when is the stream where we discovered this because i can't remember exactly when i did but basically i'm this is the first time i've ever fought him i don't know how he works he's in this village area so i'm like okay so i think you know 
the first instinct I have, as many players do, is to get inside so that I can get around corners and protect myself. I assume he can follow me in. There's a good chance of that. But as you can see already yeah. at first, his attacks can go through fucking walls, but I'm not sure if... I've been hit by them when they do that, but it doesn't happen every time. It's like, that's already okay. pretty awkward, but okay. And then he runs off, and it's like, wait, hello? What? What's going on? I step back outside, and he spawns and starts running at me again. But basically, the, the, the reveal here extreme, is that yeah. every form of inside represents a safe room. The dog will run away from you if you go inside. It's like, oh. So now all I have to do is just stand around at the threshold, let him spawn out, and then I can pull my mm -hmm. ammo into him and then move backward when he's too close, and he'll move away. Like, it's well, this, like, why? Just, I feel well, like you it know takes why? more because code. When he followed you inside, it probably fucked up the whole game, and they were like, oh, we can't have him do that. Like, that'll, yeah. that'll ruin it. But the whole thing is, like, you, if you let him go inside, then, like, yeah, he's probably more deadly inside because you don't have as much room to maneuver. So you wouldn't want to do that anyway, but the well, option should still be it. there. I wanted to test it. I love test and shit like that. Because I, I'm curious, if I run around a bunch of corners, does he get caught? Does he run straight in? Does How does his tentacle shit work? And can I trick him into doing anything, right? I just want to test it, but it's like, no, he can't even, he can't deal with inside whatsoever. To the point, by the way, where he'll poke in and out and try and get to you so fast, because they want him to be terrifying and threatening and damaging. Um, it's not in this clip, but uh, I try this again at another time, and he flies from over the, the other side of the map onto the roof, yeah, and he gets I stuck. That. He, um, <laughs> he's just he's in a constant running animation on the roof, and he can't move, and I just kill him up there. The sad part oh, is, you... if you kill him while he's on the roof, he doesn't drop anything. Mm -hmm. Oh. So you have to reload to kill him to get the Alexandrite, or whatever he drops. Luckily, the autosave is pretty much right at the village entrance. So. Exactly. It's, and this is so unfortunate, like, because he was, he's clearly not finished this enemy, and they were just like, eh, whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. In this area in general, because Leon just keeps saying, hi there. Hi yeah, there. it feels like a glitch. I don't know what's going on. He, he, he said hi there like 17 times while I was fighting him. Yeah, and he does that regardless of uh, you doing the strat with the house or not. He just keeps saying it. It's really awkward. Yeah. Um, I think maybe we should just do it by almost chronology. The uh, sure. sort of talking about enemies, because um, I was going to say brutes. I guess would be would be next, because they're pretty closely introduced at that point. Uh, they're soon after the Chainsaw Man's, is what I guess I'm saying. And I quite like them. I think they work pretty well. The uh... I think they are neat. Uh, they don't. They they look cool. You know, they 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 look spooky. An animal head that's been put on them. They're big, tough guys. They come in, I think, three variants: hammer, fists, and uh, the little Gun crossbow things. thingy. Oh yeah, they right. fire um, darts, right? Yeah, yeah something, something like that, pretty much. Quite deadly. Uh, and uh, they are they're, they're you know they're they're pretty tough. Uh, they they can spin around and you have to evade them, or they can slam down and do a whole bunch of damage. The the fist ones they can clothesline you and kick you, um, with, resulting in some hilarious you evade and Ashley takes the arm. She <laughs> <laughs> gets legitimately it's funny. So funny she gets clotheslined like crazy. Yeah, Great. but it's a good like tanky enemy. Yeah, yeah, it feels like a because you got to be careful adding any new enemies to a game like this because it's like this is a fucking classic game. You don't fuck around with it, but it's like I don't know. I felt like they fit in quite well. Um, and someone's just said they replace the JJs later in the game. It's like yeah, which I was hoping to see JJ, but you know, okay, okay, I'll get over it. Oh yeah, those guys. Yeah. Um, which does that mean is Delago next to talk about then? We can start going through the fights. Yeah. I was gonna say we knock out village first, and then we'll go back to talking about. I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. But yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it say about Del Lago? This fight is a lot better. I would say that the the Del Lago fight in the original game is it's really awkward, really kind of weird. Um, I might need you to convince aiming... me it's better. <laughs> yeah. This one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, Really, I, I think the ability to move the boat, even when you're um, uh, when you're doing this, I, I just think that the uh, the ability to aim a bit better and the way that translates with the controls is better. Um, I think you have a lot more options and opportunities in order to hit him. Um, I, I think that there's a, a similar, you know, predictability with the movements he's going to make. Um, it's frustrating that you can't put harpoons down, which is weird. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wasn't having, I, I had a lot easier of a time with this and I enjoyed it way more than the original fight. 
Um, I don't know if it's because I hunted for the um, the achievement or challenge, whatever, to go through a Delago fight without missing a single harpoon. Fucking annoying. Oh, yeah, maybe. Jeez. Um, uh, this this all the things I'm about to say may or may not apply to the OG one. I'm not making any comment about that because I need to play it again to test it all. But I quite despise the changing power level of the harpoon throw. Uh, when it res the fact that it resets, it seems to me it goes from like a zero throw to a one hundred throw, charging all the way up and then resets back to zero. Why? What do you mean? So if you hold Char it, it'll go. Yeah. Uh, mm. it it'll go from an arc that's kind of weak to all the way up to an arc that looks like superhuman, and then it'll reset. Yeah. I. If you hold it down, you, oh, like, you can throw farther. Yeah, if you watch uh, the footage, you oh, can kind of no, see I, it. I had no idea that this was even a mechanic. <laughs> it's fucking annoying. I yeah. had no clue. I was just throwing. Maybe that's that why it either. took a long time to. Maybe that's why it took. As so someone many who had to find a way to hit him with every single hit, I had to learn how this thing works, and I started to realize: yes, it does change, which is okay. The longer I hold it down, the more powerful and accurate a throw. That's cool with me. Unfortunately, once it hits a particular accuracy, it resets. As you can see, it's it's happening right now. It is. I don't know why they designed it this way. Oh yeah, I had no idea that was even a mechanic. Yeah. I found so that you could... uh, first when when I was trying to hit a barrel while I was waiting for the mm -hmm. for the lager to go back. It's like, oh, this is probably some extra potatoes there that I can grab. Yep. And I was like, oh wait, this is this is charging up. That's interesting. So um yeah, that shit's fucking annoying. And then there's the whole like, if it hits even a glint, a speck of water, it won't count. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it's gone. It could oh, be that is the thing I hate. I hate that the the hitbox ends at the beginning of the water. Yeah. Um. Even though if I mean it's a harpoon, it's made for going through water. Yep. If I if I am off, I mean, it, come on, like just because yeah, there's water there, it, it, that doesn't matter. That harpoon's going straight through that water and it's going into that thing. And if you can um, see, yes, I agree. That is a that is a bad element. Every once in a while, the boat when it hits water uh, edges up far enough that when you throw it, it could be you're unlucky enough to hit a wave that forces the boat up enough that it acts as a shield for Del Lago, which is fucking annoying as well. Uh, it may not happen to you very often, but the fact that it happens at all drives me nuts. That I've got the perfect shot, but then a wave happens, the boat moves up, and Leon throws the harpoon into the fucking boat, and it's just like, oof, thanks so much for that. Um, I'm gonna say it, I think I'm not a fan of Del Lago in the original game or this one, and I'd need to play the original one again to know if uh, which one is better, I'm not even sure. The fact that I can't put the fucking harpoon down, yes. he has to throw one before I can put it down? Why did you, why? <laughs> like, especially, what in the world? Especially if you put a challenge in where you have to hit every tar every every throw. It's like, oh, I just hit that throw, but I know, I don't know, he's about to jump at me so i let go of the button that aims but instead of putting it down he just throws another one and ruins your challenge immediately it's like oh cool but um obviously if you're not going for that challenge it's pretty chill <laughs> like the fight yeah, I guess runs so. pretty normally <laughs> um but that's i mean i, I even ha i haven't even done that yet I, I mean i tried during my runs but i got so frustrated it's like fuck it i don't want it yeah go have fun with that, with that. <laughs> <laughs> obviously do it on fucking assisted mode don't go on professional for that one it's yeah, I think I tried it on hardcore and professional, so... <laughs> As someone just said, Harpoon Challenge is literally the hardest in the game. I might agree with that. It might be. <laughs> that might be true. I... I, I no, actually, I, I was just thinking of my uh, killing Ver, Ver, is it Verdugo that you have to kill without freezing him. That's easy, yeah. You can yeah, do that on casual, easy. Oh, I was thinking just get infinite rocket launchers probably. Well, yeah, there's that too. Well. Um, obviously, Delago, even on the easiest, like all the things I just mentioned for getting in the way, that's true on the easiest difficulty anyway. So, yeah. It's just he has less health. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, I'd need to play the original one again to know uh, what my complaints on that one are. But I think some of these ones, like the charging resets and the, the fucking throwing them instead of letting it go thing, like, I don't think that was in the OG game. Uh, you could put, yeah, I, I think you could you could put down uh, harpoons in the original, I think, and you could also hit him beneath the waters, at, uh, beneath the waters. I thought uh, so. Edge. Yeah, this is why I need to replay yeah. it again. But I might it end up saying that not as not as tricked as here. That's for sure. Might end up saying that the OG one is better, which I never thought I would. Uh, uh, like... I think that um, even with all those things, I I still think I uh, would. Uh, I'd rather do the new one than the old one. I think that the just the aiming. With the with the harpoons is such a huge improvement over the 
sort of the the weird translation into aiming with the harpoons that uh, kind of makes it better and the being able to move the boat left and right while uh um aiming independently uh, like i said aim, i might yeah, agree um i need to and replay I think the there's more, oppor- again. there's more opportunities to hit him in this one as well when it goes over your head uh you can hit him when he's going around is this... but yeah either way um it's f- i think it's fine I tolerate yeah, them but... both, but the challenge made me hate this one more than the original, I guess. Because <laughs> uh... the challenge wasn't in the original game, so I didn't have to fucking worry about any of that. I yeah, Del Lago. The there you, go. <laughs> like... Did you just say you enjoy challenge? I didn't try the challenge, but um, I, I like the new one more, so uh, maybe that's why. Because I, I didn't attempt the don't miss a single harpoon thing. Well... Um, the things I've mentioned may be more pronounced, or you'll do it in first try and you'll be like, what's wrong? And I'll be like, you know what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm MLG, bro. Get on my mm-hmm. level. Yeah, Damn. bro. Get uh, right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have good footage for this, but El Gigante, what do we think? Um, uh, mm. I, I think it's okay. Um, I really like, obviously, the look, the play area is good. Um, I like the ability to, uh, you know, uh, uh, hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of meaningful things to say. The one thing I don't like is I feel like some of his attacks are just are really too difficult to get away from. When he does the sweep, and... sweep, 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 it's just like, uh, uh, am I? I'm just fucked. <laughs> like he's he's coming for me, and I don't know what to do. Are n- uh, enough already. It's just like, yeah, I'm gonna get hit. <laughs> I think uh, I I don't know how to not get hit if he when he picks up the building roof and throws it at you. I like legitimately like I I, I was never able to not get hit by it. I never saw an evade prompt. No. And once he went to that building, I would be strafing left and right, but it just would yeah. not. What, it, I what... just, I'd always got hit. I'd always got hit. Get hit by it. What I ended up doing is basically just bait him to grab the house in the beginning, and then I just stand below him, so he just throws it away oh, from me. Because okay. I, I I had the same problem. I couldn't dodge it when he threw it. It's like, I'm just going to let him do it there. Also, hang on. Stop saying El Gigante. You don't say Gigabyte or GIF. That's not the reason you don't say that's El Gigante. That's not the reason. The reason you don't say Spanish. El Gigante is because yeah. that's not how it's pronounced in, in the Spanish accent yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Because... Fuck me, that argument is so naive, no offense. When people had this argument, I remember mentioning this on an EFAP before, I had two friends, one of them was passionately defending pronouncing GIF as GIF, while the other one was pronouncing (laughs) GIF as GIF. They fought each other for a long time, and they brought out every fucking argument you could imagine from the English language, supporting both of them. And I remember sitting there thinking like, all you've done is made me wonder what the fuck we're doing with this language. Like, that's it. (laughs) Because, you know, like Jin, for example, we don't say Gin. Yeah. So don't <laughs> try that shit with me, okay? It doesn't make any sense. It never did, never will. <laughs> I'll call him El Gigante if I want to, but I'll happily uh, concede that I should probably be saying Gigante or Gigante or Gigante. I don't really care. I'll just call it he's giant Gigante. Hopefully that settles oh. it for you. Anyway, hey, what were you Gigante. saying? I didn't mean to interrupt if I did. <laughs> um, I don't know. What was I saying? El uh, Gigante, oh, I like that. House I like gross. when you're fighting him. Uh, and you shoot him, the little bullet spots, the little red spots where the bullets hit, that they stay on his face. That's oh, yeah, neat. that's nice. I, I, I like that. That's a nice little touch. Um, I really like the, you know, the wolf. You know, I really like that that's still in this version of the game, that the wolf helps you out a lot. Yeah. Um, and then he sits there on the rock afterwards. Uh, I really like that. I think that was super nice. Uh, they didn't have to do that, but I think people would have been very upset if you couldn't help the dog, and then you know he comes yeah. back and helps you with the El Gigante fight. They they baited us and with the trailers, didn't they? Because or in the demo, because you yeah, saw everyone the thought one... the dog was gonna be dead, and I remember saying like, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait until like you wouldn't dare. But I think yeah, I enjoyed the. I, I enjoy this version's fight more than the original, I think. Um, I, I can't, I cannot put a finger on why. Maybe it's how you're able to, um, oh, I think it's because in this version, once the Plagas is out, it stays out. And it's like a weak point to hit. 
which if you're good if you're a good shot with a rifle like this guy um you could do some serious damage to him and set him up for you know jumping on with a knife or just unloading into the plagas with a really high damage weapon um so i think that's what i liked about it instead of only having the opportunity to you know hurt the plagas by um you know doing a certain amount of damage to him and then jumping on it uh but yeah. i just i really liked it more in this version Dude, uh, someone in chat just said they didn't kill the dog what are you on about it's like whoa i've never seen someone that <laughs> slow before like they just haven't caught up with the conversation at all that's yeah. okay maybe no they're worries. behind on the stream that's fine maybe <laughs> still still like a couple of minutes um but yeah I, I i mean i didn't see much of a improvement or uh, anything to criticize. I thought it, it was mostly totally the same. Fine, it just, yeah. it just, I, I was struck the by same. the updating okay. graphics, of course. I was just like, oh, oh, oh yeah. boy, look at him. Great. Looks like, he great. looked even more stinky. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it had the same like rags. There was some some attacks where it's like, I'm not actually sure how to dodge them all there the time. There might be a way. I'm, yeah, there probably, probably is, but I just, I didn't quite figure it out. Um, it wasn't necessarily uh, really intuitive, necessarily. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I instinctively went for the stress. I'm just going to go through his legs and just kicks me. It's like, okay, maybe I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I was able to get through his legs, yeah. But yeah, yeah just like sometimes. See, I wanted but to if... see if they allow, they still let you do it in this point. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying that sometimes he does like a kick when you try to just go through him when he's cornering you. And it's like, oh, it's just it. Okay. Who? So who'd be next? Oh, yeah. Mendez? Uh, I think so. The next boss, I think, essentially Mendes. is Mendez. Yeah, unless yeah, you want to talk about the house. don't have the optional... Oh, yeah, I like the layout of the cabin more. I think it gives you a better sort of room to play around with, uh, with the, the ladder, the ledge, uh, the ledge um... ladder, and the, um, the staircase. It has a weird porch. Yeah. But I have no idea why, why that exists. Uh, I, I was testing out some of the stuff in this fight a whole bunch, and I went to the porch and i looked up and down and all around to see if there was something i was missing like a little treasure or like mm. I, I just didn't see anything so i was just like why is this even here <laughs> um but yeah i i liked it i like the you know the two tables and a bit more space and you could kind of run around a bit uh lewis is a good distraction for stabbing enemies in the back mm -hmm. um and he sets up some staggers a decent amount and he definitely saves you when you're grabbed he does, yeah. Um, yeah. I uh yeah, I, I really liked uh, I really like the cabin here. Oh, it's where I learned that there's a cool new little thing in this game. Uh if you cause an enemy to be staggered on a staircase, they'll fall backwards. They'll fall. They'll, yes. they'll go ah and they'll fall, they'll lose their balance. Yeah, that's that's really neat. It's, it's funny though. You see them, they stagger and you run in for that kick and then they go, whoa, pull over. You're like, hey, oh, God. that's fine, I guess. <laughs> like, I wanted to kick you, but, you, you know, it's fine. They do sort of knock out, uh, knock down or uh, uh, just jostle the one. Oh, no, Lewis. Uh, they do sort of jostle the ones that they you know, kind of hit. You on the see that again. Did, but, is that his fault or my fault? Oh, I, I mean, it's, nothing's Lewis's fault, so it's probably your fault. Oh, Yeah, pretty much. He's it a, looked he's like he was going to be past it and then he wasn't. I can't fucking narrow it down because this giant timeline, so we'll see what it goes in a sec. But uh, <laughs> Lou is taking a shot for the zombies, you know, I don't know. There's still love there. Not giving up his roots after all. Uh, mm. But yes, uh, I saw, because I've watched a couple people do it, I think everyone pretty much agreed this is harder than the OG version. What's the thoughts on that? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think one of the reasons it is is very, very, very much tied into... That shotgun change. Um, this is a small, fairly claustrophobic... It's not too claustrophobic. It's a decently small area with a fairly high density of enemies. And when you don't have that shotgun that can really blast enemies back, especially like on a staircase and stuff, um, it, it, you really feel the difference that the shotgun has. Um, I, I feel like it, it's more harder because they basically force you upstairs this time. Dude, Lewis did that on purpose. Right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. I just saw it. I just <laughs> uh, I, I'd be interested to see the actual stats, but it felt longer to me, and it felt more difficult mm. in terms of just uh, I don't know more enemies, and of course finishing off with the mini boss as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I, mini boss, yeah, and and I you go like, hey, that you need to go upstairs now and kick those ladders down and stuff, and you get crowded pretty easily in the second half as well. Yes, you have to move around a lot. You really want I would some. Agree. 
you really want some grenades for that upper part because man if you're not fast enough you get surrounded quick um yes i do think that it is more difficult um i just see open that with a knight armor is yeah <laughs> but uh yeah the, the, my biggest complaint is that anything you don't pick up is lost and you can't go back to get it mm -hmm. yeah because in the original when you kill enough of them they uh, they go away they they give up they 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 go back they've had enough and this one ashley says let's go and you do yeah and it's cut off forever um, you can't even go back yep and you cannot go back and it also means that the area around outside there you, you can't explore yeah uh, you can't shoot any yeah, of those i would have happily there. preferred right that there's they spawn what like 20 of them around and in the house and you can go back but you're gonna have to kill them if you want all the stuff in there or something You'd be like that'd be fine with me like a little challenge if you want to do it yeah but oh well someone mentioned what we should mention and i was like yeah that's probably worth saying the plagus the first like mutation form of it uh daytime it's the one big tentacle and then nighttime it has like several tentacles that come off it because they're not a fan of light right oh that's a neat touch i didn't even notice that to be honest that's cool. i remember I noticing like, it and forgetting to mention it so but yeah i didn't yeah if it's tied to the day that's actually really cool i noticed the models were a little bit different maybe being all floopy mm. but I just chalk that up to, you know, a good variety. But that that's a neat little, uh, that's really nice. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Very nice. Um, which then takes us to Mendez. Oh, Mendez. I think this is pretty much just upgraded. Yeah. Um, I'm, I like this fight a lot, actually. I, really I would agree. It. I think it's uh, one of the better fights in the game. Uh, yep. Unfortunately, one of the changes between uh, this and the other version... Uh, the original is that because this version does not have incendiaries in the original version, Mendez was extremely weak to incendiary. That is grenades. correct. Yes, yes. Um, one of the speedrunning strats is you could hit him with like four grenades and he just dies. Mm -hmm. um, ah. uh, I like this fight a whole lot. Yeah. Um, they added an extra weak spot on his back with an eyeball that you can take advantage of. Yeah, I like that you can even uh, just tag it when he's throwing the the bars at you as well. He yeah. oh, nice. it for just a bit. You can shoot it. That's cool. He's got some decently intuitive and predictable moves. As long as you're staying away, uh, he has a, a a move to block with your knife. He has a move to evade. A couple of those. Um, there's a charge up move that he uses where you have to jump down so you can't camp up top for the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, he has two different patterns of throwing uh, logs at you. One of which requires you to not move at all because they yeah. cross in front of you. Which that that's kind of neat. Yeah. The problem is you 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 couldn't possibly know that the first time, <laughs> but uh, then you realize oh they cross and so I should stay still for this one and you look out for it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I love his you know the lingo that he says. He's you know super religiously motivated and all of his dialogue reflects that. Um. And I like. Uh, I just, I love the, it just looks great. The burn in place. Uh, you know, yeah. Looks great. Uh, he's got a great model. And I like how it's Ashley who kind of breaks open the window and it's like, hey, get on over here. You know, leave. And you now she helps you. And it's like a little bonding moment for him. Yeah. Uh, I, I really dig that. It's like she's, you know, learning, you being brave and helping Leon out. Uh, she takes a little, yeah, she throws her stool through the window. Ew. And uh, yeah, helps Leon. <laughs> Yeah. Taking a page out of the Amber Heard playbook. <laughs> I mean, if it works, what? Um, yeah, which about wraps up village enemies. Yeah, they let you pick up all the stuff that you forgot in here, though. You can go. You can go, go get around it all, and pick yeah. that up. Like, yeah. why isn't that applicable are, in yeah. more and, places? Hmm. And I do like that they had a segment uh, before that, right before the fight, where you just have to run away from him. Um, yeah. And if he catches Ashley, yeah. it's basically a game over. But yeah, there's just, this segment where you just run, run, run forward, uh, and Mendez is little, chasing you. And that's a neat the, scene. That's with a the little sequence. bait hut there, it's like, ooh, there's a flash grenade in here. And I died like, actually yeah, died like I five times to, there because I, I tried want that flash grenade. <laughs> I had to use the flash grenade to get out of the situation, <laughs> which means I can't, but I eventually was like, nah, it's just not worth it. Oh, I guess uh, but, with like, mentioning Chainsaw Sisters too, but uh, genuinely that kind of played out exactly the same in terms of like, I like it just as much in both. Like yeah, I really sequence. like it. Um, there is an oh here you can pause it on the stream, but this little pit that you're uh, that you're walking around here in this section, uh, I think that's a, a little callback to the optional El Gigante fight. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Because you look down and you see like the quarry pit and everything. I, I think that's what that might be a reference to. But yeah, in the original, for those who don't know, after the cabin, you can choose between two routes, one of which has the big El Gigante. You could fight another one. Or you can take a, a path that's guarded by a lot of Ganados, including uh, some chainsaw ladies. Uh, and if you want to, you can do them both. It's up, yes. it's up to you. It's an option. Uh, and in this one, they just opted for uh, the Ganado route. Um, and it's, uh, it's fun to play. Yeah, there's a little bit of, little bit of stealthing in before, uh, before it if you want to uh, use that option. I there's think... a brute you can fight, some Molotov throwers. Uh, but yeah, it plays out pretty well. Now might be a good time, because it's definitely a subject I wanted to get to, but I'm trying to slot it in. Ashley as a mechanic. Um... Um, I think that Ashley as a mechanic in the original... Uh, was totally fine. Uh, I think that her annoyance and her... Um, well, I guess we kind of already talked about this as. I, I was thinking uh, that Mahler and I talked about this yesterday, but no, that was today, as was oh. here. It was just so long ago. <laughs> but um, in the new one, uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think that I really miss the original's mechanics of wait here, yes. follow me. Yep. I love it. You, stand there. And when yeah. I'll call you when I want you to follow me instead of this, like follow me close or follow <laughs> me, but like from a distance, well, because the follow position. me from a distance. <laughs> the, so follow me from a distance is like that option that you never have, because why would you? Um, the only time I ever wanted to use it was if she was in my fucking way trying to aim at something. I'd be like, oh, okay, get out of the way. <laughs> I remember when I used it. It's because Ashley in this is really great at baiting Ganados. The, Ganados will grab her. And then you could stab them and insta kill them for very cheap knife dur- durability. Ooh. And you could yeah. basically farm Ganado kills using Ashley as bait. <laughs> True. Which uh, I don't like. Uh, uh, it is what it is. I don't think that they meant you to use the mechanic like that. <laughs> I think they're just like, oh, you can go and save her by stabbing the guy that she's, you know, being carried by. But that's like really effective in a lot of circumstances. Um, it's really useful in. Um, uh, in the graveyard, when you first rescue her, it's really useful in the water hall. Uh, it's just, it's just a really generally useful kind of uh, thing that you could use all the time. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Ashley, yeah, I... for really contributing. Oh, it's um, a team effort. Yeah, with well, all that said, uh, I hate to report that I think it's just a downgrade from the original. Yep. Yeah, I think it's worse. I don't know how they fucked yeah. that up, but they did. Um, as soon yeah. as I found out you couldn't make her stop still, I was like, oh god. Why? Why though? Yeah, yeah like, just have it as a third option. And there's so not many... a ton of places to make her hide either. There, there's a few in the game, so it's not a mechanic that's totally absent. But there's, there's not a lot of situations where you can say, "Hey, why don't you stay in this nice, safe dumpster for a?" Yeah, and it sucks that um, like there are times in the original game. One of the ones I know for sure is like the Garadol fight, the first one. You can tell her to stay upstairs, go downstairs, fight him. Or you mm-hmm. can have it follow you, and she becomes a serious liability in that fight. That feels like a very natural way of being like, these are the mechanics, player. Use them if you want. And then you do, and you're mm-hmm. like, wow, that was really effective. And it's like, yeah, can be. And uh, yeah, I never got to do that in this one, outside of noticing, like, oh, there's a locker there. I guess, uh, there you go, I'll use that. Cool. Like, every once in a while. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess- it's confusing in a way that it wasn't originally. Okay. It's so straightforward in, in the original. Either she'll be right behind you, or she'll be in the place that you told her to stop. Whereas here, it's like, she'll either be right behind you, or in many places, potentially. <laughs> like, it's, uh, I don't know. Like, hey, keep your distances. I, I don't know what that means intuitively, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, especially when there's so many enemies swarming from all over the place. Um, well, that probably sums up the village then. Onto the castle times. Mm. Yeah, uh, if anything, yeah, pops into my head uh, about the uh, the village. I'll um, uh, I mean, and again, throughout, there's a lot of really good nods to rooms and areas that are in the original game that sort of exist here in their own little version or mm-hmm. are, are very very similar. Um, and, and and I like a lot of that stuff. It happens throughout the game. References to rooms, nods to rooms. Um, I. Oh, and you guys did know, of course, that throughout the game, there's there's creaky little lamps that you can shoot down, and they often have treasures and goodies inside. Yeah, mm-hmm. apparently more of them if you have the deluxe, deluxe edition. edition. Yeah. So oh, many. Uh, 
Um, also, uh, there there were uh, there were bird nests in this version as well. There were, yeah, there they're, were. They're yes. harder to see, but they were indeed uh, there. And some of them are even in some uh, little locations that kind of harken back to the original game, including. You know how at the very beginning of the original game, there's that red herb kind of in the grass to the right on your way to the village? I think there's a little nod to that here where there's a red herb off behind a little fence in the grass uh, right after the Del Lago fight. But it's little things like that, like even very small specific things that are a wink wink to the, you know, remember this in the original game? And I really, really appreciate that. As do I. Uh... I suppose the first lad to talk about would be the first Garadol fight, right? Yumbo. Well, uh, what do we think? I... Improved or unproved? <laughs> Let me see. I think that I like the Garador mechanics quite a lot. The little dangling chains. I like that when he's rushing at you and swings, he kind of can. He'll swing over you if you're crouched down. Mm -hmm. uh, I. Kind of wish Leon didn't say overtly he can't see me. Um, thank you, Leon. His eyes are sewed shut, and he only reacts when you start talking. I think it would have been really neat if you didn't say that overtly. It's, it would have been kind of neat. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I, I dig it. I dig the area. I dig how it's dark uh, in this section here to kind of put you almost an even footing in a, in a way. I'm a little confused sometimes with how he's able to detect where I am and hear me. I think they have I, it I have so that he'll generally drift to your direction most times, even though, mm. you know, there should be no way he could possibly know, but they've probably... I'd like, have to... Yeah, I have to check for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's better than just he's here in a room and there's these bells hanging around. It's just very conspicuous bells to Ooh. ring. Um... But yeah, I'm a yeah. I really dig this area, this dungeon area. It's dark, it's spooky. Uh, yeah, and there's uh yeah. I I, I dig it. I like the Gyarados. Yeah, all there. these chains hanging around that you can you dodge can, uh... or can use to. Yeah. Yep. See, I forgot. I meant to. I meant to try to manipulate them with eggs. I actually never did that. I completely forgot about that. Never too late to manipulate someone with eggs, Mel. That's true. I think it would be kind of fun if you just have some eggs around. Women just... do it all the time. <laughs> just right. Oh. <laughs> So part just of, throw them somewhere. Part of what gives me great pause on praising them is the, uh, good God, the amount of times it would be like, press left click to stab him in the back. Press left uh, click. Nothing. You sliced, slash. and now he's going to hit you. The amount of times that nightmare scenario would happen, it's like, fuck me, you got to tighten that up, game. And if, if the developers were to tell me, it's like, you got to nail it. It has to be within a very specific window and Leon has to be facing them head on or something like that. I was like, why have you made it this way? Make it generous. Why are you doing this to players? Like, Just don't show me the input. Yeah, <laughs> if you show and me the please input, only means... show it when it's ready to go. Never exactly. show it when it's not ready to go. Fuck me, that's horrible. I um, will say that um, there's a little fun fact. I don't know if this is fun or not. On Hardcore, if you use if you're a smart little boy, and you use your, you save up your spinels for that exclusive ticket, um, and you, you, you use your exclusive ticket on the M1903, the rifle, uh, the Garador is a two-shot kill. Mm. So that's, that's, why we, that's why we bring a rifle with us into castles, boys. Thiefler. I killed my first Garador with just knife. Because I was nice. almost certain I could do it, but that's I kept getting frustrated. It? it was, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I did not like that inconsistency but overall i think i would say they're upgraded it's just man that inconsistency really fucks with it uh yeah it really does i wish that wasn't the case and it's, it's an update away from being perfect okay all they gotta do is just make it more generous i say make it more generous make it as generous as it comes across that's all communication with the player super important do it very right. important importante um I guess it's worth mentioning the water room. I thought it was way easier in this game. Than, um, uh, OG. Yeah. Hmm. I I'm mixed on whether it's harder or easier. They're both very different, and I like what they did with this kind of version with the sort of two sections. Um, for those uh who aren't too aware, in the first uh Resident Evil Four, the water room, the pro water room strats. Or to run to the back of the water room, to the yeah. blue room, where there are two pressure plates. 
And all of the enemies will chase you into that room where there's a door that kind of funnels them in. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of like what I recommend as a pro strat instead of trying to fight them in the big open areas and things of that nature. Um, instead, there's like a bottom segment. You jump down to the bottom segment to get this, uh, the crank, the angel wheel, I think it's called. Hello, and then Brent. you fight enemies down there and the ones from the top will follow you down, which I found was a really good strategy, uh, was similar to the original. Don't fight anyone up here. Run down to the bottom and fight them there. Yeah, it feels uh, like an echo have... of the previous game in terms of strategy. It's almost like they're trying kind of, to yeah. edge you to go what, down there. What I found out, uh, yeah. is they follow you back to the room where you came from, which has a really nice way to funnel them into a pretty tight spot. That's true. Yes, they will. Uh, they will follow you through the double doors. Yeah, they won't go into the save room, right? That's that's too much. They won't do that. No, right. No, no. Now it's 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 really it, you are a guest and this is their castle, so yeah. they will not follow you into that little save room. But they, they will, respect yeah, your they privacy. Will go the double door, they do. Yes, yeah. you're probably doing something really important in there. But yeah, that, that, um, I found that to be pretty effective to just uh, have them lined up. Yeah. But uh, sure. yeah, I, I enjoyed it in both versions. I don't know which one I I, I like more. It yeah, I don't, I'm not sure one. I have a commentary on that exactly. I guess. <laughs> The thing about it is, if ever they mechanically are just as good, then I'm probably going to opt for the new one just because the graphical update is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing here is that I can't remember how this worked in the original. In this version, once Ashley is done with the first crank, if uh, uh, Ganados will grab her and carry her all the way across the bridge, uh -huh. which is like really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so you let them carry her all the way across this bridge to the left side, and then you shoot the Ganado so he can't, you know, take her away. Um, and uh, so that that is like thanks, mate. Uh, <laughs> useful. Uh, so yeah, but otherwise yeah. it plays pretty much like the original. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. I I was <laughs> when I when I put the crank in or that halo or whatever it was called, and that. That bridge came down and we went, okay, where's my weapons? There's going to be like six people charging me. And then there was no one. I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Being so familiar just, with the OG uh, game, it could make you on edge on some stuff. And then be super yeah, surprised like, by others. You're just like, oh, they're doing that? Oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's something of a point of interest. Uh, the way that Ashley and Leon get separated at this point in the game, I thought it was it's fucking stupid in the original game. In this is actually, I think, a decent improvement. That she gets yeah, partially it... mind controlled, and then clearly someone does all this on purpose at the right time to separate them. Meanwhile, in the other game, she she she's she's like coughing, and Leon's like, "Are you okay?" And she goes, "I'm fine," and runs off and in a direction. And then, oh, and then uh, she stands next to a wall, and then randomly three yeah. like, metal clamps clamp her to the wall, and the wall spins <laughs> around. And we're right, like, "What the fuck?" It's it is, it is such a like, guess. "I'm sorry, wall." Uh, but it, the, you know, you're just like, "Well, see you later, Ashley." <laughs> yep. that I, I like this a lot better. Uh, it plays more into the horror element of this thing is growing inside of you, and the influence Sadler has over you is getting closer and closer as well. Um, it is something that's referenced a couple times later, uh, that they say, you know, like him, you know, telling her to be careful with knives and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just shows, you know, it, it, and she reflects on how terrifying it is later, right before you get to the, uh, the maze, the, the hedge maze. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you find her again and she's in that room and she talks about how terrifying it was to just like have a body that wasn't even hers. Uh, so that they do something with it. It's not just a good change that is less of a stupid contrivance. It's something that, like, they kind of use for character stuff. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'd say it's a rather large improvement. Absolutely. Next potential point of interest, I would say, is the uh, big old sequence where you fight another El Gigantote. Gigantor, on, uh, yeah. El Giganto. <laughs> um, on in the castle. This this was a surprise sequence for me. I had no fucking clue this is something we would be doing. And I was just like, this is different yeah, and interesting. No okay. Um, what did everyone think? Wait, I you... thought it was pretty neat um I, it was another it, it was just different it wasn't annoying um i i i didn't yeah it didn't have any issues i just thought it was kind of just kind of fun little el gigante fight that plays into the whole castle element and there being another cannon up there and how they put armor oh, that, okay, on a, okay, uh, okay. a gigante and 
Uh, you had to fight some of these guys. You know what I didn't like? Uh, the... Why did you not like? I think it's absolute horse shit when this happens, but I saw that he had an exposed part of his face, which is very much so the case, because uh, you end up fighting him later, and you can actually kill him with that part being exposed with Luis before he comes in with the dynamite. Uh, you shoot at him in this, and Leon's like, huh, that has no effect. Like, fuck off. No, and no, the only thing that has an effect is an RPG or the cannon. You can't kill him yeah. with regular weapons, which I think is bullshit, and I was actually kind of disappointed on behalf of Resident Evil as an IP, usually they let you kill them with your regular yeah. ammo. It's just going to take a lot, which I'm totally fine with. I think that would be a really cool alternative if you had all your rifle ammo, pistol ammo, magnum ammo, whatever, yeah. and you had red dots and everything, and you all you got it into that jaw of his and he actually died from it. I'd be like, yeah, neat. It's just another challenge for you right there to put a new game. Put it, give, give me. The fact home. that they let you do it with an RPG means that it's clearly not tied to like a, you know, a narrative thing. Like he has to be killed by the cannon. It's like, no, he doesn't. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> like, why'd you take it away from me? Why'd you do that? And I just hate yeah. that level of exposition. You shoot it once, and then Leo's just like, "Huh, useless." <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean, Leon? You know it needs. You need like fifty shots to kill one of those. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, useless? Uh, yeah. I uh, I had like uh, a couple of times where the stones he throws go through the barricade you're behind, like in weird instances because they're so small it's like shrapnel almost that he throws like sometimes they kind of squeeze through some of the gaps between oh, like a they? wall or something yeah that's a bit of an oversight i think not it was a bit annoying as intended it yeah, happened, doesn't happen I I didn't notice. It, it happened like twice i think it was like uh, oh that's really annoying but yeah it's just a, what, just what a weird thing. thing to have a problem with you're clearly uh we really are nitpicking now it's like yeah is there a problem yeah I wasn't going to nitpick. Yeah, the game is really good. Yeah. <laughs> also, I hope you take similar issue when we nitpick. When I say something's really cool that's basically inconsequential, you better complain. You better say, like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> Move on. better complain. <laughs> I just love it. It's like, it's okay if you like the game. I do, too. I think it's, it's real good. You don't like it enough. <laughs> Stop. Talk more about the good stuff. Um... I, uh, one of the treasures we did mention with the little Sal uh, Salazar dolls. I thought they were fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The little uh, clockwork castellans. Yeah. Knock them all out and you get a primal knife. Um, you do. Fully upgraded is infinite. And it's like, yay, finally a knife that should have been here from the beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still missing like three of them. I don't know where. I, <laughs> I don't know which ones I don't have. But um, uh, they you, carry you... over from playthroughs, though. Yeah, so, they you know. do. You you know you can see in which chapters you 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 don't have them right. That yeah, came across or... as strange to me though. So for if anyone doesn't know, there are is one Salazar doll per chapter. However, you can like get chapter one's Salazar in chapter four, and so it's like uh oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. It, it just comes <laughs> across as strange some... that the results screen is like you've not got chapter one Salazar, and it's like okay, but he's not chapter one's Salazar. He's <laughs> chapter like one through five Salazar. Can first be encountered in chapter one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just comes across a bit weird to categorize them that way, but it's fine. Um maybe call them the village Salazars, you know, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I missed only two on my first playthrough. I missed four, the village Salazars and they're all dressed up as different skill trades. I hate that sneaky one at the end, right right That's before you get bullshit. on the speedboat. It's uh it's, it's a not sneaky boy. Would... I don't even know if you can can hear it. I already knew about it when I uh, when I started looking for them. Uh, but yeah, because you you you, I don't know if you can hear him because normally when you go around, you just hear like the ticking from the clockwork or whatever it is, uh, or from the gears rather. But I don't know if you would hear it there. Oh, sorry, I, I should have mentioned Fringy's power went out. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's why he's not here. <laughs> Um, he'll be back, hopefully. Just just done with the emus have had their revenge. Gone. We've clearly Much extended new. his power levels on talking about Resident Evil. We're still here, though, and we're still going to bring it home because we haven't made it yet. We've got plenty to talk Whoa. about still. Not too okay. bad, guys. Seven hours of talking strictly about this game. I just Hooray. realized how late it. I feel like we've been talking for seven hours. It's, uh... So it's it's gone. I would say it's gone fast, though. Honestly, I've I because I don't know. I had so much to say about this game, so it kind of makes sense it ended up this way. Yeah. 
uh, what were we talking about? It was it was this encounter. I, I suppose we should probably move on because um, it's about it yeah. with the with the ogre man. Yeah, it's not a lot. You just dodge his stuff and then you shoot him with a cannon. There you go. Yeah, pretty simple. Very cinematic, <laughs> I find. Like yes, a nice addition. Yeah. Prize edition. Um, did you, Rags, know about the interaction with one of the three heads of the statue? You can throw a preemptive grenade at the guy who activates the switch. In this case, I use an RPG. But um, you can do that and it'll prevent him from pulling the switch. Um... Really I get. I mean, it's an odd question. I I didn't do it. I assumed you could. Um, but at this point, you know, I I I've got that rifle ready to go, so I shoot him in the head. And uh, but yeah, I, it doesn't surprise me at all. There's fun skips I like that was, throughout the game. Um, yeah, that's a that's kind of neat that it allows you to do that. Uh, it seems intuitive, and so yeah, I'm glad they're you know they allow you to do that. Definitely input for speedrunners, right? Because like the whole speedrunning community is just desperately trying to find all the biggest skips. Yeah. I think, like, within hours of the game being out, there was already, like, top ten skips for the... Yeah. But even, like, this that. room, it, it's like it's a callback to the original game. Mm -hmm. You know? There's yeah. a, you know, the raised bridge area. It's really nice. It's, what was it called? The gallery or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah you you I, can quickly I, realize I guess... you're approaching it from the reverse way that you would have in the OG game. They do that with a lot of rooms where it's a callback, an echo of it, but that they've also made you come in the opposite direction. Very disappointed that I didn't get a rocket launcher here. Yeah, I was expecting <laughs> yeah. to have to make room for another uh, item, and then I was like, oh, no, yeah. okay, fine, that's fine, that's fine. Is it, though? <laughs> um, yeah. I saw someone mention it. This is definitely something to throw in, and I'm not sure where it would fit, so we may as well just do it now. How do we feel about yellow tape and paint and stuff being used to signify things that can be interacted with? I don't like it when people patronize to me. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I, don't, I don't like it. Um, yeah. I think that there are way better ways to distinguish interactable stuff from the environment. I mean, like Resident Evil 4, the original, didn't exactly. have this. Um they was just like, oh, this is a this is one of those boxes that look like a box I could break. I, let me break the box. Uh, that wasn't like it wasn't so con like it just looked like a box you could break. And the the yellow over all this interactable stuff. I was like, yeah, I get the point, but I feel like a lot of it is like, meh. I think you should be able to turn um, it off, and then I'd be fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I, I get weird. it. It's I on get it. I get it. I get it. They watch people like DSP, who's like. A box? What am I supposed to do with this? And then walks past yeah. it. And you're like, it, it, I find it's one of the problems that often comes up that needs to be solved as we were talking about it earlier. The, the general look of the environment's getting so good that one of the problems becomes trying to figure out how to communicate to the player what actually is interactable and what, what is atmospheric set dressing. Because if, at least in the GameCube, game like the original resident evil 4 it's pretty easy to tell what an interactable object looks like versus a background object whereas now everything think, looks so good that it's it, a, it's a, a version funnier. of what you're talking about in a way is like classic and even current animation where there's like this really well-drawn background and then there's things on the so for example you'll see a character walk on but there'll like also just be this chair that looks distinctly different from the background. And then you're like, he's going to pick up the chair, isn't he? And then he does. And you're like, ah, oh, that's why. Because it's going to be moving and stuff. I can see what you mean, where it can stand out as what is interactable and what isn't. But Because like in this game, there's things I walk past that someone in chat could be like, why aren't you destroying the, the lamps or whatever? They, they drop things. And I'm like, oh shit, they do? Fuck. I didn't even... Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. that could be a moment where a developer would be like, see, isn't it better that we point things out to you like that? And it's like... I don't know, man. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's fun for me to be like, holy shit, I've been missing these the whole time, and I could have been popping them. Well, I'll know that for the future or something. It's um, it's a bit of a balance, bit of a tug of war as to just how much, because of course, everyone would agree, you can't have hand-holding to the point of fucking character on screen at all times telling you exactly where to walk and shoot. They seem to have figured man. that out. But on the other end of it, they don't want to go... I was going to say Dark Souls, but Dark Souls isn't even the extreme of the other direction. They have tooltips in that game. Like, I'm not sure what the example would be for the extreme in the other direction. A game that we're probably gonna have to go back in time to games that just didn't fucking tell you how anything worked. They just presented themselves. Well, and they're like, there's have fun. there's a fine line between hand holding and signposting. Signposting is probably the term that would be used to. 
hey, these are ways in which we are communicating the intention of the game design to the player without explicitly having, like, say, a tutorial pop up that says, hey, did you know that you can smash the boxes? Um, but I, it, it's difficult to figure out what, where the exact line should be between we want to make things obvious enough for the player to be able to see it, but not to the point that they feel pandered to, I guess, or, or patronized to would be the word. Uh, one of the strange examples, I guess, is do you remember when you need to get to the dual Garador fight? There's a drawbridge to bring down. There's two weights you need to destroy, one of them in the obvious place that they've always been in throughout the game. And then one of them that's hiding below, and uh, it's one of the things you'd have to like look for, if not for the fact that there's a big giant splat of yellow paint on the wall. To be like, look that over was here. That really weird. It is such a like, okay. <laughs> like, that's, that's a bit... Um... And it's so close to getting to the point of just, you may as well just have a little fucking paper clip there being like, hey, would you like to destroy this weight over here? It would help you out. Like, uh... So yeah, that it's a bit of a controversy. A lot of people talked about it. Um, like I said, I wish I could just turn it off. Simple as that. I Let the people need... who need it have it, I suppose. Call it an assistance mode of some kind, but... I did like that you can turn off the sides of the screen are all red now because you're injured stuff. Because that, that that's something that I hate in video games. And I'm, uh, it was egregious in this game. It and depends for me. I saw on the menu, it's like, turn off. I was like, oh, sweet. I'm the kind of idiot gamer where I'm like, health isn't low enough to heal yet. Still not low enough. Not yet. And so sometimes that <laughs> kind of shit will be like, heal. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heal. You, you get the big red borders in this game. I think when you're in yellow, though. So I'm just like, man. Well, it makes like, me look like at my health my bar, I guess is what I'm saying. Which is good. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's, uh, it's not something I turned off because sometimes I need to get a bit of a jolt with it, but I can totally understand it being annoying, and it is good that you can turn it off. Yes. Hate the red jam. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not a fan. So, uh, why don't we talk about the Ashley sequence for mechanics? I imagine there's not a lot to say on this one, and probably frustrates everybody about as much as the OG one does, right? And by that, uh, I mean basically not at all. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I didn't have any real issues with it. Um, I thought, uh, it, you know, the, the, the lighting of this version, you know, makes it seem more, you know, it seem pretty spooky. There's a little, you know, they're creaking around. You see the armor, you know, you know what's coming. You got more rooms to play around with and go back to and, uh, yeah, stuff to collect. And yeah, I mean, it seemed, uh, just fine for me. I, I guess that nothing really noteworthy, um, comes to mind at the moment. I think it's a but neat yeah, it sequence that has a bit more of a horror to it than the OG one. Yeah. Uh, that was going to be my point. That I, I think the giving you the effectively OP weapon of the lantern and making it seem like, okay, well, this is, this is almost a non-issue because I can just freeze all these things with this light. It really kind of sets up a nice little thing when it's like, oh, well, your lantern is gone, so what now? No. Funny, th <laughs> funny thing about that, Bach, I didn't realize, I didn't read the fucking prompt properly, that that's what the lantern does. I, <laughs> you can see it on stream, it says, like, press the, you know, button to focus the light. And I did, and then I, I literally say, like, I don't know, it's not that much better. Because I, I think I think what they're saying is that you can see things better if you focus it. And I was like, nah, it's about the same, so I just, I, I, I won't need to use that. And then, you know, I bump into these enemies and I never focus the light, so I'm avoiding them like crazy and scared the whole time. So when they took the lantern off me, I was just like, well, same thing. That's <laughs> like, <it's> what <laughs> I'm doing the whole time. Um, so it kind of like, in a way, it kind of made the whole sequence that much more scarier for me. Because, you know, doing it later while being able to focus the light, I was like, oh, fuck, this is way easier. You're like, you've <laughs> not even much to worry about. Yeah, no. And I thought that that was like, I was kind of disappointed by that at first because I was like, well, I feel like they've given you a really effective tool here to the point that I can't imagine suffering any damage. And then uh, I almost felt like, okay, you got me <laughs> when you get to the part where you have nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know when to fit it in, but I saw someone mention it. It's like, fuck, we should talk about it as well. The uh, the puzzle aspect of the game. Should we do that once we've done the enemy encounters? Um, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Alrighty. That about sorts out Ashley. I think it's a solid sequence and it's uh Yeah. Well well adapted, I guess, from the original, because the original one's a little bit strange. You know the whole like 
you can burn the cultists to death if you throw three lamps at them, they die. <laughs> thing. Funny. It's just like that's strange, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I guess it works. It's all right. Well, it was, and there's it was, like it was exactly pretty... three of those lanterns you need to kill them anytime, anytime. So you can't miss, and she doesn't aim to where she. You, you, they have to be stunned for the lanterns to hit. I always wait for them to get she, close because they slow yeah. down. Yeah, they. I know what the you mean. She aims and yeah, yeah. She can miss very good. easily. She's a moron. Uh, I mean, uh, she's fine. Uh, no. <laughs> no, she is. She's she's been to college. She should know better. She, she should no know excuse. better. She should know how to burn people alive. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess you could say the next. You got the 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 ballroom with all of the um. These are novista doors, right? Novista doors. Yeah, th this is almost the main sequence. I would say. I guess. Uh. Outside of like the mining area, I guess. Um, well, uh, I mean, what do you think of them as being translated from OG and how they play out? Um, I'm pretty keen on them. Uh, I kind of miss the 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 invisible sewer sequence and the music yeah. that came along with it. I really kind of like that. Um, let me see. But you know, this is pretty good too. Um, uh, they have uh, the the throughout the whole game. I never fucking learned. But they would be like frozen. They'd look like rocks, yep. and I wouldn't. The, camo. It's the, the whole game, yeah. the whole fucking game, I, they would jump on me, and I'm like, God damn it! Every time, uh, there's some that I was able to, you know, see uh, ahead of time. But yeah, it, I really want to reward the game for that. that. They had the kind of camo that I legit thought they were fucking invisible until I was like, Oh, it's right there. Yep. How am I not <laughs> seeing that? It's right I there. <laughs> It's right there, man. But yeah, they, um, I really, uh, you know, I like them. I like being able to finish them. They're not too, you know, they don't feel too tanky to me. Uh, I like their, they have one animation though, attack where they're in the air. They like surge forward with like without warning or anything that I don't like, but it's pretty rare that that would be triggered. Um, uh, but I like the, the segment here, uh, where there's like a big nest and mm. obviously a callback to the original. And then, you know, then of course in the sewer or down below, uh, where they're they're invisible that I think is a, a pretty neat touch that I like instead of there being nothing between the you falling into the pit and the uh, vertigo fight and then yeah, you see him later uh, on again at the island and I'm like yeah it's fair enough you can see him a bit again point of interest on the OG game uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I always found it absolutely fucking bizarre that when they're flying let's say they have 10 health and a couple pistol shots will knock them down but if they land their health goes up to like 50 Right, that's yeah. in the original. Yeah. If you hit that's them weird. while they were flying around, it was an insta kill. Yeah, they just got fucked, and that yeah. that difference in value is insane. Yeah, like, yeah, you feel it. You yeah, you just TMP pip pip pip. If yeah. they're in the air, you could just oof. Which is like, does it make sense? No. Is this way better? <laughs> no. Like, I guess technically, you know, it's just but you know, it was like one of those things that you realize this ain't in the game no more. Um. So yeah, then that's followed up straight away by the uh, double Garador sequence, which I don't, I don't mind starting on this in terms of just, I, I actually kind of adored this sequence because I had so much fun treating them like my pets that I guided yeah. <laughs> into all of the enemies. I was just having so much fun with it as like an arcade game almost. Um, yeah. I ended up playing it, I think, several hours on stream of just trying to find different ways of seeing if I could get through it without losing any health or... Um, uh, spending as yeah. little shots as possible, seeing how much damage I could get them to do. Uh, I, I, funnily enough, it's because it, I, I know I'm not uh, like that's not a common experience. A lot of people said this is the most hated room. So really, yeah, I yeah. This room a lot of people great. said it's frustrating, it. yeah. annoying. Definitely awesome. one of the most difficult ones for me. But I just uh, love running around yeah. and let the let those fuckers slice up all those ganados that jump from the balcony. It's like yeah, fuck off, and then just get sliced. And then there's like four or five on those staircase, and you just bait them in there, and you go like, <laughs> "Good shit, I like it a lot." Um, yeah, it just kind of, it, it was kind of an expected fight because of the previous game, but when it actually shows up, you're like, "Whoa, ho, ho, ho!" Because they like chunkier go. and more intimidated this game, so it's just like, "How will this go?" And uh, I think it is intended to be probably one of the most difficult rooms, if not the most difficult room in the castle, and if it's not the game. It was tough in the original game. It, it, was, it, was, yeah. it was a tough room in the original game. Uh, and in this one, it was a tough but very enjoyable. It was good to... It was just, it was just fun to play. Tough and fun. It was indeed. Um, which, if we fast forward a little bit, we end up at good old Verdugo. 
the uh, epic big old right hand of Mr. Ooh. Alazar. Um, is it safe to say this is basically one to one? I wasn't. I, I don't know what it's else to say. Very, about it. it's very, yeah, it's very, very similar. similar. I like very. the play area a little <clears throat> bit better and some of the rooms. Um, but yeah, it's extremely similar to the other version to the point where there's. I don't know if there's anything meaningful to say. There's an optional little, like, yeah, this room here that you can open up and go into, but uh, yeah, I, I, I was really keen on it. I really liked it. I thought it was well done. We get some story stuff down here. Uh, we learn about the guy who essentially became Vertigo by getting in, like, transformed and all that sort oh, of stuff. Oh, that's right, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I really like it. I dig it. It's a good fight. <clears throat> um, it's a good, re good new version. Tony uh, Chat it's... mentioned, I don't like that you can leave without killing him. Why not? Why not? I, the, I, I mean, honestly, even in the original, I, I didn't even realize you could kill him. I thought the point <laughs> was to call Slow the him elevator down until the elevator into... rises. Yeah. No, yeah. that's something that makes sense in Fair. terms of a player's yeah. interaction with him. Um, my disappointment was that he didn't drop something worth of more value. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I want 50k <laughs> from you. Pretty lame. Yeah, he drops a, a crown segment, I think, in the uh, original game. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, in the original game, this is where I always use my free rocket launcher to kill Vertigo. Um, it makes sense. And um, yeah, it saves it a bit does. of saves I think it's time. And very it... kind of, it's the scariest, well, one of the scariest moments in the game, I would say. It comes close to actually being kind of like intense because of the way the guy's been set up and how fucking aggressive and fast he is. Oh yeah, um, you hear him chasing you, and there's th these hallways are clearly designed with like you running away from something in mind. Yeah, uh, I think it was it's just a really strong sequence. It's one that they adapted pretty much one to one, but probably because it worked so well in the original one. It's just like yeah, just keep it going. Why not? Um, then I guess pushes us to. Well, we can talk, I guess, about the double L Gigantes. Uh, Gigante. I like what? this one a bit better. I think there's something about being able to move and shoot that plays with El Gigante in a nice way, especially with there being two of them. Uh, Lewis being there is neat. I like that. Gives you some more time with him. I think that, that would be my primary upgrade, thing. is having it be there yep. together. There's so many little great moments. Like, uh, obviously, for example, Leon's grabs, Luis grabs him to pull him in, but then it ends up pulling both of them out. <clears throat> Uh, it's just like it's, it's almost like goofy shit and then you, you can shoot him out of the hand so it's just like they're working together the whole time it's just fun um, and yeah you don't have to drop him into the into the lava pit yeah you can just kill him the regular way and what's cool by the way is if you kill him yeah. quick uh, after Luis has gone off to get the dynamite if you kill the armored one before he comes back or whichever one is left at that point he'll say uh, once he's back he's like oh you didn't leave any for me it's just like <laughs> A different result, which is the kind of stuff you like in terms of details. And I didn't even know you could kill the armor one before Luis comes back and you can use the dynamite <laughs> to blow off its armor. Yeah, because uh, it has the little exposed piece of its face, which, like I said earlier, it was disappointing. Here, it's like, yay, I was expecting it, and it works. Good stuff, Resident Evil. Oh, nice. Um, then we kind of had a mention of it, but yeah, I don't know. I, all I really have to say about the trade cut section is just fucking cool. It was a cool. Yeah, it, was, it was really cool. fun. I Very like that you here's your gun. You got infinite ammo for it. Uh, I think it's implied here that yeah. you you have his red nine. Yeah, yeah. He's given it to you to use. Uh, but it's it's like a little shooting sequence, an action shooting sequence. Uh, there's uh, there's stuff to there's obstacles to shoot in front of you. There's a leaning mechanic where you have to lean uh, so the cart doesn't tip over. Um, the, shoot the baddies. It's... Focusing on the crosshair at this section is probably how I'd have liked it in the whole game. It's uh, pretty yeah. quick. The it is very quick, yeah. And it's just like God, this would have been so much more. Like I could have complimented you so much better, game, if this was how it always worked. Because uh, I felt pretty in control of uh, what I was aiming at in this, even with the fact that it's not a red dot. I was like, yeah, but it feels like I can mostly shoot everything. Yeah. First try instead of it like fucking with me. Um, yeah, and just music, the fucking visuals, of course, the, the, these are like hampered mechanics in a sense, but they're very suitable for this sort of moment of gameplay. And there's a couple of interactions that change things. You can shoot, um, enemies earlier on at a distance and they won't affect you later. There's Chainsaw Man, you can, uh, if you, you have to time the shots on him correctly, otherwise it, it can fuck you over, but you can also focus all the shots on his actual, uh, cart so you can destroy that. 
which will kill him. Like, there's, there's just fun little interactions like that. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised there's not, like, mini games of maybe... Because you could have done this, where it's, like, five challenge maps, and they're all train cart ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh god. Jeez. Hey. Sorry, the puppy did not like that idea. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Do I have to explain yeah, it? No, she's like... a very racist puppy. I heard, it was pretty heard, cool. the word, uh, heard the word train and was like, uh oh, bad memories. Yeah. <laughs> Reminder of her time working on the rails. Um, yeah. Good section. Good addition. Clap, clap. Nice one. Yep. Oh, and then we get to the Krauser first part boss fight, which, uh, I don't know if anyone's willing to take the opposite direction, but I think this is a strict upgrade. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely a strict upgrade. The other one, the other one was just, like, the lamest thing ever, where it's just QTEs. <laughs> um, this was actually them talking to each other, but you're involved in the fight itself. It has yeah. you evading. Um, it has you, uh, you know, blocking his attacks, you know, following up, putting that knife to use. There's some, you know, items to pick up here. And of course, you get the 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 segment, you know. Of course, with Lewis dies and and that sort of thing, uh, and and I like it. Yeah, it's a little play area that you have to fight with him, and <clears> I like it. I, I think this is really neat, and it is also a sort of setup and practice for when you have to do it again later uh, for the fight, uh, which again is uh, it's kind of neat. I would say that there's maybe someone out there who might try and make the argument, how is this any different? Ultimately, it is QTEs. He attacks, you have to hit space, and you counter parry. Isn't that the same as hitting X and A or whatever buttons combination? And I would just say, like, there's so much freedom and player choice in this moment. You can move wherever you want. You can engage with him by attacking him as he's attacking you, or parrying, or trying to crouch, cowering, you know, doing all... Everything's dynamic, and everyone's going to play differently because he's going to have a dice roll on exactly how much he'll attack you, where he'll move, what kind of moves he'll engage with. It's not going to be the same thing every time. And your performance will change the fight as well. Like, uh, how much you hit him and how fast, or how much you run away from him, you know. It's much more dynamic than the original. It's much more... It's pretty much... Because, you know, people point out, just like how people say, like, every game's an RPG, <laughs> You know, every in input you have in the <laughs> game is a QTE, technically. And it's like, no... You're always... Playing a role. This like this. this Don't is, be obtuse. Yeah, <laughs> that's the short vision. You know the difference. This Don't is definitely a, a change, and it's a fucking welcome change because the original one is kind of lame. Yep, very much. I really like the lighting too, as other people have mentioned. It's really fucking yeah. cool. It showed me how shit I was at parrying, at least in professional. It's good for like <laughs> uh, getting you back in. It's a full on fight about that only, so you you kind of you can get used to it. Uh, yeah, more, like I said, training. if you, the more you engage with a fight here, then the easier it will be later when you're more used to it. And that's another uh, thing, you know, like I was just I'm saying about talking. the train car section, you could have had another arcade type mini game where you fight five levels of Krauser, or maybe five different characters, and they get harder and harder and faster and faster, and the parry windows are smaller and smaller until you beat the hardest challenge, you know? A lot of mini game opportunity in here, and it can work as well for training you up on being better at parrying. Maybe and it's just good, skin. it feels... It feels like an appropriately good, like, to do this with a knife only. Like, I and I didn't know if by intention you're supposed to in the later segments, but, like, really fighting him with the knife, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not super complex. There's not that many mechanics involved, but it plays pretty well. It uses the mechanics of, you know, stabbing and slashing well, the blocking. And I really was having a good time fighting uh, Krauser with the knife. Which, uh, I think then takes us to Salazar, doesn't it? Other than the Clock Tower fight, which I do want to mention, actually, because wasn't a huge fan of enemies spawning from behind pillars. Um, it was throwing me off a little bit when I was trying to learn this for the first time, because I was like, you know, I want to shoot them before they get to certain areas, so if I can get them in advance, and then I'm like, wait, now they've appeared there. What? How, where, did, where did they come from? Are there other doors that they're coming from? Are there other rooms? And it's like, no, they come from behind the pillars. And uh, mm. most often as well when your camera is 180 degree away from them. Whenever, wherever you're looking, they'll spawn them behind you and behind pillars. And it's like, okay. Uh, the result of that is me spinning around constantly looking for the next spawn, you know? Which isn't handy. Because uh, there is a challenge to never let the elevator stop. And of course, any, any Ganado that yeah. steps on the elevator for more than, I think, three seconds, and you're out. That's the stoppage. Which, uh, in the OG game, didn't it take more than one to do that? Was it I three? I think so. Um, it would, I think it was something like that, and they always fell 
they they always jumped in, <clears throat> jumped down, so you could kind of be sitting there waiting with your shotgun to blast them once they came in. Uh, uh, wow, they ran fast as fuck. Uh, but the uh, but yeah, they they would jump down into the middle of the platform, so you'd you know be ready for them. Mm-hmm. This one is a bit more varied, so in that sense, it's good. Yeah, I, I constantly kept looking up and just spun around, spun around. <laughs> it's like where they are, where you at? Um, but yeah, but uh, I was very satisfied yeah. when I got through it without the thing stopping. I was like, oh, finally, I did it. I'm so good. It's like. Yeah. A little bit of just lucking out that you look at the right place at the right times. They did involve uh, the red priesty boys as well, two of them in that. Sequence. Oh, yeah. The the red priests, the the, the, the Lama, Los Illuminatus priests, they uh, they can create essentially Plagas uh, mm -hmm. coming out of the heads. They do the little chanting and uh, cultists' heads uh, yeah. go away, and then you have the, um, the, the Plagas come out of it. Uh, so you know that if you don't want to do that, you need to take care of the priest because he's like sort of powering them up yeah uh, in a yeah. sense they also which is, kind of which is an addition like, and it's a cool one fun, yeah. i think they also yeah. stun you for a little bit uh when they do the oh little yeah, yeah you go ooh, ah, e, ooh. Uh, ouchie yes, you've got a plagas in you so it affects you to some degree brain, so that's a ooh. nice little gameplay element slash lore appropriate you know mechanic here so yeah uh, good, good on yes. you nice I think so um but i do like the sequence and i really like the music that plays for this i think it's like you get a lot of drums and it, like the more I talk about, it, the more I realize. Like I do want an RE4 too. I just want more of all of this new yeah. stuff, though. Yeah. But, and it's like the closest we're gonna get is the RE5 remake, and that's if they don't botch it. Or <laughs> it's funny if it was an accurate Cobra remake, Anka it would be. One. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people are after that as well. I was saying, you know what? Who knows <laughs> what they'll do? This was a surefire like choice. RE4 remake is like, of course yeah. you can make money from that. As for well, whatever but it's comes also next, the one that they the could have been burned. Yeah, they they could have. They could have lost a lot of reputation by screwing this one up. Absolutely. Uh, but if this like... had the same gameplay as Village, it would be like, oh, Ooh. what have you done? Yeah, Maybe well. people would be finally understanding that that gameplay is just so mediocre. Mediocre. Uh, which takes us to the Ramon Salazar fight. What do we think? Upgrade, downgrade, neutral grade. Uh, I only fought them normal once. I don't remember the fight very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I didn't have any trouble with it at all. Yeah. In fact, the fight seemed really easy to me. Just the way that you could move yeah. around in the space and his ability to kind of get to you. Um, but yeah, I just didn't didn't really have an issue with it at all. I don't know how I feel in terms of it being better or not. I think I like the I think I like the old one more. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think yeah. I, I'm going to say I like the old one more, but that's not a strong opinion. I'd have to fight Salazar more in the new version to really say. Oh, there's no argument from anybody to say one of them is easy or not. Both of them can be annihilated instantly, yeah, so don't even exactly. try. <laughs> like, they're they're yeah. both very easy. Uh, huh? I think the... Wait, what was that, was that confusing? Or? Well, yeah, well, uh, what, how do you annihilate him easily in the, the new one? So you you know these golden eggs? Yeah. One of them deals seventy percent damage to him. So oh, if you have two him. of them, you can just insta kill him. <laughs> I just, oh, so I you I guess you gotta them. just know to not sell the eggs. Well, well there's I mean, one there's one pretty close to to this place. Uh, and yeah. Oh yeah, I guess ones. yeah. There's there's one in that little. Yeah, in the throne room. It's, yeah, it's in one of the yeah. where you have the little. I don't even know what to call the cube puzzle. <laughs> Turn the cube to the right yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. And I think in the OG, you just have to stand still and shoot him until he dies. This, hmm. like, it honestly doesn't require much from just generally whatever weapons you even have fully upgraded. Yeah. He's pretty low health. Uh, yeah, I, I think in I I like the idea that well I forget for whatever reason I just I just forget like I'm blanking. What happens to the vertigo he doesn't send after you in the remake? Good question. I don't, I don't know. think we find out. Oh. Yeah. Like a I hole in this game, I think. I just That's strange, yeah. In my strange, head, yeah. He, he's just still merging with him, I guess, but we don't see it. But he just, just, he's just kind of gone. Any word on that chat? It disappeared. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I just, yeah, that's probably why I'm drawing a blank. Because, you know, in the old one... The vertigo that's left gets pulled by the tentacles into the big flowery thing, 
Um, and so I assume that's like the one eye is, you know, the vertigo there. The left oh, eye, by the way. People saying he um, might be in the Ada DLC. That might explain it. Maybe. Oh, maybe, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, hmm. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with, I'm siding with the old, uh, old one is better, uh, currently. I don't know if that'll change over time, but that's what I'm sticking with for now. Only enough, I have the reverse. I'm going to side with the yeah. new for now, but I'd like to study both of them. The thing I'm worried about with the new is he's a bit floompy with clipping. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can't remember if it floomps in your benefit or not. Uh, I think it's like 50-50. Sometimes you'll clearly have hit you, but he's clipping, and the game will be like, that doesn't count, you're okay. And you're like, thank you, game. And sometimes it's, Some of his know. attacks also are not not super easy to track exactly what they're going to be. He kept on killing me with this one-hit kill bite that I, I couldn't really figure out what the game wanted from me other than it... Okay, gosh. We got in the new again. or the old? The new one. In, in the new one, oh, he's okay. got this one-hit kill chomp where he just runs... A, he kind of... He, he sort of growls at you for a moment and then it's almost like one of those Elden Ring super delayed attack things where it's a little bit later than you think it's going to be and you, I think you have to be at a run and going laterally otherwise every other time he seemed to kill me with it and every so often I didn't know if he was staggered and and in a good position where I could hit you know, I guess the, the head of Salazar that little glowing eye on the actual mini Salazar head that's inside the mouth. God, it's uh, difficult to speak about Resident Evil anatomy, isn't it? Um, but uh, it, yeah, and it, I just, I found that I'd be like, okay, I guess I wasn't supposed to be shooting him there because he was just prepping a one-hit kill and now I'm dead and have to do the entire thing again. And I, I found that I, I never had as much difficulty figuring out the mechanics of the original Salazar fight in the, in the 2005 game. Yeah, I think the idea that you're on you know, a platform up above and you have the option to go below, that he has in you know, like the tentacles that smack down, he has the bite, that there's that eye you, you know, have to hit enough to open up his weak spot. I I just I, I don't know, I I'd, I'd like it. I think it's a good fight. Um I think and and I like Salazar uh, as a character <clears throat> more on the old one, so yeah, I I I I'll, I'll I'll stick with that for now but it's very possible that I might uh might change if I play the new one more or when I play the new one more so the more yeah. I fought him on I think it was my pro playthrough I still wasn't using the the eggs or anything I was finding that there was still times where I was getting blasted I was like fuck did I just what am I not knowing here but the the longer it went on the better I was getting uh like understanding his animations and then blocking them all and finding really good exploit points like uh because of the way that the map works is there's lots of little uh, areas you can get really good vantage points from while he still can't hurt you and then mm -hmm. just enjoying the fact that a lot of it was rewarding accuracy like when he's going around dropping his little like pus bombs or whatever like if you get him in that orange spot on his head the game will reward you he'll go oh fuck you've got bad fall over and stuff mm -hmm. it's just like yeah um meanwhile in the original like who the fuck's losing to the original? Like, it's it just, he's just so easy to kill. He's right there, the target's right there, opens up weak spot yeah. right there. This one I felt I had to work a bit harder to get the rewards. That's kind of why I found it more engaging as a challenge. Um, But yes, you could. I say this right now, the footage is me getting eaten. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there you go, more of a challenge or something. I don't know. Uh, So yeah, I, I guess I'm undecided on exactly if I consider it an upgrade or a downgrade. I'd have to study up on them both a bit more mechanically but i will say mm -hmm. um maybe this is just because of the visuals or it's more than that but like it just comes across as more cinematic which is a fun spectacle thing for a uh, resident evil i think you know graphically the 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 music is usually cranked up for the the remake and then just the room and how everything looks um makes for quite a grand experience um i'd have to like replay the og one to remember what elements are happening outside of the mechanics. I saw someone say, like, he's uh, better monster. the clock tower, uh, Ashley has been sent away, there's a there's this mass, of uh, this Plogus mass at the top, and he gets pulled into it. And... No, I know that. I meant, like, music and stuff. I couldn't quite remember, because it's, it's always over so fast for me that I don't quite, it doesn't quite embed with me, but, um, the... Because, like, like, I don't know how much we've mentioned the soundtrack, but I quite love it in, uh, I would say in both games, but this game felt like uh, I was really enjoying the tracks for like for the Mendez fight, for example. I could hear in the new track, the old track, like how it was um, 
remixed and repurposed sort of thing. Those are cool elements like that. I want to compare them for um for both probably. I'm I'm very pleased with the new soundtrack, and I'm really happy that they gave the option to uh, have the old soundtrack play. Yes, uh, I think that was really that was pretty neat. I really that appreciate neat, yeah. that. Well, I actually prefer the sound effects for um the moving the inventory because I I even said on stream I miss the when you place an item that it goes. Ch -ch -ch. Like, I want that back, give me, and you can get it back, so it's kind of neat. That's um, a very comforting soundscape, isn't it? The the menu manipulation mm -hmm. or inventory menus. Well, hearing the classic sounds and stuff at a at a whim of your choice is just like that's a real neat thing. I wish I wish there were even more of these crazy neat things they put in, but they did put in a lot, a lot more than you get from a lot of modern games these days. Um, what about uh, which, which do you prefer? Which look? The Salazar monster <laughs> mode from original or new? So uh, tough to tell because of the graphics. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. Maybe I think the old one has this element of like he's becoming part of the castle in a way because of the 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 fixture that the the Plagas mask kind of has to the tower. Um, it, it's they're so different. One is mobile and it bounces around, and the other is a, like a stationary boss. Yeah, it is hard ten, to uh, it's it's really tough. I don't know. I I I don't think I'm like conceptually partial to one over the other. I like them both, and I think obviously yeah, I can't say it I'm not going to hold graphics against the old one at all. Like it, it's I I can envision how he would look, you know, with this graphics sort of thing. It's it's more about the design that I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah. All righty then. Takes us to the Island. Probably most notable interaction. Yeah, I guess it would be going straight to the Regenerators. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I do appreciate that they added uh, enemies with metal shields. Yeah. Um, and I think this is the first time we see the club enemies, uh, where you have to evade instead of uh, blocking their attacks. Nice this little the keeping the variety stuff. there. Uh, no, they just have the big, big, like, club thingies. Big mace club thingies. Oh, you have uh, to crouch to avoid, because you can't, parrying, that's not possible. Is, is that right? Yeah, there, there's an uh, evade prompt that pops right. up. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's like, a, it, essentially, they're like replacement for the scythe enemies, because the scythes did that, where they, um, uh, the scythes, you, you could block some of the attacks, but they had another attack that was an evade one. Um, so that was neat. But yeah, the metal shield enemies uh, that you couldn't, blast through their shield uh, so you'd want to like what i would do is i would get that a good parry on them and that would open them up for a uh for a you know a, a stagger kick i would just um, try and just get them uh at the feet yeah that yeah that's a, as well it's good that i think you shoot them often enough they even lower the shield to protect their feet if i'm not mistaken i would need to double maybe. check that but yeah. i feel I like that like... happens Tag the feet enough, and they open up the slot on the head, and then you shoot that, and then they're almost done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Mel, Mel, shield guys were in the original, though, weren't they? Or were they not? Not to my knowledge, no. I there were. I don't think there were any that had a shield that was unbreakable, um, or at least extremely resistant. I don't think so. Maybe I'm just forgetting. You never know. I'm what trying kind to of remember because that seems familiar, but I don't know if that's me making shit up. <laughs> I think it was just wooden shields only. Wooden I don't shields think they had only. metal okay. shields, yeah. Anyway. Especially because in the old version, because you could, you know, couldn't move and shoot and there wasn't like a parry system, it would have been kind of a nightmare to deal with them, potentially. Hmm. Uh, like it's not really based around that, whereas the wooden shields can be broken. Oh, is it RE5 uh, that has them? I can't Didn't remember. Didn't RE4 have uh, one with spikes in front of them? I like don't spike remember. shields? Or am I? You'd think I'd remember I since I played it so recently, but well, I don't remember. In the tribal <laughs> sections, I think there were ones who had shields. Um, but yeah, it's been a while since I played that. Um, oh well. So the regenerators, <clears throat> they've got the, the fucking exploit's been fixed. What is that? <laughs> like uh, the, it what, was an exploit, yeah, where you could stun lock them with a the knife. Yeah, you just blow off a leg, they fall, you know, they just collapse, and you just knife them until they die. Yeah. Oh, it, you mean it was, the... okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You just no. Knife okay. him and kill him. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> fair, enough. For... fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, whatever. We have their asses We had our fun for years. Dies. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, fair. Um, I really, uh, yeah, I like the regenerators in this. Yeah. 
they're, they're scary they're as fierce. fuck. Yeah, they're scary. They make the fucking noises. Uh, they um, jiggly asses. You know, they're dummy thick. They D- have, <laughs> yeah, they, dummy they thick. Yeah. around on the ground and jump on you, and they have that reach for you and grab you thing. Uh, and then, of course, you know, shooting the plagas from the inside of them with either a SMG or a rifle. They're pretty standard there. Uh, yeah, you can. I like. They yeah. have a health bar that if you don't yeah. shoot any of their blobs, it's just a big health bar, which I like. Yeah, you kind can, of like the original. Yeah. Uh, shoot the big old blobs with the, obviously, the, the, the heat thing. But you can also, with the shotgun or SMG or well, anything of your choice, shoot enough where the skin will come away and reveal where yeah. the uh, blobs are, and then you can shoot them that way. As far as it's I know, that's, that's an addition. Yes, I think that's true. I think in the original version, you could just blow like limbs and stuff off, uh, and eventually you could kill them doing that. They did have a health bar, um, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. No so yeah, I it's a huge investment in ammo. I think they did an excellent I, job I moving them over. Yes, I couldn't and figure I... out a reliable way to kill the the level two version of them. Like the when, Iron when... Maidens. yeah, the Iron Maiden. So once they have that single parasite that's only in their head. I really couldn't figure out is is it a precision shot that I have to get in between the opening in the face and actually just hit it dead on? Uh, is it an amount of damage? Because it didn't seem that using the thermal sight had any kind of advantage to it at that point, I, or at least it, I maybe. Oh, I something I figured out was that you don't need properly. to use that anymore. You just use a like a shotgun yeah. or a, even the TMP yeah, would probably be better yeah, at that, that point. That, that's sort of what I was getting the impression of, because I'm like, I, I feel like it's not making any appreciable difference for me to use the the thermal sight to actually aim at that that final parasite. But yeah, well, so know, anybody's still, listening, I didn't like understand. fighting them because I didn't feel like I really understood how to fight them the way I did in the original, or even just fighting the the standard regenerators in this game, where it's like, okay, kill the parasites inside the body. I get that. Also, it's just like in case anyone doesn't parasite, know, the, a super parasite. the regenerators had two versions in the other game. In this one, technically it is two versions, but the, the Iron Maidens pop out as like a second phase of the first yeah. ones eventually. Yes. Later on. And they added something that I really liked, because in the original it was a little bit weird. They explode and they have the spikes all over them. But in this one, when they explode with the spikes all over them, it's actually like, like almost like an attack. A grenade. You have yeah. to, yeah, if they, if you're kind of within their line of sight and close, they, um, you know, they, they, it's a death they, they take some damage and mm-hmm. take some bit of damage. But uh, yeah, uh, strong enemies. I, I fought them all using the, I guess, the the normal method, uh, you, you know, rifle and the plagus, the scope. Um, yeah. And uh, I I, oh, the only time I used an SMG in this game was uh, I have the SP5 and I figure, well, I got this SP5 I picked up. I, it comes with 30 rounds in it. I have the scope. I'll use it on one of the uh, the, the boys. And so, yeah, I essentially got a, yeah, there you go. Uh, putting, being expeditious. Yeah. But that's use. So there you go. I'm oh, and I like how it's optional. That, that one room that has the four of them frozen. Uh, one of them you need to fight to get the wrench, but the other ones, uh, you don't have to fight them. Uh, you Ooh. can if you want. You get gems. Uh, yeah. Or if you mess up and you, you miss a shot and you crack it open and now you have to fight it. So that was really neat and interesting. Like uh, you can challenge yourself if you want. And they or did the teaches you to be careful. They did the shot. thing of the OG game as well of just like they are overwhelming and a lot of when you first meet them, a lot of players will treat them as though they're like characters you're just supposed to fucking run, 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 get away from it, mm-hmm. move around the room. Like because obviously the first one you can run away from and move around. The second one they lock you in a room with, with them. Well, in, in, funny enough, don't they lock you in a room with them in the original and this one they don't, or do they lock you at all in the in the room in the original? They lock I'm you in the f- in the freezer. The freezer, yeah. They don't lock you in the freezer in this one. You can walk out of it, can't you? I actually didn't try that. You can. I um, but the thing about can, it is, if you left the other one alive, you, you might run into him and then yeah. it gets real scary. <laughs> you have to I wait for the... the key card to reprogram in this one. Mm-hmm. I thought you had to do that in the OG, to... but in this one you can run back out. I think the trade-off is that the play well, area is think... a little bit more difficult to get past him, but he. Uh, but but I don't think... I, I can't remember. The, the, the thermal reason. site is also not in the freezer in this one. Released. Yeah, the thermal site is down hardcore... with level three, right? Incubation. Okay. Yeah. So that's not like a hardcore mode. The items get shuffled thing. Because I was thinking there was a possibility of that. I was like, wait, no, hold no. on. The thermal site's supposed to be in here. No. My memory, my memory betrayed me. In it. The the 
uh, plugas in, in those regenerators can be a bit fucky, depending on what angle you shoot. Like, you're straight on it, but, I don't know, maybe a leg flumes in front of it, and then it doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, typically tried to avoid them when they were on the ground, because I wasn't quite yeah. sure, but that typically wasn't an issue. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't I have a problem with it. Oh, you fight a couple of them, you mostly just snipe them from far away anyway. And I don't pretty... think I ever hit a single Plaga's Parasite while they were in the middle of the walrus attack. Where they kind of <laughs> walrus attack. The <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no, no, nothing's happening here. I'm just going to take damage. Um, which will then take us to, I think a point of interest would probably be the, um, the crane sequence. I quite liked it. The I liked ball. the crane sequence. Yeah, it yeah. was a fun fight. Uh, Good moment for yeah, Ashley. That's true, and, yeah. and to be honest with you, I remember when I finished it up, I remember thinking, oh. man, probably one of the last times I'm going to do like a fun horde thing in this game. Yeah. I want more. <laughs> like I like these. I like the stress of many multiple spawns and uh, environmental like explosives to use and lots of different enemy types that can interact well with each other. It's like, I just like this shit. I like the core gameplay loop. And uh, yeah, I just knew like, oh, I'm coming to an end probably. Like a wrecking ball. It's, uh, mm -hmm. There's cool skips. You can use the RPG or grenades to open up the hole so that she hits it once and it blows open straight away. Yeah. Um, so in this fight, there's the there's a creepy moment where fucking like eight of the spindly like crawly boys spawn. Yeah, the spiders, the plaga spiders. And it, it was funny to me because it's like, oh, good God. Then you check your inventory, you're like, oh, it's okay, I have a flash. Yeah, <laughs> well, like, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a flash, oh no. Because <laughs> like, uh, that's probably something worth mentioning actually is enemy types. The phase one Plagas guy, just like the original one, pretty much. Phase two guy, um, I think that's. Is that just like the original? Is there anything different about, well, about him? I, I, a little I bit. I kind of consider the phase one Plagas in this game to be that weird broken neck mutation that they do. Oh, yeah, that's fair. And then um, I, I thought that that was an interesting way to do it to have the. The enemy mutation mechanic be in the first act of the game. He just has a floofy still... neck, pretty much. I wouldn't call it a plagus. Um, it, well, like, uh, I think it's supposed I, I, to be interpreted I, as such. Uh, yeah, yeah, like he's alive it's because the plagus of... is keeping him alive. Yeah. but like it doesn't come out. It's still all internal. And, um, and I think it's what I was trying to explain is that I think that that was a, a way to have the enemy mutation mechanic exist in the early part of the game before the almost twist of the plagas that that happens like yeah, once night so. falls yeah. and I, I thought that that was a clever way to do it it's like oh it's like a new mutation there and something's messed up with their head and it's uh, what's going on there and you're like oh that's just yeah. the plagas trying to get out creepy, but it's yeah, it's not far enough anything. along yet it can't it can't explode the head yeah. and hurt you. the um I think the the the, le the stage one Plagas acts pretty much like it did in the original game. Mm -hmm. It's got a tentacle with a blade at the end. Don't let it get close to you. It can be floompy sometimes with how it hits. Um, and it can fucking but... stun lock you on its own if you get really unlucky. Like oh, uh, it didn't it... happen to me, but that sounds really bad. I've been in a corner before where one of them spawns because you just get unlucky enough that someone's head pops off and then it turns into that and you try to get out. Someone grabs you and by the time you get out of it. They tag you, and Leon goes, whoa, 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 This isn't a good day. Oh, trying to get his balance back, and by the time you recover, <laughs> hits you again. You go, whoa, 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 And then the unfortunate fucking part, especially if that thing is not alone, is by the time you can recover, someone else has done something to you. Oh, you got punched, and then you got grabbed. Then you escape the grab, and there's like, oh, there's a dynamite at your feet, by the way. And you're like... <laughs> oh, uh, right. And then you explode into mist, and you're like, "Well, I'm gonna go play <laughs> fucking chess. <laughs> like, leave me alone." <laughs> so, chess is a classic game, and you know, never what? goes out of style. Reliable, mechanically reliable. No one calls chess clunky. True. But then you play chess, and your opponent gets a pawn to the other side of the board. And sure enough, once you get one, now you have a, another health bar on your fucking piece, and you're like, "Oh, I chess can't is escape just it." Clunky chess checkers. Checkers is just chess with better mechanics. Ooh, no. I know. I'm kidding. It's faster. Good. Um, <laughs> let's gonna see. make things uh, a competition, yeah. Mark. Gee. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, games are in a competition. Hey, I, I will say then, just in case anyone thinks I'm not joking, unequivocally, chess is a better game than checkers, everybody. 
I agree. prefer it. Um, the second stage Plagas, I think, are... Uh, they're a bit different in this one. Not too much. They still have the insta-kill move on you. Um, however, now, uh, they have... Um, they're only vulnerable when their mouth is open. Uh, which means you can't just kill them right after they pop out. Well, I, th I think you can. You have a little window right after they pop out to kill them. Uh, yeah, you, then, they give you a chance. Uh, yeah, but a lot of the times you won't be able to do that because you're, you're dealing with other, you know, boys around them. Uh, so you have to kind of wait till it's a little bit closer and then hit them with, you know, a shotgun blast or a rifle shot. They also have a move where they can jump up onto the ceiling and attach to the ceiling and then, like, leap towards you. And they can fucking insta-kill you if you're not and careful. And that'll insta-kill you too, yeah. Great. And I think they're, the, they're my least favorite of the three. I, 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 I don't like the second one. Um, in the original, they weren't as bad because they were always vulnerable. Uh, you could always, like, shoot them with a rifle or something and, and blast them away. Uh, but in this one, they seem to be a bit more aggressive, and they, they have windows of um, you know, vulnerability that you have to exploit. And the, the third is the one that went, uh, underwent the most change. Uh, in the original, the third one would pop out, and it'd be like a, a spider on a stalk. Mm -hmm. And you'd kill it, and then the spider would fall off, and then it would jump towards you and come and get you. And uh, now the spiders can skitter around, and they can jump on enemies and essentially like power them up to make yeah. them really aggressive. Did it freak anyone else uh, out when they first did that? Because they I was fast. It certainly really me off guard. Really reminded me of the Crimson Heads in the 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 Resident Evil One remake. If if you guys have ever played that one, it's the they're the the ultra powered versions of the zombies where they they. They get these bloody faces and they move. They move super fast and they make a very scary sound. And the first time I saw one of the, I don't know, I guess face hugger Plagas zombies that they were, I guess Ganados in this one here that I was like, oh god, it's they put crimson heads into this game, <laughs> and uh, they're so much faster and scarier. But uh, yeah, if, yeah. One thing I did like about it though is once you've knocked the Plagas off and it's running around again, they're Fairly easy to kill if you yeah, they shoot got them quite low HP. Yeah. Dude, the thing yeah, that really freaked um, me out was uh, in the f sequence with the uh, the castle, we you know the cannon and stuff, and you you sorting out the sun moon dials and stuff, and there's a staircase, a winding staircase. You you begin climbing it. One of those fuckers is crawling around the walls, and I was like, ah, they, they could even do that. Yeah. <laughs> kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> it's uh, definite spider vibes, you know, being taken advantage of. Um, let me see. The um, yeah, I think that I think that's it for the like the Plagas enemies finding them. Uh, yeah, themselves. Sort of... uh, I think it's a it's a it's a decent change to the second one that makes it a little bit more difficult and dangerous. And the third one, it just adds a completely like different mechanic um, where they can essentially power up enemies and make them really aggressive, and to the point where you just you got to blast them away with a shotgun to keep them away from you. Um, and it gives you, you know, an incentive to kill them before they can power up an enemy. So, uh, Krauser Phase 2 fight. Well, final Krauser fight, I guess you could put it that way. Hardest uh, fight in the game. Uh, I think it's one of the easier fights in the I game. I was going to say, I'm not sure if I think it's the hardest oh, really? fight in the game. Uh, I, I, I absolutely think it's one of the easiest. I beat the, I beat oh, him, <laughs> essentially, I would have beaten him completely with a knife, but the game... You know, because of the knife durability, I I simply couldn't. Mm. Um, but yeah, I I Neato. pretty much beat him just to all with a knife, uh, which hmm. it, it, I think it's a mark against the durability thing because you know everyone knows you knife Krauser's kneecaps, and the original, and in this one, you know he fights you with a knife, you fight him with a knife. Yeah, but but yeah, the, the durability the durability still um, durability still counts in the fight, which is like eh. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, where, I like how you, you can. Fought, where did you fight yeah. him with the, with the knife? Like in the middle parts or the end parts? Like when he has is mutated. Both. Oh, okay. Not bad. The boat. The the ending segment where you witness the power. It owes itself well to playing with a knife. His enemies are dodgeable and blockable. Um, you can you know stab him in the face, 
And of course, you can shoot him with guns and stuff. I had to finish him off with a uh, with a bit of uh, gunplay, just because the knife the knife was broken after all that. <laughs> Luckily, yeah. I instantly got a replacement. But because uh, I kind of thought it was what you're supposed to do. Um, well, so I blasted him the but, whole way through. <laughs> well, I was yeah, kind fair, of more interested in asking enough. though was just, uh, do you think it's upgrade or downgrade? I think it's an upgrade. I think it's an upgrade as well. Yeah, yeah upgrade. I um, like the uh, like little gauntlet again. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, yep. This one more so than the previous uh, games. What the OG one? This one felt more like it was personally designed for me to complete a set of challenges that involve him ambushing yeah. me throughout it. Because in um, the OG one, you had this weird. Uh, puzzle where you have to move like a statue around. Like that it's was really fucking weird. Yeah, <laughs> really awkward. Yeah, in the it's middle like, of the fight. The, yeah, okay, I, did, I mean, the pedestals in the fight. He's like, to get like, to Ashley, really you're gonna need to collect these three. It's like, what the fuck, Krauser? <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. You've got the third. It's like, we'll just have all of them. Yeah, why? Know. Yeah, like, exactly. Why, just yeah. like, why are oh, you yeah. being such a bitch? Um, <laughs> I played that not too long ago and totally forgot it. <laughs> but yeah, I I think that. Th the robots in this aren't silly like the flying ones and the ones that burrow out with the legs. These are just like laser oh, wires yeah. and a couple little auto turrets Earth. and that's pretty mm -hmm. much it. Uh, but yeah, he's got the laser sight on the bow. He's got his little he's got a little machine pistol. And of course at the end, you know, he's got his floomp arms. Um yeah, but yeah, I, I really I, I really dug it. Uh, I liked his attacks. I liked uh, how it really rewarded you for having good timing and good uh knife skill. Uh so yeah, this is one I, I I prefer this one. I think it was, and I would say what's one of the easiest. That's definitely not a complaint. Um, I can see why someone might have a lot of difficulty with it. Um, but I was I was having a lot of fun, like knifing, you know, having was, essentially fighting him with a knife. The thing about it is, if you know how the fights work, then technically any of them are the easiest, right? Because yeah. no one could argue like Salazar's obviously the easiest with the eggs. It's like, okay, that's fair, <laughs> I guess. I learned like, about that today. <laughs> that's the thing. There's a lot of show. stuff a lot of people don't know. Like, to be fair, the first time I think I fought him in his uh, ultimate power form, I didn't use the knife at all. I can't remember if I did. I was I was just like, I want to unload on him, fucking kill him. But I, I guess I just yeah. thought it... Yeah, because it does work that way in the OG. You can either focus the knife on him or you can use guns on him. Um, yeah, he takes extra damage from the knife and he staggers easy from the knife. <laughs> you sounded so full up with food there. Nom, nom, nom. Um, yeah, which then takes us to the Mike sequence. Mike! Next of significance. Um, how are we feeling about that in terms of... Uh, I know that a common thought about it in the original game is that it feels like we're stretching the limits of the sort of mechanics early on at that point in terms of very hectic. I think John mentioned this partially. It's very fast-paced and it's very... Uh, it almost feels like you're uh, reaching the limits of the way you interact with this world as Leon in the OG game is getting um, outclassed by the sort of speed and intensity of that sequence. Um, mm -hmm. anyone, what, what do you guys think about that as a comment? Mike mm. is a true hero and he shall be avenged. <laughs> of course. I, uh, I think I prefer the new version. Yeah. I think I prefer the new one as well. I'm trying to figure out in my head why. <laughs> like in yeah. Real time. Uh, I, I, I think the complexity of the shooting combat including enemies that have ranged attacks themselves works a bit better in the remake just because it's it, no uh, minigun it, enemy yeah not really but yeah there's sort yeah, of a or one for him but yeah he, he, i like this version better um i just think the play area is better come. using you, you've got some you could get on the little machine guns and you can use those to fight ganados um yeah, you can I'm shoot really... the gun of the machine gun enemy and blow it up in his hand too, and that's that's, that's another cool. cool thing. You guys know you can blow up the AA cannon with the grenades or the RPG. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, didn't yeah. realize that. You get like a full skip on that then. Hey, yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't know. It's uh, I think the cheapest way to do it is one heavy, one small one. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to just. Yeet it up uh, there. Actually, the cheapest way is infinite launcher, loser. Uh, uh, I don't know. That's, that's pretty. That costs a lot, doesn't it? That costs like don't cost Leon days. shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Go for days. Doesn't cost. Doesn't cost shit after those two bill. But yeah, uh, the uh, I like this area better. I just think it plays better. Um, I 
I just think it's uh, ranged enemies in Resident Evil. I was like, yeah, it's fine if they're here and there once in a while, but they're like, oh, this is a... they, they didn't <laughs> feel as obtrusive here. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I prefer Resident Evil this 5, version. if you remember, pissed us off with the gun enemies in that eventually. Yeah, just all the yeah. Maginis with AKs. I'm like, oh, this isn't the same. This no. This is just, no. <laughs> Uh, I still remember the first time I played that in Resident Evil 5 and thinking, I really bet there's someone on this development team that said, this is what it's all been leading towards. Zombies <laughs> that shoot back at you. It's like, yeah, I think you missed the mark on your own no, franchise. Which just makes there, you wonder, it's like, you do realize what's <laughs> fun about killing zombies is not that they shoot yeah. back at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, zombie type enemies that shoot back at you are not as, yeah. Be very careful. Mm -hmm. um, I will say while this is playing, I like this uh, version compared to just having uh, uh, Ganado shoot a rocket. Uh, the idea that Sadler is controlling the Navistadors to do this, to fly around. Uh, I, I remember I think thinking that there's fitting. no warning from Leon, though. It annoys me. Um, Leon should see this before Mike does. Because uh, he turns the, the, the thing sideways, right? Because I remember when I was watching it happen, it's, it's Mike that realizes this is happening before Leon does, even though... Yeah, it should be Leon from how this runs. It should, Leon should be like, holy fuck, look out! Because he's got perfect view of all of this, but I guess if we're supposed to believe Leon's like not quite able to see it. I don't know, I don't maybe know. I gotta see the angle they come from, or do we even see it? Or maybe he's focusing on getting on the ladder. Or, oh, yeah, I guess they both sort of notice at the same time they just show up and grab it. It's okay, it but no, I, I agree with what yeah. you said, though, that uh, Sadler brings it down specifically and personally it's yeah kind of like, using yeah, the yeah, navista yeah. doors like they're 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 far more of a presence in this game than they were in the old one i think there were only two no three segments in the old one there was the um let's see was it two or three there was the uh, uh the underground sequence uh the, the underground prison there was the cave at the very end and then there was the tower so yeah three but in this, they just feel more present. I don't know, because you fight them at the island and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they bring down the chopper. They seem like a valuable tool that he would use, you know, for this sort of thing. So, yeah, oh, yeah. it just seemed more fitting instead of just, oh, we get shot by a rocket. Uh, they also, uh, the original chopper that was sent to you. In this game, it's delayed. It, it can't get to you because of a storm. And in the old version, Hunnigan's like, I guess it was shot down. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. You know, that's not good. That's a that's bad, Hunnigan. That's so, very bad. Yeah. So yeah, chop, no chop. Uh, both of the shot down choppers were replaced by something different in this version. Um, next point of interest, I think, is probably the last major encounter. It's like a huge area filled with all kinds of enemies. It's like a big old, you know, goodbye to the the yeah, mechanics there's a, almost. There's a the, there's a little segment with the bags that hang down and the regenerators you fight. Yeah. Um, there's the segment here where you get there's a brute, there's some Novista doors, there's just typical Ganados. Um, when yeah, running I, around and experimenting and stuff, which is what I like to do, I discovered pretty quickly it's like, oh, what's preventing me from going straight to the end is I've got to right. release the sentries, right? And it's like, okay, okay, okay. So what if? I do that, get behind the sentries, and then reprogram them to, to aim out at, at people who are coming in. I was like, surely, game, you're going to reward me with all of the enemies clamoring to get to me and getting torn to shreds by the turret, right? No. it's uh, no. There's an aggro <laughs> range limit, and it go, it's not as far as the turret. How lame I, is that? No, no, you know what it is? Because I, I tried it too. As soon as you put up that second turret, when you go behind it, yeah, that's when they cut off the aggro at completely, and they just turn around and leave. Wait, well, yeah, do they continue to chase you? Because like the aggro cuts off yeah. anyway. No, because they 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 it's literally me on when... screen right now. It's the aggro away. cuts off yeah. anyway. Oh, I didn't go that far. I was I was so okay. Yeah. Well, so funnily enough, even when I turned the turret on in my I think pro playthrough, some of them followed me in, which was cool, and they got okay. melted by the the turret, but most of them just turned away, and I was like, that's so fucking lame. Why would you set all that up and not let me do that? <laughs> like, that's got to yeah. be the coolest way to complete this section, is to run through them all, get all the switches pressed, and then mm -hmm. uh, turn the turrets on them. That's such an obvious, cool thing to do, and you can't do it. Or at least yeah, you can't do it very, as efficiently as you'd like. Very disappointed when I pulled it off and they just left. And I was like, aww. I I, the, I attempted that in the first encounter that's on the island because one of the first things you have to do is you have to deactivate a, one of yeah. the turrets laser walls 
and uh, I tried to just aggro a whole bunch of them, go back to the area where I knew that would it, it would if I turned it back on, it would swing in and trigger them. But they just stop following you the second you go into that cave, and they they turn around and then walk away as if you were never in a battle. With them. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, I guess bye, guys. We're not fighting anymore, I suppose. But I mean, I guess fair on them. They they saw through my my ruse. One thing about this segment that I think was timed pretty well is this was where I was like, you know what? I'm really sick of uh, enemies that shoot arrows at you, and uh, I was just like, oh, I just I'm just done with them. I'm just sick of them. I don't I don't want to see them anymore. <laughs> and sure enough, it was the last segment with them. So I was like, all right, that works. There you go. Timed it perfectly. Um, though there yeah. was a there's an RPG cunt in this fucking area. And uh, I think it was my yes, offline playthrough. Right. I'm not sure, but I skipped past him. Never skipping past him ever again. I'm killing him every time now. <laughs> I got all the way to the door at the end, and his fucking laser can go all that distance and actually still yeah. hit you. He got me, and I died. And I was like, "You, I, I'm pretty sure I had full health, but no combat armor. And so it killed me. I was just like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> you should be paid the big bucks, I guess. Um, One thing that, that's on my mind, the, the difference between the combat armor in this and the old game is the old game, it's just you, you buy it and it's just like 20% reduction to damage. In this version, it uh, greatly reduces the damage you take from ranged attacks. Um, and it does some, and it soaks up some hits as well from melee attacks, but it has like durability that goes down on when you take attacks. So I, it's like a... When I you, shot... And you can repair it over time. You can Doesn't actually it see also it have some stuff where it totally nullifies the damage from explosions and fire? and well, so I, I, it, it reduces explosive damage. Jack, yeah. All of you, silence. Like, I do oh, this right in the opening. I actually shoot the rocket at myself, and if you look, it takes zero health off me, but it takes about just over a third, I think, of the combat armor. Yeah. And that's with an RPG right next to me. And this is on professional, too. Um, you'll see it in a sec. I can't be asked to keep. Yeah, I was noticing things like that happening too, where it's like, oh, I I didn't lose any health, but my my armor is gone. But yeah, you know, which is amazing, honestly. Yeah, it's about a third yeah. of the armor is gone, and I've lost no health with that close a range of an RPG strike. So, um, very good armor. <laughs> Pretty good. Better than real armor. Yeah, these. Fucking video games with the being better <laughs> thing. Um, yeah. And the real, final well, point of interest. Armor, you can take a couple like fragmentations, things like shrapnel flying around in a normal frag vest. But for our actual, typically bullet, when you get an RPG it, fired directly at you, it doesn't save your life. Oh yeah, no, no. That, typically, uh, this been well. known to have. It just knocks you back, but you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be. Yeah, you can get up, walk it off, rookie. So awkwardly, I didn't think about this when I was recording it. We got no footage, really, for the Sadler fight in this recording, but oh, um, well. uh, let me start with a hot take. I don't like the Sadler fight in the OG game. Uh, I didn't care for it either. No, it's it's like, it's pretty meh. Uh, it annoys me. A whole lot better. Um, I uh, like this one a lot better. I, I often killed him too fast to really judge it, and on my recent playthrough on stream, I was like, let's actually fight him. Let's see how it goes. And I just got disappointed and annoyed. No. Um, <laughs> It seemed really cheap at a lot of the times, and uh, it takes fucking ages. Um, funnily enough, is it the mine thrower? That weapon fucking trivializes him at the end of the OG game if you go via... If you're not using um, like an RPG or, or super special weapons with super high damage, uh, you can trigger the... I think I tried to kill him just by stabbing, right? But you have to proc the stab by dealing enough damage to uh, parts of him. But what happens in the OG game is you'll always... Uh, give you a chance at stabbing him after an explosion. I think he's... Is that his weakness, explosions? Because th that kind of applies in this one. He gets um, staggered Maybe, by explosions. Maybe, I'm not sure. In any case, uh, this fight, treating it 100% properly, I really like it. I think it's really good. Yeah, I like, yeah, I like the play area better. Um, I just, it just seems to work, uh, work well. And I like him, you know, as a character way better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he flies into the rage when he tries to control you. It doesn't work. And you realize you've killed the Plagas inside of you. Um, but yeah, pretty, uh, he, he looks great. Yeah. Looks uh, really great. Plenty of resources throughout the entire area. You have to shoot. I think at first it's like his leg eyeballs, the, as, as he goes on the phases, there's more leg eyeballs to shoot to proc his, uh, his weakness being exposed, you know? 
And then um, if you're a smart player, you can do the whole like magnum shot, magnum shot, stab. So that you get the stab and the bonus damage going in. Um, or you can obviously just use the RPG at this point. There's, mm -hmm. You're likely going to have the spare money or you could sell one of your upgraded weapons to get the easy kill on him. Uh, so, you know, I, I just like there's loads of options. I like mechanically that it works pretty well. He sends a bunch of um, Novisadors after you and they're all pretty easy to deal with as well. Just as a way to make it more dynamic, you'll jump into the center of the map and you can even, from there, shoot his uh, bonus eyeballs off with like a rifle. Or good pistol shots, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Feels like there's a lot of variety to how you can beat him. It'll include basically all the weapons you have and all the ammo is supplied and you get a bunch of health bonuses as well. And they give you a decent amount of, like, call it mistake allowance. Um, it's quite grand as well. I just think it's a really yeah, strong animation. Yeah, I was about animation. to say, lots of spectacle points too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you beat phase one. Phase two is him just, he gives you some easy to avoid attacks and you just have to shoot his weak spot and then Ada provides you the rocket launcher and boom, dead. Uh, which leaves really the only thing to talk about is the speed of chase at the end, or the the. Um, the... I'm trying to think about if there's anything before we get to the the end. If there's something that kind of happens along the way that's really worth talking about. I guess we had our little, we talked about our little segment where you're you know get the Plagas out and Lewis's lab and that sort of thing. And I like it. Uh, oh, you know, I like that. Yeah, we. You know, she goes first, and then she puts Leon in it, and you wake up out of it. And we haven't covered uh, everything, but we are at eight and a half hours, so. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, so, yeah, we'll be finding a way to wrap this up at some point um, it's possible to beat the game uh, if you're really really quick and you know what you're doing it's possible to beat the game and this time uh, it uh, is my yeah, first yeah. playthrough was you know I, I take I take a lot of time in games I smell the roses I check for everything I look around I um, yeah, I really take my time and enjoy yeah. it I had a good uh, I think my first playthrough was like 20 hours or so yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can you can get a lot of time, and the game owes itself really well to replays on the different modes and unlockables and stuff, and it's just a fun experience. So, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we can move on to the uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. the water the scooter, no, the water scooter, which is just fucking better in this version. The old one was like <laughs> a weird tacked on thing that you I don't even know it was possible to fail, but uh, yeah, the new one. Involves a lot more dodging obstacles and doing ramps and well, and just it takes you know, advantage of the fact things. it's a graphical update and it's super spectacle again. Just things blowing oh, yeah. up and ramps, huge everywhere stalag tights falling down, yeah. ex factories exploding. It's just madness, and it's a it's a neat uh, it's a neat little um, like end to the game, an action packed escape from the exploding island because it explodes for some reason in this version. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, looks really good. Yeah, um, yeah that's the game. Uh, you get outside. It's a new dawn. Uh, Ashley, um, she really likes you at this point. Says she can set you up to be on her personal detail. Um, but yeah, he's like, nah, I got to you know, do this and that and the other thing and carry on. And they go out to the sunset and we get a little bit of a story shift. Where in this version, Ada does not deliver the sample to Wesker. And instead, she uh, takes the helicopter and she goes off into the somewhere and we don't know what happens to it. So who knows what they will do with this story change with Wesker not getting the sample. I'm not That's sure. The thing, if they do make a Resident Evil 5 remake, it will be interesting to see where they're actually going with the story exactly. Because it, you know, you will be known for sure. Uh, yeah, Resident Evil 5 did have a story. Um, Allegedly. Uh, I don't really something about stopping Wesker from uh, releasing the global saturation. Oh no, uh, dude! This is the thing. If they remake it, I was talking to Az about this on his stream, and he was like, "They need to fucking remove all the goofy shit at the end." And I was like, "Remove? No, <laughs> no I, 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 I actually thought about how they could do that if they wanted to remove the boulder punching from the game, at least as far as being a end climax. We're fighting at a volcano, sort of deal." You begin the game with Chris training by boxing a boulder. There, there, there could be plenty of references to Chris punching boulders. Yeah, um, but, you, but you can't I just keep it. the I'm keep the listen. goofy end. There are um, some campy things that get so absurd and crazy, and what the fuck that it comes back around to just being. You got to include that shit. Are you kidding me? Could you leave that out? I want to <laughs> see him it. punch a boulder. I want to see him go crash in the middle of a volcano. 
fucking and hilarious. The, they randomly <laughs> crash into a volcano in the ocean, and then they have to shoot him with RPGs when he's in the lava. Like, what the fuck is happening? I want to see Super Mario eat a mushroom and grow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah these are, <laughs> it is iconic uh, for Chris and Wes. Like, it might sound it. dumb, but it's why we love it. Let him punch the boulder is what I'm saying. We'll see if they do eventually. Uh, I think that's the majority of the major subjects about the game. Is there anything Pretty else you guys much, wanted to I mention think. about it in a more specific sense, be it story, uh, mechanics, we will. We'll cover the mercenaries later. It came out like yesterday. Yeah, I haven't even played it yet, so we will. Uh, we'll have to cover that another time. Uh, but uh, as far as the game goes, I really like a whole bunch of stuff. We you know went we went over some of the changes I don't like, some annoyances, but overall, man, I think we got a really good uh, Resident Evil Four remake, and I'm super happy with how. It, you know, respected where it came from and had all oh. the good references. Mm -hmm. The only worth mentioning, I think, is they took what was a very cool and good idea of the end credits for the game in the original. And I actually love this sequence, the um, the music and then all the frame photos. And basically, the yeah. it's a charming fairy tale almost of this cute little village that was peaceful and just doing their own thing. And then gradually we pass over the window where it's gotten dark and it's raining. And then they show like the... Yeah more modern uh, not necessarily modern but more up-to-date pictures that have been taken they're all scattered on the table of salazar sadler the cult and everything falling apart it's like that yeah. in the og but i fucking love the way they did it in the new one yeah the og was just like sketches um, but this is contextualizes you know photographs and everything and, and that's a photograph you find in the uh the attic there uh the Mendes attic um uh, neat. as well as the the court of owls is up there too <laughs> um, but yeah this is really neat i really enjoy this change this final change here i like it um it, i don't know it's, it's a great sort of look back at like yeah we did just get done killing all of those people and it's like how fucking tragic is that they were all yep. set upon tragedy by... happened before we got here yeah mm -hmm. good stuff and the the music yep. is perfect as well uh so with everything that's been talked about, I want to ask uh, two questions back to back, and I want simple answers mostly from everybody, and then we can talk more about it. Uh, but we'll go left to right quickly, okay? I would have done this with everyone else, but uh, Fringy has said he's going to need a few more hours before the power's going back on, so it's likely he won't be able to be back before we end. But I'll give you his answer anyway, because I asked him what it would be. Uh, but yeah, so I guess Mark, you can go first. Which game's better? Which game do you prefer slash would play like first if you were to revisit Resident Evil 4. Ooh. I don't know. I think that probably going forward I will want to revisit Resident Evil OG Resident Evil 4 on Steam Deck like cuz I've now played it twice on my Steam Deck and it actually sort of plays perfectly there uh because i think it, it must be Linux compatible cuz I, I have a plugin that actually tells you what the real compatibility is with the steam deck thing because steam has sort of a three-tiered system but platinum only gets given to games that actually run natively on linux so i mean i guess that that does run well enough that there's a place where i have it always that i can always fire it up it runs at 60 fps and plays totally fine and um probably when i when i feel like playing resident evil 4 with with the mouse keyboard and a whole big high-powered pc uh, i'll i'll probably play the remake and I think that would be a good way to preserve both experiences in their own setting, you know? All right. My answer, I think, is that by my standards that can get very rigid about what I believe to be, like, superior when it comes to design of video games, one or the other, I'm probably going to go with OG Resident Evil 4. I think it's more consistent and tight um, and more to celebrate in terms of how well designed I think it is. This game, however, in terms of design... There's plenty to compliment, even praise over the original in terms of changes they've made. But I find there's more to be critical of, and not only is there, there more to be critical of, but there are elements that are basically throughout the game, as opposed to like, I don't like this boss or this particular thing. It's like, oh, that mechanic's just throughout, and it's like actively damaged a significant portion of a thing. While at the same time, I think they're both fantastic. Um, as for which I prefer and which one I go back to, I'm not sure I can answer that yet. I'm really not sure. Um, it might be something that in a year from now when I think about playing Resident Evil 4 is when I'll decide uh, and I'll realize which one is the one that I'd rather either play first or play over the other. Um, I really love both of them. 
And I will say it's quite a pull, this game, the graphical element to it. Way cooler to play a game that's this, you know, fucking advanced in terms of how everything looks. So it could be that that's what edges out the uh, the new. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to answer that when the, the time comes. Metal, what do you say? I also both like them very, very much. Uh, I can just echo the consistency part on the OG for sure. Just in terms of mechanics, it's just solid and very, very good. Uh, I think in my mind, I'm probably just going to go with both when I want to replay. So probably if I decide to go, I want to replay RE4, I might just do a package Even dealio. Currently, yeah. Just go with first the OG and then a playthrough of the remake. Because um, I do like them both very much. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's my answer, I think. All right, I don't know if much. I... Yeah. Rags. So Mahler's thoughts are very similar to mine. Um, the Resident Evil 4, the original, has a special place in my heart, um, and I do think that it is a, a better game. It is, I think, just more consistent, mechanically tight. Um, however, as for which one I'll play going into the future, it's tough to say because I've put significantly less hours into this one. Um, so I'll probably be playing this one if I want Resident Evil 4 for a while to come because I've played the original so much. Um, there's so much to appreciate about the new one. It looks great. There's a lot of good changes. There's some not so good changes, but there's a lot of great changes, um, that, that I really, really enjoy. So yeah, I, I think I'd still say the original is the better game mechanically, but there's so much to like about this new one, and it does so much well that I will definitely be playing it for uh, a, or into the future. Mm-hmm. Springy's answer but was, in, the OG is a better game based on consistent design, but I prefer the remake. I think I prefer the remake, is what he said. It's, uh, it's just a reflection of how things work, I guess. <laughs> like it could be better designed mechanically or a tighter story or whatever because i actually think that the story wins out in the new game compared to the old it does yeah. yes um, if there's gonna the be a mod that that's gonna replace the aiming with all <laughs> laser, laser sights. sights well i was oh. i was just about to mention that someone messaged me during the or someone in chat had mentioned it uh earlier Apparently on Nexus mods, there's a mod that gives every gun the laser sight, Ooh, and it adds the consistent what? staggering back in. Mm. Oh boy. So <laughs> if that's the case, then I am a, I'll be very, mm. very interested I need to, to try that out. Matt, uh, I wanted to take a break from streaming tomorrow, but now I want to download that and do a playthrough of that. <laughs> yeah, you might want to maybe uh, maybe tag uh, some of us in the Discord later if you have a link to that mod. Yeah, that would be great. Because like, legitimately, I think like the perfect mix of... If, if this new game had the laser sight and the consistent staggering it would be like they would just take it to that top tier and make it incredible uh so uh yeah definitely uh yeah give us a ping later with that I, that's I think cheating we all really yes it. yes it is yes yes mods yeah. mods are all cheating and some of them are <laughs> wonderful <laughs> Well, I mean, the laser sight just makes the game... I mean, in a way, I, well, it's a complicated talk. It get technically easier and harder at the same time, but it just depends. Wait, I, uh, I sorry, why would it make it harder? If, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's harder to, like, aim with a, at a target with a red dot than it is just an like an out of universe uh, like that's reticle. I see what you're saying is like so say you had a big circle it's like that's easy to get on a target compared to a red dot however that big circle doesn't guarantee you'll get the shot right yeah, yeah. it's a, yeah. it's a bit of both but the the red dot is technically more difficult to use but it's more consistent and it will lead to uh, better rewards if you are a good well, shot once you have the indication of, of a hit with the red dot sight it's 100% you yes. have that well, circle that's, that's what we or want. not. Um, yeah, yeah, no, oh no, I know. I'm I'm on the same team. Maybe, in fact, know, I honestly think that if if now that we've got uh, granted a, a totally broken at least at this juncture PC version of The Last of Us, I think it would be really interesting to see if you added the Resident Evil 4 red dot into The Last of Us, would it make the shooting mechanics good? Interesting question. Because this a was the crouch in the in the Resident Evil Four remake that made me think that I was like this. This feels actually kind of similar to The Last of Us. It's just it's just better. 
like the shooting mechanics are good as opposed to being shit and shooting and, uh, mechanics are all right that's you know that's not oh in in last yes. of us or in the remake in the remake you think they're oh you just think they're all right i think they're pretty tight uh, I do not think that they're tight in this. I don't like the random bullet stuff. Uh, oh, uh, no yeah, I'm talking about crouching. with um, with a um, with, with the red dot. red dot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you added the all that stuff in, then I yeah, I'd, I'd significantly uh, think better of it and I'd enjoy it more and like it more. Yeah. Also, yeah. basically, all of them are saying they're okay with censorship. Did that happened. Huh? What? Huh? Censorship. What? If anything, censor- mods are like the opposite of that. Yeah. <laughs> you can mod- do whatever you want, sort of thing. Maybe like moderators. Mods exist outside of censorship. Oh shit! If you're talking about the fact that they've covered up Ashley's panties, don't even get me started, dude. Like, <laughs> go outside. Oh, I, no. or maybe the one thing I outside. did notice as far as that goes is apparently because I learned the term "scort" when I was doing a review <laughs> of the Resident Evil that? Three remake. It's a it's a skirt that are also shorts, so they're, oh. they're not. So, but anyways, the reason I, I learned that term was when I was reviewing Resident Evil 3 remake. That's apparently what they did to Jill Valentine's mini skirt in the the classic costume in that game. And I I actually just noticed one time when she was climbing up a ladder, I was like, oh, Ashley's kind of kilt her um, tartan skirt at the end is a skirt in this game as well. Well, mm-hmm. all I know is probably that a mod for give... it, okay. Oh, absolutely. I've seen some Badonkadonk mods already. There you go. You can get Ashley. All your characters whatever. in this game. Don't worry. There you go. I, Ashley's still got her ballistic physics in, in this one. Out the gate, no mods. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think the, the whole Capcom is taking the sexiness out of thing. I, I don't buy it. Well, the, the I remember people say they've uglified Ashley because of yeah. blah, 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 blah. It's just like. But I mean, Ashley no was way. always okay looking. Calm well, down. I think she, I think she's well, fucking better I, looking at this game. But I was gonna say, no way, yeah. looking this no game. way you can main that, maintain that argument across the board when you have Ada and Hunnigan looking the way they do. No way you're telling me they've been uglified. Yeah, <laughs> that ain't happening. Well, yeah, Ada in particular, I was just like, okay, they're, they're, you can say what you will about her voice acting, but nothing wrong Clearly with that not character model. <laughs> But um, uh, with Ashley, I think the because re- I, I almost did notice it at first. I was like, oh, Ashley looks strange when I first saw her. And I think what it is is the blonde hair using the sort of uh, RE engine hair effects, whatever they had, almost looks kind of gray. So in a, when her act one outfit, where or I guess not, a, not chapter one, but, you know, like a, the first half of the game when she's wearing a coat and uh, something of a scarf and everything, she she's dressed more what looks like almost like a Hillary Clinton type type outfit. And I think that that is a little off putting when you compare it to the sort okay, of Salazar looks more like Hillary Clinton original, than she does. Come on. I, well, I mean, uh, no, but it, like, I think it's just the the idea of it's like she's wearing a blazer and and uh, I don't oh, know. No. It's it. Well, I, I I'm not saying that it's it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just I think that in the second half of the game, she basically just gets her costume from the original. So I, I was Pretty like, much, oh, okay, yeah. well, I was like, where's the problem then? It's like, is that she's wearing a coat at the part of the game when she might be outdoors more? You know, like, I don't know. I just I think the argument totally falls apart when it's like well, they give her the costume you're complaining about her losing mm. in this game. So obviously they weren't oh, yeah. trying to get rid of it. You know, I, I just see James saying it. It's just funny. They they used an IRL cosplayer for the body model, but then slapped someone else's face on on the character. Hmm. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Strange. <laughs> oh wow. It's really weird. Man, that but... cosplayer was probably upset about that. Maybe they like, feel oh, complimented okay. about it that they got it. The body <laughs> at least got it there. <laughs> That's something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah. Anything else you guys want to say about this game in closing? Oh, no? I think we've said. I think I've we've said. said uh, I've said enough. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm tired. We've talked about this a long time, and I'm ready to. Uh, I think it's day. excellent. I it think we're sleep. winning yeah. right now with the whole Dead Space and this. That's oh, a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's better, this or Dead Space remake? Oh, I think uh, the Dead Space Dead, Dead Space. Remake? I'd say the Dead Space I, remake wins out for the to same their reason. Own yeah. Originals are compared to each other. I think it's games. I'm trying to say, and I think the yeah, uh, it think wins Dead out for Space the same remake reason. Wins. OG Resident Evil Four wins out is that I think the Dead Space yeah. remake is much more consistent. It's fucking yeah. I think the way that they yeah. expanded on the Dead Space remake was just like 
it feels like a different game in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, we said it before this game even came out. It was never going to replace Resident Evil Four. It just couldn't. It was only ever going to be able to be like different, and it is very different. Um, yep. Because you could theoretically have done it, I guess, with like a remaster. But I guess what I'm trying to suggest is that uh, they've fundamentally changed so many things about how everything works that it plays like a completely different game. It may look a lot yes. the same, um, and have the same vibe in a lot of different ways. But it's just yeah, they're very much different games. Um, and I love both of them. <laughs> Where's yes. Az? Oh, you know, he, he left about seven hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> he went to sleep. Uh, he said he was uh, not feeling too great as well. He had something wrong with his leg, I think. But uh, hey, I super oh, I hear that. Everybody <laughs> staying for as long as they did because this, uh, this was a long way. Um, I think now. I guess the next thing would be to talk about what everyone's up to before we probably sign. So, Mark, why don't you go first? What are you doing these days, pal? Um, I, I've been spending a lot of time streaming lately. Um, I, I sort of picked up a, a YouTube algorithm wave by uh, I, at a, around a time where I was making shorts and streaming. So I've kind of uh, locked myself into consistently making YouTube shorts and streaming until it slows down. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it's been fun though. I I hang out with my dogs and I play video games and talk to people. And, and yeah, and, and then I, I make little short films of them and upload them to YouTube while bored at work. So, yeah, there, there's that. I guess subscribe to Mark the Cyborg if you found me interesting. And if not, uh, I guess just try not to be too mean to me on Twitter. Aww. I love you all. Um, Metal, how about you? Hey. Uh, I'm going to stop playing Resident Evil and uh, go back to work, I guess. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm still working on that uh, one video that people still don't know about what it is. Uh, that's is. I'm going to go finish that now that we're done with this Resident Evil shenanigans because that has been dominating my, my life uh, for the last two weeks. I streamed it a little bit. So, yeah, the gaming streams are still happening, of course. Uh, but yeah, going back to, to that video, I actually don't know what the next Metals Forge is. I have nothing planned, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I'm kind of just want to focus on that video, get that out, and then I'll see what's, uh, what's co going on. I think the next big movie is probably Guardians, if I'm not mistaken. So that's yeah. When is that coming out? I think in May? Oh, really? I didn't early think May, it was early May, I think. What was I thinking? It was like November. I guess I guess stupid. I kind of figured that's when Marvel's um, big yeah, one Marvel's of the years. So I was like, eh, probably Marvel's around Christmas coming. time or something. But wow, um, it's pretty soon. Oh, there you go. Uh, links for both you boys is in chat. In the yeah. EFAB world, you. you guys have uh, Mando. Next episode is ready to go. That'll be out soon. As well as Gotham Knights episode one. I'm going to try and figure out where to put these things out. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We've been we've been checking that yeah. out. That's been that's been a wild ride. Uh, it has been. You guys can finally start seeing it play out. There's already four episodes of that out, so you know it's it's weird, but all these things will be coming out over time. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm not actually 100 percent sure on what next week's EFAP is going to be about yet, but we'll figure that one out. In the meantime, videos are being worked on, so. Um, is there yep. anything else you wanted to mention other than that, Ragu? Nah, that's it for me. I'm uh, ready to sign off on this one and another EFAP down, another game covered. Yeah, that's it for games now. I'll cover another one for a few years. Yep. They had their chance. And they did really well. <laughs> they did do well. <laughs> well, I say that. Oh, yeah. Atomic Heart was pretty bad, well. but you know. <laughs> I, I, Konami has got to be sweating over Silent Hill 2. Oh no, yeah, right. that's true. Don't be, don't be the loser now. Got to get them all right. Uh, and I don't know the the devs that are remaking Silent Hill Two have they've made a couple games I've played and I've not liked a single one of them. So I'm uh, my my hopes for it are not high. Boy, but I, I'm willing to be surprised. Oh, and uh, I, yeah. I will say, um, all we are currently up to date on Super Chats, except for this very episode, and they're all scheduled to yep. release. They're, they're all just coming out. Um, just Ooh, give them the time, but uh, obviously we will get this one caught up as well um, as soon as possible. Fringy is still unable to return, unfortunately. Gonna miss the outro too. Oh my god! Which I'm gonna do right now. So uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Super appreciate it. 
sending in those kind donations and all kinds of company for us. Super appreciate mm -hmm. it. And well, we'll see you in the next EFAP related thing, yeah. whatever it may be. See you around, man. See you later, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria, let's I did it for Fringy. Gloria, let's pop. Destroy the emus. Fringy must be avenged.